I worked hard for three years, sponsoring seven impoverished female students to go to college, but they deliberately framed me for drunken misconduct and took me to court. As a result, I was wrongfully imprisoned for a full 10 years, while they thrived and became the cream of the crop in the industry. But I also have to thank them. In prison, I met a master who had gone mad from practicing martial arts and learned the extraordinary medical skill of reviving the dead and mending bones. Now, after being released from prison, I thought I could reunite with my family. But I found out that not long after I was imprisoned, a group of strangers took my family away. To find my mother and sister, I remembered the ancient dragon ring that my master gave me before he died. This dragon ring can hold a total of nine golden needles. Each golden needle collected grants a special ability. By collecting six or more golden needles, I can use the Dragon Shrine's intelligence network to find my mother and sister. So I came alone to Dragon City because the second and third golden needles are in the hands of the newly rising tycoon, Mr. Mu, of the Mu family. Just then, I waved to stop a passing car. Where to, young man? The driver was very enthusiastic. When the driver at the Mu family estate heard my words, he paused for a moment and asked, Sir, are you going to pay respects to Mr. Mu Xinbua, the late Mr. Mu, paying respects? My expression froze. Mu Xinbua is dead. Yes, just as the radio said, Mu Xinbua, the founder of the Mu Group, has passed away. He passed away the day before yesterday, and the funeral will be held at 2 p.m. today. According to the grapevine, old man Mu was secretly poisoned due to a major project dispute between the Mu Group and a long-established aristocratic family. Even the renowned medical expert Wu couldn't do anything about it. The Mu family had a super low temperature cryogenic coffin made for old man Mu, and his body was frozen in it. Drive there right away and arrive at the Mu family estate before 2 p.m. This money is for you. As I said this, I stuffed a wad of money into the driver's hand. This money is what he earned by treating the guards when he was in prison. The driver glanced at the wad of money, stepped on the gas, and the taxi raced all the way there. At 1.59 p.m., it came to a steady stop at a several acre estate. White silk was hanging on the lintel in front of the door, and waves of mournful music and crying were coming from inside. At a glance, several direct descendants of the Mu family were kneeling in front of the memorial hall, wearing mourning clothes, and several servants were about to seal the coffin for burial. The coffin cannot be sealed. My voice rang clearly in everyone's ears. Instantly, it drew the attention of everyone in the memorial hall. Mu Jian, the eldest son of old man Mu, stood up and loudly reprimanded, Who are you? The time for condolences has passed. Step aside and don't delay the timely burial of our father. I'm not here to mourn. I'm here to collect the debt from Mu Xinghua. He can't die until he returns what I want. As soon as I said this, everyone present was shocked. The market value of the Mu group is worth tens of billions. Mu Xinghua, and even the old master of the Mu family, is the founder of the Mu group. How could he owe a debt to a young person? This kid is obviously sent by our enemies to cause trouble. Each and every one of the Mu family members showed anger towards me. Someone, throw this bastard out and break his legs. At the command of the wooden sword man, some servants around immediately rushed towards me, each of them with a look of anger on their faces. I stood fearlessly in place, those people hadn't reached me yet. I flicked a few coins from my hand, and suddenly those servants all fell to the ground. This scene left everyone in shock. By the time everyone reacted, I had already arrived at the coffin of old master Mu. He can't die before returning what I want. Then, I pulled out the only gold needle from the ring on my hand. Without hesitation, I inserted it into the heavenly pool point on old master Mu's forehead, while my other hand was on his chest. I began to rhythmically tap. You scoundrel, how dare you disturb my father's body. I'll kill you. Respecting the deceased, the Mu family members, upon seeing my actions, all showed anger and wanted to come forward and kill me. Hey hey, but just then, a cough suddenly came from the coffin. The next second, everyone was astonished. Because they noticed that the old man's complexion seemed to regain a hint of color. What have you done to my father? Mu Jandong, the second son of old master Mu, asked haltingly. I said that Mu Xinbu still owes me something I want. He's not qualified to die yet. When I said this, even a fool would know that I'm trying to save old master Mu. Brother, if he doesn't succeed in bringing our father back, we can still tear him to pieces later. The cough from the coffin just now ignited a glimmer of hope in Mu Jandong's heart. He was willing to take a chance and let the stranger in front of him give it a try. I ignored everyone and continued to use the golden needle on old master Mu's acupoint, slowly turning the golden needle. Before long, wisps of black gas began to emerge from the body of the old man who had been dead for two days. It was the toxic and cold air inside old master Mu's body, forced out by the golden needle. Moreover, the heart miraculously started beating, 
and the pallid complexion of Old Master Mu visibly regained color at an astonishing speed. The next second, Old Master Mu coughed up a large amount of black blood, then slowly opened his eyes. Dad is alive, Old Master Mu is really alive. Everyone was stunned by this miraculous scene. The servants of the Mu family all thought that Old Master Mu was faking his death, and each of them was scared back several steps. Just awakened, Old Master Mu saw himself lying in a cold, icy coffin, with his children all dressed in mourning looking at him. Feeling confused, he asked, what's going on with me? You were already dead, but I saved you and brought you back. I remember now, after hearing Dr. who declare me dead, I lost consciousness. So it was the young divine doctor who pulled me back from the hands of the king of hell. Please accept my bow. No need to thank me. I came to collect a debt. I reached out to stop old master Mu's septicemia. Then, without beating around the bush, he directly revealed the Tsanglong ring on his left index finger. So the Tsanglong ring, it turns out the young divine doctor is the heir of the Tsanglong ring. No wonder he can compete with the king of hell. Since Lord Lu knows about this Tsanglong ring, he should know that I've come today to claim what belongs to me. Of course I know, but if you want those two things back, you have to agree to a condition of mine. After the excitement, Lord Lu said mysteriously to me. I furrowed my brow deeply, but thinking about my mother and sister's whereabouts being unknown, no matter what means, I had to get back the lost golden needle. I had to suppress my displeasure. As long as I can do it without violating morals, ethics, laws, regulations, etc. Feel free to set the condition. My condition is very simple. If you marry my granddaughter Mu Wan Chang, I will give you back the things. The words of Grandpa Mu shocked everyone present, as the condition was to marry his granddaughter Mu Wan Chang. After this old man died once and woke up, did his head get muddled? He actually wants to marry the most outstanding granddaughter of the Mu family, Mu Wan Chang, to a stranger. You know, Mu Wan Chang is one of the four beauties of Longcheng, and also the beautiful president of the Mu group, a perfect example of a rich, beautiful woman. The young talents pursuing Mu Wan Chang in Longcheng, at least one of them is outstanding, no need to worry about marriage. How about this, the condition is simple, as long as you bring my granddaughter Mu Wan Chang back with you today, I will give those two things to Mr. Mu. Seeing my unbelieving look, he felt pleased, liking this effect very much. May I ask him politely, is your granddaughter Mu Wan Chung short, fat, and full of pimples, just like Ru Hua in the movie? As soon as I said this, Mr. Mu was stunned, and everyone in the Mu family was also stunned. Only Mu Wan Chang, standing behind everyone, had a frosty expression on her face and her eyes were full of murderous intent when she looked at me. This president is naturally beautiful, graceful, and talented, the dream lover of all men from 8 to 80 years old in Longcheng. In this kid's mouth, how did it turn into being short, fat, and horribly ugly like Ru Hua? If it weren't for the fact that you saved Grandpa, I would definitely beat you until your mother wouldn't recognize you. Grandpa Mu didn't bother to explain, and directly pulled his granddaughter Mu Wan Chang, who was standing behind everyone, to the front. Young Divine Doctor, this is my granddaughter Mu Wan Chang. Does she look as beautiful as a flower? You be the judge. When I saw the girl pushed in front of me by Grandpa Mu, my eyes nearly popped out. The girl in front of me is in her early 20s, clearly not wearing makeup, and her skin is fair and delicate like milk. She's a proper goddess. I became even more suspicious in my heart. Grandpa Mu pushed his granddaughter to me like throwing away trash. There's definitely something going on here. What do you think? Does my granddaughter catch your eye, young divine doctor? As long as you agree, she will be your wife in the future. As Grandpa Mu spoke, he took both of our hands and tried to put his granddaughter Mu Wan Chang's hand into mine, making us hold hands. I won't marry. Seeing Grandpa's actions, Mu Wan Chang and I instinctively pulled our hands back and refused in unison. After speaking, both of us were stunned. Neither of us expected that we would be so in sync. Dad, Wanner and this young divine doctor don't even know each other's names, let alone understand each other. How can you make them get married? Even if they do get married, they won't be happy. I object to this marriage. What do you mean they don't know each other? After they register for marriage later, won't they know each other? Back in my day, I didn't know your mom before we got married. We only met for the first time on our wedding night. We two aren't even deeply in love yet. They've already seen each other before the wedding night, aren't they satisfied? As long as Shaoshan agrees, the matter will be settled. No one's opposition matters. As long as I'm alive, I call the shots in this house. Hey, Mu Laoyi scolded Mu Wancheng and his daughter, then started coughing continuously. Father and daughter originally wanted to resist, but seeing Lao Yi's face turning pale from coughing, they had to keep quiet for the sake of his health. Mu Lao Yi, even if your granddaughter is willing to marry me, I won't marry her. You should reconsider. Wait until you recover. I once again express my attitude to the Mu family. 
As soon as I said this, Mu Lao Yi and Mu Wanqing's faces turned very ugly. What do you mean, young man? Do you think Miss Mu is not good enough for you? Hearing my public refusal to marry her, Mu Wanqing felt very uncomfortable, as if he was being forced to marry me and then rejected by him. He questioned me dissatisfiedly. Chang'er was so embarrassed and impolite. Seeing his granddaughter questioning me like this, Mu Lao Yi quickly reprimanded his granddaughter. Grandpa, why do you always take his side, as if he's your real grandson and I'm just an outsider? Lord Kumu completely ignored him, then looked at me again. How about this, I'll make a change to this condition. As long as you agree to marry my granddaughter for three months, after three months, if you feel that she is not suitable to be your wife, you can divorce. Isn't this acceptable? He believes in the beauty and abilities of his granddaughter. With just three months, the young divine doctor in front of him will surely accept his granddaughter. As for his granddaughter Mu Wan Chang, whether she will be attracted to the young divine doctor in these three months and fall in love with him, he is not worried at all. As far as he knows, every heir of the Tsunlong realm practices the Jade Phoenix technique. Apart from its various miraculous effects, it also holds a special attraction for women. He has a golden needle engraved with the Jade Seal. As long as the two get married, he will give the golden needle to the young divine doctor. After practicing, his attraction to the opposite sex will greatly increase. By then, even if they divorce, his granddaughter probably won't want to leave. Moreover, every heir of the Tsanglong realm can achieve great success. His granddaughter marrying an heir of the Tsanglong realm will bring immense benefits to both his granddaughter and the Mu family, without any harm. I sighed and said, the ancients said that forcibly picking unripe fruit is not sweet. Lord Mu, why are you doing this? Unripe fruit may not be sweet, but it quenches thirst. His disrespectful appearance for his age has astonished everyone present. Is this really their family's patriarch? Could someone be using his body as a vessel? Since Elder Mu has already spoken to this extent, if I don't agree, it would be ungrateful. But I have one condition, if I divorce your granddaughter three months after the marriage registration, you cannot interfere. I've thought about it. Although I still feel that this Mu Wan Chang may not be a normal girl, in order to obtain the two gold needles in Elder Mu's hands, I can only compromise. At worst, when the three-month period is up, he can immediately separate from her. When Elder Mu saw that I finally agreed to the divorce, he excitedly asked his son to bring pen and paper, and immediately drew up the divorce agreement. To prevent any tricks, such as bringing back a fake marriage certificate to fool ourselves, Elder Mu directly took Mu Wan Chang and me to the Civil Affairs Bureau to register. During the wedding photoshoot, both of them had cold expressions, stood far apart, and looked very unwilling. No, no, this doesn't look like a wedding at all. It's clearly a meeting between enemies, with murderous looks on their faces. You need to smile, with an overflowing expression of happiness. Do you know, Elder Mu? You don't look like someone who just came back to life. You're energetically directing everything around. The two of them took wedding photos. Mu Wan Chang and I could only follow Elder Mu's wishes and awkwardly smiled at each other. But at that moment, Elder Mu, who was standing beside them, suddenly stumbled and bumped into his granddaughter, Mu Wan Chang. Without any precautions, Mu Wan Chang threw herself directly at me, and very skillfully, we ended up kissing each other. When our lips touched, it was as if we both got an electric shock, staring at each other with wide eyes, forgetting to separate. Good granddaughter, if this is just an accident, let the two of you come to your senses, Miss Mu. It was as if someone had installed a powerful spring between them, quickly pushing the two apart. Grandpa, do you think I would believe your words? Facing a stubborn grandpa, Mu Wan Cheng feels like she's going crazy. Ha ha ha, you two will be a couple in a moment, what's wrong with a kiss? Mu Lao Yi, don't be shameless. You've gone too far. We haven't even obtained our marriage certificate yet. If you continue to mess around like this, we won't get married. Grandpa, if you keep causing trouble, we won't get married. This time, Mu Wan Chang and I are on the same side, threatening him with puffed up cheeks. All right, Grandpa won't mess around anymore. Hurry up and take photos for the marriage certificate. Mu Lao Yi saw that the explanation was unclear, so he stopped explaining, said in a somewhat depressed manner. Next, the two of them cooperated very hard, trying to make themselves look very happy while taking photos. Soon, the two of them obtained their marriage certificate and walked out of the Civil Affairs Bureau. Mu Wan Chang looked at the marriage certificate in her hand, feeling a little absent-minded. She never thought she would get married in such a daze. Grandpa Mu, we have already obtained the marriage certificate. Can you give me the things now? Still calling me Grandpa Mu? Call me Grandpa, and I will give you the things. Grandpa Mu said somewhat discontentedly. Grandpa, I could only force myself to say yes. Is this more like it? Grandpa Mu happily agreed, then turned to look at Mu Wancheng. Granddaughter, you go back first. I have something to discuss with you. Humph, 
I don't care to hear about your matters. It's all so secretive. Mu Wancheng discontentedly glanced at the two and left. You see, the golden earrings on your wife's ears, that's the thing you were looking for. It was made into earrings by his grandmother and given to him before she passed away. This girl treats these earrings as a keepsake left by his grandmother, for anyone. Be more forceful during the wedding night. When he's tired and asleep, sneakily take the earrings off. Grandpa Mu pointed at Mu Wancheng's back, said with a mischievous smile on his face. I instantly felt deceived by this Mu Xingbo. If I had known the golden needle was in your granddaughter's ear, I wouldn't have saved you. Ha ha ha, priceless. If we had known earlier, it just proves that the two of you are destined for each other. When they returned to the Mu family estate, the entire estate had undergone a drastic change. The scene of mourning had turned into a lively atmosphere with decorations everywhere, full of joy and liveliness. I'll give the order for someone to pick an auspicious day. Book a hotel and arrange your wedding. We don't need to rush the wedding. If we're still together in three months, we can plan it then. I'll try to stop the other party too. So let's wait for three months before the wedding, but that doesn't stop you from having a wedding night tonight. If you're worried about having a child that might affect the divorce in three months, you can take precautions. Old Master Mu generously told me, which made me feel embarrassed, but since it's an imperial order for the wedding night, then I won't be polite tonight. I'll go out and buy something. After saying this, I turned around to leave the Mu family, fearing that the old master would say something fierce again. I took a car and arrived at the entrance of a traditional Chinese medicine clinic called Baojitang because, besides buying practical items for tonight's wedding night, he also needed to get some medicine to help old master Mu's health. The boy in front quickly stepped aside for me. I hadn't even entered Baojitang when I suddenly heard a shout from behind. I turned around and saw a luxury car with all zeros on the license plate, parked behind him. A well-dressed beautiful young lady directed two big men, supporting an unconscious elderly man in tang suit, and hurriedly walked towards the clinic. As the group passed by me, I took a glance at the unconscious old man and felt like I recognized him, but couldn't remember from where. Tell the shopkeeper to quickly call for Dr. Hu to come out and save the person. The girl started shouting as soon as she entered. Soon, a middle-aged man around 50 years old walked out from the inner hall. He is the famous national doctor, Dr. Hu Qingyo. When Hu Qingyo saw the unconscious old man, his face changed instantly. Quickly lay the person flat on the ground, and others moved back a bit. But after Dr. Hu administered a few needles, the old man not only didn't improve, but his lips began to dry, and his whole body started shivering and feeling cold. Hu Qingyo, are you capable? If my grandfather has any accidents due to your delay, it will be hard for your whole family to escape. The girl, seeing her grandfather's condition, coldly threatened Dr. Hu. Originally, due to the lack of improvement in the patient's condition and being nervous, Dr. Hu, upon hearing the girl's words, was so scared that his hands trembled. Although I am a bit repulsed by the girl's threatening manner, but now Dr. Hu has been disturbed by the girl's threat. If I don't act now, the old man will pass away today. From the second needle onwards, you have been needling incorrectly. After the Xinting point, the second and third needles should be placed at the left and right Naguan points, and the fourth and fifth needles at the Chiosu points. I couldn't help but guide you. Ignorant child, what nonsense are you spouting? The patient's organs all have pent up energy. If we follow your method of acupuncture, the patient's internal organs will be ruined. What's your intention? Master who was already sweating profusely. When he heard my words, he became furious and scolded me. The words of master who made the girl look at me with murderous intent. Ada, Air, the two of you, drag this malicious person who wants to harm my grandfather, cut out their tongue, and gouge out their eyes. As soon as the girl finished speaking, two fierce and evil-looking men came out from behind him. Air walked towards me with a fierce expression, then made a forceful grab. The speed was so fast and fierce that you could even hear a faint sound of breaking air. When he made the grab, I just dodged slightly, and his palm missed. This surprised both of them. You are no match for me. I dodged behind a air and said calmly. Although I haven't learned the Jin Dian blood of the Dragon Temple, my master has passed down his skills to me. I have a profound and restrained inner strength, so ordinary masters are no match for me. Seeing his companion fail, Ada, seeking death, directly attacked me with a palm. I didn't dodge or avoid, and confronted Ada head-on. Ada only managed to say not good before being thrown out of the clinic and heavily falling to the ground. Before anyone else could react, the fight had already ended, leaving everyone stunned by what they had just witnessed. The girl saw Ada being slapped away, and instinctively reached for the weapon at her waist. My true energy circulated within, my body moved like a ghost, and in the blink of an eye, I was in front of the girl. The next moment, the weapon at the girl's waist was already in my hand, and then it was pressed against the girl's head. You dare to point a weapon at my head? Do you know who I am? 
I don't care who you are. If you dare to touch me, then I can only retaliate. I was just trying to help, but was treated like this by these people. It reminds me of those who framed him 10 years ago. Why is there never any good return for kindness? A cold murderous intent surged in my heart. What do you want? The girl was infuriated by my words, but with her life in my hands, she didn't dare to make any reckless moves. Grandpa wasn't poisoned, it's a recurrence of internal injuries, with his organs eroded by malevolent energy. Investigating it that way would only worsen the old man's condition. To heal the old man's injuries, you have to follow what I just said. I didn't respond to the young master's words, but instead answered irrelevantly. Because at this time, the situation of the old man lying on the ground began to worsen again. Even in a coma, a look of pain appeared on his face. Seeing the old man's condition, doctor who didn't dare to delay any longer, and had to make the best of a bad job, immediately following my instructions. Sure enough, following my instructions, after the needle was removed, the old man's originally pained expression gradually eased, and before long, he woke up. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. The girl didn't care about the weapon pointed at her head and rushed towards her grandfather. Thanks for the guidance, young friend. Otherwise, if something were to happen to Mr. Zhao in my care, I, who, would be held accountable even if it costs my life. After stabilizing the old man's injuries, Dr. Hu walked up to me and bowed deeply. Thank you, Dr. Hu. You're too kind. Dr. Hu, could you please prepare two doses of medicine for me according to this prescription? I need to bring it back for my elders. When it came time to pay, Dr. Hu refused to accept payment for the medicine. I didn't insist and left with the medicine. After I left, the old man, supported by his granddaughter, came to Dr. Hu. Upon learning that I had saved him, the old man looked surprised and then glanced at his granddaughter. The girl nodded at her grandfather. That jerk may have saved you, but he also injured Ada with a single blow and even pointed a weapon at my head. We're even, so there's no need to thank him. That young man injured Ada with a single blow, causing the old man to cry out in shock. Turning to look at the injured Ada, I found him with a pale face and a limp arm. I'm incompetent. I failed to protect miss. Please, punish me, master. The old man was full of shock. Although Ada and Er Liang are not the strongest under his command, they were once capable of taking on a hundred enemies on the battlefield. He, Zhao Wuji, is known as the war god of the northern frontier. Even at his peak, he wouldn't dare claim that he could incapacitate Ada with a single move. Where is that young man from Doctor Who? The old war god Zhao Wujie quickly turned to Doctor Who and asked. That young man left after getting the medicine, Doctor Who replied respectfully. Is there a way to find him after he's left? He didn't leave any contact information. It might be a bit difficult to find him, Doctor Who looked embarrassed. Grandpa, we have surveillance here. We can retrieve the footage and then put out a full-scale search for him. The girl, thinking that her war god grandfather was upset about a die's injured hand, was furious and wanted to hold that jerk accountable. She immediately acted as an advisor to her grandfather. Injured Adai also shared the same thoughts as the girl and was almost moved to tears. Doctor Who had the same thoughts as the others, thinking that the old war god Zhao Wujie was going to make things difficult for him. Although he wanted to help me, who was indebted to him, he could only comply due to Zhao Wujie's prestigious background. Soon, Zhao Wujie saw my appearance on the surveillance. When he saw the dragon hiding sword on my finger, he became so excited that he trembled all over. This is the successor of the dragon hiding realm. No wonder he's so powerful. It seems that the other party was just teaching a lesson. Adai wasn't angry, otherwise that blow could have taken his life. After confirming that I was the successor of the dragon hiding realm, Zhao Wujie involuntarily muttered to himself. He was able to achieve such high accomplishments in his life because when he was young, he received guidance from the 8th generation successor of the dragon hiding realm. This allowed him to be invincible on the battlefield, achieving the illustrious reputation of the northern frontier war god, Zhao Wujie. Pass the order down, I want to have all the information about this person within 10 minutes. After receiving the order from the master, Air immediately took out a laptop from the car and started investigating my identity on the spot. Hushini on the side had a huge change in expression, feeling that he had implicated me, feeling deeply uneasy inside. Although that young man of Zhao Lao injured the subordinates, he also pulled you back from the brink of death. Ignorance is not a crime. How about letting him off the hook? Hu Shini gritted his teeth. The old man, upon hearing Hu Shini's words, was stunned. I want to find this young man. I intend to thank him in person. Where have you all gone? At this time, Air utilized the powerful intelligence network of the War God Mansion to investigate my information. The master's information has been thoroughly investigated. Then, Air made a brief report to Zhao Lao, the war god, about my information. After sponsoring seven impoverished female college students, 
he was wrongly accused and sentenced to 10 years. Zhao Lao, the war god, muttered to himself, he even completed the registration for the major and minor programs of the Longcheng Mu family and got married. Then he turned to his granddaughter and said, the old man from the Mu family and I were classmates. Didn't you say before that you were going to hold a birthday banquet for your grandfather in three days? Send an invitation to the Mu family, inviting the Mu family to attend together. I want to thank my benefactor in person. The old man thought for a moment and said to his granddaughter. He didn't have much time left at his age, and once he passed away, the Zhao family would definitely face the dilemma of being dismantled. If that young man is really the heir of the dragon burial ring, it would be wise to befriend him. The forces that want to harm the Zhao family would have to consider the consequences. Throughout history, whether it was the unification of the Qing dynasty by the first emperor, the ascension of the great Zhou Empress, or the entry of the Qing army into the capital, there were always the figures of the heirs of the dragon burial ring behind these major events. All right, grandfather. I will have someone deliver the invitation to the Mu family. Zhao Min saw that her grandfather agreed to hold the birthday banquet, and a happy smile appeared on her face as she sweetly replied. Hu Shini, who was on the side, was shocked to hear the conversation between the grandfather and granddaughter. This was the legendary northern frontier war god, Zhao Wujin. Although he had retired from the battlefield many years ago, his influence had not diminished. The fact that he was organizing a birthday banquet specifically to thank that young man showed how much he valued him. Hu Shini, you should come and join in the fun too. Zhao, the old war god, noticed Hu Shini's expression and also extended an invitation to him. I am honored to receive Zhao's invitation. I will definitely arrive on time. Hu Shini respectfully said. Next, Hu Shini prepared some medicine to treat the old war god's internal injuries and let him take it back. Only then did the old war god leave the Chinese medicine clinic with his granddaughter. Grandfather, that bastard is just an arrogant person who knows a little bit of medical skills. Why do you value him so much and even hold a birthday banquet for him? After getting back into the car, the girl asked her grandfather with some confusion. Previously, she had wanted to hold a grand birthday celebration for her grandfather, but he had refused, citing a desire to avoid extravagance and waste. Now, her grandfather suddenly changed his mind, clearly using it as an excuse to invite that bastard. You foolish girl, when will you have some insight? Even during my peak, I couldn't defeat Ada with a single move. Do you think he is an ordinary person? The old war god Zhao Wujin asked kindly in response to his granddaughter Zhao Min. Um, does that mean, grandfather, you suspect that he is a disciple of those hermits? After being reminded by her grandfather, Zhao Min asked in disbelief. It's not just as simple as being a disciple of the hermits. Did you see the ring on his hand? I saw it when I was young. It should be the legendary dragon burial ring. What? Could it be that he is the ninth generation heir of the dragon burial ring? Zhao Min was completely shocked. She had heard her grandfather talk about it since she was a child. The reason her grandfather had achieved what he had today was entirely because he had the fortune to spend some time with the heir of the dragon burial ring when he was young. That heir had taught him a set of martial arts, which allowed him to achieve his current accomplishments and status. That heir of the dragon burial ring had even looked down on her grandfather's talent and refused to accept him as a disciple. If the other party was really the heir of the dragon burial ring, then her grandfather's actions would not be surprising at all. We will find out on the day of the birthday banquet. Go back and prepare. Invite all the influential people in Lunching to accompany us. I, your grandfather, will publicly clear Chen Pingan's name and vindicate him from the false accusations. All right, let's go back. After the old man finished speaking, the driver started the car and left. When Chen Pingan returned to the Mu family, it was time for dinner. My good son-in-law is back. Let's prepare the meal. Seeing Chen Ping and enter, the old master ordered happily. Under the orders of the old master, the Mu family prepared a sumptuous dinner to entertain Chen Ping and the new son-in-law. Although Mu Wanshan, Mu Wanjiao, and their parents were unhappy, the old master had just woken up and his body had not fully recovered yet. No one dared to oppose the old master at this time, so they treated it as a celebration of the old master's recovery. Halfway through dinner, Mu Wanjiao received a call from her best friend and hurriedly put down her chopsticks and went out. After dinner, Chen Pingan handed the medicine he had just bought to the Mu family and asked someone to boil it for the old master. Led by the servant Wu Ma, they arrived in front of a room. Young master, you will live in this room from now on, Wu Ma said, opening the door and handing the key to Chen Pingan before leaving. Curiously, Chen Pingan walked in and was greeted by a faint fragrance, which was refreshing. It was a room of about 30 square meters, decorated in light pink, with a large bathroom and various branded cosmetics on the dressing table. On the snow-white bed, there was a doll as tall as a person, and a pair of red double happiness stickers on the headboard. 
It was clear that this was Mu Wancheng's boudoir. Surprisingly, the old master arranged for him to live in Mu Wancheng's room. But thinking about how the old master forced him to marry his granddaughter, it was not surprising that he was placed in Mu Wancheng's room. Mu Wancheng hadn't returned yet, and Shen Pingan didn't hesitate. He casually took a towel and went into the bathroom to take a hot shower. Since he had no intention of being married to Mu Wancheng for long, he planned to divorce her after three months, so Chen Pingan didn't need to worry about his appearance. After coming out of the bathroom, he habitually put on a pair of boxers and threw the doll, as tall as a person, onto the sofa before lying down on Mu Wancheng's snow white bed, which emitted a refreshing fragrance. It had been a long time since he had slept on such a comfortable bed, and it was also fragrant. Chen Pingan quickly fell asleep. After an unknown amount of time, Mu Wancheng, exhausted, finally returned. She pushed open the door to the room and walked towards her comfortable, snow-white bed without even turning on the lights. She kicked off her shoes and collapsed onto the bed without even taking off her stockings. She habitually turned over to hug her large doll. Ha! Huh? Why is it so smooth? Where is the doll's fur? Why does my doll have a heartbeat and warmth? Could it be that my doll has come to life? Mu Wancheng muttered to herself, feeling that something was not right. Suddenly, she seemed to remember something and immediately turned on the bedside lamp. Ah! The next second, Mu Wancheng screamed. She found that her doll was gone, and the person she was hugging was actually a man wearing only boxers, with bare arms. Chapter 8, Obtaining the Golden Needle in this Silent Night, Mu Wancheng's scream was extremely piercing. Chen Pingan, who had already been awakened by Mu Wancheng's movements, immediately covered her mouth. MMM. Mu Wancheng, with her mouth covered, could only make muffled sounds. Chen Pingan immediately noticed the pair of gold earrings on Mu Wancheng's ears. He flipped Mu Wancheng over, pressed her down, and used both hands to remove her earrings. Mu Wancheng's actions reminded her of the information her best friend had given her. After separating from Chen Pingan at the Civil Affairs Bureau, she went to find her best friend, Qin Shiryu, and vented about her experiences today. Her best friend was shocked, feeling like she was hearing a fantasy. Not only did her grandfather, who had been dead for two or three days, come back to life, but he also forced his granddaughter to marry a stranger? This was too absurd. If Mu Wancheng hadn't shown her the marriage certificate, Qin Shiryu would never have believed such a ridiculous thing. Qin Shiryu was curious about Chen Pingan and immediately used her hacking skills to investigate his information. The investigation results shocked her. The person who married her best friend was actually a human demon who had violated seven female college students. Qin Shiryu immediately called Mu Wancheng, who was still having dinner, and presented all the information about Chen Pingan, from his childhood to before he entered prison. After reading the information, Mu Wancheng was also shocked. She discussed with her best friend until midnight before returning home. Because her grandfather had just died and come back to life today, she didn't dare to disturb him in the middle of the night and planned to give him the information tomorrow to let him drive away this demon. But before dawn, she had already fallen into the hands of this human demon. Thinking of the horror, Mu Wancheng struggled hard. Chen Pingan was taking off the earrings from Mu Wancheng's ears when she suddenly struggled like crazy. Chen Pingan accidentally pulled Mu Wancheng's ear, causing it to bleed. Mu Wancheng was in so much pain that tears almost fell. It hurts. You demon, let go of me. You made me bleed. Mu Wancheng angrily scolded Chen Pingan. Chen Pingan heard someone coming outside the door and immediately covered Mu Wancheng's mouth. Mu Wancheng's scream just now alarmed the entire Mu family estate. Mu Wancheng's parents were still awake, discussing their daughter's situation in their room. When they heard the scream, they thought Chen Pingan was forcing their daughter and rushed over to teach him a lesson. The child is in the bridal chamber. What are you two doing here? Just as Mu Jian Nan and his wife were about to break in to save their daughter, the voice of Grandpa Mu sounded behind them, startling them. Dad, didn't you hear Wan Air scream just now? That bastard forced Wan Air. I'm going in to tear him apart. Mu Jian Nan said angrily, about to take action again. Nonsense, they have already obtained their marriage certificate and are legally married. The bridal chamber is their duty as a couple. You two go back and don't disturb the newlyweds. Grandpa Mu sternly reprimanded his eldest son. But one heir. Mu Jian Nan wanted to say something more, but was quickly interrupted by Grandpa Mu. Are my words useless? If you don't leave now, don't blame me for using family law. Grandpa Mu even brought up family law, causing Mu Jian Nan and his wife to tremble in fear. In the end, Mu Jian Nan could only pull his reluctant wife away. Grandpa Mu was afraid that they would come back to cause trouble, so he stood guard not far from his granddaughter's room. Inside the room, Chen Pingan released Mu Wancheng when he heard no movement outside. At this moment, he noticed tear stains in the corners of Mu Wancheng's eyes and looked at her with a pitiful gaze. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. 
Chen Pingin felt a little guilty and apologized in a low voice. Who let you into my room? Get out. As soon as Mu Wan Chang regained her freedom, she immediately picked up a pillow and angrily smashed it at Chen Pingin. This was arranged by your grandfather. Do you think I'm willing to share a room with a woman like you who can't get married? Mu Wan Chang's pillow had no attacking power against Chen Pingin, who confidently said. After speaking, he got off Mu Wan Chang's bed and lay down on the sofa. Stop, give me back my earrings. As soon as Chen Pingin got off the bed, Mu Wan Chang's cold voice came from behind him. I didn't take your earrings. Chen Pingin answered without blushing or skipping a beat, then walked to the sofa and lay down. I don't believe you. You clearly pulled off my earring and made my ear bleed. If you don't return my earring, I'll call the police and have you arrested and put in jail for a few years. Mu Wan Chang didn't believe Chen Pingin's words at all and threatened directly. This was a precious heirloom left by her grandmother and was very valuable to her. Mu Wan Chang's words gave Chen Pingin a headache. This golden needle was originally an item of his sect, and he had to get it back in order to find his mother and younger sister. But he also knew that reasoning with a woman was impossible. He could only deny it to the death and say, I really didn't take your earring. Chen Pingin pretended to be calm. He planned to go to a gold shop tomorrow and have someone make an identical pair of earrings to fool the other party. I don't believe it, I'm going to search your body. You. Chen Pingin's anger surged, the earring was now in his hand, and he was only wearing a pair of underwear, there was nowhere to hide it. If he was caught during the search, wouldn't it be embarrassing? Feeling guilty? Seeing Chen Pingin's angry expression, Mu Wancheng became even more certain that he had taken the earring. She sneered. Fine, I'll let you search, but what if you can't find it? Chen Pingin secretly hid the earring in his only underwear and calmly said, Humph, don't pretend to be calm. If you can't find it, then I'll let you do whatever you want. But if you do find it, you not only have to return my earring, but you're also not allowed to touch me until we divorce in three months. Mu Wanchang also had a confident expression because she had just seen Chen Pingin take her earring. Deal. Chen Pingin agreed without hesitation, surprising Mu Wanchang. She wondered if he was pretending to be calm. Mu Wanchang walked confidently to Chen Pingin and searched his hands, ears, hair, and even his mouth, but she didn't find any trace of the earring. She frowned slightly. Could it be? Blushing, Mu Wanchang glanced at the only underwear on Chen Pingin's body. Take. Take it off. Mu Wanchang stuttered as she pointed at Chen Pingin's underwear and gave him the order. Chapter 9. Are you a dog? Damn. You're really bold, aren't you? Chen Pingin couldn't help but burst out. The pair of earrings made from gold needles were hidden inside. Once he took off his underwear, wouldn't it be exposed? Are you feeling guilty? Mu Wancheng became even more certain that Chen Pingin had hidden the earring inside. Who said I'm feeling guilty? I'm just a little embarrassed. Since you want to see, I'll satisfy you. Chen Pingin gritted his teeth and pulled down his only underwear. Ah, you pervert. I told you to take it off. But you actually did it? Mu Wanchang was startled by Chen Pingin's actions and quickly turned around, covering her eyes and not daring to look. She had been confident that Chen Pingin wouldn't dare to take it off, but who knew he would do it without hesitation, catching her off guard? Chen Pingin was dumbfounded. You were the one who told me to take it off, how did it become me being a pervert? What kind of logic is this? Chen Pingin felt wronged and even more confused than Doi. Mu Wanchang, with her back to Chen Pingin, angrily said, I. I was just testing to see if you had any guilty conscience. Who told you to take it seriously, you pervert? Chen Pingin finally experienced the unreasonable nature of women today. No wonder her grandfather was afraid she wouldn't get married and forced him to marry her. What man would dare to marry such a woman? Only because he had something in her hands, he had no choice but to bow his head and get married to this kind of woman. That old man Mu even tricked him into signing a document, truly cunning. Fortunately, it was only for three months. Since he was already in this situation, Chen Pingin could only face it head on. Stop talking nonsense. I just want to ask if you're going to search or not. If you're not, then stop saying that I took your earring. I understand. You're pretending to look for the earring, but you're actually trying to take advantage of me. Your real intention is to look at my crotch, right? I never expected you to be such a heartless person. Chen Pingin directly turned the tables and angrily accused Mu Wancheng. While speaking, he didn't idle his hands and took out the earring, hiding it in his mouth. You're talking nonsense. Who cares about taking advantage of you, this demon? Hurry up and pull your pants up. Now it was Mu Wanchang's turn to be angry. She gritted her teeth with her back to Chen Pingin. This bastard actually turned the tables on her, making her furious. Who cares about looking at your ugly thing? I'm so angry. What's even more infuriating is that since Chen Pingin dared to take it off, it means the earring isn't inside. In other words, she lost. 
Mu Wancheng stomped her feet in anger and walked back to the bedside, pretending to be calm as she searched. Seeing Mu Wancheng's frustrated expression, Chen Pingan felt a sense of satisfaction, but he knew he had to play the whole act. With this in mind, Chen Pingan walked towards Mu Wancheng with a mischievous smile. What? Do you want? Don't come any closer. Mu Wancheng, who was searching for earrings on the bed, noticed Chen Pingan approaching and sat down in panic, asking anxiously. You said earlier, if I couldn't find the earrings on me, then you would do whatever you wanted. So, what do you want to do? Chen Pingan looked at Mu Wancheng's beautiful face, resembling a big bad wolf, and said, Don't mess around, or I'll scream for help. Mu Wancheng panicked, sitting on the bed and continuously warning Chen Pingan, We're already married legally, and your grandfather wants us to do something. As long as your grandfather is alive, no matter how loud you scream, it won't make a difference. Chen Pingan smirked and leaned down, lifting Mu Wancheng's small and cute chin with his hand. At this moment, Mu Wancheng was wearing a casual outfit, a white women's t-shirt on the upper body with a cartoon pattern on the chest, very cute. The lower body was tight jeans, outlining her perfect figure, coupled with her stunning face, making people's hearts skip a beat. Unfortunately, this woman had issues, otherwise, having such a beauty as a wife would be a great fortune for any man. Chen Pingan's words plunged Mu Wancheng into despair, and she couldn't help but shed two lines of tears. Don't try this with me, a woman's tears are useless to me. Alright, I won't touch you, just stop crying. Chen Pingan first frightened Mu Wancheng, but it had no effect. Instead, it scared her even more, and tears flowed like a bursting flood. Chen Pingan could take advantage of this opportunity to end their entanglement tonight. However, just as he was about to retract his hand, Mu Wancheng bit down on his thumb. Ah, are you a dog? Chen Pingan's hand was bitten and bleeding, causing his face to slightly change color from the pain. You promise me three conditions, and I'll let you go. Mu Wancheng, with her mouth still biting Chen Pingan's hand, said unclearly. Chen Pingan didn't know how she managed to bite and still speak. If he didn't agree, his thumb might be bitten off, so Chen Pingan had no choice but to nod and agree. Mu Wancheng finally let go of her bite. Chen Pingan immediately took a few steps back, away from Mu Wancheng who had bitten him. My first condition is that you are not allowed on my bed anymore. Second, you are not allowed to touch me. Third, after three months, you cannot find any excuse to refuse a divorce. If you can't fulfill these three conditions, I will bite you and bite off everything I can. Mu Wanchan wiped away her tears and stated her three conditions, warning Chen Pingan. And her gaze intentionally or unintentionally glanced at Zhang San's underwear, clearly conveying a warning. Who would want to touch a woman like you? I agree to all three conditions. I'm going to sleep now, don't disturb me anymore. Chen Pingan noticed Mu Wanchang's gaze towards his underwear, and he was so scared that he trembled. Without thinking, he agreed to her demands and walked to the sofa, lying down while still holding his bleeding thumb. Mu Wancheng couldn't believe that Chen Pingan agreed to her condition so readily, leaving her somewhat stunned. It wasn't until Chen Pingan lay down on the sofa and she heard him groaning in pain that she slightly smiled. You think I can't handle you? She muttered to herself triumphantly, then quickly wrapped herself tightly in the blanket, leaving only her head exposed. It wasn't until she heard Chen Pingan snoring that she fell into a deep sleep, unable to resist her drowsiness. After Mu Wancheng fell asleep, Chen Pingan, who had already started snoring, suddenly opened his eyes. He got up quietly and walked towards the bathroom, locking the door from the inside. He took off the earrings from his mouth, then smeared some fresh blood from his injured thumb onto the earrings. The earrings suddenly emitted a strong golden light, and several lines of words were projected onto the wall. This was the second layer of the wind control formula and the password for the Zhang Long Hall safe deposit box in the bank. Mu Wan Chang was already on high alert because there was a man in the room, so she was sleeping lightly. She was soon awakened by the golden light shining from the bathroom blast door. Chapter 10, The Most Honored Customer Is This A Ghost? Mu Wan Chang rubbed her eyes subconsciously and looked again, only to find that the golden light had disappeared. There was only the light in the bathroom, and Mu Wan Chang thought she was seeing things. Not long after, Chen Pingan came out of the bathroom, and Mu Wan Chang immediately pretended to be asleep. Chen Pingan didn't expose her and went back to sleep on the sofa. That's how their first night passed. Mu Wan Cheng woke up at 7 o'clock in the morning and went to find her grandfather. At 8.30, Chen Pingan stretched and got up, washed up, and left the Mu family. He had two important things to do today, receive the immense wealth stored in the Zhang Long Hall's bank and return the two gold earrings he had replicated to Mu Wan Cheng. After having breakfast at a roadside stall, Chen Pingan took a car to the Ruishur Bank's Dragon City branch. Ruishur Bank positioned itself as a high-end bank serving global billionaires. One-tenth of the immense wealth of the Zan Long Hall was stored in the bank's safe deposit box. When Chen Pingan arrived at Ruishur Bank, 
There were more than 10 people queuing to do business in the bank hall. Chen Ping and immediately attracted everyone's attention. The men who came to Ruaishir Bank to do business were all dressed in suits, while Chen Ping and was wearing the same clothes he wore five years ago when he went to prison. Not only did it look outdated, but it had also faded and turned white after being washed, making him stand out from the others in the bank hall. In the eyes of the crowd, Chen Ping and, dressed like this, was either a poor beggar or a country bumpkin. People either looked at him with disdain or mocked him, keeping their distance from him as if they were afraid of being infected by his poverty. Hey, country bumpkin, do you know what kind of bank this is? This is Ruaishir International Bank, only accepting large transactions. If you want to withdraw money, go to another small bank. We don't serve country folks here. A young woman covered her mouth and nose and kindly reminded Chen Pingin. Thank you for your reminder. I am here to withdraw a large sum of money. Chen Pingin politely replied. Ha ha, is this country bumpkin talking about a hundred yuan as a large sum of money? The crowd laughed at Chen Pingin's words, treating his mention of a large sum of money as a joke. Chen Pingin had become accustomed to this mockery and cold words over the years, showing no emotion on his face. He waited in line for over half an hour before it was his turn. Is it you? The beautiful teller who received Chen Ping and exclaimed when she saw him. She was Qin Shiryu, Muan Cheng's best friend, who had been assigned to Ruaishir Bank for training last month. Yesterday, when she helped Muan Cheng investigate Chen Ping and's information, she had seen his photo and was deeply impressed by his appearance. Now, seeing Chen Ping in front of her, she couldn't help but exclaim, Do you know me? Chen Ping looked at the woman in front of him, who looked just as beautiful as Mu Wan Chang, and even more intellectual in her bank uniform. He asked in surprise, I am Mu Wan Chang's best friend. She showed me your photo yesterday. May I ask what business you want to transact? Let me remind you, we are a high end international bank. We only handle transactions of 1 billion or more. If it's a small transaction of a few hundred or a few thousand yuan, please go to another bank. Xin Shi Yu said with disdain to Chen Ping. This bastard targeted his own best friend, Mu Wan Chang, as soon as he was released from prison. He even used dark magic to control Wan Cheng's grandfather and force Wan Cheng to marry him, wanting to gain both wealth and a wife. In order to make things difficult for Qin Ping, she deliberately said that their bank only handles transactions of over 1 billion. Sure enough, after hearing Qin Shi Yu's words, Qin Ping was stunned. Isn't it possible for Rui Shi International Bank to handle transactions below 1 million? When did it become 1 billion? Chen Ping and asked with a puzzled expression. He had already checked online on his way here, and Ruaishir International Bank only handles large transactions of over 1 million, there is no rule that transactions below 1 billion cannot be processed. I said transactions below 1 billion cannot be processed, why are you asking so many questions? You act as if you have 1 million, if you don't have money, get out and don't hinder others from doing their transactions. Xin Shi Yu deliberately said, not in a good mood, to Chen Ping and. Fine, since only transactions above 1 billion can be processed, then give me 1 billion in cash. Chen Ping and said helplessly. His master had told him before that although the money in Ruaishir International Bank was only one tenth, this one tenth was still worth hundreds of billions. He originally only wanted to withdraw around 1 million, but after hearing Qin Shi Yu's words, he had no choice but to withdraw 1 billion. You want to withdraw 1 billion? Where's your card? Qin Shi Yu looked at Chen Ping and in surprise. I don't have a card. Use this ring to withdraw the money. Chen Ping and took off the Zhang Long ring on his hand and handed it to Qin Shi Yu. His master had told him that as long as he brought the Zhang Long ring to the bank, the bank staff would naturally take him to the safe deposit vault where the Zhang Long temple's assets were stored, and then use the second golden needle and the password on it to open the door of the safe deposit vault. But Qin Shi Yu, a newcomer who had just arrived at Ruaishir Bank, didn't understand any of this. She saw Chen Ping and taking out a black and ugly ring and saying that he wanted to withdraw 1 billion in funds, and she was so angry that her face turned green. Chen, are you playing with me? Get out, or I'll call security to kick you out. Xin Shi Yu was so angry that she forgot that there was a tempered glass between them, and she angrily threw Chen Ping and Zhang Long ring back at him. As a result, the Zhang Long ring bounced off the glass and hit the manager who had just come out of the office. The middle-aged manager, dressed in a suit and with a big back-combed hairstyle, instinctively caught the Zhang Long ring that was flying towards his face. Zhang. Long ring? Just as the manager was about to curse, he noticed that the ring in his hand looked familiar. After staring at it for a while, he muttered to himself in shock. When he took over as manager, his predecessor had specifically mentioned the Zhang Long ring. This Zhang Long ring could open the door of the highest security level safe deposit vault in the top 10 banks in the world. The person who possessed the Zhang Long ring was an invisible billionaire with assets exceeding trillions. 
And now, the Zhang Long ring had actually appeared. Whose ring is this? The manager asked the tellers excitedly. Manager, this ring belongs to him. This bastard actually came here causing trouble, saying that he wants to withdraw 1 billion in cash using this broken ring. I'm going to call security to kick him out. Xin Shi Yu pointed at Chen Pingin and said angrily to the manager, then picked up the phone to call security to kick Chen Pingin out. You bastard, this is our bank's most esteemed customer, and you dare to be so rude. I'll deal with you later. After the manager finished speaking, he hurriedly ran out to receive Chen Pingin. This scene left Qin Shi Yu confused. The most esteemed customer? Chapter 11, The Assets of the Zan Long Temple Sir, Please Follow Me. The manager came to Chen Pingin and humbly invited him into his office. This scene not only shocked Qin Shi Yu and the other staff members, but also all the customers in the hall. To know that Rue Shur International Bank has received too many wealthy clients, which has made the bank's employees extremely arrogant. Many people in line have handled transactions of more than 10 million, but have never been personally received by the manager. Who is this country bumpkin that can make the manager personally come out to receive him? The manager has no idea how much psychological impact his actions have on others. After inviting Chen Pingin into the office, he immediately took out the best tea to make tea for Chen Pingin. Sir, I am Shen Jiliang, the general manager of Rue Shur International Bank's Longcheng branch. I am pleased to serve you. May I ask how to address you, sir? The manager introduced himself first, and then dared to ask Chen Pingin's name. Chen Pingin, I came here today to transfer the funds of the Zhanglong Palace to my personal account in your bank. I wonder if it is possible. Chen Pingin asked after taking a sip of tea. Sir, as long as you have the Zhanglong ring and the password to open the safe where the assets are stored, you can arrange the funds of the Zhanglong Palace however you like. How about I take you to the safe to have a look? The manager's intention was clear, to take Chen Pingin to the safe rented by the Zhanglong Palace. As long as they verify that the Zhanglong ring is genuine and the password is correct, Chen Pingin can freely allocate the funds inside. This was agreed upon when the Zhanglong Palace deposited the funds into their bank safe. Hmm, take me to the safe to have a look. Chen Pingin nodded, and the manager didn't waste any words. He operated the computer in the office, and a door suddenly opened on the wall behind them, revealing a passage leading to the basement. Inside, there were densely intertwined infrared beams. Triggering any of the infrared beams would activate the mechanisms and alarm devices inside. After turning off the infrared beams, the manager led Chen Pingin inside and arrived at an elevator entrance. Mr. Chen, the safe is 99 meters deep underground. Let's take the elevator down. After coming out of the elevator, the two arrived in an underground world full of a sense of technology. There were rows of doors in front of them, each made of the most advanced alloy materials. The manager brought Chen Pingin to the door in the middle. Chen Pingin placed the Zhanglong ring in the small groove in the middle of the door, and a virtual projection appeared on the alloy door, allowing Chen Pingin to enter the password. Chen Pingin quickly entered the password he obtained from the golden needle last night. The tightly closed high-tech alloy door silently opened, and a strong golden light shone out from inside. When the two squinted to see the scene inside clearly, they were both stunned by the sight. It was a space of about 50 to 60 square meters, divided into three areas, the gold area, the cash area, and the antique area. The dazzling golden light was reflected from the pile of gold in the middle under the illumination of the lights. After getting used to the golden light, Chen Pingin led the manager inside. Chen Pingin first checked the gold area. The gold had been cast into bricks the size of bricks and stacked into the shape of five pyramids. Each gold brick was marked with its weight, and the total value of the five pyramid-shaped gold was 100 billion US dollars. The area on the right was the cash area, with US dollars, euros, pounds, and of course, RMB. The total value of these cash combined was also 100 billion US dollars. The leftmost area contained various priceless antiques, calligraphy and paintings, and valuable watches. The prices of these items fluctuated and could not be calculated temporarily, but Chen Pingin estimated that the value of these items would not be less than 100 billion US dollars. It turned out that the master said that there is only 100 billion in cash stored here by the Zhanglong Palace, and the golden antiques have not been included yet. If the golden antiques are also included, it would be at least 300 billion US dollars. And this is only one tenth of the wealth of the Zhanglong Palace which means that the Zhanglong Palace probably has about 30 trillion US dollars in assets, this is truly a wealth that can rival a country. Chen Pingin was shocked, his mouth wide open, and his heart unable to calm down for a long time. Mr. Chen, all of Zhanglong Hall's assets are here. Do you plan to withdraw cash? The manager, recovering from the shock, walked to Chen Pingin's side and humbly asked, Open an account for me and deposit this 100 billion US dollars. 
As for the gold and antiques, let's leave them for now, Chen Pingan said to manager Shen while looking at the antiques and calligraphy. He estimated that at least several large boxes would be needed to hold 1 billion in cash. After thinking about it, he decided to give up on the idea of withdrawing cash. All right, Mr. Chen, I will have someone move this cash to our bank's vault and open an account for you. The manager respectfully said, and after getting Chen Pingan's approval, he immediately called someone to move the 100 billion US dollars in cash. Previously, Zhang Hall had only rented their vault to store these funds, and they had no authority to allocate them. Now that Chen Pingan wants to open an account and deposit this 100 billion US dollars in their bank, they will be able to allocate this cash as they please in the future. This is definitely a good thing for their bank. When the staff arrived at the underground vault, they were shocked to see the mountains of cash and gold piled up inside. After moving the cash and counting it carefully, the manager invited Chen Pingan back to the first floor and personally opened an account for him in his office, using Chen Pingan's ID card. Mr. Chen, your account has been opened. This is the supreme black card issued by our Rue Sure Bank in Union Pay. In addition to unlimited credit limit, our Rue Sure Bank has partnerships with all banks worldwide, and cardholders can enjoy benefits such as free cash withdrawals at any bank in the world. Manager Shin handed Chen Pingan a black card and introduced the benefits of this card. Hmm, not bad. Then I'll go back first. Chen Pingan nodded after receiving the black card and left. The manager personally escorted Chen Pingan to the door. Qin Shiyu, who was helping a customer with their business, saw the manager escorting Chen Pingan out and immediately paused the transaction, running to a secluded corner to call Mu Wancheng. Orange, I just saw your devil of a husband come to our bank for business, and after our general manager met him, he respectfully invited him into his office for a personal reception. Qin Shiyu told Mu Wancheng about Chen Pingan being personally received by their bank's general manager. In Chapter 12, You're Not Worthy of My Daughter, Chen Pingan received a call from Mu's grandfather asking him to come back for lunch, so he could only return the imitation earrings to Mu Wancheng in the afternoon. When Chen Pingan returned to the Mu family, he found Mu Wancheng, who was dressed casually and looked cute, standing at the door waiting for him. Stop right there, Chen, where have you been all morning? Seeing Chen Pingan walk past her without even looking at her, Mu Wancheng was so angry that her nose almost twisted. She stopped Chen Pingan and questioned him. Just now, Xin Shiyu called her and said she saw Chen Pingan go to the bank, and even received a personal reception from the general manager of Rue Shur International Bank. As far as she knew, the people at Rue Shur International Bank were all arrogant, and even for a transaction of 1 billion, the general manager would not personally receive anyone. How could he personally receive Chen Pingan, a poor guy who had just been released from prison? But Qin Shiyu seemed sincere, and it didn't seem like she was joking. Driven by curiosity, she stood at the door and stopped Chen Pingan. Why should I tell you? Looking at Mu Wancheng, who stopped him inexplicably, Chen Pingan asked with a strange expression on his face. Just because. Because we're married. I'm your wife. Isn't that reason enough? In her desperation, Mu Wancheng brought up the fact that they were legally married. After answering, she felt proud in her heart. It is only natural for a wife to ask about her husband's whereabouts. What reason do you have not to tell me? Oomph. We are just a couple in name only. If you want to know my whereabouts, after we consummate our marriage tonight, I will tell you. How about that? Chen Ping and counterattacked Mu Wancheng. You. Mu Wancheng was completely speechless after being counterattacked by Chen Ping, but she stubbornly opened her arms and refused to let Chen Ping pass. At this moment, Wu Mama walked towards them and said to Chen Ping, Young Master, the eldest young master instructed you to go to his study after you come back. Wu Mama finished speaking and turned around to lead the way. Now Mu Wancheng could only unwillingly step aside. Chen Pingan grinned at Mu Wancheng, wearing a victorious smile, and left. Seeing Chen Pingan's smug smile, Mu Wancheng became angry, but she was helpless and could only stomp her feet in place. Soon, Wu Mama brought Chen Pingan to a simple and spacious study. Mu Jiannan, with a gloomy face, stood by the window with his back to the door, looking outside. As soon as Chen Pingan entered the study, Wu Mama closed the study door from the outside. I wonder what my father-in-law wants to see me for. Chen Pingan took the initiative to ask. Chen Pingan, eight years ago, you worked at the Jiangzhou People's Hospital as a chief physician, earning a monthly salary of 30,000 yuan. However, you donated two-thirds of your income every month to support impoverished students. You even appeared on TV and in newspapers, becoming a great philanthropist in everyone's eyes. But five years ago, it was exposed that you committed crimes against seven female college students whom you were supporting. You were sentenced to 10 years in prison, your medical license was revoked, and your fiancé broke up with you. Due to your good behavior in prison, you were released early the day before yesterday. I wonder if there is anything missing from this information. 
Mu Jianan turned around and coldly recounted Chen Pingyan's past. That's right, you've investigated thoroughly. I don't know what Mr. Mu wants to express? Chen Pingyan calmly nodded and admitted, without explaining the fact that he was wrongly imprisoned. He even changed his address from father-in-law to Mr. Mu. Since they didn't give him a good face, why should he try to please them? After all, they were just a couple in name only for three months. I am grateful for saving my father, and you can name your price. But my daughter is not worthy of a demon like you who has been to prison. I don't know what method you used to make my father obedient to you, but I advise you not to have any delusions about my daughter. You can't bear the anger of our Mu family. Mu Jianan, seeing that Qin Pingan did not deny the information he found, placed a blank check on the table and pushed it towards Qin Pingan. He allowed Qin Pingan to fill in the amount and issued a stern warning. I have no feelings for your daughter at all. It was your father who forced me to marry her. After three months, when the agreement between me and your father expires, I will naturally divorce her and leave. Chen Pingan reiterated his position. If Mr. Mu has nothing else, I will leave. After saying that, Chen Pingan was about to turn around and leave. After eating, he still had to go to a jewelry store in the afternoon to make a pair of gold earrings for Mu Wancheng. He didn't have time to be entangled in these boring matters with Mu Jiannan. Stop. You used witchcraft to control my father, making him obedient to you. You pretended to be forced to marry my daughter for three months. During these three months, you will impregnate my daughter, and when there is a child, she will not agree to divorce you. Then you will benefit both financially and personally. I, Mu, have eaten more salt than you have eaten rice. Do you think I can't see through your tricks? If you know what's good for you, take the money and leave quickly. Otherwise, don't blame me for being rude to you. At that time, you won't get a single penny of benefit. Mu Jiannan thought he had seen through Chen Pingan's conspiracy and stopped him at the door, coldly exposing Chen Pingan's plot. Puchi. Chen Pingan was left speechless by the other party's words. He had now inherited the trillions of dollars in assets from the funeral hall, and there were also 100 billion dollars in his black card. In his eyes, the Mu family's assets were really not worth much. Moreover, if he was so greedy for money and willing to do anything for it, he wouldn't have donated most of his income to charity and supported impoverished students. His selfless dedication had only resulted in heartless betrayal, which made him see the true nature of the world and made him become disillusioned with women. If I asked for all of the Mu family's assets, would you give them to me? Xin Pingin knew that he couldn't reason with someone who was so self-righteous, so he had to find another way to shut the other person up. You're asking for death. Mu Jiannan was furious. His eyes revealed a strong killing intent towards Qin Pingin. Last night, he had ordered an investigation into Qin Pingin's background, and this morning he received the results. After looking at Qin Pingin's previous information, he, like everyone else, believed that Qin Pingin was a demon in human form. This demon was released from prison and came to their Mu family, surely because of the fame of his daughter, Longqing's four beauties, and he had set his sights on her. Now, listening to Qin Pingin's words, it seemed that his target was not only his daughter, Mu Wanshang, but also the entire Mu family. Chapter 13, In fact, I'm already married. If you can't bear it, then don't act tough in front of me, Chen Pingin said, ignoring his temporary father-in-law's incessant rambling, and left the study. During lunch, everyone in the Mu family was present, except for the angry father-in-law still in the study. My good son-in-law, come, come, sit next to your wife. I had someone make a pot of ten complete nourishing soup for you too, it simmered all morning, absolutely nourishing for the kidneys and invigorating for the qi. Seeing Chen Pingin arrive, old master Mu seated him next to Mu Wancheng. Last night, when he heard his granddaughter crying out in pain and bleeding, he thought the two of them had consummated their marriage, so he specially had someone make a pot of ten complete nourishing soup for them. Chen Pingin directly gulped down a bowl of the soup, a treatment he never received in prison. Mu Wancheng couldn't explain what happened last night in front of so many people, so she could only blush and drink her bowl of ten complete nourishing soup. After finishing a bowl of ten complete nourishing soup, Mu Wancheng almost had a nosebleed from being overly nourished. Not bad, how about another bowl for you? Old Master Mu's words frightened Mu Wancheng, as the previous bowl almost made her have a nosebleed, let alone another one. No need, grandfather, I'm already full. If there's nothing else, I'll go to the company. Mu Wancheng was scared and immediately found an excuse to leave. Stop, there's still your father's business at the company. Your task for these few days is to accompany Pingan and go out together, cultivate your relationship, and also let him familiarize himself with our Longcheng. Seeing his granddaughter trying to escape, old master Mu quickly stopped her and assigned her a task. Grandfather, I. Mu Wancheng was about to resist, but her mother, who was sitting next to her, held her back and shook her head at her. Old master Mu's health hadn't fully recovered yet, and they didn't dare to make him unhappy. 
Understood, I'll go get the car and take him out for a drive, is that okay? Mu Wancheng stomped her foot and left the dining room after speaking. Shi Yu, my grandfather is forcing me to go shopping with that demon. Please give me some advice. After leaving the dining room, Mu Wancheng immediately called her best friend for help. My lady, isn't it simple? That Lin Xiaofeng who has been pursuing you relentlessly before is the provincial Sanda champion. We can use his help to teach Qin Pingan a lesson and force him to reveal his relationship with our bank's general manager. Qin Siyu's words made Mu Wancheng's eyes light up. This idea is good. Help me make an appointment with Lin Xiaofeng. We will meet at the boxing gym later and tell him that I have someone here who wants to challenge him. Mu Wancheng said with a mischievous smile to her best friend. You bullied me last night because you were stronger. Let's see how I deal with you today. Mu Wancheng, with an expectant mood, drove her Lamborghini out of the garage. Under the smiling gaze of Mr. Mu, Mu Wancheng drove the Lamborghini and left the Mu family with Qin Pingan. Half an hour later, the car stopped at the entrance of a boxing club. What are we doing here? Chen Pingan asked with a puzzled expression. I will introduce you to some friends here. They have arranged to meet here. You wait here after getting off the car, and I will go pick up my best friend. Okay. Chen Pingan didn't say anything and followed Mu Wancheng's arrangement. After getting off the car, Mu Wancheng drove away. Chen Pingan looked around and found a large jewelry store next to the boxing club. He was planning to have a pair of earrings made as a gift for Mu Wancheng, so he walked into the adjacent jewelry store. Half an hour later, he walked out of the jewelry store. The craftsmanship of the goldsmith in this jewelry store was excellent. Even Chen Pingan could hardly tell if the earrings were real or fake, and Mu Wancheng would definitely not be able to tell. At this moment, a BMW 3 Series stopped at the entrance of the jewelry store. A tall girl in a dress and a middle-aged woman got out of the car. When Chen Pingan saw the girl, he was stunned. He never expected to encounter his ex-girlfriend Lin Duor and her mother here. When they were in college, Lin Duor pursued him for a year before they got together. But after he was wrongly convicted and sentenced, Lin Duor immediately broke up with him. Lin Duor also saw Chen Pingan. She was first stunned, then a look of disgust appeared on her face. Chen Pingan, my daughter, and you have already broken up. Why did you come here to find her? Let me tell you, my daughter already has a new boyfriend, the general manager of the Emperor Hotel, Zhao Wujin. Two days later, Zhao Wujin, the old war god, will celebrate his birthday at the Emperor Hotel. My daughter's new boyfriend is in charge of the whole event and has the opportunity to talk to the old war god. You should think about the consequences if you continue to pester my daughter. Lin Duor and her mother thought that Chen Pingan, after being released from prison, had found out about their whereabouts in Longchang and came here specifically to reconcile with Duor. Duor's mother questioned Chen Pingan with disgust on her face. Chen Pingan frowned, but he was too lazy to explain. He directly raised the pair of gold earrings in his hand and said, Actually, I'm already married. I came here today to buy gold earrings for my wife. Put. If I'm not mistaken, you just got out of prison recently. Which ugly creature would choose to marry a scum like you who just got out of prison? Did you get married to a female prisoner in jail? Lin Duor laughed directly at Chen Pingan's words and sarcastically asked. This scum came out of prison and bought the gold earrings she liked. He said he didn't come to reconcile with her. She would never believe it even if she was beaten to death. Mom, let's go in and choose the jewelry to wear for the old war god's birthday banquet tomorrow. My fiancé is in charge of the event, and I can't let him lose face. Lin Duor said to Chen Pingan with disgust, not giving him a chance to explain. At this moment, a Lamborghini and a Ferrari stopped beside them, instantly attracting the attention of Lin Duor and her mother. Mu Wancheng and her best friend Qin Siyu got out of the Lamborghini. Mom, look, isn't that Mu Wancheng and Qin Siyu, two of the four beauties of Longcheng? I didn't expect to meet them here, the two beauties. Lin Duor exclaimed when she saw Mu Wancheng and her best friend Qin Siyu getting out of the car. What shocked them even more was that after Mu Wancheng got out of the car, she walked towards them and then held Qin Pingan's hand, walking towards the Ferrari. Lin Xiao, let me introduce you. This is my newlywed husband, Qin Pingan. He's the one who wants to challenge you. Looking at Lin Xiaofeng getting out of the Ferrari, Mu Wancheng's face showed a sweet smile as she introduced Chen Pingan to him. This was her plan, to show affection in front of Lin Xiaofeng, who liked her, and provoke the current provincial Sanda champion, making Lin Xiaofeng angry and teach Chen Pingan a lesson. Anyway, neither of them were good people, so it would be most exciting to see them fight each other. As soon as she said this, Chen Pingan was stunned. When did he ever say he wanted to challenge this man in front of him? The most shocked were Lin Duor and her mother standing beside them. Did this useless person who had just been released from prison really get married? And he married Mu Wancheng, one of the four beauties of Longchang? How was this possible? 
But when Mu Wancheng introduced Qin Pingin just now, they heard it clearly, and the fact was right in front of them, forcing them to believe it. Chapter 14, Only the Brave Dare to Challenge Lin Xiao As soon as Lin Xiaofeng, who had just gotten out of the car, heard Mu Wancheng's introduction, his face turned green. You've already become a married woman, so why did you invite me out and embarrass me by showing affection in front of me? Thinking of this, Lin Xiaofeng glared fiercely at Chen Pingin and Mu Wancheng, then immediately got back into the car and planned to leave. Lin Xiaofeng's actions seemed to be expected by Mu Wancheng. She calmly signaled to her best friend Qin Shiyu behind her, and Qin Shiyu went forward and sat in the passenger seat next to Lin Xiaofeng. Lin Xiao, don't be in such a hurry to leave. Oomph, if I don't leave, do I have to stay here and watch them show affection? Lin Xiaofeng's face twisted with anger. Lin Xiao, you misunderstood. Although Orange has registered, it was her grandfather who forced her to do it. After her grandfather was saved by Qin Pingin, he insisted on forcing her to marry him. She had no choice but to agree, but nothing happened between them. Today, we invited you out because we wanted you to help teach the Toto lesson and make him realize the difficulty in divorce Orange. Qin Shiyu quickly explained the relationship between Mu Wancheng and Chen Pingin to Lin Xiaofeng. Is that true? Qin Shiyu's words made Lin Xiaofeng suspicious. I'm not lying to you. Just look at that toad's hairstyle. You can tell at a glance that he just got out of prison. Do you think Orange would be interested in a man who has been in jail? Qin Shiyu pointed at Chen Pingin through the car window and asked Lin Xiaofeng in return. That's what I said. This guy's appearance clearly shows that he just got out of prison. Orange is one of the four beauties of Longcheng. How could she be interested in someone like him? If I help Orange teach this guy a lesson, will she agree to be with me after the divorce? Lin Xiaofeng asked a very important question. He had cut off contact with those questionable women in order to pursue Mu Wancheng, but after two months, there had been no progress, which made him very frustrated. That depends on your performance. Qin Shiyu said calmly, Okay, leave this guy to me. I guarantee that Orange will be satisfied after the divorce. After understanding the whole situation, Lin Xiaofeng's previous anger disappeared, and he got out of the car again. With a cold smile, he walked up to Qin Pingin. Chen Pingin, right? Didn't you say you wanted to challenge me? Let's meet in the ring. Without waiting for Chen Pingin to explain, Lin Xiaofeng, accompanied by his entourage, walked into the boxing club. Seeing Lin Xiaofeng's appearance, Mu Wanchang turned to Chen Pingin. I, Mu Wanchang, don't beat around the bush. I like a strong and upright man. If you want to be with me, then help me teach him a lesson. If you don't even have the courage to teach Lin Xiaofeng a lesson, I advise you to divorce me early, otherwise, in the future, there will be many pursuers of mine who will trouble you. Mu Wancheng whispered in Chen Pingin's ear without hiding her conspiracy at all. Chen Pingin could have avoided falling for Mu Wancheng's trick in challenging Lin Xiaofeng. But he noticed his ex-girlfriend Lin Duor standing at the door of the jewelry store, and he changed his mind. Isn't he just Lin Xiaofeng? I'll teach him a lesson. As for the divorce, I've already signed the agreement with your grandfather. I will naturally divorce in three months. Let's go in so that Lin Xiaofeng doesn't have to wait too long. Chen Pingin said and walked into the boxing club. Yes, it worked. Muan Orange said excitedly to her best friend. She thought it would take a lot of effort to convince Chen Pingin to challenge Lin Xiaofeng, but she didn't expect him to refuse. It's done. Qin Shiyu also exclaimed in surprise, high-fiving Muan Orange. Lin Xiaofeng is the provincial Sanda champion, and he will definitely beat Chen Pingin to a pulp when he gets on the ring. The two of them followed Chen Pingin excitedly into the boxing club. Lin Duer, who was not far away, saw the scene and thought that Muan Orange had just kissed Chen Pingin's cheek in public, making her face turn red. She had just mocked him for marrying an ugly or a female prisoner, and now Muan Orange, one of the four beauties of Longcheng, was kissing Chen Pingin in public. Her face was slapped. Mom, do you think Muan Orange has gone blind? How can she, one of the four beauties of Longcheng, choose Chen Pingin, this waist? After Chen Pingin and the others entered the boxing club, Lin Duor turned to her mother with a puzzled look. Well, there's nothing strange about it. I heard that Mr. Mu fell seriously ill a few days ago, so the Mu family must have found a son-in-law to bring good luck to Mr. Mu. Most people are reluctant to do such things, so it's normal for this waste to get a big advantage. Lin's mother thought for a moment and said. Besides this reason, she couldn't think of why Mu Wan Orange, the newly risen wealthy family's daughter, would marry this waste who had just been released from prison. Mom, you're right. This waste must have married into the Mu family to bring good luck to Mr. Mu. Otherwise, with his conditions, how could Mu Wan Orange marry him? This waste is really lucky. After I attend the old war god's birthday banquet in a few days, maybe the Mu family will come to flatter me. By then, I'll let them know how capable I am. 
Let's go, let's go inside and choose the necklace to wear on the day of the old war god's birthday banquet. With the confidence that Chen Ping and married into the Mu family to bring good luck to Mr. Mu and married a beautiful wife like Mu on Orange, Lin Duor regained her confidence and pulled her mother into the jewelry store. By this time, Chen Ping and Lin Xiaofeng had already arrived at the ring in the boxing club. After taking off his coat, Lin Xiaofeng revealed his eight-pack abs and explosive muscles. Lin Xiaofeng's father is the chairman of the Longcheng Emperor Hotel, a true scion of a wealthy family. In addition, he is the provincial Sanda champion. Lin Xiaofeng can be said to be one of the most talked about young men in Longcheng. Almost all the people who came to the boxing club to play were fans of Lin Xiaofeng. When Lin Xiaofeng stepped onto the ring, he immediately attracted the attention of everyone in the boxing club. Damn, isn't that our provincial Sanda champion Lin Xiaofeng? Who is the person confronting him? He dares to challenge the champion, is he looking for death? I think I saw Mu Wan Orange and Qin Shiyu, two of the four beauties of Longcheng. I heard that Lin Xiaofeng has been pursuing Mu Wan Orange for two months. Could it be that the guy on the ring is also pursuing Mu Wan Orange and was pulled onto the ring by Lin Xiaofeng for a one-on-one -on -one fight? In Longcheng, anyone who dares to compete with Lin Xiaofeng for a woman is a hero. Although I admire his courage, I still want to say that this guy is simply looking for death. More and more people gathered around the arena where Lin Xiaofeng and Chen Pingin were, many of them showing admiration towards Chen Pingin. Anyone who dared to confront Lin Xiaofeng on the arena was considered brave, but no one had high hopes for Chen Pingin. In the past, there had been countless warriors who stood on the arena to confront Lin Xiaofeng, but none of them ended well. Some were even left disabled. Everyone believed that Chen Pingin on the arena would be the next one to be disabled. Chapter 15 Not even worthy of scratching an itch kid, I admire your courage, but in the face of absolute strength, courage is worthless. If you kneel down and admit defeat now, you still have a chance. Otherwise, in a moment of blind punches and kicks, I can't guarantee that you'll be able to take care of yourself in the future. Alright, I'll give you three moves first, so that no one can say I'm bullying you. Lin Xiaofeng crossed his arms and looked at Chen Pingin with contempt. No need, you can use whatever skills you have later. I'll just stand here without moving. If you can make me take a step back, then I'll admit defeat. Chen Pingin raised his head and said something that made everyone think they misheard. Shi Yu, did you hear what this toad just said in front of Lin Xiaofeng? He actually said that he'll just stand there without moving, and if Lin Xiaofeng can make him take a step back, then he'll admit defeat? Mu Wanchang asked her best friend Qin Shi Yu uncertainly. That's what it seemed like. Qin Shi Yu stared with wide eyes at Chen Pingin on the arena and answered uncertainly. Lin Xiaofeng's fans pointed at Chen Pingin and discussed among themselves. This kid must be from out of town. Only someone who doesn't know that Lin Xiaofeng is the provincial champion in Sanda would dare to say such arrogant things. A fan asked in doubt. He's definitely from out of town. If he were a local from Longcheng, he wouldn't dare to say such things in front of the renowned Lin Xiaofeng. He'll be crying soon. He's so arrogant now, but he'll be tragic later. Everyone thought that Chen Pingin didn't know about Lin Xiaofeng's strength, which was why he dared to be so arrogant. They were all waiting to see Chen Pingin make a fool of himself. Kid, what did you just say? Can you say it again? Lin Xiaofeng on the stage was more surprised than anyone else, looking at Chen Pingin with a bewildered expression. Looking up and down at Chen Pingin, with his prison-style haircut and a strong physique, but not even close to being on the same level as him. This kid was just bluffing. Useless. In the face of absolute strength, everything else is futile. Lin Xiaofeng looked at Chen Pingin with a mocking gaze. I said I'll just stand in the middle of the arena. If you can make me take a step back, then I'll admit defeat. Did you hear it clearly this time? Chen Pingin repeated his words helplessly. He had the lifelong skills passed down by his master, and with the martial arts technique he obtained from the Zangling Hall last night, he wanted to test its power on someone. This Lin Xiaofeng happened to be the first trial stone for him. Not only did Lin Xiaofeng hear it clearly this time, but Mu Wanchun, Qin Shiyu, and all of Lin Xiaofeng's fans below the arena also heard it clearly. Their gazes towards Chen Pingin were all filled with mockery. Since you're looking for death, I'll grant your wish. Seeing Chen Pingin's pretense of calmness, Lin Xiaofeng no longer held back. He quickly rushed towards Chen Pingin and threw a simple and effective straight punch towards his face. He wanted to break Chen Pingin's nose bone with one punch. Seeing Lin Xiaofeng's fist coming towards his face, Chen Pingin not only didn't show any panic, but instead shook his head and disappointment appeared on his face. Just now, he vaguely heard people discussing how this Lin Xiaofeng was the provincial champion in Sanda. He thought he could use this opportunity to test his skills against someone with decent strength, but seeing that the opponent's punch was so weak, he felt disappointed. What provincial Sanda champion, he is not qualified to be his trial stone. Even if he stands still and lets the other person hit him, 
the opponent's strength is not enough to even tickle him. Lin Xiaofeng, who had already thrown a punch, saw Qin Ping and shaking his head at him, looking down on him. He was angry, and the punch that was already on its way became even stronger. Just when Lin Xiaofeng thought that one punch could break Qin Ping's nasal bone and make him beg for mercy, Qin Ping slightly tilted his head and dodged the punch. This scene not only stunned Lin Xiaofeng on the stage, but also surprised the fans under the stage. This kid is lucky, he actually managed to dodge Lin Xiaofeng's fierce punch. Come again. Seeing that the first punch missed, Lin Xiaofeng didn't give up. He threw another side punch towards Chen Pingan's face. In his opinion, the world of martial arts is only about speed. Although Chen Pingan had just dodged his first straight punch, this was a combination of punches. If one punch missed, the second punch would immediately follow, relentlessly, without giving the opponent any chance to catch their breath. Lin Xiaofeng's thinking was not wrong, but he underestimated Chen Pingan's strength, thinking that Chen Pingan was just an ordinary person. However, at this moment, in Chen Pingan's mind, Lin Xiaofeng didn't even have the qualification to be his trial stone. He didn't want to waste time on Lin Xiaofeng. When Lin Xiaofeng threw the second punch, Chen Pingan kicked him in the chest. The old war god Zhao Wujin had learned a set of ordinary martial arts from Chen Pingan's master when he was young, which made him invincible on the battlefield and earned him the title of the northern war god. It can be imagined how powerful Chen Pingan's master was. Now, Chen Pingan has obtained his master's lifelong power. Even if he has only absorbed half of it, he is not someone an ordinary master can compare to. Ah, Lin Xiaofeng was kicked off the platform by Qin Pingan, crashing onto a chair and letting out a miserable scream. The pain left him dizzy and seeing stars. This was only the result of Qin Pingan showing mercy and using only a fraction of his strength. Otherwise, Lin Xiaofeng would have met the king of hell right away. What? Lin Xiaofeng lost? He was kicked off the platform by this unknown kid? That's impossible. Lin Xiaofeng is the provincial champion in Sanda, undefeated among his peers. How could he lose to this unknown kid in front of us? After Lin Xiaofeng was kicked off the platform by Qin Pingan, everyone in the audience who had come to watch the show stood up in disbelief, looking at Qin Pingan on the platform with eyes filled with astonishment. Mu Wanchang and Lin Xiyu had big question marks on their faces. They had intended to use Lin Xiaofeng, the provincial Sanda champion, to teach Qin Pingan a lesson, but the result was completely unexpected. Chen Pingan had just started, and he had already kicked Lin Xiaofeng off the platform with one kick, and it seemed like he was seriously injured. This frightened Mu Wancheng and Qin Shiyu. They knew that Lin Xiaofeng's identity was not as simple as being the son of the chairman of the Emperor Hotel. Lin Xiaofeng's grandfather was the king of the underground forces, Wu Xingjie, one of the three terrifying demons in the southwest. It was said that Wu Xingjie was very protective and doted on his grandson, Lin Xiaofeng. Lin Xiaofeng learned Sanda from his grandfather, Wu Xingjie. If anything were to happen to Lin Xiaofeng, Wu Xingjie would definitely be furious, and the entire Southwest would tremble. Lin Xiaofeng, are you okay? Thinking of the serious consequences, Mu Wancheng and Qin Shiyu hurriedly went forward to support Lin Xiaofeng, who was already spitting blood, and nervously asked. Chapter 16, Jumping into the Yellow River Won't Wash It Clean. Ridiculous. I am the provincial Sanda champion, with a strong physical fitness. How could anything happen to me? Do I look like something is wrong with me? I was just careless and didn't dodge, so I was sneak attacked and kicked by this kid. It's nothing at all. After being helped up by Mu Wancheng and Qin Shiyu, Lin Xiaofeng looked at the two beautiful women and pretended to be calm. Although his whole body was in pain, he had to endure it for the sake of his face. But, your mouth and nose are bleeding a lot. It looks terrifying. Qin Shiyu stuttered, pointing at Lin Xiaofeng's mouth. Mu Wancheng also nodded indicating that Lin Xiaofeng looked terrifying at the moment. Is that so? Maybe I ate too much for lunch today. As you know, as an athlete, especially a Sanda athlete, we pay attention to our diet. We usually eat more nutritious food, and if we overdo it, our mouth and nose will bleed. It's a normal phenomenon. In order not to lose face in front of the beauties, Lin Xiaofeng forced himself to explain, despite the pain. Lin Xiaofeng, that kid is about to run away. Just at that moment, the follower who had come with Lin Xiaofeng ran over and reminded him. Lin Xiaofeng looked up and saw that Chen Pingan had already walked down from the platform and was heading towards the exit. Chen Pingan had originally agreed to Mu Wanching's challenge to Lin Xiaofeng for two reasons, to show off in front of his ex-girlfriend, Lin Duer, and because he hadn't formally fought anyone after receiving his master's inheritance and the phoenix control technique. He wanted to find someone to practice with. However, Lin Xiaofeng's strength was too low, which disappointed him. Now that he had defeated Lin Xiaofeng, there was no need for him to stay here. He quickly returned to the Mu family and secretly put the pair of imitation earrings on Mu Wancheng's bed and returned them to her. 
Lin Xiaofeng saw that Qin Pingan was about to leave, so he endured the pain and ran over to stop him. Kid, I was just careless and got sneak attacked by you. We haven't really determined the winner yet, and you want to leave? There's no way. Lin Xiaofeng stopped Qin Pingan and said with a resentful face, What do you want? Seeing that Lin Xiaofeng blocked his way, Qin Pingan frowned. It's simple, let's go up to the ring and have a serious fight. This time, I won't be careless. Lin Xiaofeng turned his head and pointed to the ring, saying to Qin Pingan. After hearing this, Qin Pingan shook his head and said, Even if we go up to the ring again, you are not my opponent. I don't think it's necessary. After finishing his words, Qin Pingan wanted to bypass the other person and leave the boxing club. Oomph. You think you can just leave after ambushing me? There's no way. If I don't teach you a lesson today, how can I continue to survive in Longcheng? Let's fight. Seeing that Qin Pingan clearly didn't take him seriously, and with two beautiful women and so many local fans watching behind him, if he let Qin Pingan go like this, he wouldn't be able to survive in Longcheng anymore. After speaking, regardless of whether Qin Pingan agreed or not, he directly punched towards Qin Pingan's heart. Seeing that the other party was actually aiming for his heart, Qin Pingan's face changed drastically. If an ordinary person was hit by this punch, their heart would definitely rupture and they would die on the spot. It was clear that the other party wanted to take his life. Thinking of this, Qin Pingan also became angry. Facing someone who couldn't accept defeat, Qin Pingan didn't need to show mercy anymore. He directly reached out and grabbed the fist that was coming towards him and twisted it lightly. Crack sound. Ah, my hand. You, dare to break my hand? The sound of bone fracture and Lin Xiaofeng's screams entered the ears of everyone present at the same time, shocking them once again. Chen Pingan, stop it quickly. Lin Xiaofeng's grandfather is Wu Xingjie, one of the three terrifying demons of the underground forces in the southwest. You're courting death. Seeing that Chen Pingan actually broke Lin Xiaofeng's hand, Mu Wanqing's face turned pale with shock. She hurriedly ran forward and pulled Chen Pingan away. I don't care about any terrifying demons or terrifying kings. Since he wants my life, even if the emperor himself comes today, I will still defeat him. After finishing his words, Chen Pingan exerted a little more force, causing Lin Xiaofeng to kneel on the ground in pain, and another miserable scream came from his mouth. Ah, my hand, it hurts so much. Lin Xiaofeng's right hand was completely useless. Even if it could be treated, he would never be able to continue boxing again. This was absolutely the most fatal blow to a boxer. At this moment, Chen Pingan finally let go of Lin Xiaofeng's hand. Lin Xiaofeng lay on the ground, screaming in pain and rolling around. The miserable screams made everyone's hair stand on end. You. You're finished, Qin Pingan, you're really finished this time. Seeing that Lin Xiaofeng's hand was disabled by Qin Pingan, Mu Wanqing kept stepping back in fear. If it wasn't for Qin Shiyu supporting her in time, she would have probably fallen to the ground. With the protective nature of the terrifying demon King Wu Xingjie, Qin Pingan was undoubtedly doomed this time. Even the emperor himself couldn't save him, and it would also bring disaster to their Mu family. Now that she and Chen Pingan were registered for marriage, Chen Pingan was her nominal husband, and this whole thing was caused by her. If it were to be investigated, not only would Chen Pingan have no place to be buried, but their Mu family would also suffer the revenge of the terrifying demon king. Although their Mu family was a newly rising prominent family in Longcheng, in the eyes of the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie, they were nothing. When the people in the boxing club heard Mu Wancheng say that Lin Xiaofeng was the grandson of Wu Xingjie, one of the three terrifying demons in the underground forces of the three southwestern provinces, they were all shocked. That is a real big demon king, a demon with blood on his hands. When some children cry in their homes, the elderly just have to say that if you cry again, the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie will come. The child immediately stops crying, scared not to cry again. It can be imagined that the terror of Wu Xingjie has deeply rooted in people's hearts. Some timid people immediately turn around and leave quietly, so as not to get into trouble later. Those who are brave and dare to stay and watch all look at Chen Pingan with pity in their eyes. This kid is finished. He even dared to disable the precious grandson of the terrifying demon King Wu Xingjie. No one can save this kid. Mu Wancheng wanted to help Lin Xiaofeng, who was still rolling on the ground. Get out of here, we don't need your fake sympathy. This kid is obviously deliberately set up by you two bitches to deal with Lin Xiaofeng. Just wait for the revenge of the terrifying demon king. None of you can escape. Lin Xiaofeng's follower pushed Mu Wancheng away, took photos of the three with his phone, and sent Lin Xiaofeng to the hospital. From his words, it can be inferred that Chen Pingan was deliberately brought by Mu Wancheng and Qin Shiyu to deal with Lin Xiaofeng. This scared Mu Wancheng and Qin Shiyu. They clearly wanted Lin Xiaofeng to teach Chen Pingan a lesson. Now it is Lin Xiaofeng who got injured, and they can't wash their hands of it. Chapter 17, The Demon King Apologizes Orange, 
What should we do now? Qin Shiyu asked anxiously. What else can we do? Let's go home first and see if my grandfather can handle this matter and then make a plan. Mu Wancheng forced herself to calm down and said, pulling Qin Shiyu away from the boxing club. Mu Wancheng's sports car can only accommodate two people, so Chen Pingin can only take a taxi back. After Lin Xiaofeng's followers sent him to the orthopedic hospital, he immediately called the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie, one of the three demon kings of the underground forces in the southwest. Longcheng Orthopedic Hospital, in Ada's ward. Good disciple, who dares to be so bold as to disable your hand? An old man dressed in tang suit, holding a dragon-headed cane, looked at Ada on the hospital bed with a shocked expression. He is the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie, one of the three demon kings of the underground forces in the southwest. His two disciples, Ada and Air, are both guards by the side of the old war god Zhao Wujin. As their master, he also benefits from their status and sits on the throne of the head of the underground forces in the province. No one dares to provoke him. Master, the one who injured me is a young man named Qin Pingin. This person not only has strong martial arts skills, but also has a mysterious identity. The old war god specially held a birthday banquet in Longcheng to entertain him. This is the surveillance video of my fight with him. Master, take a look. If you encounter this person, do not conflict with him, otherwise there may be a disaster. Ada handed his phone to his master Wu Xingjie, and there was a surveillance video of his fight with Chen Pingin in the phone. What? The old war god is holding a birthday banquet in Longchang because of a young man? Wu Xingjie hurriedly took the phone. When he saw Chen Pingin injuring Ada with a palm, he was shocked. Ada had already received his true teachings, but this young man named Chen Pingin easily injured Ada? I heard that the old war god said that this young man is the heir of the dragon burial ring. I checked the dragon burial ring and was shocked. The Dragon Burial Ring is a token of the ancient organization Dragon Burial Hall. According to historical records, from ancient times to the present, whether it is the first emperor unifying the six kingdoms or the queen ascending the throne, or the Qing soldiers entering the pass, there are always figures of the Dragon Burial Ring heirs. Ada's words made Wu Xingjie's eyes widen. The origin of this young man is so great that even the old war god wants to curry favor with him. He secretly warned himself that if he encounters this young man named Chen Pingin, he must avoid him. Even if he can't avoid him, he must not offend him and try to curry favor with him. At this moment, one of Wu Xingjie's subordinates rushed into the ward with a phone in a hurry. Master, something terrible has happened. Your grandson, Lin Xiaofeng, just had his right hand broken at the boxing club. He is currently being treated at the orthopedic hospital, one of his subordinates reported anxiously to Wu Xingjie. Who dares to bully even my grandson, Wu Xingjie? Take me there immediately. Wu Xingjie thundered in anger upon hearing his subordinate's words. Lin Xiaofeng was supposed to inherit his legacy, but now that his hand was broken, how could he continue the legacy? Someone dared to break his grandson's hand on his territory, this was a blatant provocation and humiliation to him. The attendant by young master Lin's sight said that he is not in life-threatening danger. He is currently undergoing surgery to reset the bones. It was done by the expert brought by the Mu family girl that young master Lin has been pursuing. Here is a photo of that person. The subordinate handed over the photo to Wu Xingjie as they left Ada's hospital room. Wu Xingjie's face turned dark as he took the phone. When he saw the photo of Qin Pingin, he paused for a moment. Why did he feel a bit familiar? What is this bastard's name? Wu Xingjie stopped and asked his subordinate behind him. Chan Pingin. The subordinate respectfully replied. Chan Pingin? Wu Xingjie exclaimed. The person who disabled Ada's hand was also named Chen Pingin. No wonder he looked so familiar. Wasn't he the successor of the burial dragon ring, whom even the old war god had to curry favor with? How did his grandson provoke this deity? It seemed like they were about to send him, an old man, away. I will go to the Mu family first. After Xiaofeng's bones are set, I will have him come to the Mu family immediately. Wu Xingjie left the hospital with an unpleasant expression, heading towards the Mu family. He wanted to stabilize the Mu family and that deity, Chen Pingin, first. He would have his subordinates inform the other party to apologize as soon as his grandson's bones were set. He hoped that the other party would spare both the Wu and Lin families, seeing their sincere and genuine apology. After receiving the notification from his grandfather after coming out of the operating room, Lin Xiaofeng thought that his grandfather had gone to the Mu family to teach Chen Pingin a lesson. He immediately followed behind and headed to the Mu family. He wanted Chen Pingin to kneel before him and break his own limbs to resolve his hatred. At this moment, Mu Wancheng returned to the Mu family. What? That demon actually broke the hand of the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie's grandson? He wants to destroy our entire Mu family. Mu Wancheng only learned about the incident at the boxing club after returning home. 
He and his wife were terrified. Although the Mu family had also risen to the ranks of the wealthy, they were nothing in front of the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie. If the demon king blamed their Mu family for this matter, their Mu family would be completely destroyed. Don't worry, I will take responsibility for my own actions and won't involve your Mu family. Chen Pingan had just returned to the Mu family and saw the panicked faces of the Mu family members. He spoke calmly, trying to calm them down. You scum demon, you have caused such a disaster for our Mu family and you dare to come back. Wu Ma, quickly bring a rope. Today, we must tie this demon and bring him to the Wu and Lin families to apologize, to appease the anger of the Wu and Lin families. The old master had returned to his hometown, and Mu Wancheng's mother-in-law became more unscrupulous towards Chen Pingan. Something terrible has happened. The terrifying demon king has brought many people and is killing at our doorstep. Just then, the steward ran back in a panic. What? The terrifying demon king has come so quickly? It's over. We're finished. Despair filled the faces of the Mu family members. The terrifying demon king, Wu Xingjie, had arrived so quickly. It was easy to imagine how angry he would be about Chen Ping and breaking Lin Xiaofeng's hand. What are you waiting for? Quickly tie up this demon and bring him out to face the terrifying demon king's punishment. Mu Jiannan immediately shouted at the servants. But as soon as he finished speaking, the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie, with a group of people, burst into their Mu family's hall. When he saw Chen Pingan in the crowd, Wu Xingjie hurriedly walked towards him with fear and trepidation. The faces of everyone in the Mu family showed expressions of fear, and their bodies involuntarily retreated. Just when everyone in the Mu family thought that Wu Xingjie was going to tear Chen Ping into pieces, Wu Xingjie made a move that astonished everyone present. The terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie, with fear and trepidation, came to Chen Pingan and knelt down with a thud. Chapter 18, The Most Humble Attitude Mr. Chen, I have already learned about the incident where my unworthy grandson Lin Xiaofeng offended you at the boxing club. It was my fault for not guiding my grandson properly. I apologize on his behalf and hope that you can forgive him for being young and ignorant. I promise that such a thing will not happen again in the future. At the same time, I thank Mr. Chen for teaching my unfilial grandson a lesson, letting him know that there are always people better than him and that one should not be too arrogant. Wu Xingjie knelt on the ground with a fearful expression, apologizing to Chen Pingan on behalf of his grandson Lin Xiaofeng, and portraying the incident of breaking Lin Xiaofeng's right hand as a lesson for him. This was the most humble attitude he could think of. It's better to be overly polite. Since he had already knelt down like this, the other party wouldn't cause trouble for both the Wu and Lin families, right? He had worked hard to establish the Wu family as one of the three major families in the southwest, relying on the relationship between his two disciples and the old war god guards. He couldn't let this incident destroy the Wu family. This scene dumbfounded everyone in the Mu family. What's going on? This doesn't make sense. Wasn't the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie here to settle the score with Chen Pingan and tear him to pieces? How did it turn into an apology to the scum demon? Could it be that this scum demon is even more demonic than the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie, causing Wu Xingjie to become like this when he saw him? Whether it was Mu Wanchun, Mu Wanchun's parents, Qin Shiyu, or the Mu family's servants, they were all stunned by this abnormal scene, thinking that they must be mistaken. Many people rubbed their eyes and looked again, only to find that the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie was still kneeling in front of Qin Pingan. The gazes of the crowd shifted from Wu Xingjie to Qin Pingan, and they discovered that Qin Pingan was just as dumbfounded as they were, standing there with a bewildered expression. At this moment, Qin Pingan was truly more confused than the people of the Mu family behind him, not understanding what had happened. Although he was fearless in the face of the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie, he had mentally prepared himself to fight the demon king. But now, this old man knelt down as soon as he entered the door, not only apologizing but also thanking him for educating his grandson. What kind of operation was this? Are you really Lin Xiaofeng's grandfather, one of the three terrifying demon kings of the underground forces in the southwest, Wu Xingjie? Chen Pingan asked uncertainly. This person in front of him was somewhat different from the legend. I am indeed Wu Xingjie. As for the title of terrifying demon king, it's just a joke among friends in the martial arts world. We small characters are nothing in front of Mr. Shun. Wu Xingjie answered humbly. Please stand up and speak. It feels strange to see you kneeling like this. Chen Pingan said as he helped Wu Xingjie up. Although he didn't understand what had happened, he clearly remembered the incident of him hitting the other party's grandson. Now, such an old man was kneeling in front of him, apologizing as if he were an oppressive demon. It made him feel uncomfortable. Mr. Chen, I am grateful for your magnanimity. Hearing Chen Pingan asking him to stand up, it meant that the other party had forgiven his grandson. 
Wu Xingjie breathed a sigh of relief and, leaning on his dragon-headed cane, stood up tremblingly and bowed to Chen Pingan again. Then he walked in front of Mu Wancheng and Mu Wancheng's parents. Mr. Mu, Mrs. Mu, my useless grandson has caused trouble for Miss Mu and the Mu family by not knowing what's good for him. I apologize on behalf of that boy and promise to discipline him strictly when we go back, and he will never bother Miss Mu again. Wu Xingjie bowed deeply to the Mu family. On the way here, he had already found out that Chen Pingan had registered marriage with Mu Wancheng yesterday. Chen Pingan is now the son-in-law of the Mu family. He had done all the proper etiquette in front of Chen's parents-in-law, so Chen had no reason to cause trouble for the Wu and Lin families. However, these actions of his fell into the eyes of the unsuspecting Mu family, frightening them. The terrifying demon Wu Xingjie not only did not cause trouble for the Mu family, but also apologized to them? This is too strange. Mr. Wu, no need to be polite. Our grandson has not caused any trouble for our Mu family. Mu Jiannan, Mu Wancheng's father, helped Wu Xingjie up and stuttered. Mr. Chen and the Mu family are reasonable people. I am extremely grateful. Wu Xingjie said sincerely. Just at this moment, Lin Xiaofeng, who had followed from the orthopedic hospital, also arrived. He had a cast on his right hand and rushed into the Mu family with resentment. He happened to see his beloved grandfather standing in front of the Mu family. The group of his grandfather's subordinates stood on both sides, forming a semi-encirclement towards the Mu family and Chen Pingan. He thought his grandfather was negotiating with the Mu family, asking them to hand over Chen Pingan for him to deal with. Grandfather, break all of Chen Pingan's limbs directly and let him taste the feeling of being worse than death. Lin Xiaofeng shouted loudly at his grandfather and rushed towards him. His words not only frightened the Mu family, but even his grandfather Wu Xingjie was also frightened. He realized that he had forgotten to tell this bastard to come and apologize to Mr. Chun. This bastard came in and shouted that he wanted to break Chen Pingan's limbs. He must have thought he was here to help him seek revenge. Wu Xingjie noticed that Chen Pingan's face turned dark, and his heart sank. He had to kneel down and beg for forgiveness from Mr. Chen, and this bastard ruined it with just one sentence. While Wu Xingjie was in panic, he was also furious at his ignorant grandson. You bastard, if you want to die, go die by yourself, don't involve others. Pa! When Lin Xiaofang approached his grandfather Wu Xingjie, Wu Xingjie slapped him directly in the face, leaving Lin Xiaofang dumbfounded. Chapter 19, Who Are You? Wu Xingjie's actions not only stunned Lin Xiaofang, but also Chen Pingan and the Mu family. Wasn't it said that the terrifying demon King Wu Xingjie not only protected his grandson, but also loved him very much? Why did he hit Lin Xiaofang? Grandfather, did you hit the wrong person? That's Chen Pingan. I'm your grandson Lin Xiaofang. This bastard broke my hand, look. Lin Xiaofang, with a red and swollen face, covered his face with his left hand and raised his right hand, which was wrapped in a cast, to show his grandfather. I haven't reached the point of hitting the wrong person yet. Today, I'm hitting you, you bastard. Mr. Chen is teaching you a lesson, and you still want to retaliate against him. Today, I will kill you, an ungrateful bastard. Wu Xingjie, seeing that Lin Xiaofeng still couldn't see the situation clearly, angrily raised his dragon-headed cane and struck it down. Grandfather, spare me. Lin Xiaofeng screamed as his grandfather beat him with the cane. Shut up, if you don't go and apologize to Mr. Chen and Miss Mu, I won't have a grandson like you in the future. Seeing that Lin Xiaofeng still didn't know where he went wrong, Wu Xingjie continued to hit him while reminding him, What? Grandfather, are you going senile? You actually made me apologize to that bastard Chen Pingin? Wu Xingjie's words dumbfounded Lin Xiaofeng, who asked incredulously. That bastard Chen Pingin had broken his hand, and his beloved grandfather not only refused to help him seek revenge, but also asked him to apologize to Chen Pingin. He even said that this was teaching him a lesson in gratitude. Should he be grateful to the person who crippled him? What kind of bullshit logic was this? Grandfather must be crazy. Even if he's not crazy, he must be old and senile. Maybe he doesn't even remember his own grandson. Thinking of this, Lin Xiaofeng dared not say anything more and immediately ran away. Faced with a grandfather who was already confused, if he didn't leave now, he wouldn't even know what would happen if he got beaten to death. Why are you running? Do you think you can escape if Mr. Chen doesn't forgive you? Come back quickly. You guys, go and catch him. If we can't make Mr. Chen and Miss Mu forgive us today, I'll kill him on the spot. Wu Xingjie didn't expect that Lin Xiaofang would rather run away than apologize to Chen Pingan and the Mu family. He was so angry that his liver hurt, and he immediately ordered his subordinates to catch Lin Xiaofang and bring him back. If they couldn't make Chen Pingan forgive them today, then all his efforts would have been in vain. He really regretted not clarifying things with this bastard before coming here. Mr. Wu, 
there's no need to catch him. Although he went too far at the boxing club, he has already received appropriate punishment. Let's just leave it at that. I won't hold it against him in the future. When he saw Lin Xiaofeng running away and Wu Xingjie wanting to send someone to catch him and make him apologize, Chen Pingin quickly stopped him. Upon hearing Chen Pingin's words, Wu Xingjie was overjoyed. The heavy stone in his heart finally fell, and he quickly turned around to thank Chen Pingin. Thank you for your generosity, Mr. Shun. In that case, to show my gratitude, I will host a dinner tonight at the Emperor Hotel for Mr. Chen and the Mu family. How about that? Wu Xingjie asked cautiously. There's no need for a dinner. I don't like these lively scenes. If there's nothing else, Mr. Wu, please leave. Chen Pingin declined Wu Xingjie's dinner invitation. Since Mr. Chen doesn't like lively scenes, if you ever need my help in the future, feel free to ask. I won't refuse. Upon hearing Chen Pingin's rejection of his dinner invitation, Wu Xingjie looked disappointed. But thinking about it, it was understandable. Even the legendary war god would need a special occasion to invite him. It wasn't normal for him to refuse. Today's goal had been achieved, and Wu Xingjie didn't dare to complain. After a few polite words, he hurriedly left the Mu family with his subordinates. Even after Wu Xingjie and his men left, the Mu family was still in shock and even forgot to see them off. After confirming that the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie had truly left with his people, Mu Wanchun, Mu Wanju, Mu Wanyu, and Qin Shi Yu walked up to Qin Pingin with strange expressions. Mr. Chen, do you have any special identity that you haven't told us about? Why is the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie, one of the three great demon kings of the southwest underground world, so afraid of you? You broke the hand of his beloved grandson Lin Xiaofeng, and he not only didn't dare to hold you responsible, but also knelt down to apologize to you in fear? Mu Wancheng stared at Chen Pingin's face and asked him with a strange expression. Qin Shi Yu, Mu Wanyu, and the parents of Mu Wancheng and Mu Wanju all looked at Chen Pingin with anticipation, waiting quietly for his answer. Chapter 20, The Invitation from the Old War God Didn't your Mu family already know my identity inside out? Chen Pingin recalled the words Mu Jiannan had said to him in the study and replied somewhat irritably, Do you still need to ask me? If you have no special identity to hide from us, then why does the terrifying demon King Wu Xingjie, one of the three great demon kings of the southwest underworld, treat you like a cat treats a mouse? Mu Wancheng didn't give up questioning Chen Pingin just because he didn't give her a good face. How would I know? I was already mentally prepared to have a confrontation with him, but that old man inexplicably kneeled down as soon as he entered the door. I'm still confused about it. This time, Chen Pingin didn't complain anymore and honestly answered. Really? Mu Wancheng looked skeptical. It was obvious that she didn't believe Chen Pingin's answer. More real than pearls. I have never even met that old man. I can swear to the heavens that if I'm lying, may I be struck by lightning and die. To prove his innocence, Chen Pingin swore directly to the heavens. Seeing Chen Pingin's sincere oath, it didn't seem like he was lying at all. Mu Wancheng and her parents exchanged puzzled looks. Could it be that the old man Wu Xingjie has gotten old and confused? Just then, the butler who had gone to escort the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie hurriedly ran back with a panicked expression. Young master, young madam, the general manager of Emperor Hotel has come to our Mu family with a lot of people. The Mu family, who had just breathed a sigh of relief, became tense again when they heard the butler's words. Emperor Hotel was the Lin family's property. Now that Chen Pingin had broken Lin Xiaofeng's hand, the people from Emperor Hotel, under the Lin family's control, had come. If they didn't come to cause trouble for Chen Pingin and the Mu family, they wouldn't believe it even if they were beaten to death. Lin Xiaofeng was the only heir of the Lin and Wu families. It was just that Lin Xiaofeng's grandfather, Wu Xingjie, for some unknown reason, didn't dare to pursue their responsibility, but it didn't mean that the Lin family would let Chen Pingin and the Mu family off the hook. The Mu family was not prepared to deal with this yet, but a group of men in suits and leather shoes barged into the Mu family. The leader was Ren Tianqing, the general manager of Emperor Hotel. Manager Ren, what brings you here? When Mu Jiannan saw that the person who walked in was Ren Tianqing, the general manager of Emperor Hotel, he became even more convinced that the other party had come on behalf of the Lin family to cause trouble for Qin Pingin and the Mu family, so he quickly pushed forward with a smiling face. Emperor Hotel was the Lin family's property, and the Lin and Wu families were in-laws, so Emperor Hotel had a special status in Longchang. Because they had the support of the Lin and Wu families, the general manager of Emperor Hotel also had a relatively special status in the upper-class society of Longchang. Even someone like Mu Jiannan, a scion of a prestigious family, would be polite when facing him and try not to offend him if possible. Congratulations, Mr. Mu, congratulations. Ren Tianqing quickly put on a smile when he saw Mu Jiannan approaching. He flattered Mu Jiannan, saying, 
I came today to deliver an invitation to Mr. Mu and also to get acquainted with Mr. Mu. I hope Mr. Mu can take care of me in Longcheng in the future. You came to deliver an invitation to me? Mu Jiannan was confused by Rin Tianqing's words. The other members of the Mu family also looked puzzled. What was going on? Could it be that Rin Tianqing wasn't here to cause trouble for Qin Pingyan and the Mu family on behalf of the Lin family? Yeah, today I specifically came to the Mu family to deliver the invitation. I didn't expect the relationship between the Mu family and Zhao Wujin, the old war god, to be so deep. Zhao Wujin, the old war god, passed by Longcheng and plans to hold a birthday banquet at our emperor hotel in two days. He specifically requested to invite the Mu family by name and personally instructed us to deliver the invitation to the Mu family. Among all the prestigious families in Longcheng, only the Mu family has this honor. It's really enviable. The old war god is so supportive of the Mu family. The Mu family is on its way to becoming the top prestigious family in Longcheng. Mr. Mu, don't forget us hardworking people when that happens. Ren Tianqing finished speaking and handed a gold-stamped invitation to Mu Jiannan, who looked confused. Chapter 21, too abnormal until everyone from the Emperor Hotel had left, the Mu family was still in a state of confusion and had not reacted. After Qin Pingyan broke the hand of the young master of the Lin family, the Mu family thought they were in trouble today, especially when the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie, one of the three demon kings of the Southwest Underground Forces, came with his men. It scared them even more. Who would have thought that in the end, there would be a big reversal? The terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie came to their house not to seek revenge, but to apologize. It shocked everyone. Just as the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie left their house, the old war god Zhao Wujin sent an invitation to the birthday banquet. According to the general manager of the Emperor Hotel, only the Mu family in Longcheng received the honor of the old war god personally instructing them to deliver the invitation to the Mu family. What is going on? It's too abnormal, too suspicious. I know. I know what's going on. At this moment, Qin Siyu, who was standing next to Mu Wancheng, seemed to suddenly understand something and grabbed Mu Wancheng's hand with excitement. Siyu, what do you know? Mu Wanching turned her head and asked with a tempting look. The Mu family members also focused their attention on Qin Siyu. Even Chen Pingyan looked at Qin Siyu curiously, wondering what she knew. I know why Lin Xiaofeng's right hand was broken by Qin Pingyan. His terrifying demon king grandfather, Wu Xingjie, not only didn't dare to trouble us, but also personally came over to kneel and apologize. It must be because the other party knew in advance that the old war god was going to invite the Mu family to attend his birthday banquet. They felt that the relationship between the Mu family and the old war god was deep, so they didn't dare to offend the Mu family and came to apologize. Qin Siyu's words made the Mu family's eyes light up. Siyu is right. The Emperor Hotel is the property of the Lin family. If the old war god is going to hold his birthday banquet there, the Wu and Lin families must have known about it first. They knew that the old war god specifically sent an invitation to our Mu family, and they felt that the relationship between the Mu family and the old war god was deep, so they came to apologize. This reason is very valid. Mu Jiannan thought for a moment and excitedly analyzed. Besides this reason, he couldn't think of any other reason that could explain the strange things that happened today. That's great. If that's the case, with the influence of the old war god, the status of our Mu family in Longchang will definitely be greatly improved after the birthday banquet. It won't be long before we become the top prestigious family in Longchang. After listening to the analysis of Qin Siyu and Mu Jiannan, Mu Wancheng's mother also became excited. Even Mu Wancheng, influenced by her family and best friend, felt that this reason was very valid and smiled happily. Ha ha, just when the Mu family was excited and pleased about being able to climb the big tree of the old war god Zhao Wuji, Qin Pingyan, who was standing on the side, couldn't help but laugh, making the Mu family feel disgusted and uncomfortable as if they had eaten flies. What do you mean, Chen? Can't stand to see our Mu family doing well, huh? Let me tell you, if it weren't for our Mu family's relationship with the old war god in saving you, you would have been killed by the terrifying demon king Wu Xingjie countless times. You wouldn't have had the chance to stand here. It's one thing if you don't know how to be grateful, but to mock us, who do you think you are? Mu Wancheng's mother walked up to Qin Pingyan and pointed at his nose, scolding him with disgust. Chapter 22, Old Master Mu and the Old War God are classmates. I'm sorry, I just thought that the people at the Emperor Hotel might have mistaken the target. I haven't heard of any relationship between your Mu family and the Old War God, right? Chen Pingyan quickly explained. His words were not unfounded, because when everyone mentioned the old war god Zhao Wuji, he finally understood why the tang-dressed patient he met at Baoji Tang looked so familiar. It turned out that he was the highly respected old war god Zhao Wuji from the northern frontier. He had seen his appearance on TV a few times when he was a child. 
This time, the old war god had someone deliver the invitation here, probably because he instructed Zhao Shini to save the old war god. After all, with the old war god's abilities, it wouldn't be difficult for him to find out about his presence in the Mu family. However, this was just his own speculation, so he didn't want to say it to others in case it turned out to be untrue and became embarrassing later. But his words stunned the entire Mu family. Yeah, it seemed like their Mu family didn't have much connection with the old war god. Why would the old war god take care of their Mu family like this? And the whole dragon city, only their Mu family received the invitation personally delivered by the general manager of the emperor hotel. This doesn't make sense. Orange, your grandfather and the old war god are about the same age. Maybe your grandfather has some connection with the old war god, but he didn't tell you. Qin Shiyu, who had been standing with Mu Wancheng, said loudly to Mu Wancheng. Qin Shiyu's words once again brightened the eyes of the Mu family. Shiyu's words are possible. I'll call grandfather and ask about the situation. Mu Jiannan said and quickly dialed his grandfather's phone, who had already returned to their hometown. Because the Mu family suspected that their grandfather's recent accident was caused by their competitors secretly attacking him, for the safety of their grandfather and to prevent him from supporting Qin Ping in here, the Mu family members persuaded their grandfather to go back to the countryside for a few days to rest. And because they didn't want their grandfather to be bored alone in the countryside, Mu Wanqing's uncle and his family also went back with him. After all, it was only for two days. They would let their grandfather come back after the competition between their Mu family and their competitors was over. Grandfather's phone was quickly answered. Dad, I have a question for you. Do you know the old war god Zhao Wuji? Mu Jiannan asked nervously. When I was in college, Zhao Wuji and I were classmates. He even sat in the same class as me. But he achieved so much in the end, being called the Northern Frontier War God and the pillar of the country. I felt embarrassed to contact him. So why are you asking about this? The old man on the other end of the phone, Mu's grandfather, was stunned for a moment after hearing his eldest son Mu Jiannan's words, and then he said with a guilty expression. Among his many classmates, Zhao Wuji had the highest achievements, while he was at the bottom. He really felt embarrassed to say that Zhao Wuji was his classmate. It's nothing, I just heard that the old war god passed by our Dragon City, and two days later, there will be a birthday banquet at the Emperor Hotel in Dragon City. The Emperor Hotel just sent us an invitation, so we were a bit confused and wanted to confirm it with you. Faced with the old man's confusion, Mu Jiannan dared not hide anything and truthfully told the old man, I didn't expect General Zhao to remember me, his old classmate. He even sent an invitation to our Mu family for the birthday banquet in Longcheng. Here's the deal, you guys handle the West City renovation project as soon as possible. I will return in two days to attend the birthday banquet of my old classmate, the war god. On the other end of the phone, old master Mu sounded very happy and said cheerfully, alright, the bidding conference is in two days. Success or failure will be determined then. Regardless of the outcome, I will have Jin Dong accompany you back to the city in the afternoon of the day after tomorrow. Mu Jian Nan happily hung up the old man's phone. From the old man's response, it confirmed that the old war god sent them the invitation solely because the old man and the old war god were former classmates. Chapter 23, Expelled from the Mu family after confirming that the old war god sent the invitation to their Mu family because of the old man's friendship with the war god, Mu Wancheng's mother immediately pulled Mu Wancheng and Qin Shiyu to a corner to whisper, not knowing what they were discussing. The three of them occasionally glanced in Chen Pingan's direction. A few minutes later, the three of them left the hall. Although Chen Pingan noticed their unusual behavior, he couldn't be bothered with them. After going to the bathroom, he planned to return to his room and put the two fake gold earrings under Mu Wancheng's pillow. But before he reached the door of Mu Wancheng's room, Mu Wancheng, her mother, and Qin Shiyu approached him, carrying Chen Pingan's bag and the clothes he changed out of yesterday. Are you planning to change my room? Chen Pingan asked the three of them with a puzzled expression. You may not look good. But you have quite the imagination if you think we would change your room for you, Mu Wancheng's mother sneered. Our Mu family's old master and the old war god are good friends from the same school. Our Mu family cannot accommodate trash like you, so as not to embarrass our old master and the old war god. From now on, you can sleep in a bridge cave by yourself. If you're still angry after three months, remember to go to the Civil Affairs Bureau and divorce our orange. Mu Wancheng's mother said coldly, then threw Chen Pingan's bag at him. Mu Wancheng also threw the clothes Chin Ping and changed out of yesterday at him, directly driving him out of the Mu family. Aren't you afraid that your old master will be angry when he finds out? After being driven out of the Mu family, Chin Ping stood at the door of the Mu family and curiously asked Mu Wancheng and the others. That's our business. You don't need to worry about us. Just hurry up and leave. Mu's mother drove Chin Ping away with disgust, then slammed the door shut, leaving Chin Ping out in the cold. Chin Ping looked at the gate of the Mu family and smiled bitterly. 
He hadn't even put the fake earrings back in Mu Wanqing's room yet. It seemed that he would have to find another opportunity in the future. Chen Pingin put the clothes he changed out of yesterday into his bag, then left the Mu family. He had billions of dollars in his bank account now, so he didn't need to worry about not having a place to stay. Chen Pingin slung the canvas bag over his shoulder and left the Mu family with big strides. He hailed a car and went to the real estate agency to see if there were any good houses available. He wanted to buy a villa and live there for a few months, waiting for the complete mastery of the Phoenix control technique and the appearance of the fourth silver needle, before leaving Longchang. He had never experienced what it felt like to live in a villa for so long. Now that he had money, he must enjoy it and not foolishly use it for charity anymore. Soon, Chin Pingin arrived at the street of the real estate agency in Longchang and casually walked into one of the real estate agencies. Oh, isn't this the dragon son-in-law of the prestigious Mu family? Just as Chen Pingin entered the real estate agency, the voice of his ex-girlfriend, Lin Duor, reached his ears. Chen Pingin looked up and saw that his ex-girlfriend, Lin Duor, and her mother were also here looking at houses. Chen Pingin furrowed his brows and subconsciously wanted to turn around and leave. It wasn't that he was afraid of his ex-girlfriend, but he didn't want to have any more entanglements with her. Why are you still carrying that old bag? Did you get kicked out after the wedding? That's right, the Mu family is a newly rising prestigious family in Longcheng. The daughter of the Mu family must marry a wealthy young man from a matching background. Someone like you, a former convict with a criminal record, is only fit to be used for the wedding and then thrown out. Chin Pingin didn't want to get entangled with his ex-girlfriend, but she didn't want to let him off easily, especially when she saw him carrying an old canvas bag, looking like a street beggar. She immediately walked faster and blocked Chen Pingin, mocking him with a gloating expression. She had previously thought that Chen Pingin was marrying into the Mu family to please the old master of the Mu family. Now, seeing Chen Pingin's appearance, he must have been kicked out after the wedding. Otherwise, why would he leave the Mu family estate and come here to rent a house? According to her fiancé, who was the general manager of the Emperor Hotel, the Mu family had a close relationship with the old war god and was the only family in Longcheng to receive a personal invitation to the birthday banquet. With such a prestigious family, it would be strange if this guy wasn't kicked out after the wedding. Chapter 24 I'm here to buy a house Chen Ping and didn't want to talk to Lin Duor and planned to go around her. However, Lin Duor seemed to have a grudge against Chen Ping and, and once again blocked his path. Don't leave, there are many houses for rent here. Why don't you take a look before you go? Lin Duor stopped Chen Ping and, and said with a cunning smile. This real estate agency was positioned to serve high-end home buyers and renters, so the houses listed for sale or rent by this agency were all in upscale neighborhoods or luxury villas. Lin Duor's fiancé had promised to buy her a high-end duplex after the birthday banquet of the old war god, so she came to look at houses in advance. Unexpectedly, she ran into Chen Ping in here and wanted to trick him, as revenge for being publicly humiliated by him in front of a jewelry store. Even if she could just embarrass Chen Ping in front of others by scaring him with the high housing prices here, she would feel satisfied. Sorry, I'm not here to rent a house, I'm here to buy one. Chen Ping saw through Lin Duor's intentions at a glance and decided not to leave. You want to see me scared by the high housing prices here, right? Today, I'll show you how rich I am now. You're here to buy a house? Chen Pingin's words stunned Lin Duor, who then looked him up and down again. He was wearing old clothes that had been washed to a pale color, and the backpack on his back was the one he bought when they were together five years ago. In a place like Longchang with high housing prices, a house would cost at least a few million. How could someone like Chen Pingin, who looked so poor, afford it? But Chen Pingin ignored Lin Duor and waved to a beautiful female salesperson from the real estate agency. Although the salesperson saw Chen Pingin's shabby appearance, she thought he was with Lin Duor, who was dressed in designer clothes and carrying a luxury handbag, so she immediately approached them. Hello, sir. Is there anything I can help you with? The beautiful salesperson asked enthusiastically. Do you have any luxury villas here? Please introduce me. I want to buy one. Chen Pingin didn't waste any time and went straight to the point. But as soon as he said that, both the beautiful salesperson and his ex-girlfriend Lin Duor were stunned. Put. Chen Pingin, do you know the average price of houses in Longchang? With your appearance, you can't even afford a square meter of a toilet in a villa. Lin Duor thought Chen Pingin was trying to show off in front of her and burst into laughter at his words. Sir, we do have many luxury villas here, but the lowest price starts at 10 million. The more expensive ones can go up to several billion, and the minimum down payment is also several million. Are you sure you want to see? Villas? The beautiful saleswoman hadn't finished speaking when Chen Pingin already showed his black card from Ruaishur International Bank. The saleswoman was speechless when she saw it. This real estate agency is targeting high-end customers, and the clients that these salespeople interact with are mostly wealthy individuals. 
The saleswoman had the privilege of seeing this type of black card before. As far as she knew, the holders of this card have a net worth of at least billions. I shouldn't have any problem buying a villa here with this card, right? Chen Pingan handed the black card to the saleswoman and asked. Yes. 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 We still have five luxury villas that haven't been sold, and one of them is known as the most expensive and luxurious villa in Longcheng, with a price of 8. 8 billion for the Longquan Villa. It is said that there is a Longquan well in the yard of that villa, and the things boiled from the water in that well have an extraordinary taste. Would you like me to take you there now? After confirming the authenticity of the Swiss bank black card, the saleswoman was excited and immediately wanted to take Chen Pingan to see the most luxurious villa in Longcheng. Take me there now, and if it's suitable, I'll buy that villa today. Chen Pingan nodded. The saleswoman took Chen Pingan and left the agency to see the villa. This scene left Lin Duor dumbfounded, until her mother came out of the bathroom and saw her daughter standing at the door of the agency, looking outside in a daze. Silly girl, what are you doing standing alone at the door here? Lin's mother walked up and looked outside, but didn't see anything unusual. She asked with a puzzled expression. Chapter 25, Money isn't that easy to make mom, I just saw Chin Pingan come to see the house, and he was looking at a villa. Lin Duor said foolishly to her mother. Originally, when she saw Chin Pingan's embarrassed appearance, she wanted to make him look bad, but who knew that in the end, the clown turned out to be herself, and Chen Pingan had publicly humiliated her twice today. It made her extremely embarrassed. What made it even more unacceptable for her was that Chen Pingan, who should have been so poor that he couldn't even afford a meal, took out a black card that represented status, position, and wealth, and wanted to buy a luxury villa. Chen Pingan came to buy a villa? How is that possible? Don't joke with me. Lin's mother, after hearing her daughter's words, also looked confused. Just by looking at Chin Pingan's poor appearance, it was clear that he had just been released from prison. At most, he had the one or two thousand yuan that the prison gave him for travel expenses. It was likely that he had already spent it on buying gold earrings to please Miss Mu at the jewelry store, right? Mom, I'm telling the truth. He took out a black card as soon as he entered and asked the salesperson to take him to see the villa. Lin Duor, seeing that her mother didn't believe her, explained in detail what had happened. When she saw Chen Pingan take out the black card, she was shocked. In her heart, she regretted her impulsive decision to break up with Chen Pingan before. After all, the fiancé she found now, although he is the general manager of the Emperor Hotel, is just a fancy title. In the end, he is still working for a wealthy family, and he may not be able to afford a villa in his lifetime. Moreover, her current fiancé is a divorcee, while Chen Pingan, although he had been in prison, based on her understanding of him, he was most likely framed and wrongly accused. And in this age where people don't laugh at poverty but at prostitution, as long as you have money, even if you have been in prison for several years, there will be plenty of women lining up to marry you. Put. After listening to her daughter's story, Lin's mother couldn't help but burst into laughter. Lin Duor, with an unhappy expression, asked, Mom, what are you laughing at? After looking at her daughter's unhappy face, Lin's mother explained, You, you've been fooled by that waste again. Lin Duor became even more confused by her mother's words. Seeing the expression on her daughter's face, Lin's mother continued to explain, he's just been released from prison, and based on your description of him earlier, he must have just been kicked out by the Mu family. How could someone like that afford to buy a villa? After he became the son-in-law of the Mu family, they gave him some money and kicked him out. He found a place to get a fake ID card and followed you, pretending to be rich in front of you. His goal is to make you think he's wealthy now and make you reconcile with him. Once you have his child, he will use the child to threaten you, just like your father deceived me into marrying him. You can't make the same mistake as your mother. Lin's mother, with the demeanor of someone who has been through it all, earnestly advised her daughter. You're right, why didn't I think of that? This guy must have been following me and pretending in front of me. When the real estate agent took him to see the most expensive Longquan villa, he found various excuses to leave because it didn't meet his expectations. I knew it was too good to be true that someone could afford a villa right after getting out of prison. He's just trying to fool me, and I almost fell for it again. I won't believe anything this waste says anymore. These losers use all sorts of tricks to deceive girls who can't find a husband. It's despicable. After being reminded by her mother, Lin Duor thought more and more that what happened earlier was unreasonable, and she was definitely deceived by Chin Pingan, that loser. Didn't the real estate agent take him to see the most luxurious Longquan villa in Longcheng? Let's go, we'll go to Longquan Villa now and expose this loser's tricks. When the people at the real estate agency find out they've been fooled by this loser, they'll definitely teach him a lesson. Lin's mother, seeing that her daughter finally saw through Chen Pingan's scam, immediately pulled her daughter to expose Chen Pingan's tricks and make him embarrassed in front of the people at the real estate agency. 
Chapter 26, Too Late Mom, Your Prospective Son-in-Law Just Called and Invited Me to Dinner. I don't want this waste to affect my mood for the date. Let's temporarily let him go this time, and we can teach him a lesson next time. Lin Duor looked at the time and shook her head as she spoke to her mother. Since my prospective son-in-law invited you to dinner, then it must be important. Let's go quickly so that my prospective son-in-law doesn't have to wait. Lin's mother, upon hearing Lin Duor's words, quickly pulled her away from the real estate agency. On the other side, the beautiful real estate agent from the agency drove Chin Pingan to Longquan Villa on the top of Longquan Mountain. This was the most luxurious villa in Longcheng, where you could see the sunrise from home when you opened the curtains in the morning, and the sunset in the evening. The air was very fresh, and driving up to the top of Longquan Mountain felt like returning to nature. In Longchun, Longquan Villa was the best place for the wealthy to maintain their health. The owner of Longquan Villa needed funds urgently due to a business failure, so three days ago, they put the villa on sale through various real estate agencies. Just by looking at the surroundings, Chin Pingin felt that this Longquan Villa was very suitable for someone like him who practiced martial arts. However, when the two of them arrived at the entrance of Longquan Villa, they found a car parked there, and a representative from another real estate agency was leading a young man dressed in designer clothes and looking very fashionable out of the villa. Isn't that the top salesperson from Ijia Real Estate? Sorry, this eight. 8 billion Longquan Villa has been reserved by this young master Zhao. You can go somewhere else. The employee from the other real estate agency, seeing the beautiful real estate agent bringing Chin Ping into the entrance of Longquan Villa, proudly said to the two of them. Because Chin Pingin's appearance didn't look like someone who came to buy a villa, the two people who came out of Longquan Villa thought that Chin Pingin was a new employee from the same real estate agency as the beautiful agent and was familiarizing himself with the market. The young man in designer clothes glanced at Chen Pingin with a hint of disdain in his eyes, then got into the car and left with the real estate agent who was showing him the house. Zhao Shikai received a call from his grandfather Zhao Wujin yesterday, saying that there would be a birthday banquet in Longcheng in two days and asked him to come quickly. His war god grandfather wanted to introduce him to an important person at the banquet and asked him to get closer to that person in the future. Zhao Shikai was shocked when he received the call from his grandfather. It was clear that his grandfather wanted him to curry favor with someone important. It should be noted that his grandfather was one of the most powerful figures in the world, and the fact that even his grandfather wanted him to curry favor with someone indicated how prestigious that person's status was. Zhao Shikai rushed to Longcheng overnight yesterday and met his grandfather. According to his grandfather, the important person should be living in Longcheng, so he asked him to buy a house there. Today, he went to the real estate agency and after a whole day of searching, he found this Longquan Villa to be the most satisfactory in terms of location, decoration, and environment. However, he didn't plan to buy this Longquan Villa for himself, but rather as a gift to the important person his grandfather would introduce him to. He himself bought an ordinary villa at the foot of Longquan Mountain. Chen Pingin and the beautiful real estate agent could only watch as the two of them left the top of Longquan Mountain. Mr. Chen, we're a step too late. This Longquan Villa has already been reserved. Shall we look at others? After Zhao Shikai left, the beautiful real estate agent apologized to Chen Pingin. Okay. Chen Pingin was not an unreasonable person and nodded in agreement. However, after seeing the environment of the Longquan Villa and then looking at other villas, Chen Pingin always felt unsatisfied. He looked at several properties in a row but couldn't reach a deal. Mr. Chen, it's getting dark now. Why don't you find a hotel to stay tonight, and we can continue looking at the remaining properties tomorrow morning. After looking at three villas in a row, and with night approaching, the beautiful real estate agent suggested to Chen Pingin. All right, just drop me off in the city then. Chen Pingin nodded and said, and the two of them got into the car and left the Longquan Mountain Villa area. Just as they arrived in the city center, when the beautiful real estate agent from the agency was about to drop Chen Pingin off at a nearby upscale hotel, there was a sudden emergency break on the road, waking up Chen Pingin who had been dozing off. What's happening? Chen Pingin opened his eyes and asked in confusion. It seems like we've encountered a staged accident. The beautiful real estate agent from the agency said in a panic and immediately got out of the car. Chapter 27, Old Classmate Staged Accident Staged Accident? Hearing these words, Chen Pingin couldn't help but think of a classmate from high school, Li Runin. Because of her family's difficulties, she often staged accidents on weekends to earn money for her sick father. After graduating from high school, they gradually lost contact and he didn't know how she was doing now. Hey, you broke my leg. If you don't give me tens of thousands today, don't even think about leaving. Chen Pingin got out of the car and saw an electric scooter lying in front of the car, and a long-haired beauty sitting on the ground, wailing while holding her leg. The beautiful real estate agent from the agency was frightened. 
The people around them were pointing and discussing. When Xin Pingin heard the voice, he felt somewhat familiar. After taking a closer look, he realized that the wailing beauty on the ground was his classmate Li Runin from high school. He didn't expect her to become so beautiful after growing out her hair. The difference between short hair and long hair was huge, especially in terms of temperament, which had undergone a tremendous change. If he didn't look carefully, he might not have recognized her. What surprised Chin Ping and even more was that after so many years, she was still staging accidents like this. How many times have you broken your leg? More than a hundred times? Chin Ping and asked Li Runin, who was sitting on the ground wailing, without a good tone. The other party's lines are still the ones I taught her back then. I didn't expect her to use them against this old classmate of mine. Li Runin, who was sitting on the ground wailing loudly, looked up and froze when she saw him. Chen Pingin, is that you? Li Runin, who had forgotten to continue pretending to cry, immediately jumped up from the ground and looked at Chen Pingin with a surprised expression. Miss, are you okay with your leg? The beautiful saleswoman from the agency was stunned by the scene in front of her and pointed at Li Runin's leg. Is she your friend? Li Runin ignored the other person and asked Chen Pingin instead. Not really, she's from the agency. I just arrived in Longcheng and haven't found a place to stay yet. She was showing me a house today. Chen Pingin honestly replied. What a coincidence. I'm sharing a three-bedroom apartment with someone else, and there's still one room left. You don't need to look for a place anymore. Come to my place. The person I'm sharing with is a beautiful girl, and she's single. Whether you can win her over depends on your skills. Li Runin, upon hearing that Chen Pingin hadn't found a place yet, immediately pulled into her place. Isn't that inappropriate? Chen Pingin, while helping Li Runin pick up the fallen electric scooter, responded awkwardly. We've been buddies for so many years, why are you still feeling awkward in front of me? Hurry up and get on. Li Runin urged Chen Pingin as she mounted her electric scooter. So, you're not doing this business anymore? Chen Pingin pointed at the beautiful saleswoman from the agency and asked Li Runin. I just saw that I still had over half an hour before work, so I thought I'd do a job on the way. I didn't expect the target customer to be someone you know. How could I still have the heart to do it? Li Runin said while pulling Chin Pingin, who was speechless, onto her electric scooter, leaving the stunned beautiful saleswoman from the agency behind. Sitting behind Li Runin, the scent of a young girl wafted over to Chin Pingin, making him feel a bit restless. Chin Pingin never expected that the tomboy Li Runin would one day grow out her hair, and with long hair, she became so beautiful. Her whole demeanor changed, and her figure was exceptional. Even as a good buddy, Chin Pingin couldn't help but be amazed. Twenty minutes later, Li Runin brought Chin Pingin to the apartment she was sharing with someone else. I'll use the bathroom first. Just as they entered, Chin Pingin, who was feeling a bit uncomfortable in his stomach, headed straight for the bathroom. However, when he pushed open the bathroom door, a stunning beauty appeared in his line of sight. Chin Shiyu, what are you doing here? Chen Pingin, what are you doing here? Chen Pingin and the stunning beauty in the bathroom asked in unison. Having just finished showering and not yet dressed, Chin Shiyu saw someone break into the room and initially thought it was her roommate Li Runin. But when she looked up and saw that it was a man who had barged in, and moreover, it was the scum demon Chin Pingin who had just been driven out by the Mu family, both of them were stunned in place. Chapter 28, Beautiful Roommate Shiyu, You Haven't Put On Your Clothes Yet Li Runin came up behind Chen Pingin and saw Chin Shiyu's perfectly proportioned figure, quickly reminding her. Chin Shiyu instinctively lowered her head. Ah! Chin Shiyu reacted like most girls, screaming as loud as she could, then covering her chest with both hands. She could block the top, but she couldn't block the bottom, making her look very embarrassed. Chen Pingin was startled by her scream and quickly turned around, not daring to look anymore. Li Runin pulled Chen Pingin out and casually closed the bathroom door. So, isn't my roommate beautiful? With that figure of hers, everything is in the right place. I almost drooled just looking at her. Tell me honestly, did you feel tempted? I'm telling you, you made quite an impression on her. Love often starts with these ambiguous ripples. If you toughen up a bit and put in some effort, you might just win her heart. Chen Ping and thought Li Runin would scold him, but she instead taught him how to pursue Qin Shiyu with a lewd expression on her face. This tomboy Li Runin was still as fierce as before. I'm not interested in her. And in my eyes, she's not as beautiful as you. Chen Ping and shook his head and honestly replied. Li Runin, the tomboy, blushed for the first time. TCH. You're sweet talking like never before. How come I never noticed how good you are at coaxing people? Suddenly being praised for her beauty by her former buddy, Li Runin couldn't adapt for a moment and rolled her eyes at Chen Pingin with a flushed face. At that moment, the bathroom door opened from the inside, and Qin Shiyu, wrapped in a towel, walked out of the bathroom. Chen Pingin, you scum, what are you doing here? Qin Shiyu looked at Chen Pingin with cold eyes and questioned him. 
Do you know each other? Seeing Qin Shi Yu call out Chen Pingan's name, Li Runan looked surprised and asked the two of them. Sort of. We met at the bank this morning, and some unpleasant things happened later. Chen Pingan answered dejectedly. He never expected that Li Runan's roommate would turn out to be Qin Shi Yu. Weren't you going to work? How did you bring this scum back? Qin Shi Yu shifted her gaze away from Chen Pingan and asked Li Runan with a puzzled expression. She originally thought that after Chen Pingan was kicked out by the Mu family, he would go live under a bridge tonight. Unexpectedly, this scum demon had acquaintances in Longcheng and was even Li Runan's roommate. What a small world. I was just about to go to work when I happened to run into my high school classmate Chen Pingan on the way. He just arrived in Longcheng and didn't have a place to stay, so since we have an empty room here, I brought him back. He'll be renting with us from now on. Do you have any objections? After explaining her relationship with Chen Pingan, Li Runan asked Qin Shi Yu in an inquiring tone. You rented this place first, so what objections could I have? But let me make it clear, since you brought this person back, if he dares to have any improper intentions towards me or does anything out of line, you'll be responsible too. Qin Shi Yu remembered Chen Pingan's dark history and warned Li Runan with a serious expression. No problem, I can vouch for my old classmate's character. I guarantee he won't have any improper intentions towards you, right? Chen Pingan? Li Runan quickly assured Qin Shi Yu and even tugged at Chen Pingan's clothes, urging him to speak up. I'm not interested in her. Chen Pingan responded indifferently. At that moment, Li Runan's phone alarm went off. Damn it, I'm late for work. My perfect attendance award. Shi Yu, show him his room. I'll go to work first. After Li Runan finished speaking, she left Chen Pingan and Qin Shi Yu behind and hurriedly went out to work the night shift. Um, which room do I stay in? With Li Runan gone, Chen Pingan had no choice but to ask Qin Shi Yu. The one next to the bathroom. Qin Shi Yu pointed to the room next to the bathroom with her delicate jade hand and said to Chen Pingan impatiently. Then, she nervously ran back to her room and locked the door. Thank you. Chen Pingan took his simple luggage and walked towards the empty room next to the bathroom. After entering the room and taking a quick look around, Chen Pingan saw that it was a small room of about 12 to 13 square meters. It wasn't big, but it had everything one would need, such as a bed, wardrobe, and air conditioning. It was decent enough for him to move in. Chen Pingan found a mop and cleaned the room's floor. Meanwhile, Qin Shi Yu returned to her room, locked the door, changed her clothes, and then called her best friend Mu Wancheng to meet at the KTV. Chen Pingan, who was tidying up the room, heard the sound of the door opening. He stuck his head out of the room and saw that Qin Shi Yu had already changed into a coffee-colored dress and was talking on the phone while leaving the room. After Chen Pingan finished tidying up the room, he also left the apartment to buy some daily necessities. When he came back, it was already 11 o'clock at night, and he sadly realized that he didn't have his keys. One roommate had gone to work, and the other had gone out for the night. In the end, Chen Pingan could only go to Li Runan's workplace to ask her for the keys. Fortunately, Li Runan had previously told him the address of her workplace, the Nine Stars Chain KTV on Yangguang Road. When Chen Pingan arrived at the entrance of the Nine Stars Chain KTV, the receptionist immediately greeted him warmly, Excuse me, sir, do you have a reservation for a private room? I'm here to find your reception supervisor, Li Runan. Is she inside? Chen Pingan asked the receptionist. Are you her boyfriend? The receptionist asked Chen Pingan with a strange expression on her face. I'm her friend. Is something wrong with her? Seeing the receptionist's strange expression, Chen Pingan suddenly had a bad feeling and asked with a gloomy face. Places like KTV are crowded, and it's easy for girls to get into trouble working there. Two hours ago, Li Runan went to our manager for help in arranging a friend to work here and then our manager took her to the 888 private room to accompany a guest for drinks. She hasn't come out yet. Before the receptionist could finish her sentence, Chen Pingan had already rushed into the KTV. He asked the KTV staff along the way and quickly arrived at the most luxurious 888 private room of the Nine Stars KTV. Without hesitation, Chen Pingan pushed open the door of the 888 private room, and the deafening music instantly came out from the room. In the dimly lit large private room, Three big men were pouring drinks for the already drunken Li Runan. One of the men had a badge on his chest with the words, Manager of Nine Stars KTV. The other two were the Zhao Shi Kai, the young master who had bought the Longquan Villa earlier in the afternoon, and the real estate agent. Zhao Da Xiao, Manager, I've already had a bottle of foreign liquor tonight. I really can't drink anymore. Li Runan, with drunken eyes, refused the three men's offer to drink. Because of the loud music, none of them noticed Chen Pingan entering the room. Runin, Zhao Gongzi is not someone you can afford to offend. If you can't satisfy Zhao Gongzi tonight, don't expect me to help your friend arrange a job, and you don't need to come to work tomorrow. 
The manager of Nine Stars KTV threatened Lee Runin. When Lee Runin heard this, her face turned pale. Her father's health depended on medication, and if she lost her job, her father would lose access to the medicine. Moreover, Chen Pingin, her good friend who had just arrived in Longchang, had a criminal record and would almost certainly not be able to find a job in Longchang without connections. Weighing the pros and cons, she could only bite her lip and silently accept the drink handed to her by Zhao Gongzi. But at that moment, a strong hand grabbed her wrist. Chen Pingin, why are you here? Seeing someone stopping her, Li Runin turned her head and was surprised to see Chen Pingin. If I hadn't come, you would have been eaten by these three wolves tonight. You're reeking of alcohol. You can't drink anymore. Chen Pingin said, snatching the glass from Li Runin's hand. Give me back the drink. If I don't drink it, I'll lose my job. You know my father's situation. I have no choice. Li Runin said with an unpleasant expression on her face, reaching out to snatch back the glass of foreign liquor that Chen Pingin had taken away. Understanding Li Runin's personality, Chen Pingin didn't say anything else and directly struck the back of Li Runin's neck with a chop. Li Runin immediately fainted and fell into Chen Pingin's arms. Chen Pingin lifted Li Runin and was about to leave the private room. Kid, do you think this place is your home? You can come and go as you please? The manager of Jiuxing KTV blocked Chen Pingin's path, sneering. The salesman from the intermediary company and the manager of Jiuxing KTV were cousins. This young master Zhao spent over 9 billion today to buy two villas, one of which was the Longquan Villa priced at 8. 8 billion. The manager had already learned this from his cousin. He immediately had his cousin find a way to bring the rich man to KTV, giving him a chance to meet. Coincidentally, Li Runin wanted the manager to help arrange a job for Chin Pingin, who had just arrived in Longchang. The manager thought of having the beautiful Li Runin accompany Zhao, and Zhao immediately took a liking to her, wanting to get her drunk and take her to a hotel. The manager went all out to please the rich man Zhao, conspiring with his cousin and Zhao to get Li Runin drunk. Just as they were about to succeed, Chang Yao Jin appeared and wanted to take away their prey for the night. The manager couldn't let Chen Pingin leave so easily. Although this isn't my home, as long as I want, it can become my home at any time. Get out of my way immediately, or suffer the consequences. Chen Pingin looked at the manager blocking his path and said coldly. The intentions of these people were very clear, they wanted to get Li Runin drunk and take advantage of her. If he wasn't holding Li Runin in his arms, he would have to teach these people a lesson. Your mother. Seeing that Chen Pingin not only didn't let go of Li Runin but also threatened him, the manager became angry. He grabbed a bottle from the table and swung it towards Chen Pingin's head without hesitation. But before the manager's bottle could hit Chen Pingin's head, Chen Pingin had already kicked out, sending the manager flying with a kick before he could finish his curse, crashing into the wall. You. The manager couldn't even complete a sentence before fainting. Clap clap clap. The music in the private room abruptly stopped, and applause rang out. So you're a martial artist, no wonder you're so arrogant. The rich man Zhao Shurkai saw Chen Pingin knock out the manager with one kick, and instead of being afraid, he clapped his hands and said playfully. He had been practicing martial arts with his war god grandfather Zhao Wuji since he was young, and now he was already a little master. When facing ordinary people, he could easily take on five at once, and he could even last ten moves against his grandfather's strongest two bodyguards, Ada and Deir. After speaking, he immediately used a grappling technique and charged at Chen Pingin. Chen Pingin, who was holding Li Runin, couldn't be bothered to fight with him and directly swept his leg on the tea table. With this kick, all the bottles on the tea table were sent flying, crashing heavily into Zhao Shurkai's chest. Ah! Zhao Shurkai, who hadn't reached Chen Pingin yet, couldn't dodge in time and was hit by two bottles in the chest. He immediately felt a huge pain in his chest and was sent flying, falling onto the sofa, grimacing in pain. If he hadn't been practicing martial arts since he was young and had a much stronger physical fitness than ordinary people, he would probably be lying on the ground as a dead person by now. The remaining salesman from the intermediary company was stunned by the scene and stood still, afraid to move. I'll send the person back to rest and come back to deal with you later. Chen Pingin left Jiuxing KTV with the unconsciously Runin after saying this. On the way, Chen Pingin called Shen Jiliang, the general manager of Rue Shure International Bank. Mr. Chen, how may I assist you? As soon as the call connected, the respectful voice of manager Shen came from the other end of the line. Manager Shen, can you help me get in touch with the owner of Joshing KTV? I want to acquire their KTV. Shen Pingin didn't beat around the bush and went straight to the point. Mr. Chen, it's such a coincidence. Mr. Liang from Joshing Group is with me right now. Where are you? I'll bring him to meet you immediately. Manager Shen on the other end of the phone was surprised to hear Chen Pingin being so direct, and then said excitedly, then you guys wait for me at Joshing KTV. I'll be there in 40 minutes. 
After giving a few instructions to manager Xin on the phone, Chen Pingin hung up. Returning to the entrance of the apartment, Chen Pingin found the keys on Li Runan's body, carried her back to her room where she was still unconscious, and then immediately returned to Jioxing KTV. Besides fulfilling his statement earlier of as long as I want, this place can become my home anytime, he had another reason for acquiring Jioxing KTV, and that was to help Li Runan. The receptionist at the entrance just now mentioned that Li Runan went to find their manager to help arrange a job for a friend. Without a doubt, that friend they were referring to was himself. She must have thought that it would be difficult for her to find a job just after being released from prison, so she went to ask their manager to arrange one for her. Out of his brotherly affection for Li Runan, he wanted to help her. But he knew that Li Runan had always been independent since she was young, and she wouldn't accept money directly from him. By acquiring this KTV and secretly promoting her and giving her a raise, not only could he help her, but also make her feel that she had achieved everything through her own efforts, giving her a sense of accomplishment. Chen Pingin quickly returned to Jioxing KTV. The young master Zhao and the manager had already been taken to the hospital, and the general manager of Ruishir Bank, Shen Jiliang, was standing at the entrance of KTV with a pregnant secretary, looking around. Mr. Chen has arrived. As soon as Chen Pingin got out of the car, manager Shen immediately said to the owner of Jioxing KTV, and then approached Chen Pingin. The pregnant secretary and the chubby Liang followed manager Shen to Chen Pingin. When they saw Chen Pingin's attire, both of them looked puzzled. Wasn't manager Shen saying that the buyer who wanted to acquire their Jioxing KTV was a billionaire? But this kid in front of them, his entire outfit probably didn't cost more than 500 yuan, and although his clothes were clean, they were washed to the point of being faded. Could it be that rich people nowadays are so frugal that they wear the same set of clothes for several years? Manager Shen, is this the big shot you said wanted to acquire my Jioxing KTV? Liang tugged at manager Shen's clothes and asked in a small voice, unable to believe it. Although his voice was low, Chen Pingin still heard it. Naturally, Chen Pingin understood what the other party was thinking, that he didn't look like a wealthy person in his current attire. But he couldn't be bothered to explain, so he directly took out his limited edition Supreme Black Card from Ruaysher Bank from his pocket. The limited edition Supreme Black Card from Ruaysher Bank? Seeing the black card that Chen Pingin took out, Liang exclaimed. With his status, he naturally knew what the Supreme Black Card from Ruaysher International Bank represented. He turned his head in shock and looked at manager Shen, wanting to ask whether this black card was real or fake. I just processed this limited edition Supreme Black Card for Mr. Chen this morning. It's absolutely genuine. Manager Shen responded confidently to the questioning gaze of the owner of Jioxing KTV. I'm sorry, Mr. Chen. We were rude just now. Let's go to my office and have a chat over tea. With manager Shen's assurance, the owner of Jioxing KTV no longer had any doubts and immediately put on a smiling face to welcome Chen Pingin into Jioxing KTV. Mu Wancheng and Qin Shiyu happened to have arranged to meet at Jioxing KTV tonight. When the two of them came out of the restroom, Mu Wancheng happened to see the scene where the owner of Jioxing KTV respectfully invited Chen Pingin into the office. Orange, why did you stop? Qin Shiyu, who was walking behind her, bumped into Mu Wancheng and asked with a puzzled expression. Xiu, I just saw the boss of Jioxing KTV respectfully inviting that scum Chen Pingin into his office. Mu Wanqing turned around and said to her best friend Qin Xiu with a shocked expression on her face. Put, are you seeing things, Orange? The boss of Jioxing is worth billions, even more powerful than your Mu family. How could that scum Chen Pingin know such a big boss and be respectfully invited into his office? If he really had the ability to make the boss of Jioxing respectfully invite him into the office, would he need to resort to seeking help from his high school classmate? It must be because we were just talking about that scum, so you see everyone as if they were that scum. Qin Shiyu, who was walking behind, laughed at Mu Wancheng's words and analyzed logically. Maybe I really saw it wrong. Hearing her best friend's logical analysis, Mu Wancheng also thought that she might have seen it wrong. Shaking her head, the two of them returned to the private room to continue singing. Meanwhile, in the boss's office at Jioxing KTV, Chen Pingin had already started discussing the acquisition with the boss. With the guarantee of Shen Jiliang, the general manager of the Longcheng branch of Ruishir International Bank, and Chen Pingin's financial strength, coupled with the boss's urgency to cash out and save his other businesses, the transaction was completed in less than an hour. Chen Pingin acquired the Jioxing Chain KTV, which had a total of 99 stores in the three southwestern provinces, for 3 billion yuan, and the payment was settled on the spot. Liang, the general manager of Jioxing Group, sent a notice to the high-level executives of Jioxing KTV in the group chat, informing them of the change in ownership and asking all the high-level executives of the Longcheng branch to come to his office to meet the new boss. 
The high-level executives of Joshing KTV received the message in the group chat and were all taken aback. However, considering the troubles in the boss's real estate business, they were not surprised. All the high-level executives in Longcheng immediately rushed to the boss's office, even those who were already prepared to sleep after their night shift. At this moment, the night shift manager who had been kicked unconscious by Qin Pingan was lying in a hospital bed receiving in four drip. After receiving the message in the group chat and learning that Joshing KTV had changed hands, he immediately pulled out the needle in his hand and hurried back to the KTV. If he left a bad impression on the new boss because of being late, even if the new boss didn't fire him, he might make things difficult for him in the future. As a result, he rushed back to the KTV in a hurry and happened to run into Qin Pingan, who was coming out of the boss's office and heading to the restroom. He almost collided with Qin Pingan. Can't you watch where you're going? It's you. I didn't expect you to dare to come back. Security, immediately grab this kid for me. The manager who almost collided with someone angrily scolded, and when he saw that the person he almost collided with was Qin Pingan, he remembered the harsh words Qin Pingan had left when he took Li Runin away, saying that he would come back later to deal with them. Originally, he thought that this kid was just talking big, but he didn't expect Qin Pingan to really dare to come back. He immediately became furious and called the security guards who were patrolling to deal with Qin Pingan. Several security guards heard the manager's order and coldly surrounded Qin Pingan. Some curious customers also gathered around to watch the excitement. When they saw that Qin Pingan was in conflict with the manager and the security guards of Joshin KTV, their eyes were filled with pity. These people who worked in nightclubs, their bosses were either well-connected or had relationships with the big shots in the underworld. This kid dared to cause trouble here, he was simply seeking death. Kid, kneel down and apologize to me immediately, and then bring Li Runin back with you to the hospital to apologize to Zhao Gongzi. Otherwise, even if the emperor himself came today, he wouldn't be able to save you. Seeing that Qin Pingan was trapped, the manager threatened him with a cold smile. The security guards at their Joshin KTV are all retired special forces soldiers, capable of taking on five or six ordinary people without breaking a sweat. Although this kid is tough, they have several retired special forces security guards, and they don't believe they can't handle him. Just with them? Qin Pingan didn't even look at those security guards, and said disdainfully to the manager. Oomph, since you're looking for death, I'll grant your wish today. Bring it on, if you cripple me, I'll take responsibility. Seeing Qin Pingan's contemptuous gaze, the manager became angry and immediately ordered the retired special forces security guards. The boss had told them before that they must not go easy on anyone causing trouble in their establishment, otherwise others would think they were easy to bully. The security guards glanced at each other and directly attacked Chen Pingan with their batons. Stop! How dare you be so disrespectful to your new boss, do you still want to work here? Just then, Liang Zong's furious roar came from behind. The security guards easily recognized the boss's voice and quickly withdrew their batons, turning around to see their boss rushing over in a panic. His face was filled with panic. Seeing the boss's actions, the security guards felt that something was not right and quickly made way. The manager hurriedly approached. Boss, this kid caused trouble in our KTV, and he even injured me and our customers. I just came back from the hospital, with needles still in my hand. I was just having the security guards teach him a lesson. The manager pointed at Qin Pingan and explained to Liang Zong, but before he could finish his words, Liang Zong slapped him directly in the face, leaving the manager dumbfounded. Boss, this kid is the troublemaker, did you mistake the person? The manager asked with a face full of grievances. Put away your nonsense and watch your mouth. This is Mr. Chen, from now on, all 99 branches of Joshin KTV are Mr. Chen's properties. He is your new boss, so don't call me boss anymore. Liang Zong coldly said to the manager. What? This kid is our new boss? The manager looked at Liang Zong in shock, unable to believe it. Even the security guards were surprised, but at the same time, they were relieved. Fortunately, they were a step too slow just now. If they had been a few seconds faster, they might have seriously injured the new boss. If they crippled the new boss, they would lose their jobs and might even have to pay a heavy price. The security guards broke out in a cold sweat just thinking about it. I'm sorry, but you have been fired. I am not your new boss. Go to the finance department and collect your salary for this month, then leave immediately. I won't tolerate someone like you who lets female employees accompany guests for drinks and sleep, and seeks personal gain. Without waiting for Liang Zong to say anything else, Chen Pingan announced the manager's dismissal on the spot. Upon hearing Qin Pingan's words, the manager collapsed to the ground. He had spent several years and countless efforts and money to reach the position of manager, but because of one wrong step, it all turned to nothing. Secretary, help me with two things. First, draft a termination agreement to fire this manager. 
Second, draft an appointment letter to appoint Lee Runin, the head of the reception department, as the general manager of Jioshing KTV. She will be fully responsible for the daily management and operation of all 99 branches of Jioshing KTV. Tomorrow, personally deliver the appointment letter to her residence and give her a surprise. Chen Pingin ignored the manager lying on the ground and turned to the tall and beautiful secretary to give instructions. After dealing with the manager's matter, it was already 1 a.m. After a brief meeting with the senior management of Jioshing KTV, this point is nothing for people who stay up late, but for ordinary people, they are already asleep. After leaving Nine Stars KTV, Chen Pingin found a shared bike and rode back to Li Runin's apartment. In the early hours of the morning in Longcheng, besides the late night stalls, everywhere else was quiet, without a single person in sight for a long time. After Chen Pingin turned a corner at the intersection, a strong flashlight shone on his face, making it impossible for him to open his eyes. No matter how he dodged, the strong light followed him like a shadow. Chen Pingin knew that someone was doing this intentionally. He stopped, and the strong light disappeared. In front of him appeared a man with a flashlight and a wolf mask on his face, blocking his way. Who are you? What do you want by blocking my way? Chen Pingin asked with a frown and a deep voice. Go find answers from the king of hell. The man with the wolf mask sneered and said, then raised his right hand, a powerful M500 revolver with a silencer aimed at Chen Pingin's head. When Chen Pingin saw the other person raise the gun, his face changed suddenly. He immediately raised his right hand as well and shot a golden needle from the dragon burial ring, hitting the man's wrist before he could pull the trigger. Besides being a token of the dragon burial hall, the dragon burial ring also had a greater function, which was a hidden weapon. Before the successor of the dragon burial ring became powerful, they could rely on this hidden weapon to save their lives. Ah, the man with the wolf mask suddenly felt a sharp pain in his wrist. The powerful M500 revolver hadn't even had a chance to pull the trigger before it fell to the ground. The masked man was greatly surprised. He instinctively bent down to pick up the gun in his hand, but before he could do so, Xin Pingin had already appeared in front of him like a ghost. He stepped on the M500 revolver with one foot and fiercely smashed his knee into the man's head. The man with the wolf mask didn't even have the ability to resist. He was knocked unconscious and fell to the ground. Chen Pingin retrieved his golden needle and then picked up the M500 revolver. He slowly took off the mask on the man's face, only to find that it was the former manager of Nine Stars KTV who had just been fired by him. After being fired, this guy held such deep hatred that he directly ambushed Chen Pingin with a gun, intending to kill him. Chen Pingin frowned again. For a while, he didn't know how to deal with the man. It was obviously impossible to shoot him dead. There were many surveillance cameras in many places on the street. If he killed the man, he would easily be traced back to himself by the police, which would be troublesome. If he didn't kill him, this bastard would continue to ambush him every day out of hatred, which would also give him a headache. Finally, an idea came to Chen Pingin's mind. He lightly pricked the man's head with the golden needle. These few needles had a profound effect. After the man woke up, he would become mentally deranged, forgetting what had happened before. By then, someone would definitely send him to a mental hospital. This would avoid the trouble of the man constantly ambushing him in the future and also serve as punishment for his ambush this time, killing two birds with one stone. After finishing all this, Xin Pingin took the man's M500 revolver and wolf mask. However, not long after he left, he encountered another problem. He found that Mu Wancheng's sports car had been forced to stop in the middle of the road by a van. Mu Wancheng and Xin Shiyu were being pulled out of the car by a group of men wearing stocking masks and pushed onto the van that was blocking the road. Ah, help! What are you doing? Let us go! And it seems that Mu Wancheng and Qin Shiyu, the two girls, will definitely not have a good ending if they are taken away by these people. After all, Mu Wancheng is now his nominal wife, and Qin Shiyu is his roommate. Based on these relationships, he has to take action. However, in order to prevent the two of them from knowing that he saved them and then falling in love with him, Xin Pingin put on the wolf mask he obtained from the former manager of Jioshin KTV. Stop! Seeing that the several men wearing stocking masks were about to push Mu Wancheng into the van, Xin Pingin, wearing the wolf mask, shouted and rushed forward. He kicked the several men wearing stocking masks to the ground. Damn it, someone actually wants to play the hero. Brothers, get your weapons. Let this hero know the cost of being a hero. The leader, who was kicked to the ground by Xin Pingin, also became angry and immediately shouted at his stocking masked subordinates. The subordinates immediately pulled out steel pipes from the van. But the next second, they instantly became timid. With a few clanging sounds, they immediately threw all the steel pipes on the ground. Because Chen Pingin took out the M500 revolver he confiscated from the former manager of Jioshin KTV. 
These people are all street thugs and have a certain understanding of handguns. Just by looking at it, they know that this gun is extremely powerful. Brothers, we can discuss things properly. We know we were wrong. The men wearing stocking masks raised their hands and trembled as they spoke to Chin Pingin. Mu Wanchang and Qin Shiyu were also frightened and dared not speak or move. What are you two still standing there for? Go! As a girl, you should not go out so late at night in the future. Fortunately, you met me this time. Next time, you may not be so lucky. Chen Pingin sternly lectured the two women. We understand. Thank you, hero. Mu Wanchang nervously replied. As soon as she said this, Chen Pingin's face under the mask twitched. The word hero mentioned by the other party reminded Chin Pingin of those beggars who wandered the streets shirtless and in their underwear. He was speechless. Seeing that Chen Pingin didn't speak, Qin Shiyu quickly pulled Mu Wancheng and ran towards their car. Just now, they had come out of Joshing KTV after singing, and on the way back, they were suddenly blinded by a strong flashlight. Mu Wancheng had to stop the car, but as soon as they stopped, someone came and smashed their car windows. In the screams of the two women, they were dragged out of the car. At this time, there was not a single pedestrian on the road, and there were no surveillance cameras nearby. Just when the two of them thought they were doomed tonight, Chin Pingin, wearing the wolf mask, appeared. With just a few moves, he scared the thugs and let them go. Just as Mu Wanchan was about to get in the car and leave, she suddenly stopped, bit her lip, and bravely ran back to Chin Pingin. Hero, can I add you on WeChat, so that we can repay you in the future? Mu Wanchan nervously asked Chin Pingin. Chin Pingin, who was already annoyed by Mu Wancheng's address as a hero, was almost driven crazy by her second sentence. Get lost, if you don't leave, I'll kill you. Chin Pingin didn't have much goodwill towards Mu Wancheng to begin with, and now her repeated use of the word hero made his opinion of her reach its lowest point. He directly pointed the gun at Mu Wancheng's head. I'm sorry, I just wanted to get your contact information to repay you in the future. If you don't want to give it, then forget it. We'll leave immediately. Mu Wanchang was so scared that her legs almost gave way. After explaining incoherently, she immediately ran back to the car without daring to stay for a moment, and drove away in a cloud of smoke. After Mu Wanchang's car had gone far, Chin Pingin turned to look at the several men wearing stocking masks. Tell me, why did you kidnap those two girls just now? Chin Pingin coldly asked, pointing the gun at the leader. Please spare us, hero. We were just doing it for the money, we have no grudge against those two girls. Please forgive us this time, we won't dare to do it again. The leader pleaded anxiously to Chin Pingin. Whose money did you take? Chin Pingin ripped off the stockings from their heads, revealing their faces, and asked coldly. We. The individuals whose stockings were torn off immediately covered their faces with their hands, stuttering and not daring to reveal who had hired them. Without hesitation, Chin Pingin aimed his gun at the leader's thigh and pulled the trigger. Ah! The leader screamed in pain, clutching his bleeding thigh as he crouched on the ground. In this silent night, his screams were loud and chilling, causing his companions to tremble in fear. If you don't confess, the next shot won't be as simple as the thigh. It could be the heart or even the head. Chin Pingin threatened in a low voice, playing with his M500 revolver. Can't I just say it? We received one million from Mr. Lu Jianxiong, the heir of the prestigious Lu family. He ordered us to kidnap Miss Mu. The leader, frightened, quickly revealed the mastermind behind the scenes. Why does the Lu family want to kidnap Miss Mu? Chen Pingin asked with a puzzled expression. Because the Mu family and the Lu family are competing for a project in the West City. The Lu family first tried to poison Mr. Mu to force the Mu family to withdraw, but Mr. Mu miraculously survived after two or three days of being dead. They wanted to kidnap Miss Mu to threaten the Mu family into withdrawing. We have told you everything we know, and we will give you the one million we received. Please spare our lives. The leader, no longer daring to hide anything, confessed everything he knew and wanted to use the one million they received to buy their lives. I don't want the one million. Use it to treat your leg injuries. I want you to secretly protect Miss Mu from now on and ensure that she is not harmed by anyone. If anything happens to Miss Mu, your fate will be the same as this van. Xin Pingin said, exerting all his strength to slap the van from top to bottom. The van, which had been bought just a few days ago, was instantly flattened into a piece of scrap metal. Even the four tires couldn't withstand Chen Pingin's force and burst. With a loud bang, the once intact van turned into a piece of scrap metal. The robbers were dumbfounded, staring wide-eyed in disbelief. Some of them even thought they were hallucinating and rubbed their eyes forcefully before looking again. The van was still flattened. Could a human really do this? If they hadn't seen it with their own eyes, they wouldn't have believed such a scene. If that slap had landed on their bodies, they would have been turned into minced meat. The leader was so scared that he wet his pants, emitting a foul smell. 
He secretly thanked his lucky stars that Chen Pingan had only shot at him earlier. If he had been slapped directly, he would have already turned into a pile of minced meat. Speak up. Chen Pingan saw that these people were trembling and not answering him, so he spoke in a low voice again. Yes, yes, we will definitely protect Miss Mu's safety in secret from now on. We will never let her be harmed by anyone. The leader was startled by Chen Pingan's voice and quickly knelt down, promising to Chen Pingan. This person in front of them was not human, he was a demon. A ruthless and merciless demon. And they had already seen the true face of this demon. With their reputation in Longcheng, it would be easy to find them. If Miss Mu has any accidents, he can already imagine their fate. When Mu Wan Orange and Qin Siyu returned to the Mu family, Mu Wan Orange's parents were already asleep. Qin Siyu was too scared to return to the apartment she shared with Li Runin, so she stayed overnight at Mu Wan Orange's house. The two beauties still felt lingering fear even when lying in bed. Xiu, who do you think those people were who tried to kidnap us just now? It seems like we haven't offended anyone. Mu Wan Orange asked her frightened best friend lying beside her. Isn't it obvious? It must be someone from the Lu family who is competing with your Mu family for the project in the west of the city. Your two families are participating in the bidding tomorrow. They must have wanted to kidnap us tonight and threaten the Mu group to give up the competition for the project in the west of the city. What I'm curious about is who saved us just now. Was it arranged by your father or grandfather to protect us, or was it just a kind-hearted passerby? Qin Shiyu guessed the identity of the kidnappers and became curious about Chen Pingan, who saved their lives. From the tone of the person who spoke to us, it doesn't seem like it was a bodyguard arranged by my father or grandfather. It should have been just a passerby. One person took down several kidnappers. That posture was so cool. That's a real man. My heart was pounding at that time, and I had a feeling of excitement. Unfortunately, I couldn't get his contact information. Mu Wan Orange analyzed the situation and explained. At the end, the frightened expression on her face disappeared, and a blush slowly appeared. Finally, she looked disappointed. No way, Miss Orange, you haven't even seen his face and you're already in love with him? Xin Shiyu was surprised by the change in Mu Wan Orange's expression. They had been best friends since college, and she had never seen her show such an expression for any guy. It was obvious that she was in love. I'm not in love with him. Besides, it's natural for a beauty to love a hero. He dared to stand up against so many strong kidnappers. It shows that he has a chivalrous heart. It's normal for Miss Orange to fall in love with him. Muan Orange quickly explained. She hadn't thought that much about it before. She just thought that the masked man who single-handedly dealt with so many kidnappers was cool. But after her friend said that, she really felt a sense of infatuation towards the hero she hadn't even seen. The more she thought about it, the more uncontrollable it became. Look at your infatuated expression. Don't tell me you're in love with him. Let me remind you, you're already married. If you fall in love with someone else now, it's considered cheating. You're done for. Qin Shiyu joked as she looked at Mu Wan Orange's infatuated expression. But as soon as she said that, Mu Wan Orange's face instantly changed. Yes, legally she was still in a husband and wife relationship with Qin Pingan, that scum. At least three months had to pass before they could get a divorce. No, in order to pursue her own happiness, she had to divorce that scum as soon as possible and regain her freedom. I want to divorce Qin Ping and that scum immediately, regain my freedom, and pursue my own happiness. Mu Wan Orange said firmly to her best friend. Put. Miss Orange, wake up. You haven't even seen the true face of that person. You don't know if he's ugly or handsome, and you don't know anything about his character. You don't even know if you'll have any future interactions. What's the point of pursuing happiness? Qin Shi Yu laughed at Mu Wan Orange's appearance and said sarcastically. I can't believe that my usually picky best friend could become so infatuated. If he can appear in front of us when we're in danger and save us, it proves that we have fate. Fate is a mysterious thing. I have a feeling that we will meet again in the future. Mu Wancheng seemed to be possessed. No matter what Qin Shi Yu said, she believed that tonight's events were deliberately arranged by fate for her to find her love. Okay, okay, tonight's events were deliberately arranged by fate for you to have a romantic encounter. Go to sleep quickly. Tomorrow, you have to go with your dad to participate in the bidding for the Chengxi renovation project. And when you're asleep, you'll have everything in your dreams. Qin Shi Yu couldn't stand it anymore and didn't want to continue arguing with Mu Wancheng about this issue. After speaking, she turned over and closed her eyes to sleep. Mu Wancheng was reminded by her best friend's words about having everything in her dreams, so she quickly went to sleep. Maybe she could really dream of the masked hero with the wolf mask. Chen Pingan, the person they were talking about, had no idea that wearing a mask to save Mu Wancheng and Qin Shi Yu would backfire. Mu Wancheng developed a liking for him because of the wolf mask. At this moment, 
Chen Pingin had just returned to the apartment he shared with Li Runin and Qin Shiyu, only to find that Li Runin was still asleep and Qin Shiyu hadn't come back yet. It was already past 2 o'clock when he checked the time, so he decided not to sleep. After taking a shower, he returned to his room and sat cross-legged on the bed, practicing the phoenix control technique he obtained from the third golden needle. Chen Pingin currently only possessed the profound power that his master had passed on to him before his death. Although this profound power made him incredibly strong and his reflexes much faster than an ordinary person's, these were just instinctive reactions. He didn't know how to use these powerful abilities. When facing an enemy, he could only resort to brute force, like clashing palms or punching a car. Just like a wild bull. However, after practicing the phoenix control technique, he would understand how to use the power within his body. According to his master, once he mastered the phoenix control technique, there would be a great surprise. However, his master didn't tell him what the surprise was, leaving him to explore it himself. The phoenix control technique had a total of nine levels. The first level was to sense the energy according to the technique's principles and gather it in the Dantian. Chen Pingin could skip this step because he had already accumulated powerful internal energy from his master. By simply following the technique's principles, he could reach the second level. The second level was to guide the energy in the Dantian through the body's meridians using the technique's mantra. Chen Pingin had already completed this step under his master's powerful internal energy. By following the technique's principles, he circulated his internal energy through the meridians and reached the third level. The third level was crucial. Under normal circumstances, one would use the cultivated internal energy to impact the Ren and Du meridians. Once the Ren and Du meridians were opened, one could enter the fourth level. For ordinary people, this level was difficult to break through, but for Chen Pingin, it was an easy task. Because he had received his master's profound internal energy, a simple surge of his powerful internal energy would break through his run and do meridians. However, his master's internal energy could only help him up to this point. His master had only practiced the phoenix control technique up to the sixth level. After receiving his master's internal energy, he absorbed only half of its power, wasting the other half. He would have to rely on himself to cultivate and progress beyond the fourth level. Time passed quickly for someone who was cultivating. By the time he stabilized at the fourth level of the phoenix control technique, it was already past nine o'clock the next morning. He was awakened by the voices of Li Runin and others in the living room. Otherwise, he might have remained in a meditative state until the evening. Curiously, Chen Pingin opened the door to his room and found not only Li Runin and Qin Shiyu in the living room but also Mu Wancheng's mother, who was also his temporary mother-in-law. And her temporary mother-in-law pushed one million cash in front of Li Runin. Miss Li, I have some understanding of your family's situation from Shi Yu's mouth. Your father's health has been maintained by medication since you were in high school. Your family's life is not easy. Now there is an opportunity to make a fortune in front of you. If you are willing to drive away Chen Pingin and not let him stay here, this one million will be yours. You won't have to worry about your father's medical expenses anymore. Mu Wancheng's mother said as she pushed the one million cash in front of Li Runin. Seeing Mu Wancheng's mother's actions, Chen Pingin took the opportunity while the three of them were not paying attention and quietly closed the door. He wanted to see how Li Runin would choose between money and their friendship. As for why her temporary mother-in-law appeared here, Chen Pingin could guess with his ass that Qin Shiyu thought she didn't have money to rent a house, so she told Mu's family about Li Runin taking her in, and also told Mu's family about Li Runin's situation. Mu's family wanted to use money to buy Li Runin and drive him out. When he had nowhere to go, they would bring him a sum of money and a divorce agreement to let him sign and divorce Mu Wancheng in advance. Chen Pingin had seen this kind of dog blood plot on TV many times. Not to mention, Chen Pingin guessed almost all the reasons and consequences of Mu's mother coming here today. Mu Wancheng got up early this morning and went to participate in the bidding for the renovation project of the old city in the west of the city with her father. Xin Shiyu got up late and talked to Mu Wancheng's mother about Chen Pingin becoming her roommate. Mu Wancheng's mother thought that Chen Pingin had nowhere to go so Li Runin took him in. After learning about Li Runin's difficult situation from Qin Shiyu, she came up with the current plan. As long as Qin Pingin was driven out by Li Runin and became homeless, they could bring him a sum of money and a divorce agreement to let him secretly sign and divorce Mu Wancheng. Li Runin had just woken up and was still trying to recall what happened last night when Qin Shiyu brought Mu Wancheng's mother back. They all thought that Qin Pingin was not at home, so Mu's mother directly explained her intentions to Li Runin in the living room and opened the bag containing one million cash. Stacks of red hundred yuan bills appeared in front of Li Runin. Li Runin, who had not fully awakened from last night's alcohol, was instantly shocked by the one million cash in front of her. 
She, a working girl who graduated from high school and supported her family, had worked hard for so many years to become a small teen leader with a monthly salary of 7,000. She still had to send two-thirds of it back home to buy medicine for her father every month. When had she ever seen so much money? What did you just say? As long as I drive away my good buddy Chen Pingyan and don't let him stay here, you will give me this one million? Li Runan asked Qin Shiyu and Mu's mother in disbelief. Qin Shiyu and Mu's mother smiled at each other and nodded vigorously. No, what grudge do you have with Qin Pingyan? Are you really willing to spend one million just to drive him away and make him homeless? Aren't you afraid that I will take the money and give him half, letting him rent a better house himself? Li Runan asked in confusion. She thought she was still dreaming and pinched her own face after speaking, feeling the pain before she could believe that all this was true. There really are pie falling from the sky. Xin Shiyu and Mu's mother saw Li Runan's shocked and excited expression after seeing the money, and they felt that their plan was working. Your family really needs this money. I know you won't do something like taking the money and giving him half. You don't need to worry about the grudge between us and Chen Pingyan. As long as you do as we say, the money will be yours. Mother Mu smiled and said, then pushed the one million cash in front of Li Runan. She thought it was worth spending one million to make that scum divorce her daughter. Besides, this one million was originally prepared for Qin Pingyan as a reward for saving their old master. They wanted Qin Pingyan to take the money and divorce Mu Wancheng, but Qin Pingyan, that scum, was greedy and wanted to take over the entire Mu family. So don't blame the Mu family for not giving him a single penny. Mother Mu could already imagine Qin Pingyan being kicked out by Li Runan and ending up on the streets, looking regretful and remorseful. I'm sorry, ma'am. Although I, Li Runan, am poor and in need of this money, Qin Pingyan is my buddy. Our friendship cannot be measured by money. He is in trouble now, and as a friend, I won't abandon him and let him end up on the streets for money. Please take the money back. Just when Qin Shiyu and Mother Mu thought everything was going smoothly, Li Runan made a decision that shocked them. She pushed the one million back and firmly refused their request. What did you just say? Repeat it again, Mother Mu thought she misheard and subconsciously asked Li Runan to repeat herself. I said the friendship between Qin Pingyan and me cannot be measured by money. Even if you bring 10 million or a billion in front of me, I won't kick him out. Please take the money back. Li Runin finished speaking and wanted to go back to her room. She had already remembered what happened last night. After she went to work last night, she wanted to see if the manager could arrange a job for Chen Pingyan. But the manager asked her to accompany a guest for drinks instead, saying that if she pleased this guest tonight, not only could she arrange a job for Chen Pingyan, but she could also get a promotion and a raise. That Zhao guy wanted to get her drunk as soon as he saw her and she could easily guess what he had in mind. If it weren't for Qin Pingyan showing up in time, she would have already fallen victim to the manager and that Zhao guy. She knew that she was safe and sound now because Qin Pingyan saved her. The background of Jioxing KTV was not simple, and she wondered how Qin Pingyan was doing now. Just as Li Runan was about to leave, Mother Mu immediately signaled to Qin Shiyu. Qin Shiyu understood and reached out to stop Li Runan from leaving, saying, Runan, won't you reconsider? Opportunities like this, where money falls from the sky, may not come again in a lifetime. If you miss it, you might truly miss it forever. That's right, once this opportunity is gone, there won't be another chance. Think about your bedridden father. Even if you don't think for yourself, you should think for your father, Mother Mu once again earnestly persuaded Li Runan. If someone didn't know, they would think she genuinely cared about Li Runan. I do need money, but I won't earn money that goes against my conscience. I will earn my father's medical expenses through my own efforts so you don't need to worry about me. Li Runin was starting to get impatient, and her voice turned cold. If this woman wasn't Qin Shiyu's roommate, she would have kicked her out directly. Humph, with your limited vision, it's no wonder you've only been a supervisor at Joshin KTV for so many years. To make big money, you need to have a broader perspective, girl, do you understand? Mother Mu also lost her patience and became less polite when speaking to Li Runin. As her words fell, someone knocked on the door of the apartment that Li Runin shared with Qin Shiyu. Hearing the knocking, everyone instinctively thought it was Qin Pingyan returning. Li Runan walked over and opened the door. Excuse me, is Li Runan living here? A beautiful woman standing outside politely asked. I am Li Runan. Is there something you need from me? Upon hearing that someone was looking for her, Li Runan fixed her gaze and discovered that it was actually the HR manager of Jioshin KTV. Her heart skipped a beat. The HR manager personally coming to find her? Could it be about what happened last night? Is the manager angry and planning to fire her? The manager did mention last night that if she couldn't satisfy that young master Zhao, not only would she not be able to help Chen Pingon find a job, but she wouldn't need to come to work anymore either. Chen Pingon took her away midway through last night, so the manager and young master Zhao must be very angry. 
Thinking of this, Li Runin's expression became extremely unpleasant. M.S. Li Runin, hello. I am Zhao Mengxi, the HR manager of Jioxing KTV. Last night, our boss officially appointed you as the general manager of Jioxing KTV. From now on, you will be fully responsible for the daily management and operation of Jioxing KTV. Your annual salary will be 3 million yuan. Considering that your family is in a difficult situation, the boss has specially advanced you half a year's salary. I have come today to formally present you with the appointment letter. Congratulations, General Manager Li. Please take care of us in the future. After the HR manager of Joshin KTV finished speaking, he handed a newly made appointment letter and a check for 1. 5 million yuan to a bewildered Li Runin. These were all arranged by Chin Pingon with the HR department last night. Originally, Mu's mother and Qin Shiyu wanted to persuade Li Runin again, but they were confused by the words of the HR manager of Joshin KTV. They thought they were mistaken this time, but when they confirmed that the scene in front of them was real, the two of them stood awkwardly in place. They had just said that Li Runin had a small vision, earning only a few thousand yuan a month and would never make big money. Who knew that they would be proven wrong so quickly? Li Runin was directly promoted to general manager with an annual salary of 3 million yuan. The 1 million yuan cash they brought suddenly seemed insignificant and made them appear stingy. I, I've been promoted to the general manager of Jioxing KTV? Manager Zhao, are you mistaken? Li Runin dared not reach out to accept the appointment letter in check, asking in a bewildered manner. Last night, she had angered the general manager and young master Zhao. Shouldn't she have been fired instead? Why did they promote her to manager instead? Although being a manager had always been her dream, her dream was only to be the manager of a single store's lobby. But now, according to the other party's meaning, the boss was directly making her the general manager in charge of managing nearly a hundred stores under Joshin KTV. This must be a mistake. Or maybe she was dreaming. Yes, it must be a dream. Otherwise, how could she encounter such strange things today? First, her roommate brought a woman back and gave her 1 million yuan in cash to drive Chen Pingon away, and now she was inexplicably promoted to general manager. Such things only happen in dreams. Manager Zhao, can you slap me to see? Li Runin looked at the HR manager and said something that made the HR manager puzzled. What you're saying is too fantastical. I, Li Runin, am just a small team leader in the welcoming department. How could the boss promote me to manager, let alone general manager? Slap me to see, if all of this is just a dream, this slap definitely won't hurt. Seeing the HR manager's puzzled expression, Li Runin quickly explained. Ha ha ha, the HR manager burst into laughter at Li Runin's words. General Li, you are really humorous. I have already delivered the appointment letter. My task is complete. I will go back to work now. The HR manager thought that Li Runin was joking with her, so after speaking, she handed the appointment letter and checked to Li Runin and went back to work. Even after the HR manager left, Li Runin still hadn't snapped out of her confusion. Li Runin opened the appointment letter, and her name was indeed written on it. The one, 5 million yuan check was also real. In order to confirm the authenticity of this matter, Li Runin pinched her face hard until she felt the pain, only then did she believe it was true. However, what she couldn't figure out was why the boss suddenly promoted her to general manager for no reason. Just at that moment, Chen Pingan opened the door and walked out of the room. Xin Shiyu and Mu's mother's expressions changed when they saw Chen Pingan come out. It turned out that this kid had been in the room all along and didn't come out. Seeing his energetic appearance, it didn't seem like he had just woken up. Did he overhear their conversation with Li Runin just now? Xin Shiyu stared at Chen Pingan for a while, trying to see something from his face. The Phoenix Control Technique, as the name suggests, has a great attraction to women after cultivation. Chen Pingan, who had already cultivated the Phoenix Control Technique to the fourth level, exuded a special charm that attracted the opposite sex. Xin Shiyu, who had just looked at Chen Pingan, suddenly felt that his facial features were distinct and his eyes were resolute. He didn't seem as annoying as before. Moreover, she couldn't help but think of what happened last night when Chen Pingan broke into the bathroom and saw her naked. Two blushes appeared on her face. This accelerated heartbeat made her feel a little flustered. Auntie, Orange should be back soon. Shall I take you back first? Qin Shiyu, who was inexplicably flustered, instinctively wanted to leave. After saying that, she pulled Mu Wancheng's mother away without saying anything. But, we haven't achieved our goal yet. Mu's mother didn't even finish her sentence before she was pulled away by Qin Shiyu. Qin Pingan, what happened in the KTV after I got drunk last night? Did the manager and that Zhao guy give you a hard time? Li Runin turned her head and curiously asked Chen Pingan with a face full of curiosity. They wanted to give me a hard time, but I've learned a lot of skills in prison over the years. 
I dealt with them easily, and in the end, they could only watch as I took you away. Chen Pingan didn't hide anything from Li Runin and simply told her what happened in the private room last night. Oomph, you're just bragging. Li Runin obviously didn't believe Chen Pingan's words. She believed that Chen Pingan could save her from Joshin KTV. After all, Chen Pingan had spent so many years in prison, and anyone would know that people who come out of prison are quite tough. But she wouldn't believe that Chen Pingan could easily rescue her from Joshin KTV. The security guards at Joshin KTV were not easy to deal with. Almost all of them were retired special forces, and she didn't think Chen Pingan had the ability to compete with those retired special forces. What's even stranger is that the manager of the personnel department came to her house early this morning and announced that she had become the general manager. If you don't believe it, then forget it. Chen Pingan shrugged his shoulders and didn't force the other party to believe him. Seeing that Li Runin had just rejected Mu's family's bribe, Chen Pingan felt warm in his heart and felt that what he did last night was worth it. By the way, there's bread and milk in the fridge. Have it for breakfast. I have something to do and need to go out first. Li Runin didn't even put on makeup, changed into a set of clothes, and ran out. Seeing Li Runin leave in a hurry, Chen Pingan guessed that she must be going to Jiuxin KTV to verify the authenticity of her position as general manager. Chen Pingan immediately called his secretary. Secretary Lu, arrange a car for the newly appointed general manager Li Runin. It should be a bit upscale. And if Li wants to ask about the identity of the new boss, help me hide my identity. Don't let her know that I am the new boss. Also, say hello to those high-level executives from last night. After connecting with the secretary's call, Chen Pingan instructed the secretary. As a good buddy, Li Runin understands his personality better than anyone else. She is a tough woman who is even stronger than men. If the other person knows that she is the new boss, she will definitely feel pity for herself, as if she is being pitted and given charity. She will definitely not accept this high-paying position. Another point is that if Li Runin knows that the person is now her boss, even if she reluctantly accepts this position for the sake of her father, they will become a superior subordinate relationship, and she will become submissive and dare not treat him as her buddy anymore. Okay, boss. The secretary on the phone is a very qualified secretary, obedient and never asks why Chen Pingan wants to do this. The secretary's performance satisfies Chen Pingan very much. You can go busy now, I'll call you later. Chen Pingan hung up the phone satisfactorily, had breakfast, and continued to practice his phoenix control technique in the room. Not long after, Li Runin rushed to Joshin KTV in a hurry. General Manager Li, hello. General Manager Li, you're here. The employees who were on the morning shift had already received the news that KTV had changed owners during the morning meeting. They respectfully greeted Li Runin one by one for the matter of her becoming the general manager. With a heart full of doubts, Li Runin went straight to the boss's office. Twenty minutes later, Li Runin walked out of the boss's office, still holding the key to a Mercedes-Benz car in her hand. From the secretary, she learned that not only was she inexplicably promoted to general manager by the boss, but KTV also changed owners last night, and the lobby manager was fired by the new owner for colliding with him. The secretary also gave her a key to a luxury car, saying it was given to her by the boss. Who is the new boss after all? Why promote herself to general manager? She tried to recall what happened last night. Could it be that Zhao Gongzi is the new owner of their KTV? Who cares who the new boss is? Since I've been promoted to general manager, let's first arrange some benefits for my buddy. Let's make Chen Ping and my assistant at KTV. Li Runin drove the luxury car provided by the company back to her apartment. Chen Ping, bring your ID and come with me. Just as she returned to the apartment, Li Runin shouted at Chen Ping, who was practicing in the room. Shouldn't you invite me for a drink to celebrate after becoming the general manager? Why do I need to bring my ID? Chen Ping came out of the room, looking puzzled. Of course, I'm going to help you find a job. It's not easy for you to just come out looking for work. Now that my buddy has become the general manager, I naturally want to arrange a good job for you to do. We can celebrate after your job is settled. Li Runin was as carefree as ever, and she didn't bother to think about who the new boss was. She wanted to secure benefits for her buddy first. What kind of job do you want to arrange for me? Chen Pingin became even more curious. My assistant or the deputy captain of security, with an annual salary of 500,000. You can choose whichever you want, Li Runin said generously to Chen Pingin. Besides securing a high-paying job for her buddy, she also wanted to force the new boss to come out and meet her. If she directly offers her buddy an annual salary of 500,000, she doesn't believe that the new boss won't be heartbroken and come out to stop her. If he doesn't come out, then her buddy will have a high-paying job of 500,000 for nothing. When Chen Pingin heard this, he almost sprayed out the water he was drinking. 
Your assistant or deputy captain of security can earn an annual salary of 500,000. I am the general manager now, fully responsible for the management and operation of Joshin KTV. If I want to give you an annual salary of 500,000, then it's 500,000. What's wrong? Don't you want it? Li Runin replied with a domineering expression. Chen Pingin scratched his head. What do you mean? Don't you want this high paying job? Li Runin became unhappy when she saw Chen Pingin shaking his head, and she questioned him dissatisfiedly. I don't want to be your subordinate. Chen Pingin finished speaking without explaining further, and got up to walk towards the door. If he were to become Li Runin's assistant or vice captain at KTV, wouldn't it quickly be revealed that he is the new owner of Joshin KTV? When Li Runin finds out that he is the hidden boss, she will definitely be conflicted. Chen Pingin's words left Li Runin stunned, unable to refute him. Where are you going? Li Runin quickly asked when she saw Chen Pingin about to leave. Of course, I'm going to find a job. Otherwise, are you going to support me? Chen Pingin, who had already reached the door, turned around and delivered a classic line before leaving without looking back. Li Runin, who was left behind, really wanted to say that she could support him now, but she couldn't bring herself to say those words. She knew that Chen Pingin, like her, was not the type to live off others. After Chen Pingin left the apartment, he immediately called manager Shen, who he met last night, asking for his help in finding a job. With his current resume, it would be difficult to find a good job. And if he couldn't find a job, Li Runin would definitely force him to work at Joshin KTV. What? Mr. Chen, you want me to help you find a job? Manager Shin on the other end of the phone was confused by Chin Pingin's request, thinking that he was joking. That's right, any job will do. I just want it to be easy and the salary doesn't matter. Chen Pingin confidently replied. Okay, I'll ask my friends in the industry for you and get back to you later. Manager Shin knew Chin Pingin's assets the best. He had billions of dollars in cash alone, equivalent to hundreds of billions in RMB, not to mention the billions of dollars worth of gold and antiques. He thought Chin Pingin was just bored and looking for a job to pass the time, especially with Chin Pingin's comment about wanting an easy job and not caring about the salary, which confirmed his own thoughts. Manager Shin quickly called Chen Pingin back. The beautiful CEO of Sihai Group happened to be looking for a male assistant, and Manager Shin had already informed her, so Chen Pingin could go directly to Sihai Group. Moreover, Manager Shin specifically mentioned that Sihai Group was on par with Wuxia Group. The late boss of Sihai Group, Chen Changsheng, along with Wu Xingjie and Li Qiushui from Wuxia Group, were known as the three demons of the Southwest. After Chen Changsheng's death, his adopted daughter took over the management of Sihai Group. Chen Pingin didn't care about these so-called demons. He just wanted to find a good job and not have Li Runin worry about his work anymore. Of course, the stronger the company's strength and background, the better, so he wouldn't have to worry about unemployment. After receiving the call from manager Shen, Chen Pingin immediately took a car to the headquarters of Sihai Group. Sihai Group was one of the top groups in Longchang, with a headquarters building that was over 30 stories high and covered several acres of land. When Chen Pingin arrived at the headquarters of Sihai Group, he was stopped by the receptionist as soon as he entered the company's gate. Sir, who are you looking for? Do you have an appointment? The two beautiful receptionists stopped Chen Pingin, who didn't have a work badge, and politely asked. I'm looking for your CEO. Someone has already contacted her just now. You can make a call to confirm. Chen Pingin didn't force his way in, but politely said. However, he felt a bit discouraged in his heart. Such a big company, even entering required an appointment, and the work must be very strict so it wouldn't be an easy job. Hello, sir. The CEO is not seeing any visitors today. Please leave. The beautiful receptionist said something that left Chen Pingin stunned. Didn't manager Shen say that he had already informed Sihai Group and that he could come directly to Sihai Group? Was manager Shen not reliable enough? It would be embarrassing to be kicked out like this. Chen Pingin happened to want to test the power of his four-layered phoenix technique. He took a few steps outside and saw the two receptionists bowing their heads to organize their work. He gathered his internal energy into his feet and ran in with all his might. One of the front desk staff happened to look up and saw a figure floating past them like a gust of wind. Shan Shan, I just saw a figure float past us. The front desk staff quickly pulled their colleagues' clothes and said uncertainly, Put, are you seeing things? Even if there are unclean things, they wouldn't dare to come out during the day. Please, scare me at night when it's dark, okay? The other front desk staff named Shan Shan thought her colleague was joking and gave her a disdainful look before continuing her work. The front desk staff, hearing her colleague's words, also thought she was seeing things. At this time, Chen Pingin had already taken the elevator to the 30th floor. The 30th floor housed the CEO's office and rest area, gym, conference room, and so on. 
Chen Pingin pushed open the door and walked into the CEO's office. The spacious office only had a set of leather sofas and two desks, giving off a very minimalist vibe. Two beautiful women were working with their heads down inside the office. The woman sitting at the secretary's desk was wearing a white shirt and a pencil skirt, with her long hair tied up at the back of her head. She could be described as beautiful in terms of both her figure and her skin. However, when Chen Pingin entered the CEO's office, his gaze only lingered on the secretary for a second or two. When his gaze met the beautiful CEO of the Four Seas Group, he was momentarily stunned, and then a flash of hatred burst forth, faintly discernible. Sitting behind the CEO's desk, the beautiful CEO of the Four Seas Group was wearing a light blue high-end women's shirt on her upper body, with her long hair tied up at the back of her head, giving off a very capable and intellectual aura. Even if she didn't raise her head, Xin Pingin could recognize at a glance that the beautiful CEO in front of him was one of the female college students he had sponsored in the past, Yao Weiwei. She was one of the women who had framed him and caused him to be imprisoned. Unexpectedly, five years had passed, and she had become the CEO of a multi-billion dollar conglomerate. Yao Weiwei, who was busy, felt someone staring at her. She looked up in confusion and was stunned when she saw Chen Pingin's face. A look of panic appeared on her stunning features. The secretary also noticed Chen Pingin, who appeared out of nowhere at some point. She was greatly surprised and stood up from her seat, reprimanding Chen Pingin, Who are you? When did you barge into the CEO's office? Please leave immediately, or I'll call security. After the secretary finished speaking, she intended to pick up the phone on the desk to call security. Sharan, there's no need to call security. I know him, so you can leave first. At this moment, CEO Gao Weiwei spoke up to stop her and asked her to leave. The secretary was surprised to hear Gao Weiwei's words, but since the CEO said so, she could only put down the phone and leave the office. After the secretary left, Gao Weiwei hurriedly left her desk and walked towards the gloomy-faced Chen Pingin. Senior Chen, when did you? Gao Weiwei had just opened her mouth when the gloomy-faced Chen Pingin suddenly reached out and grabbed her neck, forcefully pushing her onto the high-end leather sofa. Why? I kindly use two-thirds of my income every month to support your education. Why did you frame me? Why? Tell me. Chen Pingin couldn't control his emotions any longer. His eyes turned crimson, and in a frenzy, he tightly squeezed Gao Weiwei's neck and roared. The two things he wanted to do most after being released from prison were to see his mother and sister, and then find the seven ungrateful women who had framed him and ask them why they treated him like this. He had originally planned to find his mother and sister first before finding those seven heartless women, but unexpectedly, he encountered Gao Weiwei before finding his mother and sister. When he returned to his alma mater that year, he learned that several junior female students were from difficult backgrounds. Because he had also experienced difficulties himself, he empathized with them and understood their situation. He chose a few of the more hardworking and ambitious junior students and used two-thirds of his income each month to support them, allowing them to focus on their studies. Little did he know that instead of gratitude, he would be met with heartless betrayal. He felt a deep hatred in his heart. He hated himself for being so foolish back then. He hated them for being so heartless. If it weren't for their betrayal, he wouldn't have ended up in prison, and his mother and sister would surely be living happily under his care. Now, not only has his own life been ruined, but his mother and sister are also missing, their whereabouts unknown. He really wants to strangle the woman in front of him, but he is unwilling to end her life so easily. He also wants to know where the other six ungrateful women who conspired against him are. He wants all those who betrayed him to pay a painful price. Chen Shuizhang, let go of me first. Gao Weiwei was being fiercely choked by Chen Pingin. Her face slowly turned purple due to the lack of blood circulation, making it difficult for her to breathe. She struggled hard to break free. Instead of releasing her, Chen Pingin tightened his grip even more. Didn't you all say back then that I forcibly violated you? Well, today I will fulfill your wish. Chen Pingin said as he squeezed the neck of the beautiful CEO Gao Weiwei with one hand and grabbed her collar with the other, pulling it forcefully. With a tearing sound, the expensive yellow women's shirt on Gao Weiwei's body was easily torn to shreds by Chin Pingin, revealing her snow-white skin and the round peaks wrapped in sexy high-end lingerie. Because Chin Pingin exerted some force while tearing the clothes, his nails left a long scratch between the peaks. Against the backdrop of the milky white skin, it appeared alluring and sexy. Please, don't. Gao Weiwei was frightened by Chin Pingin's actions, her face pale, and she struggled even harder. But what she didn't know was that the more she struggled and despaired, the more it aroused Chen Pingin's desire to conquer. Faced with the ungrateful scoundrel who had ruined her life, Chen Pingin not only did not show mercy and let her go because of her struggles, but also reached for the high-end underwear that was at least a D-cup. Whether it was out of despair or exhaustion, the high-end mighty female CEO gradually gave up struggling, closed her eyes, 
and tears streamed down her cheeks. Just as Chin Pingan was about to tear off the high-end underwear on Gao Weiwei's body, the commotion outside the office made him stop. Mr. Chen, the CEO is meeting with other guests inside, you can't go in. Get out of my way, whoever dares to stop me today, I'll kill them. The secretary and a man outside the office were arguing. The next second, the door of Gao Weiwei's office was kicked open by someone from outside. A man in his thirties, accompanied by a group of fierce-looking men, barged into Gao Weiwei's office. When they saw Gao Weiwei being pressed down on the sofa by Chen Pingan, with her clothes in disarray and Chen Pingan's hand about to tear off her last line of defense, the man and the men behind him were stunned, and so was Gao Weiwei's secretary. Chen Pingan saw a group of angry people barging in, obviously having a grudge against Gao Weiwei, and instinctively let go of her. Gao Weiwei, who had regained her freedom, hurriedly covered her snow-white body with her clothes, and the group of men who had broken in from outside finally recovered. Didn't you say that this woman surnamed Gao was meeting with guests? Is having sex with a man in the office what you call meeting with guests? The man turned to Gao Weiwei's secretary and questioned. Obviously, he mistook Chen Pingan for Gao Weiwei's kept man. I. The secretary didn't know how to answer for a moment, because she didn't expect the CEO to be fooling around with this man who suddenly appeared in the office. No wonder the CEO had never shown interest in any man over the years. It turned out that she already had someone in her heart, and such a handsome and charming man at that. Because Chin Pingan had cultivated the phoenix taming technique, when the beautiful secretary looked at him, she felt that he exuded a charming aura, and just a glance or two could secretly captivate a person. Suddenly, the secretary felt that the Chin Pingan in front of her seemed somewhat familiar. There was a photo of this man in the CEO's office desk drawer, and the CEO would often stare at that photo absentmindedly when she had nothing to do. Chen Xinian, why did you bring so many people to my office? Are you here to rebel? Gao Weiwei straightened her clothes, covered up the exposed spring scenery, and stood up from the sofa, looking at the man who barged into her office with a frosty expression. You guessed right, today I am here to rebel. Chen Xinian, the man referred to as such by Gao Weiwei, didn't hide his intentions at all. After speaking, he directly took out a gun from his pocket and pressed it against Chen Pingan's head. The Four Seas Organization and the Four Seas Group were both established by my uncle. They are the industries of our Chen family. You are just my uncle's adopted daughter, an outsider. Now that he's dead, the power of the Four Seas Organization and the Four Seas Group should be in the hands of the legitimate heir of our Chen family. What right do you, an outsider, have to control the Four Seas Organization and the Four Seas Group? Today, I am here to take over the Four Seas Organization and the Four Seas Group. Hand over the power quickly, otherwise, I will kill your lover first, and then kill you. Chen Xinian pointed the gun at Chen Pingan's head and threatened Gao Weiwei. His actions stunned everyone present. Chen Pingan's face became even darker. It seemed that the other party had misunderstood what they saw when they came in earlier, and even mistook him for Gao Weiwei's lover, so they pointed a gun at his own head to threaten Gao Weiwei. It seemed that this misunderstanding was quite serious. Chen Xinian, he is not my lover. If there is something, you can come to me alone. Don't involve innocent people. Gao Weiwei explained anxiously when she saw Chen Pingan being held at gunpoint. Since he is not your lover, why are you so nervous? Chen Xinian asked with a cold smile. I. Gao Weiwei was left speechless by the question. Gao Weiwei's actions confirmed Chen Xinian's suspicion that Chen Pingan in front of him was undoubtedly Gao Weiwei's kept lover. Even Gao Weiwei's secretary, Fang Xiaoran, was shocked by Gao Weiwei's speechlessness. President Gao Weiwei was usually decisive and never hesitated. Today, she became flustered to protect the man who suddenly came to her door? Fang Xiaoran had known Gao Weiwei for a long time, but it was the first time she had seen President Gao Weiwei in such a panic. Even when Gao Weiwei was trapped with the old chairman in the past, she never frowned, let alone showed such panic. That's why the childless old chairman didn't hand over the group to his own nephew, Chen Xinian, before he died, but instead entrusted it to Gao Weiwei, his adopted daughter. Chen Xinian, if you dare to harm him, I will make sure that everyone in the Chen family accompanies him in death. I, Gao Weiwei, keep my word. After calming down, Gao Weiwei regained her usual elegance and threatened Chen Xinian in a sinister tone. Gao Weiwei's icy words made Chen Xinian involuntarily take a small step back. However, Chen Xinian quickly realized that he had a gun in his hand, and he had brought so many people with him today. Even if Gao Weiwei was strong and capable, she couldn't possibly be his opponent alone. Chen Shenyan's expression gradually calmed down. Humph, stop pretending here. I advise you to obediently hand over the Four Seas Demon Order. Otherwise, I don't mind killing you and your lover before slowly searching for the Four Seas Demon Order. After Chen Shenyan finished speaking, he pointed the gun at Chen Pingan's head. 
The Four Seas Organization was a very strict organization, with four demon generals in charge of the organization's battles, logistics, finance, and personnel departments. Only by obtaining the Four Seas Demon Order could one command the four demon generals of the Four Seas Organization. Even if he took over the Four Seas Group now, it would be useless without the Four Seas Demon Order. And his uncle, Chen Shangsheng, one of the three demon kings of the Southwest, entrusted the Four Seas Group to Gao Weiwei before his death and even the Four Seas Demon Order was handed over to Gao Weiwei. There are two ways to become the Four Seas Demon King. The first is to be appointed by the previous generation of Four Seas Demon Kings and receive the Four Seas Demon Order. If the previous generation of Four Seas Demon Kings did not designate a candidate, then it would be determined through internal competition within the Four Seas organization. Some time ago, the Four Seas Demon King Chen Changsheng unexpectedly passed away, and only Gao Weiwei was by his side. The Four Seas Demon Order fell into Gao Weiwei's hands. Chen Xinian planned for several days before staging this power struggle today. He had already forged evidence that his uncle had designated him as the successor to the Four Seas Demon King before his death, and now he only lacked the Four Seas Demon Order in Gao Weiwei's hands. As long as he obtained the Four Seas Demon Order, he would be in charge of the Four Seas organization in the future. However, what he didn't expect was to discover today that Gao Weiwei, who had always been indifferent to men, was actually fooling around with a man in the office. This was definitely an unexpected joy for him. A woman as cold as Gao Weiwei, actually engaging in such behavior with a man in the office, meant that she loved this man very much. This was her weakness, and he could use this man to threaten Gao Weiwei. I can give you the Four Seas magic token, but the condition is that you must release him first. Otherwise, even if you kill me, you won't get the Four Seas magic token. Gao Weiwei said without hesitation, shocking Secretary Fang Xiaoran once again. You should know that the Four Seas Magic Token is the President's Talisman. Once it is lost, the Chen family will not fear her. Once the Chen family obtains the Four Seas Magic Token, they will definitely find a way to get rid of her in order to completely control the Four Seas Group and the Four Seas Organization. But now, the President actually agreed to hand over the Four Seas Magic Token for this man, disregarding her own safety. It can be seen how important this man is in the President's heart. You don't have the qualification to negotiate with me now. Hand over the Four Seas Magic Token immediately, and I can let you all leave together. I'll give you 10 seconds to consider. If you don't hand over the Four Seas Magic Token after 10 seconds, I will put a hole in your lover's body. If you hesitate for a minute, I will shoot once. If you hesitate for 10 minutes, I will shoot 10 times, starting from the thigh and moving up. Chen Xinian said, moving the gun from Chen Pingan's head to his thigh. You've chosen the wrong person. Just as Chen Xinian moved the gun, a cold and chilling voice came from Chen Pingan's mouth. When Chen Pingan spoke, his body moved as well. Chen Shunyan's wrist was caught by Chen Pingan when he was moving his hand with the gun. With a slight force, Chen Shunyan's wrist felt a sharp pain. Ah, my hand hurts. Chen Shunyan screamed, and the gun in his hand fell to the ground. Chen Pingan took the opportunity to kick the gun, kicking it to Gao Weiwei's feet. This scene happened in an instant, and before everyone could react, Chen Shunyan's gun was already at Gao Weiwei's feet. Gao Weiwei, who had been looking for an opportunity to save Chen Pingan, saw this scene and her eyes lit up. She quickly bent down, picked up Chen Shunyan's gun, and pointed it at his head. Chen Shunyan was terrified. How did the situation that he had controlled suddenly change? The people brought by Chen Shunyan subconsciously took out their weapons and surrounded Chen Pingan and Gao Weiwei. Don't move, all of you back off, or I'll shoot him. With a gun in her hand, Gao Weiwei immediately regained her decisive style and threatened the people surrounding her and Chen Pingan. Don't make any rash moves, all of you back off. Chen Shinian, who had a gun pointed at his head, panicked and quickly ordered his men to retreat. He knew better than anyone what kind of woman Gao Weiwei was. Gao Weiwei had climbed up from being a secretary by Chen Changsheng's side step by step. She had risked her life several times with his uncle Chen Changsheng, and she had defeated several enemies that even he, Chen Shinian, had not dared to provoke before. If he didn't make his men retreat, Chen Shinian knew that Gao Weiwei would definitely shoot him. Even Chen Pingan was surprised by Cao Weiwei's quick reaction. If it were an ordinary girl, she would have been scared and unable to act in such a situation. How could she still be so decisive and swift? The Gao Weiwei in front of him seemed to be different from the weak female college student he had known five years ago. President Gao, I was just joking with you earlier. Please don't take it seriously. I will leave with my men now and won't bother you again. After ordering his subordinates to leave, Chen Shunyan's face showed a smile that was even uglier than crying as he begged Gao Weiwei for mercy. I won't treat what you just did as a joke. Since you dared to threaten me, Gao Weiwei, you must pay the price. Gao Weiwei coldly replied, and Chen Shunyan was so scared that his legs gave way, and he knelt down with a thud. General Gao, 
I know I was wrong. I shouldn't have been so foolish. I beg you, for the sake of my uncle Chen Changsheng, please spare me this time. I promise I will never have any ambitions for the position of the Demon King again. Please give me a chance. Chen Xinian pleaded, clutching onto Gao Weiwei's leg with a panicked expression. Take your filthy hands off me. I, Gao Weiwei, always keep my word. I said I would make you pay the price, so you must pay the price. Gao Weiwei kicked Chen Xinian away and pointed her gun at his thigh. Ah, my leg. After the gunshot, a spray of blood splattered from Chen Shinian's thigh, accompanied by his screams of agony. The once arrogant Chen Shinian sat on the ground, clutching his bleeding thigh, in utter despair. Take him out so he doesn't dirty the floor of my office. Gao Weiwei coldly ordered the people Chen Shinian had brought with him. Gao Weiwei's indifferent expression and ruthless actions silenced everyone Chen Shinian had brought. No one dared to speak up. Several people hurriedly carried the still wailing Chen Shinian out of Gao Weiwei's office. Secretary, immediately fire all the security guards, managers, and receptionists on the day shift. After Chin Xinian was taken away, Gao Weiwei turned to her secretary, Fang Xiaoran, and gave the order. Chen Xinian was able to brazenly bring so many people into her office without her or her secretary receiving any prior information, indicating that the security guards and receptionists on the day shift had been bribed by Chen Xinian. To prevent such incidents from happening again, she had to replace all the security guards and receptionists on the day shift. She wouldn't even spare the manager of the security department. She would rather kill a thousand innocent people than let one go. Yes, President. I will arrange it immediately. After receiving Gao Weiwei's order, the secretary understood the seriousness of the situation and quickly left to make arrangements. After the secretary left, only Gao Weiwei and Chen Pingan remained in the office. Gao Weiwei walked over, closed and locked the office door, and then returned to face Chen Pingan. Originally, Gao Weiwei had a frosty expression, but when facing Chin Pingan, that expression instantly melted away, replaced by nervousness and confusion. Senior Chen, are you hurt? Gao Weiwei asked Chen Pingan, feeling at a loss. Why did you do that back then? Who ordered you to do it? Chen Pingan didn't answer Gao Weiwei's question directly but instead questioned the events of the past. He didn't believe that the seven of them would unjustly frame their benefactor without reason. The only explanation was that someone had bribed or threatened them to do so. Gao Weiwei and the other six ungrateful people wouldn't be let off the hook. He also intended to find out the mastermind behind it all and hold them accountable. No one ordered us back then. It was our own personal actions. If you think that retaliating against us can make up for the harm we caused you back then, go ahead, I won't resist or blame you. If you want compensation, just ask. Whether it's money, power, or anything else within my capabilities, I will fulfill your request. As for the other six people from back then, we went our separate ways after graduating from university and haven't been in contact since. I don't know where they are now. Gao Weiwei's response surprised Chen Pingan, but he quickly noticed her evasive gaze and how she quickly lowered her head, unable to meet his eyes. There was only one possibility for this situation, Gao Weiwei was lying. Your eyes clearly tell me that you're lying. Be honest and confess. Who was behind you all back then, and what was their motive? Chen Pingan directly exposed Gao Weiwei's lies and aggressively questioned her again. Yes. We were coerced into framing you back then, but the person who instructed us has too much power. I can tell you his identity won't benefit you in any way, and it might even harm you. Can you just consider us seven wolves with ungrateful hearts, intentionally framing you? Please, stop asking. Gao Weiwei seemed to know that her lies couldn't fool Chin Pingin anymore. She didn't continue lying, but she refused to reveal the person behind their actions or their motives. Gao Weiwei's actions furrowed Chin Pingin's brow. Gao Weiwei is now the president of the Four Seas Group, and according to manager Shin from Ruishir Bank, the Four Seas Group is backed by one of the three major underground forces in the Southwest, the Four Seas Organization. The market value of the Four Seas Group is nearly 1 billion. However, even with this status, Gao Weiwei's expression turned ugly when talking about the person who instructed them to frame Chen Pingin back then. From these subtle details, Chen Pingin could tell how influential that person was. Even if Gao Weiwei is now the president of the Four Seas Group, she still can't confront that person directly. But back then, Chen Pingan was just an ordinary chief physician in the hospital and hadn't offended any important figures. Who exactly wanted to frame him? Why did they want to frame him? Gao Weiwei's actions made Chen Pingan even more confused, and he became more eager to know who was behind the scenes back then. Tell me, what do you want in order to reveal the information about the person behind the scenes? Chen Pingan suppressed his impatience and walked over to Gao Weiwei's boss chair, sitting down with his legs crossed, calmly asking Gao Weiwei. If you insist on knowing the person behind the scenes, I can tell you, but you have to agree to one condition. To Chen Pingan's surprise, 
Gao Weiwei didn't persist like before, but instead, she relented to Qin Pingan. You don't have the right to negotiate conditions. It's your duty to confess everything in front of me. Chen Pingan coldly responded. I'm doing this for your own good. If you don't agree to my condition, I won't say anything, you figure it out yourself. Gao Weiwei gritted her teeth and, as if she held the upper hand, said to Chen Pingan, Fine, what's your condition? As long as it's something I can do, legal and moral, I can agree to it. Seeing Gao Weiwei's persistence, Chen Pingan felt a bit helpless. In order to find out who was behind the scenes, he could only compromise with Gao Weiwei in the end. My condition is for you to take over the Four Seas organization, become the new Four Seas Demon King, and take control of the Four Seas Demon King's order. Then, I will find a way to help you subdue the Demon Kings of the other two major underground forces in the Southwest, and support you in becoming the King of the Southwest Underground. By then, you will have the power to confront that person, and I will tell you the information about the person who instructed us back then, so you can seek revenge. Gao Weiwei stated a condition that left Chen Ping and astonished. She actually wanted him to take over the Four Seas organization, become the new Four Seas Demon King, and support him in becoming the most powerful Demon King in the Southwest Underground. Are you sure you want me to take over the Four Seas organization? Chen Pingan thought he misheard and asked incredulously. Yes, my condition is for you to take control of the Four Seas Demon King's order, become the new Four Seas Demon King. Only when your power is strong enough, and I reveal the identity of that person, will you have the ability to protect yourself and even seek revenge. My adoptive father, Chen Changsheng, was the previous Four Seas Demon King. He passed away unexpectedly some time ago and entrusted me with the Four Seas Demon King's order before he died. As long as you agree, I will give you the Four Seas Demon King's order now, making you the new Four Seas Demon King whom everyone will fear. Gao Weiwei said, walking to her desk and feeling around underneath it. The wall behind her chair slowly opened, revealing a hidden compartment inside. She took out a small box made of an unknown material from the compartment. Using a secret code, she opened the box, revealing a baby's palm-sized token made of a dark golden material of unknown origin. Gao Weiwei handed the token to Chen Pingan. Chen Pingan saw that the token was engraved with some ancient patterns, and on both sides were the powerful characters 4 4 Cs in Demon Token. Is this the 4 Cs Demon King token that Chen Shinian wanted you to hand over? Chen Pingan examined the token in his hand and curiously asked. Yes, this is the 4 Cs Demon King token. As long as you have it, you will become the new Four Seas Demon King. In a week, the underground forces in the Southwest will hold a martial arts conference to select the Southwest King and unify the underground forces of the three provinces in the Southwest. At that time, I will help you subdue the other two Demon Kings and push you to the throne of the Southwest Underground King, commanding the three provinces of the Southwest. Gao Weiwei briefly explained her plan to Chen Pingan. Although there would be many people trying to stop Chen Pingan from taking over the Four Seas Demon King token and supporting him to become the Southwest King, especially those within the Four Seas organization, it would be extremely difficult. But this was what she owed him, and she would overcome all difficulties one by one. I hope you keep your word when the time comes. Chen Pingan shrugged and said indifferently, putting the Four Seas Demon King token back into the box. Although he didn't care about the Four Seas organization, Cao Weiwei insisted that he take over the organization in order to reveal the person behind the scenes from five years ago, so he reluctantly accepted. By the way, I need a job with some freedom and decent pay now. Can you arrange that for me? After putting back the Four Seas Demon token, Chen Pingin turned to Gao Weiwei and asked. He had come off this time to find a job, and if he didn't find one and went back, Li Runin would definitely bring up the matter of him working at the Nine Stars KTV again. A job with some freedom and decent pay, how about this? The manager of the security department at the Four Seas Group was just fired by me. Why don't you temporarily take on the position of the manager of the security department at the Four Seas Group? We can arrange other things after the matters of the Four Seas organization are settled. How does that sound? Gao Weiwei said to Chen Pingin in a negotiating tone. She had secretly admired this senior who had kindly supported them back then, but after the incident five years ago, even though she had now risen to a position where she managed a company with assets of nearly 10 billion, she didn't dare to have any improper thoughts about him. She just wanted to do her best to make up for the harm she had caused him back then. All right, then have someone show me around the Four Seas Group and give me an overview of the security department. Chen Pingin thought for a moment and agreed to take on the position of the manager of the security department at the Four Seas Group. Wait a moment, I'll have my secretary show you around the company's environment right away. Gao Weiwei said, opening the door and instructing her secretary to arrange an office and handle the onboarding procedures for Chen Pingin. Manager Chen, this will be your office from now on. But let me remind you, if you don't want to die, it's best to stay away from our president. 
Our president has already been chosen by Li Xiao, and you can't afford to provoke Li Xiao. After everything was arranged, the president's secretary, Fang Xiaoran, suddenly warned Chen Pingyan with a meaningful tone. The secretary's words immediately stunned Chen Pingyan. Who is Li Xiao? Chen Pingyan asked instinctively. Although he hated Gao Weiwei very much, he couldn't deny that the current Gao Weiwei was an extremely attractive and alluring woman. Gao Weiwei didn't even blink when she shot Chen Xinian just now. Now she has become so ruthless. Chen Pingyan is very curious about who this person is that is not afraid of Gao Weiwei's ruthless methods and dares to pursue her. He even publicly announced that he and Gao Weiwei are engaged, not giving anyone else a chance. Li Xiao's name is Li Jingkong, the younger brother of Li Qiushui, one of the three demon kings in the southwest. If you don't listen to advice, don't blame anyone for not reminding you when you get taken care of. Fang Xiaoran blurted out Li Xiao's identity. How much did Li Jingkong pay you? Chen Pingyan asked Fang Xiaoran curiously. What do you mean? Fang Xiaoran's face darkened when she heard Chen Pingyan's words, and her eyes towards him were full of hostility. I mean it literally. If that Li Jingkong didn't pay you off, why do you care so much about me getting close to the CEO? Could it be that you were originally the spy arranged by Li Jingkong beside Gao Weiwei? Chen Pingyan asked Fang Xiaoran with a half-smile. Manager Chen, please watch your words. I was just kindly reminding you. If you don't appreciate it and continue to insult me, don't blame me for being impolite. If you continue to slander me, don't blame me for not being polite to you. Fang Xiaoran was furious at Chen Pingyan's words and threatened him directly. Chen Pingyan shrugged and ignored her, directly leaving the office. Where are you going? Chen Pingyan's reaction made Fang Xiaoran feel like she was punching cotton, without any force. She felt very frustrated and stomped her foot, asking Chen Pingyan from behind. I am the manager of the security department now. Of course, I am going to the security department to meet my subordinates. Chen Pingyan didn't even turn his head and casually replied. In the end, Fang Xiaoran could only follow him to the security department, making phone calls along the way to have the security department personnel gather and wait for their arrival. The CEO had instructed her to lead Chen Pingyan to familiarize himself with the company's situation, so now that Chen Pingyan wanted to go to the security department, she naturally had to go along and introduce Chen Pingyan to the security department personnel. As a result, as soon as Fang Xiaoran and Chen Pingyan arrived at the security department, all the security personnel glared at Chen Pingyan and cursed at him. Do you know me? Seeing all the security guards in the security department glaring at him, Chen Pingyan curiously asked the security guard closest to him. The security guard didn't answer Chen Pingyan, he just kept staring at him. Before Fang Xiaoran brought Chen Pingyan to the security department, the security department had already received news from the personnel department that Chen Pingyan was the security department manager personally appointed by the CEO. In addition, their previous manager had just been fired, so under the deliberate manipulation of some people, they believed that their previous manager was fired to make way for this new manager. Therefore, the people brought in by some of the former managers in the security department were full of hostility towards the newly appointed Chen Pingyan. Let me introduce you. This person in front of you is Chen Pingyan, the security department manager personally appointed by the CEO. From now on, he will be fully responsible for the security department. Let's give him a round of applause. Fang Xiaoran introduced Chen Pingyan to the security department personnel. Although she was dissatisfied with Chen Pingyan and felt relieved that the security guards were hostile towards him, she still had to do her job properly on the surface. In front of the CEO's secretary, the security guards reluctantly applauded, looking as if they hadn't eaten, appearing weak and powerless. Manager Chen, I'll leave it to you here. If there's anything, give me a call. I'll go back and report to the CEO. After introducing Chen Ping into the security department personnel, Fang Xiaoran greeted him and hurriedly left the security department, suppressing her inner delight. Only Chen Ping and a dozen security guards were left in the security department. Hello everyone, I am your new manager, my name is Chen Ping. Now listen to my command, the captains of each shift, please step forward. After introducing himself, Chen Ping wanted the captains of each shift to come forward and understand the current situation of the security department. However, when his words fell, not a single person stood up. At this moment, in a cafe across from the headquarters of the Sihai Group, a well-dressed man and several security guards in uniform were drinking coffee and watching video surveillance on their phones. The footage on the surveillance was of Chen Pingyan and the scene of the Sihai Group's security department. This well-dressed man was Qin Ji Gang, the former manager of the Sihai Group's security department who had just been fired. Previously, he had been bribed by Chen Xinian to dismiss the security guards at the entrance of the Sihai Group headquarters, allowing Chen Xinian and his men to cause trouble for Gao Weiwei. He also ordered the front desk not to allow anyone to go up and find Gao Weiwei. 
This is why even though the general manager of Ruishir Bank, Xin Jiliang, had already greeted Gao Weiwei, when Xin Pingin arrived at the Sihai Group, he was still stopped by the front desk. Who would have known that Chen Xinian would ultimately fail, causing Qin Jigang not only to lose his benefits, but also his job? The welfare of the Sihai Group is well known in the industry, and after being fired, it would be difficult for him to find another job in Longcheng with such good benefits. Moreover, because the Sihai Group's background is too powerful, after being fired by the Sihai Group, there are hardly any companies in Longcheng that dare to hire him again. In other words, after being fired by the Sihai Group, he became unemployed directly. In a fit of anger, he wanted to make things difficult for the newly appointed security department manager by inviting all the captains of the teams he had previously mentored to the cafe for coffee, and to witness the embarrassing situation of Chen Ping and having no one to rely on. Those security captains also wanted to show their authority to the newly appointed Chen Ping and, and gladly accepted the former manager's invitation for coffee. Look, no one is responding to that kid. His face has turned as ugly as pig liver. I bet that kid will definitely call us later, begging us to go to work. The captain of the morning shift pointed at Chen Pingin in the surveillance footage, proudly saying to the other colleagues, Even if he calls, we will all collectively claim to be sick. Yes, yes, let's ignore him for a few days, give him a taste of our authority. Let him know that we, the security department of the Sihai Group, have the final say. By then, he won't be able to carry out his work, and general manager Gao will definitely bring back our leader, Chi Lada. The captains of the other two shifts also clamored to show their authority to Chen Pingin. Qin Jigang saw the expressions of the captains and finally revealed a satisfied smile. These security captains did not obey the new security manager's control. If the security work of the Sihai group could not proceed smoothly, then Gao Weiwei, that woman, would realize that they couldn't do without him. She would definitely call him back to continue serving as the security department manager. At that time, he could use this to demand a raise from Gao Weiwei, even double it. Otherwise, he wouldn't go back even if he was beaten to death. You guys are doing well. When that woman, Gao Weiwei, calls me back, I will definitely make her give you a raise. If she doesn't agree, I won't go back, and the security work of the Sihai group will be in chaos. Xin Jigang happily painted a big pie for those security captains. Thank you, manager. When the captains heard Qin Jigang's words, excitement appeared on their faces. They thanked Qin Jigang with excitement. They all had the same idea as Qin Jigang. As long as no one in the security department listened to this kid's orders, General Manager Gao would definitely call their leader, Qin Lada, back to take charge of the situation. At that time, they would have the upper hand in negotiating the conditions. Also paying attention to the security department were Gao Weiwei, the CEO, and her secretary, Fang Xiaoran, in the executive office. General Manager Gao, it seems that Manager Chen is unable to control those people in the security department. Looking at the situation on the surveillance, Fang Xiaoran suppressed her inner joy and put on a serious face as she said to Gao Weiwei, I have confidence in him. Gao Weiwei looked at Chen Pingin on the computer monitor and responded lightly. In fact, the reason why the security department reacted this way was not only because the former manager of the security department was fired, but also because Gao Weiwei had called the security department before Fang Xiaoran took Chen Pingin there. She had arranged it in advance. She wanted to train Xin Pingin's abilities through this method so that he could manage the more difficult 4Cs organization in the future. In the security department, when Chen Pingin saw that no one came forward, he scanned the room with his eyes. Who knows where your team leaders went and tell me, I will promote him to deputy manager of the security department immediately. When Chen Pingin said this, many security guards showed surprise on their faces, as well as disbelief and eagerness to try. That was the deputy manager position, with a salary three times higher than what they were currently earning. Everyone looked at each other. Not long after, a security guard who looked a bit cunning stood up. Manager, I know where they went. Before you arrived, our team leaders were called by the previous manager to the coffee shop across the street for coffee. The cunning security guard pointed to the coffee shop across the window and said to Chen Pingin with a playful smile. Although when their team leaders left earlier, they instructed them to answer that they didn't know if the new manager asked about their whereabouts. If anyone dared to betray them, they would deal with them severely in the future. But now the situation was different. If he became the deputy manager, his position would be higher than those team leaders. Those team leaders wouldn't just deal with him, they would have to nod and bow when they passed by him. He decided to take a gamble. When others saw that the cunning security guard actually stood up and answered Chen Pingin's question, their eyes were filled with ridicule and pity. Those team leaders were not easy to mess with, each one of them was very capable. If this new manager didn't keep his word and promote him to deputy manager, he would have to face the retaliation of those team leaders. What's your name? 
Chen Pingin nodded and asked the cunning security guard, My name is Zhang Xiaobo, manager, you can call me Xiaobo from now on. You just said in front of everyone that whoever answered your question would be promoted to deputy manager. Can we trust your words? The security guard quickly reported his name and asked Chen Pingin if his words could be trusted. I, Chen Pingin, always keep my word. From today onwards, Zhang Xiaobo is the deputy manager of the Four Seas Group Security Department. I just arrived and don't know much about the security department, so I will leave all the work of the Four Seas Group Security Department to you. I will have the HR department issue the appointment letter later. Chen Pingin directly promoted Zhang Xiaobo to deputy manager in front of everyone and delegated most of the power of the security department to him. He just wanted to be a hands-off manager. When Chen Pingin said this, many security guards who were initially hostile towards him and pitted Zhang Xiaobo whitened their eyes. They never expected that this new manager would be so generous, promoting Zhang Xiaobo to deputy manager so easily. He even let Zhang Xiaobo take full responsibility for the daily management of the security department. At this moment, many people regretted it. If they had known, they would have answered first, otherwise, the position of deputy manager would have been theirs. It was not just a promotion in position, the salary of the deputy manager was three times higher than that of ordinary security guards. Zhang Xiaobo achieved a great leap by answering one question. You don't need to envy Zhang Xiaobo, I have more questions below. As long as you answer them well, I will also promote you or give you a raise. Chen Pingin saw the envious look in everyone's eyes when they looked at Zhang Xiaobo. He was very satisfied and continued to speak to everyone. Manager, if you have any questions, just ask. We will tell you everything we know. Because of Zhang Xiaobo's example, as soon as Chen Pingin finished speaking, someone else immediately stood up and said to Chen Pingin, It was a matter of interest, and they definitely wanted to fight for it as much as possible. Although they had missed the opportunity, even if they answered actively now, it would be impossible for them to be promoted to deputy manager like Zhang Xiaobo, but getting a raise would still be good. The purpose of their coming to work was to make money and support their families. Who would refuse a raise? Who among you has the phone numbers of those team leaders? Call them and ask them to come back to work within 10 minutes, otherwise they will bear the consequences. Chen Pingin said to everyone again, Manager, I have the phone number of the morning shift team leader. I will call him right away and ask him to come back. Manager, I have the phone number of the night shift team leader. I will call him immediately. I have the phone number of the afternoon shift team leader. As soon as Chen Pingin finished speaking, several people stood up and rushed to call those team leaders. Those who couldn't get through could only envy. Manager, the morning shift team leader said he's not feeling well and won't come to work today. Manager, the afternoon shift team leader also said he's not feeling well and is resting at home. Manager, the night shift team leader said his girlfriend is having her period and he needs to take care of her for a few days. He said if you personally call and ask them to come back to work, they can consider it. Not long after, several security guards put down their phones and reported the results to Chen Pingin. The results reported by these people not only made Chen Pingin frown, but even the other security guards couldn't help but want to laugh. Even if their girlfriends have their periods, those team leaders clearly want to show their authority to the new manager. The three team leaders from the opposite cafe saw on the surveillance cameras that Chen Pingin only needed one move to make their subordinates, who were originally hostile, eagerly answer questions. This situation caught them off guard. They also envied Zhang Xiaobo. Originally, Zhang Xiaobo was just an ordinary security guard in their afternoon shift, but now he has become their boss. But when they saw Chen Pingin still making phone calls to ask them to come back to work, they finally felt a bit balanced. In their eyes, Chen Pingin was begging them to come back to work. They all showed a cold smile and deliberately found excuses not to go back to work. They wanted to let the new manager, Chen Pingin, experience the consequences of not having them, the backbone of the team. The night shift team leader even bluntly said that Chen Pingin had to beg them to go back. Because the few of them were the most capable security guards in the 4 Seas Group Security Department, if they left, the department wouldn't be able to handle any troublemakers. This was the reason why they dared to show their authority to Chen Pingin. But just when they thought that Chen Pingin would personally call and beg them to come back after hearing the reports from their subordinates, Chen Pingin's actions completely dumbfounded them. Since they don't want to come back to work, they don't need to come back anymore. The three of you will take over the positions of the morning, afternoon, and night shift team leaders. Later, the three of you will notify them to move their personal belongings within three days, otherwise they will be treated as garbage. Chen Pingin saw that those team leaders had no shame and didn't hesitate at all. He directly fired those three security team leaders who wanted to show their authority. Thank you, manager. When those three security guards heard Chen Pingin's words, they all thanked him excitedly. Seeing that the three of them were promoted to team leaders, 
The remaining people regretted it. They secretly regretted why they weren't more proactive earlier. Even if they couldn't be promoted to deputy manager, it would still be good to be promoted to team leader. But they all missed the opportunity. At this moment, no one remembered what those few security team leaders who were fired by Chin Pingan had said before. All they felt was regret in their hearts. And in the cafe, the three security team leaders who were fired by Chin Pingan immediately rushed out of the cafe and ran back to the headquarters of Sihai Group. They only wanted to give Chin Pingan a warning, not to leave Sihai Group. The welfare of Sihai Group in Longchang is well known, only fools would want to leave. Come back. Just as the three security team leaders who were fired by Chin Pingan stood up, they were stopped by Qin Jigang. Qin boss, that scoundrel actually fired the three of us. We have to go back, otherwise we will really lose our jobs. After being stopped by Qin Jigang, the three of them said anxiously. With the influence of Sihai Group and Longcheng, once they are fired by Sihai Group, there will be no other company daring to hire them again, and they will truly be unemployed. Confused. Qin Jigang scolded the three of them, making them look confused. What do you mean, Qin boss? The three of them were puzzled. That scoundrel has already appointed someone else to replace you as the team leader in front of everyone. Even if you go back now, he won't give you back the position of team leader, otherwise where would he put his face? Qin Jigang's words made the faces of the three of them look very ugly. Yes, the new manager has already publicly announced the promotion of others to team leader. For the sake of face, even if they go back now, at most they can revoke the decision to fire them and let them start again as ordinary security guards. There is also the fact that if they start from scratch, not only will their salary not be as high, but they will also have to accept the management of their former subordinates, which they cannot accept. So, what should we do now? The few people looked at Qin Ji Gang, looking helpless. This problem is easy to solve. You need to find a way to let him know that your value is more important than his face. This way, not only will he not fire you, but he will also give you back the position of team leader. Qin Ji Gang said with a smile, he has already fired us, how can we show him that our value is more important than his face? Although the three of them felt that Qin Ji Gang's words made sense, they still looked disappointed. You fools! The three of you were originally the most capable in the security department of Sihai Group. As long as someone causes trouble in Sihai Group, like Li Xiao who has a close relationship with Gao Zong, the security department of Sihai Group will naturally think of you and know your value. Qin Ji Gang's words made the three of them brighten up. Qin boss, you're amazing. We'll contact Li Xiao right away. As long as Li Xiao causes a scene, it will show our value. By then, even Gao Zong himself will have to personally invite us back. At that time, we'll tell Gao Zong that if Qin boss doesn't go back, we won't go back either. Gao Zong will definitely fire that scoundrel and invite you back to oversee the security department of Sihai Group with a high salary. The few people became excited and their faces showed excitement. Good brothers, as long as I can return to Sihai Group, you won't be left without benefits. Qin Ji Gang also said proudly, feeling that Gao Weili would soon have to personally invite them back. While Qin Ji Gang and the others were contacting Li Xiao, Qin Pingan had already won the favor of the security department by promoting Zhang Xiaobo and others. Fang Xiaoran in the president's office saw that Qin Pingan had managed to handle the security department like this, and she secretly resented him, but she didn't dare to show it in front of Gao Weili. Gao Weili, on the other hand, was satisfied to see that Qin Pingan had dealt with those troublemakers in the security department so quickly. She thought to herself that Chen Shuizhan was indeed capable, even if he hadn't had any management experience before, he could still handle a department clearly and transparently. Secretary, according to manager Chen's instructions, let the HR department promote and give a raise to Zhang Xiaobo and the others in the security department. Chen Pingan left the security department, and only then did Gao Weiwei shift her gaze away from the surveillance and turn to her secretary, Fang Xiaoran, instructing her, yes, president, I will arrange it right away. Fang Xiaoran left the president's office and, on her way to the personnel department, looked around and, seeing that no one was paying attention to her, took out her phone and sent a WeChat message to Li Xiao, reporting the situation with Chen Pingin and Gao Weiwei. After delegating the management of the security department to Zhang Xiaobo, Chen Pingin left work and went home. Zhang Xiaobo seemed cunning and a bit of a fence-sitter. However, this kind of person was very clever and had some tricks up their sleeve. They were a double-edged sword that, if used well, could save a lot of trouble. Just like the treacherous ministers in ancient times who knew who their backers were, they would go to great lengths to please the emperor and help alleviate the emperor's worries. As long as the emperor was strong enough, they could keep the treacherous ministers under control and use them for their own purposes. Therefore, in history, during times of peace and prosperity, there were often many treacherous ministers in high positions. Qin Pingin was confident that he could handle someone like Zhang Xiaobo, who was cunning and a bit of a fence-sitter. 
After all, he didn't care about the salary, he just wanted a decent job to show Li Runin that he didn't need her to worry about arranging work for him all the time. When Chen Pingin returned to his apartment after work, Li Runin had already gone to work, but Mu Wanchang and Qin Shiyu were waiting for him in the living room. Chen Pingin thought that Mu Wanchang had come to see Qin Shiyu, so he didn't pay much attention and didn't greet the two of them. He went straight to his room. He and Mu Wanchang were just fake husband and wife for three months. When the time was up, they would get divorced and have nothing to do with each other. Besides, the Mu family had heartlessly kicked him out, so he didn't need to be nice to Mu Wanchang. Chen Pingin, stop right there. Just as Chen Pingin was about to open his room door and go back to his room, Mu Wanchang called out to him from behind. Miss Mu, is there something you need? Chen Pingin stopped and turned to look at the sulking Mu Wanchang. When Mu Wanchang saw Chen Pingin turn back, she suddenly felt that he seemed different, as if he had a special aura. What, can't I call you if there's nothing important? Mu Wanchang shook her head, clearing her mind of some random thoughts, and teasingly said to Chen Pingin with a half smile. This morning, Mu Wanchang and her father went to participate in the bidding for the Chengxi renovation project. It was probably because the news of the old war god personally inviting them to attend the birthday banquet had spread, giving their Mu family extra points in this bidding. Their Mu family defeated their opponent, the Lu family, and successfully won the Chengxi renovation project. So she was in a good mood and couldn't help but tease Chen Pingin. Are you crazy? Chen Pingin responded to Mu Wanchang's teasing with just two words, then turned and opened the door to his room. But these two words angered Mu Wanchang. Chen, who are you calling crazy? Come out, if you don't explain it to me today, it's not over between me, Mu Wanchang, and you. Mu Wanchang angrily walked over to kick Chen Pingin's door. Orange, I have the key to his room. Should I open the door and teach him a lesson? Seeing her best friend so angry, Qin Shiyu asked from the side. Before Chen Pingin moved in, she had lived in this room, but later moved to another one. However, she still had the key to this room. Give it to me. Without hesitation, Mu Wancheng asked her friend to give her the key. Here's the key, you open it yourself. I'll go to the bathroom first. Qin Shiyu, who had an uncomfortable stomach, handed the key to Mu Wancheng and then went to the bathroom. Chen Pingin, who had been running around outside all day, felt sticky on his body. As soon as he entered the room, he took off his clothes. But just as he finished undressing, Mu Wancheng opened the door with the key and stormed in angrily. Chen Pingin, who was standing behind the door, was pressed against it by the sudden intrusion of Mu Wancheng. Where is he? Mu Wancheng entered the room without noticing Chen Pingin and muttered in confusion. I said, Miss, what exactly do you want to do? Chen Pingin, who was pressed against the door, pushed Mu Wancheng away and asked with an annoyed expression. Hearing Chen Pingin's resentful voice, Mu Wancheng, who had been pushed away, turned around and found that Chen Pingin had already undressed and was standing behind her, looking at her with a lewd gaze. Ah, don't come over. Mu Wancheng screamed in fear at Chen Pingin's appearance and instinctively tried to run out. In a panic, she accidentally stepped on her own skirt and fell uncontrollably into Chen Pingin's strong embrace. Mu Wancheng's hands were propped on Chen Pingin's solid chest. Just now, Mu Wancheng stepped on her skirt, and the elastic skirt that was supposed to shrink to prevent it from slipping down was instantly pulled down by her, even her underwear was pulled down a bit, revealing Mu Wanchang's full and plump body in Chen Pingin's arms. And when Chen Pingin saw the other person rushing into his arms, he instinctively reached out to support her, but his hands happened to rest on Mu Wanchang's chest, which made Chen Pingin, a vigorous man, instantly feel a surge of blood and energy. Feeling the strong masculine aura coming from Chen Pingin's hands, Mu Wanchang's whole body seemed to be electrified, feeling numb and unable to exert any strength. Mu Wanchang once again felt a very comfortable and special aura emanating from Chen Pingin in front of her. His chest feels so secure. A shy thought suddenly emerged in Mu Wanchang's heart. Mu Wanchang couldn't help but raise her head and look at Chen Pingin, who was looking down at her. The two locked eyes, and suddenly there was a feeling of time standing still. Meanwhile, in the adjacent restroom, Qin Shiyu heard Mu Wanchang scream from Chen Pingin's room and rushed out of the restroom with her pants still undone. When she arrived at Chen Pingin's door, she happened to see the two of them locking eyes, staring at each other in a trance. What? Are you guys doing? Qin Shiyu asked in shock. Qin Shiyu's voice instantly brought the two back to reality from that ambiguous atmosphere. Ah, Chen Pingin, you pervert, take your filthy hands off me. After being brought back to reality by her best friend's voice, Mu Wanchang finally realized that their current situation was very inappropriate, especially with Chen Pingin still holding her full and plump chest. Mu Wanchang instinctively screamed, raised her hand, and slapped Chen Pingin's left cheek. If she hit him, there would definitely be a clear palm print on Chen Pingin's left cheek. Chen Pingin instinctively grabbed Mu Wanchang's wrist. Miss Mu, it was clearly you who barged into my room, saw me and couldn't help but throw yourself at me. 
deliberately pulling down your own skirt to seduce me. Who is the pervert here? You better explain it to me. Chen Pingan held onto Mu Wanqing's wrist and accused her with an angry expression. When Qin Shi Yu heard Chen Pingan's accusation, she was stunned. Orange, he can't be telling the truth, right? Chen Pingan's accusation is reasonable and well founded. Qin Shi Yu instinctively asked Mu Wanchung, Shi Yu, how can you believe his nonsense? I just opened the door and saw him standing behind it without clothes on. I was startled and wanted to run out, but accidentally stepped on my own skirt and fell towards him. How could I be the pervert? You, you're making me so angry. Mu Wanchun quickly explained to her best friend, Did you hear that? She just admitted that she stepped on her own skirt and threw herself at me. And now she's turning the tables and calling me a pervert. If she doesn't give me a reasonable explanation today for barging into my room and assaulting me, I will sue her for invading my room. Chen Pingan suppressed his laughter, put on an indignant expression, and threatened Mu Wanchun. You, scoundrel. It was clearly you who scared me by taking off your clothes, causing me to panic and step on my own skirt. It's entirely your fault. Mu Wancheng felt a sense of frustration that couldn't be washed away even if she jumped into the Yellow River. She was so angry that she could almost explode. She could only blame Chen Pingin for undressing inappropriately. Put. My lady, I was changing clothes in my own room. It was you who barged in. Don't I have the right to undress in my own room? Chen Pingin's words left Mu Wancheng speechless and stunned. Humph. Anyway, it's your fault. Mu Wancheng forcefully freed her wrist from Chen Pingin's grasp and stubbornly replied before storming out of his room. She even forgot the purpose of her visit to Chen Pingin this time. Orange came here today to inform you that we will gather at the entrance of the Emperor Hotel at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning to attend the birthday banquet of the old war god. Don't be late. Qin Shi Yu saw her best friend run away and after leaving a few words for Chen Pingin, she shyly followed suit. Chen Pingin was still shirtless at the moment. Thinking about the devilish things Chen Pingin had done in the past, she didn't want to be alone with him in a room. Understood. Chen Pingin nodded, locked the door, and then changed his clothes before going out to eat. The next day, after practicing the Phoenix writing technique all night, Chen Pingin felt that his skills had improved slightly. Thinking about the invitation from the Mu family to attend the birthday banquet of the old war god today, he got up at 8 o'clock. The Emperor Hotel was the most luxurious five-star hotel in Longcheng and the leader of the hotel industry in Longcheng. Because the old war god Zhao Wujin was hosting his birthday banquet here today, the entire hotel was booked. When Chen Pingin arrived at the entrance of the Emperor Hotel at 9 o'clock on the dot, there was already a constant stream of people coming and going. They were all well-dressed upper-class people, of all ages and genders. Hey, isn't this the son-in-law who was just kicked out by the Mu family? What? You, a loser who was kicked out by the Mu family, also came to attend the birthday banquet of the old war god? Just as Chen Pingin was about to enter the gate of the Emperor Hotel, he heard the mocking voice of his ex-girlfriend Lin Duor from behind. Chen Pingin turned around and saw Lin Duor and her mother, both dressed in luxury, walking arrogantly towards him with the accompaniment of the manager of the Emperor Hotel, Run Tianqing. Why do I keep running into you, you annoying woman? It's really bad luck. Chen Pingin responded with disgust. At first, he was still polite to Lin Duor because of their past relationship. But Lin Duor became more and more excessive and shameless, and his little bit of goodwill towards her had dropped to freezing point. Duor, who is this? Why do I feel a bit familiar? It seems like I saw him at the Mu family a few days ago when I went there to deliver the invitation. Ran Tianqing pointed at Chen Pingan and asked Lin Duor, Darling, if you feel familiar, then you're right. This guy is the scumbag ex-boyfriend I told you about, who was sentenced to prison for assaulting several female college students. He was released from prison a few days ago and because he didn't have money to marry into the Mu family and congratulate Mr. Mu, I don't know what wicked things he did at the Mu family, and after Mr. Mu recovered, he was kicked out by the Mu family. Now he's sneaking around trying to get into the birthday banquet of the old war god. I don't know what evil intentions he has. You absolutely cannot let this scumbag infiltrate the birthday banquet of the old war god. Otherwise, as the manager of this hotel, you will be responsible for any trouble caused by him. Lin Duer pointed at Chen Pingin with disdain, introducing his past to her fiancé and reminding him not to let Chen Pingin in. In her opinion, Chen Pingin wanted to get into the Emperor Hotel just to see if he had a chance to get close to some big shot who came to congratulate the old war god. She wanted to oppose Chen Pingin. You want to attend the birthday banquet of the old war god? I won't let you in. Let's see what you can do to me. Lin Duer's words attracted the attention of many guests entering and leaving the Emperor Hotel and many people stopped to watch the excitement. Kid, do you have an invitation? After hearing Lin Duor's introduction, Rin Tianqing, the manager of the Emperor Hotel, 
also felt that he couldn't let someone like Chen Pingan in, otherwise he couldn't bear the responsibility if something went wrong. Even if Chen Pingan didn't have any problems, based on the fact that his fiancée Lin Duor didn't want him to enter, it was impossible for him to let Chen Pingan in. I don't have an invitation, but the Mu family called me to come. The Mu family has an invitation. Faced with the manager's inquiry, Chen Pingan honestly and calmly replied, Put. Just as Chen Pingan finished speaking, Lin Duor couldn't help but burst into laughter. Chen Pingan, I'm more and more impressed by you. Now you don't even blush when you lie. The Mu family has already entered 20 minutes ago. You said the Mu family called you to come. Please, at least make a draft when you lie. What a disgrace. Lin Duor's words made Chen Pingan frown. Yesterday, Xin Shiyu clearly told him that Mu Wanchang had come to their shared apartment to inform him to come and attend the old war god's birthday banquet today. Could it be that Qin Shiyu deliberately deceived him yesterday to make fun of him? Kid, you can't enter here without an invitation. Please leave immediately. Security, escort this gentleman out. Upon hearing that Chen Pingan didn't have an invitation, Ren Tianqing immediately issued an order to expel him. The security guards at the entrance, seeing the manager personally giving the order, immediately moved to drive Chen Pingan away. The onlookers also pointed and whispered about Chen Pingan, who said he doesn't have an invitation. Just as the security guards were about to drive Chen Pingan away, a dignified voice suddenly came from behind the crowd. Hearing the voice of the old man, everyone turned around and saw an old man in tang suit, holding a cane, walking towards the entrance of the Emperor Hotel accompanied by a middle-aged man. It was Mr. Mu Xinbua, who had rushed back from his hometown to attend the old war god's birthday banquet. By his side was his second son, Mu Jandong, Mu Wanqing's uncle. Yesterday, Mu Wanchang went to find Qin Pingan to invite him to attend the old war god's birthday banquet on behalf of her grandfather. But before the task was completed, Mu Wanchang embarrassed herself in front of Qin Pingan and was taken advantage of by him. She even disregarded the task and ran away directly. Fortunately, her best friend Qin Shiyu passed on the message for her and informed Qin Pingan. However, Mr. Mu couldn't make it back in time, so the Mu family went in first without waiting for Qin Pingan, which led to the situation just now. Hello, Mr. Mu. Mr. Mu, you still look radiant. Today, the people attending the old war god's birthday banquet are all prominent figures in Longchang, so naturally they all know Mu Xinbo, the founder of the newly rising wealthy Mu family in Longchang. Everyone greeted Mu Xinbo one after another. After responding to everyone's greetings, Mu Xinbo walked directly to Chen Pingan and Rin Tianqing. Manager Ren, although my grandson-in-law Chen Pingan doesn't have an invitation, I do. Can I bring him in? Mu Xinhua asked Ren Tianqing with a playful tone, pointing at Chen Pingan. Since Mr. Chen is your grandson-in-law, Mr. Mu, he naturally has the qualifications to attend the old war god's birthday banquet. It was my negligence just now. I apologize to Mr. Mu and Mr. Chen. Please forgive me, Mr. Chen. Upon hearing Mu Xinhua's words, Ren Tianqing glared fiercely at his fiancée Lin Duor, then apologized to Mu Xinhua and Chen Pingan with a cold sweat. Originally, Zhao Min, the granddaughter of the old war god, personally asked him to deliver the invitation to the Mu family, and the Mu family was the only one in Longcheng that the old war god treated specially. It can be imagined how deep the relationship between Mr. Mu and the old war god was. And Grandpa Mu looked at Chen Pingan with a look of admiration, even admitting in front of him and many members of the upper class of Longcheng society that Chen Pingan was their Mu family's son-in-law. From this, it can be seen how satisfied Grandpa Mu was with this son-in-law. However, his fiancée had previously told him that this Chen Pingan had already been kicked out of the Mu family and asked him to drive him away. Now the Mu family is in trouble. During the upcoming birthday banquet for the old war god, if Grandpa Mu casually mentions this matter in front of the old war god, not only will he not gain any benefits from organizing the birthday banquet, but he can't even guarantee that he will keep his current job. He was very anxious at the moment. This is just because of the close relationship between Grandpa Mu and the old war god. If he knew that the old war god was holding this birthday banquet specifically for Chen Pingan, he didn't know if he would be scared to the point of being weak in the knees. Hasn't this scum Chen Pingan already been kicked out by your Mu family? I saw him renting a house from a real estate agency. Grandpa Mu, why are you still saying that he is your Mu family's son-in-law? What's going on? Lin Duer's brainless words didn't understand how serious the situation was. After being fiercely stared at by Rin Tianqing, she still questioned Grandpa Mu in shock. When she said this, Ren Tianqing's face turned pale. If it weren't for the public setting, he really wanted to slap Lin Duer. This prodigal woman should speak less, but she caused trouble. Not only was the manager of the Emperor Hotel frowning and sweating, but even Grandpa Mu, after hearing Lin Duer's words, looked at Chen Pingan with a puzzled expression. 
Grandpa, this is a long story. Let's go inside and I'll explain it to you slowly. Feeling Grandpa Mu's puzzled gaze, Chen Pingan helplessly said, Okay, let's talk while we walk. Grandpa Mu nodded and made a gesture of invitation with the support of his second son, Mu Jandong. Now, whether it was Lin Duer and her daughter, the hotel manager, or the security guards, no one dared to drive Chen Pingan away anymore. Stop, everyone else can go in, but not this kid. Just when Chen Pingan thought he could enter the Emperor Hotel smoothly this time, a cold voice suddenly sounded behind them. When they heard the voice, everyone couldn't help but turn their heads. The Mu family's old man had just said that Chen Pingan was their Mu family's son-in-law, and even the manager of the Emperor Hotel didn't dare to say anything. At this moment, someone dared to come forward and provoke him. Everyone was curious about who this person was. When they turned their heads, they saw a young man dressed in trendy clothes, imitating Neza's signature pose from the animation, with his hands in his pockets, walking towards Chen Pingan with a playful expression on his face. Behind the young man was a big man in a black suit, like a lump of iron. This big man had a high and bulging temple, and anyone who practiced martial arts could tell that he was a master. Is it him? Chen Pingan muttered softly when he saw the young man. Because the young man who was approaching him was none other than Zhao Shikai, who had bought the Longquan Villa one step ahead of him that day, and then wanted to get Li Runin drunk and take her to the hotel, but was taught a lesson by Chen Pingan. After being kicked by Chen Pingan, he finally realized that there were hidden dragons and crouching tigers in Longcheng, so he always brought bodyguards with him when he went out. Moreover, he brought the strongest bodyguard that his grandfather had assigned to him, whose strength was second only to Ada and Air in the War God's Mansion, to prevent a repeat of the incident at the KTV. When the manager of the Emperor Hotel, Run Tianqing, saw Zhao Shikai, he immediately showed a respectful expression. Who is this? Grandpa Mu noticed Ren Tianqing's change in expression and asked with a puzzled look. The surrounding Longcheng celebrities also looked curious. Grandpa Mu, this young man has a big background. He is the grandson of the old war god, Zhao Wujin, Zhao Shikai. Ren Tianqing introduced to old master Mu, then put on a smile and hurriedly walked up. Whether it was old master Mu or the famous people of Longcheng around him, when they heard Ren Tianqing's introduction, they all exclaimed. Old master Mu immediately turned his head to look at Chen Pingan and said, Good son-in-law, how did you provoke such a person? Old Master Mu's eyes showed a worried expression. A few days ago, I happened to meet him at KTV and he wanted to bully my buddy. I taught him a lesson, but I didn't expect him to have some background. Chen Pingan responded calmly. When Chen Pingan said this, the famous people of Longcheng around him gasped. This kid is too arrogant. He dares to teach even the grandson of the old war god. He must be tired of living. No wonder they didn't let him in. Although you are the son-in-law of the Mu family and have the support of the Mu family, you should also consider who you are offending. Although the Mu family is considered a powerful family in Longcheng, compared to the noble identity of the old war god's grandson, the Mu family is nothing. This kid is going to suffer. This is what the people present thought after knowing Zhao Shikai's identity and the grudge between Chen Pingan and Zhao Shikai. Lin Duer's excitement trembled all over. She was just humiliated in front of Chen Pingan, and her fiancé glared at her. Because Chin Pingan had the support of the Mu family, she thought she had no chance for revenge. Unexpectedly, karma came so quickly. Someone will come out to deal with Chin Pingan immediately, and it is the noble grandson of the old war god. Now Chin Pingan not only can't enter the emperor hotel, but he may also be humiliated by Zhao Shikai in front of many famous people in Longcheng. Even if old master Mu wants to protect Chen Pingan, he is powerless. However, when old master Mu saw the expressions of pity or schadenfreude from the people looking at Chen Pingan, his expression became calm. Not to mention that he and Zhao Wujin were classmates before, and based on the face of his old classmate, Zhao Wujin would not make things difficult for his son-in-law. Moreover, his son-in-law is not an easy target. He is the heir of the dragon burial ring. Zhao Wujin should know better than him about the weight of his son-in-law. Thinking of this, he no longer worries about Chen Pingan at all. Mr. Zhao, you're here. Didn't the old war god come with you? The manager of the emperor hotel nodded and bowed, coming to Zhao Shikai's front with a respectful face, and asked. My grandfather and sister are still behind. I came to take a look first. You step aside first. I have some personal grievances to settle with that kid. After Zhao Shikai finished speaking, he pushed the manager of the emperor hotel aside and walked directly towards Chen Pingan. Chen Pingan, right? Introduce myself, I'm Zhao Shikai, the grandson of the old war god Zhao Wujin. I still feel a dull pain in my chest from the kick you gave me that day. How do you think I should settle this account with you? Zhao Shikai, dressed in trendy clothes, came to Chen Pingan's front with a playful expression and asked Chen Pingan. In his opinion, the reason why Chen Pingan dared to hit him that day was because he didn't know his identity. 
Now that he knows he is the grandson of the war god, this kid will definitely be scared. Mr. Zhao, how do you want to settle this with me? Faced with Zhao Shikai, Chen Pingan remained calm and asked calmly. Well, in consideration of the fact that old master Mu and my grandfather were classmates, I won't make things difficult for you. As long as you kneel down in front of everyone present and apologize to me, and crawl under my crotch, this matter will be over. Zhao Shikai said to Chen Pingan with a tone he believed to be intimidating. As soon as Zhao Shikai spoke, everyone around looked at Chen Pingan with eyes full of anticipation, waiting for Chen Pingan to kneel down like a dog and apologize to Zhao Shikai, crawling under his crotch. As time went on, more and more people gathered at the entrance of the Emperor Hotel, and some newcomers quietly asked people they knew about the situation. Lin Duer's eyes were shining as she eagerly awaited the show. Just because you, a spoiled child who relies on your elders, want me to kneel to you? Are you worthy? Chen Pingan retorted coldly to Zhao Shikai. Zhao Shikai hated it when people said he relied on his elders, and upon hearing Chen Pingan's words, he became furious. Tainyo, let him know whether or not I am worthy. Zhao Shikai didn't waste any more words with Chen Pingan and directly shouted at the iron lump of a bodyguard behind him. He didn't like to argue with others and preferred to let his strength speak for itself. Upon receiving Zhao Shikai's words, the iron lump of a bodyguard immediately walked out from behind Zhao Shikai with a powerful stride, scaring all the onlookers with each step, as if an elephant was walking. They involuntarily stepped back, afraid of getting too close and being hurt. Even old Mu knew that Chin Pingan was the heir of the burial dragon ring and had extraordinary strength, but seeing the domineering appearance of the iron lump, he instinctively worried for Chin Pingan. Good son-in-law, do you have confidence in this big lump? If not, let's apologize first and find a chance to regain our dignity later. Old Mu leaned close to Chin Pingan's ear and asked nervously. Don't worry, he's just a brute, nothing to be concerned about. Chen Pingan appeared calm and composed, and Old Mu finally relaxed. Kid, kneel down now and apologize to our young master, and crawl between his legs. Otherwise, I'll punch you into a pulp. The iron lump bodyguard came in front of Chen Pingan, took off his suit shirt, revealing his explosive eight-pack abs. He deliberately flexed his muscular arm in front of Chen Pingan, threatening him with a booming voice. Their young master always had him do this before reprimanding someone, to showcase his power and intimidate the other party. If the other party became afraid and surrendered, there was no need to resort to violence. But if they remained defiant after witnessing his display of power, then he would directly teach them a lesson, never indulging them. Besides, if anything went wrong, the war god mansion would take care of it. Everyone looked at Chen Pingan with pity. The iron bull was not only physically strong, but also exuded an intimidating aura. It was clear that he was a master. In front of him, Chen Pingan seemed like a child confronting an adult, completely outmatched. No one believed that Chen Pingan could be a match for the Iron Bull. Faced with the provocation from the Iron Lump, Chen Pingan didn't waste any words. Relying on his petite and agility, he immediately stomped hard on the back of the Iron Lump's foot without hesitation. Ah, my foot! The Iron Lump bodyguard, who was in pain from Chen Pingan's stomp, grimaced and let out a earth-shattering scream, shocking everyone. Chen Pingan dared to fight back, and he even launched a surprise attack on the Iron Lump bodyguard? After the crowd reacted, they noticed that Chin Pingan had stomped on the Iron Lump's leather shoe, completely crushing it and revealing his mangled toes. The toes were so damaged that even the bones were clearly visible. You! How dare you stomp on my foot! I'll kill you! Seeing that his toes had been crushed by Chin Pingan, the Iron Lump, in pain and anger, endured the pain in his foot and swung his fist, resembling a giant iron hammer, towards Chin Pingan's head. The sound of breaking air filled everyone's ears, and they were all stunned by the sound of the Iron Lump's fist. Terrifying thoughts flashed through everyone's minds. If that punch landed on Chen Pingan's head, it would surely smash it to pieces. How could Chen Pingan, who possessed extraordinary skills, allow himself to be hit? Just as the fist was about to strike Chen Pingan's head, he slightly leaned to the side, avoiding the fatal blow, and then once again lifted his foot to stomp hard on the intact back of the iron lump's other foot. Once again, the toes of the other foot of the opponent were crushed. Ah! The tall and powerful iron lump had both feet crushed, unable to stand steadily anymore. He sat on the ground, holding his feet and howling, almost completely losing his fighting ability. Iron Bull, you useless waste. You can't even handle a nobody. What's the use of me spending so much money to keep you? Seeing his strongest bodyguard, Iron Bull, fall like this, Zhao Shikai was so angry that he cursed and jumped. Just then, there was suddenly a commotion outside the crowd. The special car of the old war god is here. People in front, quickly make way, came the shouts from behind the crowd. Upon hearing that the special car of the old war god had arrived, everyone automatically made way. Then they turned around and saw three luxury cars coming from behind. 
The middle one was the special car of the northern war god, Zhao Wujin. The three cars stopped at the entrance of the Emperor Hotel, and a Dai and Air, both with plaster on their hands, got out of the front and back cars respectively. They stood on the left and right sides of the old war god's special car, fully alert. Only then did the driver of the old war god get out of the car and open the back door. The first thing that came out of the car was a pair of straight, snow-white high-heeled shoes and beautiful legs. The old war god's granddaughter, Zhao Min, was the first to get out of the car, and then the heroic Zhao Min helped her war god grandfather down from the car. When the old war god, Zhao Wujin, saw old man Mu Xinbua, he was stunned, but quickly recognized him as his old classmate from decades ago. However, at this moment, Chen Pingin was squatting in front of the tall and mighty iron bull. His somewhat petite figure was completely blocked by the tall and powerful iron bull. The old war god, his granddaughter Zhao Min, Adai, Er, and others did not notice Chen Pingin. Zhao Shikai's face lit up when he heard that his war god grandfather had arrived. Although his grandfather was old and almost never fought with others anymore, he had two great masters by his side, Adai and Er. They were the two strongest bodyguards by his grandfather's side. Although Adai's master had one arm disabled by the master in the phone call with his grandfather, Er was still fine. If Er's master was willing to take action and teach Chen Pingin a lesson, Chen Pingin would have a hard time today. However, it was old man Mu Xinbo who greeted the old war god, Zhao Wujin, first. Mu Xinbo pays respects to the northern war god. Old man Mu quickly walked up to Zhao Wujin, clasped his fists, and bowed to show his respect for Zhao Wujin's outstanding contributions to the people. My old classmate, it's been so many years, I hope you're well. Zhao Wujin knew that the successor of the dragon burial ring was Mu's granddaughter's husband. He didn't dare to be arrogant in front of Mu Xinbo and politely went forward to help his old classmate, Mu Xinbo, up. While the two old men were exchanging pleasantries, Zhao Shikai walked quickly to a Dai and Air. A Dai, Air, my bodyguard Iron Bull was disabled by an arrogant guy I just encountered. I trouble the two masters to go up and take down that guy, let him know the power of our northern war god mansion. Zhao Shikai pointed at Chen Pingan and said to a Dai and Air, who was so powerful that even Iron Bull was disabled. A Dai and Air were shocked when they heard Zhao Shikai's words. Although Iron Bull's talent was not great, he had innate divine power. With their guidance and the old war god's guidance, although his strength was not as strong as theirs, it was still terrifying. Dealing with ordinary people, he could easily take on a dozen or twenty of them. But now he was disabled by someone? This dragon city is truly a hidden dragon and crouching tiger. In their minds, they couldn't help but think of Chin Pingan, who lightly disabled a Dai's arm with a single palm that day. It's him, an arrogant guy named Chin Pingan. Please, two masters, help me teach him a lesson and let him know the power of our northern war god mansion. Zhao Shikai brought Ada and Air to Iron Bull's side, pointing at Chen Pingan, whose body was blocked by Iron Bull, and angrily said to the two of them. Hearing the voice, Chen Pingan looked up at Ada and Air, grinned, and showed his eight big white teeth. Ada and Air were originally wondering why there were so many powerful experts in Longchang. They wanted to go forward and have a fight to avenge young Master Sun. But when Chen Pingan looked up and grinned at them, they were scared and almost fell to the ground. Isn't this the young man who casually disabled Ada's hand with a palm that day? According to the old war god, this young man is not only a master, but also has an extraordinary background. He is the heir of the dragon burial ring, a person that even the old war god has to flatter. Young master, the two of us are no match for him. You should apologize to him quickly, otherwise even the old war god may not be able to save you today. Air, who was standing in the front, warned Zhao Shikai with a serious expression. When Air said this, Zhao Shikai was shocked. The two top guards of the northern border war god mansion actually admitted defeat before even fighting, saying that they were no match for him and asking him to apologize? Zhao Shikai thought he misheard and turned to look at Ada, whose hand was still in a cast. The people around were also shocked. Many people had heard of the strength of Ada and Air, the two top guards by the side of the old war god. They were capable of fighting a hundred people at once, but now they were scared off by Chin Pingan. This was too unbelievable. Ada and Air ignored everyone else. Ada saw young Master Sun looking at him and nodded without hesitation, indicating that Zhao Shikai didn't miss here. After confirming that he didn't miss here, Zhao Shikai turned to look at his grandfather. From childhood to adulthood, no matter who it was, they were respectful in front of his grandfather and didn't dare to act arrogantly. This was the first time he had seen such a situation. He even thought that Ada and Air deliberately said this because Ada's hand was disabled by the expert his grandfather mentioned on the phone last time, and they didn't dare to fight anymore. At this moment, war god Zhao Wujin was still chatting with old man Mu? Old classmate, why are you the only one here? Where are the other younger generations of the Mu family? Zhao Wujin asked Mu Xinbo with a puzzled expression. 
Of course, he wasn't concerned about the younger generations of the Mu family, but wanted to know if Chen Pingan, the son-in-law of the Mu family, had come. Isn't that them over there? My eldest son and his men have already entered the hotel. My second son and son-in-law are waiting for you at the entrance. Old man Mu pointed to his second son, Mu Jandong, and Chen Pingan, who had already stood up. Zhao Wujin immediately recognized Chen Pingan as the dragon burial ring heir he saw in the surveillance footage at Hu's clinic. Especially the dragon burial ring on Chen Pingan's hand, although it was far away, he could tell at a glance that it was undoubtedly the dragon burial ring. His skills and glory were almost bestowed by the previous generation's dragon burial ring heir. Seeing the dragon burial ring, he couldn't help but walk over excitedly. Zhao Min also noticed Chen Pingan and quickly supported her grandfather to move forward. Grandfather, you're here. There's a lowly person causing trouble at your birthday banquet. He even injured my bodyguard, Iron Bull. You should let Ada and Air teach him a lesson, otherwise he will think that our northern border war god mansion is easy to bully. Zhao Shirkai saw his grandfather approaching and immediately went up to him, pointing at Chen Pingan and gritting his teeth. Shirkai, did you have a conflict with Mr. Chen? When the old war god heard his grandson's words, he stopped and asked his grandson with an unpleasant expression. Grandfather, what Mr. Chen, this kid is just a son-in-law of the Mu family. Not only did he speak arrogantly to our war god mansion, but he also injured my bodyguard. How can such a lowly person be worthy of being called Mr. By you, sir? Zhao Shirkai heard his grandfather calling Chen Pingan Mr. Chen and thought that his grandfather was being polite to Chen Pingan because of their old classmate Mu Xinbua. He looked unimpressed and said to his grandfather, You scoundrel, how dare you speak disrespectfully to Mr. Chen? Apologize to Mr. Chen immediately, right now. When the old war god heard his grandson's words, his face turned as ugly as a pig's liver, and he instinctively scolded his grandson. What? Grandfather, you are the mighty war god of the northern frontier. Are you asking me to apologize to a commoner? Zhao Shirkai thought he had misheard and asked his grandfather incredulously. Not only him, but everyone around who was watching the scene was shocked by the old war god's words. They thought their ears were playing tricks on them. Lin Duor and her mother were also stunned their mouths wide open, looking at everything in front of them. Am I not mistaken or mishearing? The mighty war god of the northern frontier actually asked his esteemed grandson to apologize to Chen Pingan, the son-in-law of the Mu family? This is too outrageous, isn't it? In order to verify that she wasn't dreaming, Lin Duor's mother reached out and pinched her daughter hard, causing Lin Duor to cry out in pain. Her cry also alarmed the people around who were in a daze, bringing them back to reality. Ada, air, clear the area. Remove all irrelevant people first. Zhao Wujin seemed to be awakened by Lin Duo's scream, feeling that letting his grandson apologize to Chen Pingan in front of so many people would damage the reputation of their northern frontier war god mansion and his grandson. He directly ordered Ada and Air to drive away all the onlookers. When the old war god spoke, who would dare not listen? In less than two minutes, the originally bustling scene was left with only Chen Pingan, old Mu, and the old war god's family. Grandfather, why should I apologize to him? After the irrelevant onlookers left, Zhao Shirkai saw that his grandfather had not withdrawn the command for him to apologize to Chen Pingan. He asked his grandfather defiantly, Brother, the Mr. Chen in front of you is the expert that grandfather mentioned to you on the phone before. Grandfather asked you to come from the northern frontier to make friends with Mr. Chen. How did you end up in conflict with Mr. Chen and even insult him? Seeing that his brother still looked defiant, Zhao Min walked to his side and whispered to him, What? He, is the expert that grandfather asked me to make friends with? The expert that grandfather asked me to make friends with is not an old man with a white beard in his 70s or 80s like grandfather? Zhao Shirkai was shocked when he heard his sister's words, his mouth wide open, unable to believe it. Although Chin Pingan was very powerful, kicking him away with one kick and defeating his strongest bodyguard in just a few moves, he was still too young. He didn't seem to have any connection with the words expert and elderly at all. At first, he thought that the expert his grandfather asked him to make friends with was an old man of similar age to his grandfather. Now his sister was telling him that the man of similar age in front of him was the expert his grandfather wanted him to make friends with. He couldn't accept it for a while. Why so much nonsense? If the expert was an old man of similar age to grandfather, grandfather could have made friends with him himself. Why did he call you from the northern frontier to Longcheng? When Zhao, the old war god, saw that his grandson was still defiant, he raised his cane as if to hit him. Wait, can't I apologize to Mr. Chen? Scared by his grandfather raising his cane to hit him, Zhao Shirkai quickly agreed to apologize to Chen Pingan. Mr. Chen, it was Shirkai's mistake to offend you and your friends before. I now realize my mistake and ask for Mr. 
Chen's forgiveness. Mr. Chen, you were interested in the Dragon Spring Villa on the top of Longquan Mountain before, right? Sure Kai is willing to give you that villa as a sincere apology. Please accept it, Mr. Chen. Zhao Shirkai took out the key to the Longquan Villa he bought for 8. 8 billion yuan from his pocket and handed it to Chen Pingan. Zhao Lao, what is this? Chen Pingan had been watching the performance of the two generations of the Zhao family with a cold eye, not knowing what they were up to. Mr. Chen, a few days ago, Hu Shini from the Baoji Hall of Hu God has already told me the whole story. If it weren't for Mr. Chen's help back then, I'm afraid I would no longer be in this world. Mr. Chen is my benefactor. My unfilial grandson doesn't understand gratitude, and not only insults Mr. Chen, but also doesn't know what's good for him. Please forgive Mr. Chen. The old war god saw that Chen Pingan did not accept his grandson's apology, so he immediately stepped forward to explain to Chen Pingan and bowed to express his gratitude for saving his life. Old war god, you flatter me. Zhao Lao has fought for the country his whole life, shedding blood on the battlefield, protecting the millions of people in our heavenly dynasty, allowing people like me to enjoy a peaceful and prosperous era. What merits and abilities do I, Chen Pingan, have? How dare I accept such a great gift from you? I forgive your grandson, that's enough. Although Chen Pingan was disgusted by Zhao Shirkai's arrogance, he couldn't accept the bow of gratitude from the old war god who had fought for the country his whole life. He recognized the old war god because he often saw him on TV or in the media before he retired. The old war god had always been the person he respected the most. It was an honor for him to have the opportunity to save the old war god. Since Mr. Chen has forgiven me, then please accept this Longquan Villa. This Longquan Villa is not only a sincere apology to Mr. Chen, but also a gratitude to Mr. Chen for saving my grandfather's life. If Mr. Chen doesn't accept it, I will be restless for the rest of my life. And my villa is not far from the Longquan Villa, so I can often seek advice from Mr. Chen in the future. When Zhao Shirkai heard Chen Pingan say that he forgave him, he once again offered the key to the Longquan Villa and begged Chen Pingan to accept it. This Longquan Villa is too precious, I can't accept it. Chen Pingan refused again. He had asked about the price of this Longquan Villa before, it was 8. 8 billion yuan. It was the most expensive house in Longcheng, without a doubt. Mr. Chen, I don't like what you just said. Even if this Longquan Villa is expensive, does it have the same value as my war god grandfather's life? Just as Zhao Shirkai was rejected by Chin Pingan again, Zhao Min, who was standing beside him, took the opportunity to speak. Her words earned her praise from her grandfather and brother. Her words meant that you saved my grandfather, and I thank you with the Longquan Villa. If you don't accept it, it means that in your heart, the value of this Longquan Villa is more precious than my grandfather's life. Well then, I will accept it. Chin Pingan hesitated for a moment when he was left speechless by Zhao Min's words, and finally reached out to accept the key to the Longquan Villa. Otherwise, others would think that he considered the life of the old war god to be worthless. Mr. Chen, is that ring in your hand the burial dragon ring of Long Xiao Tianlong? Seeing Chen Pingan reach out and take the key to the Longquan Villa from Zhao Shikai's hand, the old war god pointed to the burial dragon ring on Chen Pingan's hand and asked, Old war god, do you know my master? When Chen Pingan heard the old war god mention his master's name, he spoke seriously. So, Long Lao really is Mr. Chen's master? Back then, it was thanks to the martial arts and techniques taught by Long Lao that I was able to be invincible on the battlefield and fulfill my wish to protect my country and family. I have always regarded Long Lao as my mentor. Mr. Chen is Long Lao's successor, so we can be considered as martial brothers. The old war god said excitedly to Chen Pingan, using just a few words to establish a relationship with Chen Pingan, the successor of the burial dragon ring. Back then, because of his poor aptitude, he couldn't catch the attention of Long Lao and couldn't become the successor of the burial dragon ring. If he could become the martial brother of the current successor, it wouldn't be bad. I don't know if Mr. Chen is familiar with this set of techniques, the old war god said. After seeing that Chen Pingan seemed to not believe him, he immediately used the set of techniques that Dragon Master had passed on to him, and with a palm strike, he blasted a small artificial mountain at the entrance of the Emperor Hotel. Chen Pingan felt a force like that of a dragon and elephant explode from the old war god's palm, and the mountain was blasted apart as if by a powerful explosive, instantly flattened. Master's unique dragon elephant imprisonment technique? Chen Pingan has seen senior brother. Seeing the technique used by the old war god to blast the mountain, Chen Pingan exclaimed in surprise. It was the same technique his master had used in front of him, the dragon elephant imprisonment technique. This technique was created by his master and did not belong to the burial dragon hall's techniques, so Chen Pingan had a particularly deep impression of it. 
Only his master and himself would know it. Therefore, when the old war god used this dragon elephant imprisonment technique, he immediately believed the old war god's words. Junior brother Chen, no need for formalities. The old war god happily helped Chen ping it up. Although his expression only showed a hint of surprise, his heart was extremely excited at this moment. The person in front of him was the heir of the burial dragon ring. As long as he established a relationship with him, even if it was a hundred years later, no one in his northern border war god mansion would dare to touch him. It was like buying insurance for their northern border war god mansion. Chen Pingin was also overjoyed at this moment. He had gained a powerful war god senior brother for free. After getting acquainted, he might even be able to use the other party's power to find his mother and sister. Both of them had their own thoughts and felt that the other could bring them what they wanted. Junior brother Chen, let me introduce you to my two unruly grandchildren, Jia Shikai and Jia Min. In the future, please take care of these two juniors. The old war god immediately brought his grandchildren in front of Chen Pingin and introduced his grandchildren to him. Chen Pingin was young, and he probably didn't have much in common with an old man like him, but he was about the same age as his grandchildren, so they would be the ones to maintain the relationship with Chen Pingin in the future. You too, quickly pay your respects to your martial uncle and ancestor. Seeing his grandchildren standing in front of Chen Pingin without any reaction, Zhao the old war god immediately reminded them. Zhao Shikai and Zhao Min were stunned when they heard their grandfather's words. Grandfather actually asked them to address Chen Pingin, who was about the same age as them, as their martial uncle and ancestor? What are you two still standing there for? Hurry up and address him. Zhao Wuji saw his grandchildren standing still and became angry, raising his cane as if he was going to hit them. Frightened, the siblings quickly bowed to Chen Pingin and said, Zhao Shikai, Zhao Min pays respects to martial uncle. Their actions made Chen Pingin feel embarrassed. But since he wanted to recognize Zhao Wuji as his war god's senior brother, he had to accept the title of martial uncle and ancestor. Chen Pingin was not a narrow-minded person, so he quickly adjusted his mindset. You don't need to be so formal. We don't have much time, and I didn't bring any gifts. Today, I will help the two of you open up the Rin and Tong meridians, so that you can quickly become top-notch martial artists in the future. Chen Pingin thought for a moment and said to Zhao Shikai and Zhao Min. He had never expected to establish a relationship with Zhao Wuji, the old war god, before coming here, let alone suddenly have two grandchildren. Becoming their martial uncle and ancestor, he could only use his medical skills and powerful internal energy to help them open up their meridians as a gift. Whether it was Zhao Shikai and Zhao Min or Zhao Wuji, the old war god, they were instantly excited when they heard Qin Pingin's words. Zhao Shikai and Zhao Min had followed their grandfather to practice martial arts since they were young so they naturally knew how important it was to open up the Ren and Tong meridians. Zhao Wuji understood it even more. It was because Qin Pingin's master, Long Xiaotian, had helped him open up the Ren and Tong meridians that he was able to cultivate the dragon elephant imprisonment technique to a high level and become invincible on the battlefield. Once the Ren and Tong meridians were opened, both strength and cultivation speed would undergo a qualitative leap. But the Ren Tong Air Mai is extremely difficult to open. Even Zhao Wuji, known as the Northern Frontier War God, couldn't help his grandson and granddaughter open it. Now, Chen Pingin actually used this as a gift to surprise the Zhao siblings. This shows that Chen Pingin's strength is even stronger than their grandfather's. It is also a huge surprise for Zhao, the old war god. Once his grandson opens the Ring Tong Air Mai and continues to study the dragon elephant prison technique, he can arrange for his grandson to train in the war department. Maybe the Zhao family can produce another war god. Why don't you thank your uncle and grandfather? Zhao Wuji saw Zhao Shikai and Zhao Min staring blankly and immediately reminded them. Thank you, uncle and grandfather. The two quickly bowed to thank Chen Pingin, and this time they were sincerely grateful. No need for formalities, let's find a room now, it's just a small matter. Chen Pingin said casually. It is relatively difficult to help someone open the Ren Tong Air Mai using internal force alone, but with his Nine Dragon Medical Scripture, it becomes much simpler. Okay, I'll arrange your room right away. Zhao, the old war god was more anxious than anyone else. After speaking, he immediately called Air and arranged a room at the Emperor Hotel for Chen Pingin. After Air went out to arrange the room at the Emperor Hotel with the manager, he immediately led Chen Pingin and the others over. Lin Duor and her mother, who were watching the excitement not far away, widened their eyes when they saw the old war god politely accompanying Chen Pingin into the hotel, leaving them with mixed feelings. Ah, it wasn't until Chen Pingin and the others entered the hotel for a long time that Lin Duor sighed with regret. She never expected that Chen Pingin, who had just been released from prison, would actually know the old war god. The old war god was a powerful figure, a peerless national hero admired by thousands. Chen Pingin's relationship with the old war god meant that he would have a difficult time flying high in the future. 
At this moment, she regretted breaking up with Chen Pingan. If she hadn't broken up with him back then and had waited for him to settle down for five years, she could have soared to great heights with him in the future. But now it was too late to say anything. Do or, don't sigh. The person you're with now is not bad either. He's the manager of the highest grade hotel in Longchang. And this time, the old war god's birthday banquet was arranged by him. After the banquet, he will definitely become famous in the hotel industry. When he starts his own business, he will quickly become successful and you will also enjoy the limelight. You won't necessarily be worse off than being with Chen Pingan. Lin Duor's mother saw her daughter sigh and quickly comforted her. She could tell from her daughter's sigh that she regretted breaking up with Chen Pingan back then. She was afraid that her daughter would break up with her current fiancé and go after Chen Pingan, which would be troublesome if they ended up with nothing. Chen Pingan was already the son-in-law of the Mu family, and the Mu family would definitely not let him go after seeing him being appreciated by the old war god. Mom, you're right. Tianqing may be a bit older, but he is capable. Especially after being in charge of the old war god's birthday banquet, he may soar to great heights. It's not a loss to be with him. I will learn from this lesson and won't easily break up with Tianqing again, otherwise I will regret it again in the future. After being comforted by her mother, Lin Duor also opened up and said with a look of enlightenment. Lin's mother was very pleased to hear this. It's great that you can think like this. Tianqing is here. He should be here to pick us up and take us to the old war god's birthday banquet. Let's go over quickly. Lin's mother had sharp eyes and immediately saw Ren Tianqing, who had come out after arranging the room. She immediately pulled her daughter and went to greet him. The people around knew that Ren Tianqing, the manager of the Emperor Hotel, was in charge of the old war god's birthday banquet. When they saw Ren Tianqing coming out, many people warmly greeted him. Lin Duor, who walked towards Ren Tianqing with her mother, saw the scene and became even more determined not to easily break up with him in the future. Darling, are you here to pick us up and attend the birthday banquet of the old war god? Lin Duor tidied up her disappointed emotions and sweetly asked Ren Tianqing. Smack! Ren Tianqing responded with a loud slap to Lin Duor. An instantly red palm print appeared on Lin Duor's face, leaving her stunned as she covered her burning face and looked incredulously at her fiancé, Ren Tianqing, who was full of anger. She couldn't understand why her fiancé, who was fine just a moment ago, suddenly became so angry and even hit her in front of so many people. Ren, why did you hit my daughter? Lin's mother, with an angry expression, pushed Ren Tianqing aside and angrily questioned him. You damn woman, you still have the audacity to ask me why I hit her? You and your daughter almost killed me. Slapping her was already lenient. Ren Tianqing shouted angrily at Lin Duor and her mother. Just now, when he brought everyone into the emperor hotel, he heard the old war god call Chen Ping and his junior brother. And the old war god's grandson and granddaughter called Chen Ping and their great uncle. Just to please his girlfriend, he actually stopped Chen Ping and spoke disrespectfully to him, which scared him to the point of breaking out in a cold sweat. If Chen Pingan were to blame him, not only would he lose his job, but he wouldn't even know what happened. Although Chen Pingan didn't say anything to him, the meaningful look he gave him just now made him tremble with fear. It's all because of Lin Duor and her mother. If it weren't for them, he wouldn't have gotten involved with such a big shot. Darling, I don't understand what you mean. Can you explain it clearly? Lin Duor, covering her face, asked in confusion. You don't need to know what it means. Just know that we're breaking up from now on. We won't have any relationship anymore, and you shouldn't come looking for me again. I want to live a few more years. After saying this, Rin Tianqing turned around and went back to the Emperor Hotel, leaving Lin Duor and her mother sitting on the ground, at a loss in the wind. Lin Duor never expected that just when she had made up her mind to stop thinking about Chen Pingan and be with Rin Tianqing, he would come out and break up with her. And he even slapped her in public. Mom, why? Why did he suddenly break up with me? What did I do wrong? Lin Duor turned her head and asked her mother with a desolate expression. I guess it must be that Chen Pingan thinks he has gained the support of the old war god and threatened Rin Tianqing to break up with you. Lin's mother thought for a moment and said confidently to her daughter. Yes, it must be that bastard Chen Pingan threatening Rin Tianqing. I'm going to find him and settle the score. Lin Duor also agreed with her mother's speculation and stood up to find Chen Pingan. Stop right there. Lin Duor was just about to get up when her mother pulled her back. Lin Duor turned around looking puzzled at her mother. My silly girl, Ren Tianqing has already broken up with you. He's a complete coward. Even if he comes back to beg you, you shouldn't reconcile with him. And have you ever thought about why Chen Pingan would threaten Ren Tianqing to break up with me? Lin's mother belittled Ren Tianqing for a while, then asked a question that left Lin Duor puzzled. Chen Pingan is just trying to retaliate against me and make me suffer, right? Lin Duor blurted out without thinking. But as soon as she said that, her mother shook her head. 
He's not doing it to retaliate against me. So why would he threaten Ren Tianqing to break up with me? Lin Duor was confused by her mother's actions and asked in disbelief. Chen Pingan came to Longqing because he wanted to reconcile with you. He only married into the Mu family as a son-in-law for the sake of financial difficulties. Now that he has gained the appreciation of the old war god, he immediately threatened Ren Qingxing to break up with you. It is obvious that he wants to reconcile with you, which is why he threatened Ren Qingxing to break up with you. Lin's mother analyzed confidently. Mom, what are you thinking? He is now the son-in-law of the Mu family. How could he still want to reconcile with me? Lin Duor was shocked by her mother's magical thoughts and gave her a disdainful look. You don't understand. Although he is the son-in-law of the Mu family, his status has changed now that he has gained the appreciation of the old war god. He definitely wants to be like those wealthy and influential men, with a stable family at home and colorful flags outside. Lin's mother, drawing from her experience of dealing with men for most of her life, confidently analyzed to her daughter. Chen Pingan wants to keep me as his mistress, his underground lover? That's impossible. I know Chen Pingan well, and he wouldn't have such thoughts. After her mother's analysis, Lin Duor exclaimed, You only know him from five years ago. There is no cat that doesn't steal fish in this world. Once a man has money and power, he will turn bad. And you know what he has been through in these five years. His mindset must have changed. Lin's mother remained convinced. What should I do then? Lin Duor's mind was influenced by her mother's confident expression, and she also thought that Chen Pingan's threat to break up with Ren Qingxing was a way to reconcile with her and secretly develop something. My silly girl, do you still need to think about it? Chen Pingan is now being supported by the old war god. His future is limitless, and his status in life is much higher than Ren Qingxing's. If he wants to reconcile with you, you should agree. Lin's mother said firmly. Chen Pingan has gained the appreciation of the old war god. If it weren't for her age, she would personally take action. Why should her daughter be involved? But he already has a wife. Even if he wants to reconcile with me, it can only be done secretly, making me his mistress. In other words, he wants me to be his mistress. Lin Duor pouted and whispered. What does that matter? In this day and age, as long as we can live a worry-free life, what's wrong with being a mistress? Let alone a mistress, even if it's a fourth party, it's fine. That's settled then. Let's go back and wait patiently. He will definitely contact us in the future. As for Ren Xing, just cut ties with him. After Lin's mother finished speaking, she directly pulled Lin Duor away from the Emperor Hotel. Lin Duor was also swayed by her mother's words. Who asked her to be foolish and break up with him back then? Being a mistress is being a mistress. It can be considered punishment for leaving him years ago. Lin Duor thought to herself. Chen Pingan, who had already entered the Emperor Hotel, had no idea that he hadn't done anything but his ex-girlfriend and her mother blamed everything on him and even thought that he wanted to reconcile with his ex-girlfriend. In the luxurious room of the Emperor Hotel, Chen Pingan asked Zhao Shikai to take off his clothes, then took out two golden needles from the dragon burial ring and inserted them into the starting and ending points of Zhao Shikai's Ren and Du Meridians respectively. He then tapped on the appropriate acupoints on Zhao Shikai's body. The sound of popping, like frying soybeans, came from inside Zhao Shikai's body. It was the sound of the major meridians in his body being opened one by one. Zhao Shikai's face showed a painful expression. He felt a force traveling through his meridians, encountering blockages, and continuously exerting force to break through, each time more intense than the last. Before long, Zhao Shikai was in so much pain that his facial features twisted. It hurts a bit, endure for 20 minutes. Chen Pingan reminded in a deep voice, but as soon as he said this, Zhao Shikai almost collapsed. Just two minutes and he already felt such pain that he didn't feel like himself anymore. But his master told him that he had to endure for about 18 more minutes. However, he thought that as long as he opened the Ren Du Meridians, he would have the opportunity to become a master like his grandfather, so he silently gritted his teeth and endured. Time passed second by second, and Zhao Lao Zhanshan, Mu Lao Yezi, and others anxiously waited outside the room. Twenty minutes passed in the blink of an eye, but for Zhao Shikai, who couldn't bear the pain, it felt as long as twenty centuries. Suddenly, when Zhao Shikai, who had already reached his limit, heard a cracking sound from his body, as if something solid had broken. He felt that the pain that had reached the depths of his soul disappeared in an instant, leaving only comfort. He had never felt such a comfortable feeling before, even compared to the feeling of being intimate with a girl. Master, have my Ren Du Meridians been opened? Zhao Shikai felt the changes in his body and asked Chen Pingan with a surprised expression. Yes, they have been opened. As long as you practice diligently, you will definitely become a master like your grandfather in the future. Now go out and find your sister. Chen Pingan nodded and said, Thank you, master. 
Hearing that his Rindu meridians had really been opened, and feeling the significant changes in his body, Zhu Shikai immediately kneeled down to thank Qin Pingan, then put on his clothes and prepared to leave the room, so that Qin Pingan could open his sister Zhao Min's Rindu meridians next. However, when Zhao Shikai reached the door, he suddenly stopped and turned to look at Qin Pingan. What's wrong? Chen Pingan asked in confusion. Master, I want to ask, are you going to open my sister's Rindu meridians like you did for me just now? Zhao Shikai asked Chen Pingan with a strange expression. His sister was a girl, and Chen Pingan was a man. If his sister had to take off her clothes like he did earlier, he didn't know if she could accept it. Yes, is there a problem? Chen Pingan didn't react for a moment and asked in confusion. No, nothing. I'll go out first. Seeing Chen Pingan's natural expression, Zhao Shikai didn't ask further. He would remind his sister later when he went out and let her make her own choice. After speaking, Zhao Shikai walked out, leaving Chen Pingan puzzled. Not long after, Zhao Min walked in with a strange expression and closed the door behind her. When her brother went out earlier, he said a strange thing to her, if you can't bear it, don't force yourself. What did he mean by can't bear it? If he could bear it, couldn't I? Zhao Min secretly made up her mind that no matter what, she would open her Rendu meridians and not lose to her brother. Master, I'm here. What should I do next? Zhao Min walked up to Chen Pingan curiously and asked. First, take off your clothes, then sit cross-legged on the bed and wait for me. Chen Pingan answered without hesitation, but as soon as he finished speaking, he suddenly understood why Zhao Shikai had asked him with that strange expression earlier. Do I have to take off my clothes? Sure enough, as soon as Zhao Min heard Chen Pingan's words, her body instantly heated up, her face turned red all the way to her neck, and she stuttered as she asked Chen Pingan. No, you know how difficult it is to open the Rendu meridians. Even your grandfather, who is known as the Northern Battlefield God, couldn't open them for others. I can only help you open them by combining acupuncture and my internal energy. Chen Pingan answered honestly. He wasn't trying to take advantage of Zhao Min because she was beautiful, but it was really necessary to take off her clothes so that he could combine acupuncture and his internal energy to help her open the Rendu meridians. Then, can I have two minutes to consider? Zhao Min bit her seductive red lips and asked Chen Pingan softly. Now she completely lost her previous arrogance and domineering when facing Chen Pingan, afraid that he would get angry. Although Chen Pingan is her martial uncle, he is also a vigorous man. It's too embarrassing for a young lady like her to undress in front of a man. Now she finally understands what her brother meant just now. Before Chen Pingan had a chance to answer, his phone suddenly rang. Chen Pingan took it out and saw that it was a call from Zhang Xiaobo who had just been promoted to deputy manager of the security department of the Four Seas Group yesterday. Chen Pingan made a gesture for Zhao Min to be quiet before answering the call. Manager, something bad happened. Young Master Li brought a group of people to our company and caused trouble. Our security guards were basically defeated by his people. Please come back quickly. Ah, crash, beep beep beep. As soon as the phone was connected, Zheng Xiaobo's panicked voice came through. Just as his voice fell, a miserable scream followed, then the sound of the phone falling to the ground, and then it turned into a busy tone. It is estimated that Zhang Xiaobo's phone was smashed and couldn't be used anymore. Hello, Zhang Xiaobo, is everything okay over there? Hello? Hello? Chen Pingan shouted into the phone several times, but no one responded. A gloomy expression appeared on his face. It's only his first day at work and someone is causing trouble, and they even dare to attack his subordinates. This is simply unreasonable. Miss Xiao, I have urgent matters to attend to now. You can take your time to consider. I work at the Four Seas Group. Come find me there when you have made up your mind. After Chen Pingan finished speaking, he turned and opened the door and walked out, leaving Zhao Min alone in the room, still in a dilemma. Junior brother Chen, did you help my sister Min Min open her Rendu channel so quickly? When Zhao Wujin, Mushinbo, Zhao Shikai, and others waiting outside saw Chen Pingan come out, they all looked puzzled. Zhao Wujin directly asked. Senior brother, there was a situation in my company. I need to go back and deal with it first. The little girl is still in the room thinking about whether she wants me to open her Rendu channel. Let her think it through and come to the Four Seas group to find me. As for senior brother's birthday banquet, I'm afraid I won't be able to attend. I wish senior brother all the best and a long life. After Chen Ping and hurriedly explained, he turned and left the Emperor Hotel, leaving Zhao Wujin, Mu Xinbo, and others standing there. What's wrong with Min Min? Why does she need to think about such a good thing? It's infuriating. After Zhao Wujin regained his senses, he stared at the door of the room and angrily scolded. Grandfather, junior brother needs to undress in front of senior uncle to help open the Rendu channel. It requires a combination of acupuncture and internal energy. My sister probably can't pass the mental barrier, so, 
Zhao Shikai saw that his grandfather was angry and quickly stepped forward to explain. When these words came out, Zhao Wujin's expression froze, and he remembered the scene when he opened his Rendu channel back then. It seemed that acupuncture and strong internal energy were indeed needed, and the clothes had to be taken off to complete the process. This was the reason why, despite his extraordinary strength, reaching the peak of the ninth rank, he couldn't help others open their Rindu channels because he didn't know medical skills. Do you know how rare this opportunity is? What's wrong with undressing in front of your senior uncle? It's just a piece of flesh. Tell her not to hesitate and go to the Four Cs group to find your senior uncle as soon as she has time to open her Rindu channel. Otherwise, if your senior uncle changes his mind, she will regret it. After thinking for a moment, Zhao Wujin, the old war god, sternly instructed his grandson, then turned and went to the banquet hall. Yes, grandfather. Zhao Shikai saw his grandfather so angry that he could only respectfully respond. After his grandfather left, he knocked on the door and conveyed his grandfather's words to his sister. Old classmate, another war god is about to emerge from your Zhao family. It's really enviable. On the way to the banquet hall, Mu Xinbo looked envious as he said to Zhao Wuji. Although he was not a martial artist, because of his special identity, he knew the benefits of opening up the Ren and Du Meridians for a martial artist. The future achievements of the Zhao family's grandson are estimated to be no lower than those of his current classmate Zhao Wuji. Maybe, with the foundation laid by Zhao Wuji, his future achievements might even surpass Zhao Wuji and reach a whole new level. Are you mocking me, old classmate? If we talk about envy, it should be me envying your Mu family, right? Your Mu family has me, Shin Shidi, as the heir of the burial dragon ring, so why worry about the family's prosperity? As for me, I still have to rely on others. Zhao Wuji said to Mu Xinbo with a displeased expression. Ah, you don't know, my son-in-law only has a three-month deadline. After three months, whether he will still be my Mu family's son-in-law is uncertain. Mu Xinbo said with a bitter smile. But as soon as he said this, it instantly aroused Zhao Wuji's curiosity. Why are you saying this, old classmate? Zhao Wuji asked with a puzzled expression. Here's the thing. Mu Xinbo briefly explained the marriage of Chen Pingan and his granddaughter Mu Wancheng to Zhao Wuji. In fact, he only said these words to appease Zhao Wuji. He had confidence in the marriage between his granddaughter and Chen Pingan. Especially since Chen Pingan obtained the golden needle from his granddaughter and learned the phoenix taming technique, he had a special aura that attracted women. He could guarantee that within three months, his granddaughter would definitely fall madly in love with Chen Pingan. If they were not married, this might not be a good thing, but because of his special identity, he had long known the secret of the phoenix taming technique and used a plan to get them married in advance. The phoenix taming technique would only bring benefits to his Mu family, not harm. But Zhao Wuji didn't know these secrets. When he heard Mu Xinbo's words, he thought Mu Xinbo was worried about this matter. Although he didn't show it on his face, his heart was already excited. According to Mu Xinbo's words, Mu Xinbo's granddaughter didn't actually like Qin Pingan, and their marriage was only an agreement for three months. If they felt unsuitable after three months, they would divorce. At that time, if Qin Pingan divorced Mu Wancheng, then his granddaughter Zhao Min would have a chance. As long as Qin Pingan, the heir of the burial dragon ring, became their Zhao family's son-in-law, their Zhao family would definitely become one of the most prestigious families in the world. Although it was a bit unethical to steal an old classmate's lover, what did it matter for the sake of the family's interests? Determined, Zhao Wuji gave up on his decision to help Qin Pingan clear his name at the birthday banquet. He didn't even mention Qin Pingan's matter at the banquet. Chen Pingan, who was on his way back to the Four Seas group, had no idea that the old war god was already scheming to marry his granddaughter to him. At this moment, outside the gate of the Four Seas group, a tall and thin young man was blocking the entrance with a group of people. This was Li Jingkong, who had been pursuing Gao Weiwei and had already designated her as his woman. He was the younger brother of Li Qiushui, one of the three demon kings of the southwest. All the security guards of the Four Seas group had been knocked down and trampled by the people Li Jingkong brought with him. The employees of the Four Seas group trembled in fear and kept their distance, no one dared to approach. How much longer until that Chen manager of yours arrives at the company? Daring to snatch my woman, he must be tired of living, right? After knocking down the security guards of the Four Seas group, Li Jingkong grabbed the collar of Zhang Xiaobo, the deputy manager of the security department, lifted him up, and roared angrily. Yesterday, after receiving the news from the undercover agent Fang Xiaoran, who was arranged to be Gao Weiwei's secretary, he was so angry that he felt like his lungs were about to explode. But the Four Seas group has several very capable security guards. He resisted the urge to act rashly. As a result, those few capable security guards contacted him last night and told him that they had been fired by the Four Seas group and advised him to go trouble the Four Seas group. At first, 
he thought those capable security guards were playing a trick on him. After investigating overnight, he found out that it was true. Early in the morning, he gathered his most capable subordinates and rushed to the Four Seas Group to teach Chin Ping in a lesson. If it weren't for the haste and the small number of people he brought, he would have sent them in to search already. Li Xiao, calm down. I just called our manager. He should be here soon. Zhang Xiaobo, mentioned by Li Xiao, had a smile on his face that was uglier than crying. At this moment, he regretted becoming the deputy manager because Qin Pingin was not present, so Li Xiao directly came to him, the deputy manager, for trouble. Xin Ji Gang, the security department manager who was fired yesterday, and the few capable team leaders were hiding in the dark, gloating at the scene in front of them. Also witnessing this scene was Gao Weiwei in the top floor president's office. Gao Weiwei sat in front of her desk, quietly watching the scene at the entrance of the first floor through the surveillance. She rhythmically tapped the desktop with her fingers. President, after Qin Ji Gang took those capable security guards away, our security department has no one who can stop Li Xiao. What should we do now? Fang Xiaoran stood behind Gao Weiwei and anxiously asked, Isn't this the result you wanted to see? Gao Weiwei didn't answer Fang Xiaoran, but inexplicably asked in return. Fang Xiaoran's face instantly became very ugly when she heard Gao Weiwei's words. She knelt down in front of Gao Weiwei with a thud. President Gao, spare me. I didn't mean to betray you. Li Xiao threatened my family, and I won't dare to do it again. Fang Xiaoran trembled as she continuously cowed out and begged for mercy in front of Gao Weiwei. She had witnessed Gao Weiwei personally eliminate two trusted aides who betrayed the chairman. She hated people who betrayed her the most. You admit your identity, aren't you afraid that Li Xiao will harm your family? Gao Weiwei turned around and asked Fang Xiaoran expressionlessly. I. Fang Xiaoran's face turned pale at the question. She had only thought that Gao Weiwei hated betrayal the most, but she didn't expect that Li Xiao was also not someone to be trifled with. He had also done many unreasonable things, but because his sister Li Qiushui supported him from behind, he was still safe and no one dared to touch him. Li Xiao couldn't be relied upon, and the current President Gao was not easy to deal with either. She had offended both sides, and she was in a difficult position. Both sides might punish her in the end. You can get up first. From now on, cut off contact with Li Xiao. As for your family, I will arrange for their protection. If there's another time, you'll have to deal with it yourself. Unexpectedly, Gao Weiwei didn't punish Fang Xiaoran but let her get up and arranged for someone to protect her family. Thank you, President Gao. I promise there won't be another time. Seeing that Gao Weiwei didn't blame her, Fang Xiaoran quickly thanked her and made a promise. Li Xiao might harm manager Chen later. What should we do now? After Fang Xiaoran stood up, she asked with some worry. Gao Weiwei cared so much about Chen Pingin. If Chen Pingin was beaten badly later, Gao Weiwei might vent her anger on her. I have my own arrangements. You go and do your own tasks. Gao Weiwei said expressionlessly. Yes, then I'll leave first. Fang Xiaoran didn't dare to ask anything else and respectfully left Gao Weiwei's office. After Fang Xiaoran left, Gao Weiwei picked up the phone on the desk and dialed a number. Protect manager Chen and don't let a hair on his head be harmed. She only said one sentence and hung up the phone before waiting for a response. After Gao Weiwei hung up the phone, Chen Pingin rushed back to the headquarters of the Sihai Group from the Emperor Hotel. As soon as he got out of the car, he saw a group of black-clad thugs trampling on the security guards of the Sihai Group, who were wailing on the ground. The only one standing was the deputy manager Zhang Xiaobo, who was being held up by Li Xiao by the collar. Let them go. Chen Pingin stood behind Li Xiao and the others and said in a deep voice. His voice was not loud, but everyone present could hear it clearly, as if his voice was ringing directly in their ears. Kid, this is none of your business. Don't meddle, or I'll kill you. Li Xiao turned his head and glanced at Chen Pingin, thinking that he was just a passerby meddling in other people's business. He threatened Chen Pingin with a gloomy face. Aren't you looking for Chen Pingin? I am Chen Pingin, let them go and come at me if you have any business. Chen Pingin calmly said to Li Xiao. So you're Chen Pingin, quite courageous. Since the main character is here, release the others and let's settle the score. Li Xiao was stunned when he heard Chen Pingin introduce himself. He looked Chen Pingin up and down. He had always thought that the man Gao Weiwei liked was a suave nobleman, but he didn't expect him to be a loser just by looking at his taste in clothing. He was puzzled. He was rich and powerful, good-looking, and matched Gao Weiwei in terms of background, so why didn't she like him and instead liked a poor loser? After Zhang Xiaobo and the others regained their freedom, they all ran behind Chen Pingin with terrified expressions. Are you all okay? Chen Pingin turned his head and asked the many subordinates with swollen faces and bruises. Manager, we're fine. But the people Li Xiao brought today are all experts. The captains who could fight are not here, so we are no match for them. What should we do now? 
Zhang Xiaobo wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and answered in a low voice. The others did not answer Qin Pingin, and some even looked at him with resentment. Li Xiao came and specifically caused trouble for the new manager, Qin Pingin. They all felt that this was caused by Qin Pingin, and they were being implicated by him. Moreover, the captains who could fight were fired by Qin Pingin. If it weren't for Qin Pingin firing those capable captains and promoting incompetent people to be captains, they wouldn't have been beaten like this today. Taking all these factors into account, they vented all their grievances on Qin Pingin. Many people lowered their heads, cast sideways glances, and looked at Qin Pingin with resentful eyes. What else can we do? Others have bullied us at our doorstep, so of course we have to fight back. Chen Pingin said without hesitation. But manager, the people Li Xiao brought are all experts. Can you handle so many experts? Zhang Xiaobo looked at Chen Pingin in front of him and asked with some worry. In their eyes, Chen Pingin looked quite sturdy, but he didn't seem like someone who could fight. Li Xiao today brought so many people with him today, and each one of them was skilled. It was impossible for Chen Pingin to be their opponent. They couldn't understand where Qin Pingin got the courage to say such words like fighting back. Not only Zhang Xiaobo, but everyone else also looked down on Qin Pingin. Who said I want to go up and fight them? Qin Pingin calmly asked. Did the manager bring skilled people with him? Where are they? Upon hearing Qin Pingin's words, Zhang Xiaobo and the others looked puzzled and looked around. No need to look, I came alone, didn't bring anyone else. Qin Pingin said impatiently to Zhang Xiaobo and the others. When he said this, Zhang Xiaobo and the others became even more confused. Then who will help us fight back? Zhang Xiaobo asked in confusion, and everyone else looked at Chen Pingin with a strange expression, not knowing what the manager was thinking. Of course it's you guys. As security guards of the company, it is your duty to protect the company's life and property. Who else do you want to help you? Chen Pingin scolded Zhang Xiaobo and the others. When Chen Pingin said this, whether it was Zhang Xiaobo, the captain, or the other security guards, their faces turned pale. Manager, we, we are not their opponents at all. If you let us go up, aren't you sending us to our deaths? Zhang Xiaobo said with a mournful face, stuttering in response. Some of the more timid ones slipped away from behind. Who said you are not their opponents? I know you have been hiding your strength before, but in this situation, you shouldn't hide your strength anymore. The company pays you so much salary every month, you should fulfill your duties. Chen Pingin said with a meaningful expression, leaving Zhang Xiaobo and the others confused. When did they hide their strength? Are they all fools? Even after being beaten like this, they still have to hide their strength? Before they could figure out what Chen Pingin was up to, Zhang Xiaobo was pushed towards Li Xiao today by Chen Pingin. As the deputy manager, you should take the lead. You go first and show them your full strength, let them see how formidable we are. After Chen Pingin finished speaking, he took out a golden needle from the Zhanglong ring and flicked it lightly. The golden needle quickly disappeared into Zhang Xiaobo's back without anyone noticing. Li Xiao today and his subordinates on the opposite side heard the conversation between Qin Pingin and Zhang Xiaobo clearly, and they thought Qin Pingin was pushing Zhang Xiaobo to his death. He he. Since your manager wants you to be a scapegoat for him, I'll grant your wish. After disabling you, it won't be too late to disable him. Li Xiao today smirked and said to Zhang Xiaobo, who was pushed over by Qin Pingin. After speaking, he took a baseball bat from one of his subordinates and fiercely smashed it towards Zhang Xiaobo's legs, as if he wanted to break them with one strike. Zhang Xiaobo was already terrified by Li Xiao today and the others, and when he saw Li Xiao today swinging the baseball bat, he was even more frightened, almost wetting himself. His only thought was to turn around and run. However, whether it was because his legs were weakened by fear or for some other reason, he found that he couldn't retreat or turn around. It was as if a mysterious force was pushing him forward crashing into Li Xiaotode's arms. Ah, no. Seeing the baseball bat in Li Xiaotode's hand about to strike his legs, Zhang Xiaobo closed his eyes and screamed. Many people around couldn't bear to see Zhang Xiaobo's legs being broken, so they turned their heads away and dared not look. Only some bolder and curious people watched as Li Xiaotode's hard baseball bat struck Zhang Xiaobo's legs. Just when everyone thought Zhang Xiaobo was about to be finished, an incredible scene happened. Just as the baseball bat was about to hit his legs, Zhang Xiaobo suddenly jumped up and narrowly avoided the fierce blow. And as if unaffected by the Earth's gravity, Zhang Xiaobo was still in the air and delivered a powerful kick to Li Xiao's chest, sending him flying three to four meters away, crashing heavily to the ground. Everyone was stunned by this scene. Could it be that what the manager said earlier was true, that vice manager Zhang Xiaobo had been hiding his true strength? Everyone couldn't help but recall Chen Pingin's words just now. Not only were the surrounding audience shocked by Zhang Xiaobo's actions, even Zhang Xiaobo himself thought he was seeing things. At the moment his body jumped up, he opened his eyes in astonishment, watching his body uncontrollably launch a fierce counterattack against Li Xiao. 
If it weren't for his body, he might have thought he had hidden his strength like everyone else, but he knew very well that he didn't have any strength before, so where did this hidden strength come from? Now, counterattacking Li Xiao was not his intention, his body was being controlled by some inexplicable force, making actions that even frightened himself. Among the crowd, only Chen Pingyan remained calm because he was secretly manipulating everything. The reason Zhang Xiaobo suddenly became so powerful was that he used the puppetry technique from the Nine Dragon Medical Classic. While others used thin threads to manipulate their puppets, his puppetry technique was completed with the assistance of powerful internal energy and golden needles, even ordinary warriors couldn't see through it. Now Zhang Xiaobo's body was under his control. Ouch, it hurts. This kid is pretending to be weak, everyone attack together, kill him. If anything happens, I, Li Jingkong, will take responsibility. Li Xiao shouted angrily at his subordinates while still lying on the ground. He dares to attack Li Xiao, this kid is tired of living, kill him. Get him. Damn him. Li Xiao's subordinates, upon hearing the order, rushed forward in a frenzy, intending to kill Zhang Xiaobo. Zhang Xiaobo was scared out of his wits. Li Xiao, I swear this wasn't me, I didn't do it. Li Xiao, spare me. Zhang Xiaobo kept explaining to Li Xiao, but his body was not under his control making actions completely opposite to what he wanted, rushing towards Li Xiao's subordinates. The first subordinate in front hadn't even swung his steel pipe yet when Zhang Xiaobo punched him in the nose, causing him to faint. The second one, although he had raised his weapon, was kicked by Zhang Xiaobo before he could strike, crashing into his companions behind him and knocking them down. Zhang Xiaobo was like a wolf among sheep, wherever he went, no one was his match, falling one after another. But he kept begging Li Xiao for mercy. This scene scared Li Xiao out of his wits. He thought Zhang Xiaobo was playing with him in this way. Well done, Zhang Xiaobo, kill these bastards. Chen Pingyan shouted, leading the cheer for Zhang Xiaobo. The security guards also had the same thought as Li Xiao, thinking that Zhang Xiaobo had really been hiding his strength before, and now that manager Chen Pingyan was here, he wanted to perform well in front of the manager, no longer hiding, revealing his super strength. The security guards suddenly felt proud, with Chen Pingyan leading the way, they all shouted and cheered for Zhang Xiaobo. Vice Manager Zhang is awesome. Vice Manager Zhang is mighty. Vice Zhang, be even more ruthless and kill these bastards. Zhang Xiaobo, who was originally terrified, gradually calmed down as he saw himself easily defeat so many people. He no longer apologized to Li Xiao and curiously watched as his body inexplicably used various techniques to take down Li Xiao's followers. It wasn't until none of Li Xiao's group could stand up anymore that his body stopped in front of Li Xiao. Li Xiao was scared and kept backing away when he saw Zhang Xiaobo standing in front of him. Qin Jigang and the three former captains of the Four Seas Group Security Department, who were observing from the corner, were dumbfounded by the scene before them. They originally thought Li Xiao came to cause trouble and that no one in the Four Seas Group could handle him. They were sure that Gao Weiwei would personally call them back. At first, things went as they expected. Li Xiao immediately defeated the Four Seas Group Security Department and had all the security guards under his control. They were excited and waited for Yao Weiwei's call. They had already planned to negotiate with Gao Weiwei and then make their move. But then the new security manager arrived, and everything changed. What happened next completely exceeded their expectations. Zhang Xiaobo, who they thought was weak and cunning, suddenly went berserk. It was as if he had transformed into a martial arts master and easily defeated Li Xiao and his skilled followers. The three of them together wouldn't dare to easily defeat Li Xiao and his followers. Zhang Xiaobo had been hiding his true abilities too well. All their plans were ruined. Even Gao Weiwei, who was watching everything through surveillance in the president's office, showed a hint of surprise on her face. But soon she realized something was wrong. Zhang Xiaobo seemed highly nervous from start to finish, even terrified. He didn't seem like a hidden master at all. There was only one possibility, someone with great skills was secretly controlling Zhang Xiaobo's body using secret techniques. Thinking of this, she remembered her phone call to Shadow earlier. She thought Shadow was the one controlling Zhang Xiaobo's body to deal with Li Xiao and the others. Besides herself, Gao Weiwei couldn't think of anyone else with such abilities. After Zhang Xiaobo stabilized, although he didn't know what was happening, when he saw that he had easily defeated the arrogant Li Xiao and his followers, he didn't care about anything else and walked confidently towards Li Xiao. What? What do you want? Don't come any closer. My sister is Li Qiushui, the chairman of the Li group, also known as the Witch Queen, one of the three great demons of the Southwest. If you dare to touch a hair on me, my sister won't let you off. Li Xiao realized that his people were no match for Zhang Xiaobo, so he had to bring up his sister to intimidate him. In the Southwest, there were indeed few people who dared to disrespect his sister Li Qiushui. Sure enough, when Zhang Xiaobo heard Li Xiao mention his sister Li Qiushui, he immediately backed down and stopped in his tracks. 
Li Xiao, don't misunderstand, I just wanted to come and help you up and see where you were injured, Zhang Xiaobo said as he bent down to help the terrified Zhang Xiaobo up from the ground. But when Li Xiao saw Zhang Xiaobo's actions, he remembered how Zhang Xiaobo had apologized to him while ruthlessly attacking his men. He thought Zhang Xiaobo was using the same trick again and was scared, so he quickly got up and stood behind his followers. Don't come any closer. I don't need your help. I can get up on my own. After getting up, Li Xiao immediately hid behind his followers. Apart from her sister, he had never seen such a powerful person before. In less than two minutes, he wiped out the experts he brought with him, it was terrifying. At this time, Chen Pingan also walked forward and came behind Zhang Xiaobo. He gently patted Zhang Xiaobo's back, and the golden needle flew out from Zhang Xiaobo's back and landed in his hand, which he put back into the dragon burial ring. Assistant Manager Zhang, you did a great job this time. I will apply for a bonus for you this month. Chen Pingan said meaningfully to Zhang Xiaobo. Upon hearing Chen Pingan's words and recalling his previous actions and the sudden and inexplicable increase in his strength, Zhang Xiaobo immediately thought that it was Manager Chen Pingan who had secretly helped him. Otherwise, Chen Pingan would not have said those inexplicable words about him hiding his true strength before. Manager, was it you just now? Zhang Xiaobo was about to ask if it was Manager Chen Pingan who had secretly helped him, but he was stopped by Chen Pingan's gaze. Chen Pingan, who had been framed and imprisoned before, felt that it was because he had been too high profile in the past and had offended someone. Although he had now learned extraordinary skills, who knew if there were even more powerful people in this world? Chen Pingan, who had learned a painful lesson, knew that being low-key was the way to go. Therefore, if it was not necessary, he did not want to show his strength in front of everyone or show off. Zhang Xiaobo was originally a cunning and opportunistic person, but he was still very perceptive. Seeing Chen Pingan's gaze, he immediately shut his mouth. Thank you for your cultivation, manager. Zhang Xiaobo quickly changed his words and thanked Chen Pingan respectfully. From Chen Pingan's gaze that stopped him, he understood that everything that had just happened was done secretly by the new manager in front of him. Originally, after work last night, his colleagues were still discussing how the new manager had become the security department manager by having some unclear relationship with the CEO, and that he was a complete opportunist. Now it seemed that things were not as rumored. The manager in front of him was a hidden master. It was even possible that he was like those extraordinary people in novels. Only in this way could everything that had just happened be explained. Hmm. Chen Pingan nodded, satisfied with Zhang Xiaobo's quick reaction. It seemed that in the future, he could hand over the security department to Zhang Xiaobo and cultivate two or three experts to deal with situations like today. Then Chen Pingan walked up to Li Xiao. Who are you? Why did you come to bother me, the manager? Chen Pingan walked up to Li Xiao and asked coldly. Li Xiao, who was scared by Zhang Xiaobo's attack, just coldly looked at Chen Pingan without answering. Our manager is asking you a question. Are you deaf or dumb? Zhang Xiaobo, who was on the side, saw that Li Xiao didn't answer Chen Pingan's question, and he immediately concluded that his new manager was a legendary expert. He immediately shouted at Li Xiao. After being scolded by Zhang Xiaobo, Li Xiao finally spoke up. How dare you touch my woman? Do you have the audacity to ask me why I'm bothering you? Gao Weiwei is the woman I, Li Jingkong, have set my eyes on. It's best for you to stay away from her in the future. Don't let me find out that you have any improper intentions towards her, otherwise, you will die a miserable death, I swear. Let's go. Li Xiao knew that with Zhang Xiaobo, this expert, by Qin Pingan's side, the people he brought with him would gain nothing. Continuing to entangle would only further damage his reputation. He glared at Qin Pingan fiercely, said a few harsh words, and then called his injured subordinates to leave. Qin Pingan did not stop them. After Li Xiao and his group left, other security guards and employees of the Four Seas group immediately surrounded Zhang Xiaobo, who had driven away Li Xiao and the others, showing concern and care. The security guards who were previously beaten by Li Xiao and others are especially grateful to Zhang Xiaobo and thank him for helping them seek revenge. Everyone, actually, this is all thanks to the manager. It is the manager's effective management and encouragement that allowed me to unleash my potential and drive Li Xiao and his gang away. If you want to express gratitude, then thank the manager. Zhang Xiaobo knew that these achievements were not his own, and humbly responded to everyone. However, the security guards in the department knew that Zhang Xiaobo was quite slick. When they heard his words, they thought that Zhang Xiaobo didn't dare to take credit for himself and instead pushed the credit to their boss, Chen Pingan, in order to please him. The crowd responded to Zhang Xiaobo's call and turned to thank Chen Pingan. However, the disdain in their eyes couldn't be concealed, making Chen Pingan feel embarrassed. Everyone, please quiet down. In order to reward the responsible and brave efforts of the security department today, and to celebrate our significant victory, 
I will personally treat all members of the security department to a big meal tonight. You can choose the location, and don't worry about saving money for me, Chen Pingan announced to everyone. As soon as he said this, the security guards in the room were initially stunned, but then showed ecstatic expressions. Manager, can we choose the Kaiwe Hotel? Hearing Chen Pingan say that the location could be chosen and that they didn't need to save money for him, a colleague who looked simple and honest asked tentatively. When that person spoke, everyone in the room quieted down and looked at Chen Pingan with strange expressions. They wanted to see if Chen Pingan would feel distressed or even angry after hearing that person's words. In Longcheng, the Kaiwe Hotel was the second largest hotel below the Emperor Hotel. It was said that even a casual meal there would cost tens of thousands of yuan. The reason that person didn't ask if they could go to the Emperor Hotel was because they heard that the old war god was hosting a birthday banquet there today, and it was fully booked. They could only choose the Kaiwe Hotel. Zhang Xiaobo immediately walked up to that colleague and slapped him on the back of his head. You idiot, who do you think owns the company? Going to such an expensive hotel, with all of us and the brothers on the night and afternoon shifts, at least four or five tables. The manager's salary for the next few months will be gone after this meal. Zhang Xiaobo lectured that colleague. It was because Chen Pingan had arrived that he had the opportunity to become the deputy manager, and Chen Pingan had just let him take all the credit. He was very grateful to Chen Pingan and instinctively defended Chen Pingan's interests. I, the manager said we could choose the location. That colleague answered in a small voice, looking aggrieved. You dare to talk back. Zhang Xiaobo saw that this simple and honest colleague dared to talk back, and he wanted to slap him on the back of his head again. Xiaobo, what are you doing? It's just the Kaiwe Hotel, no big deal. Tonight, we'll celebrate at the Kaiwe Hotel. Those with family members can bring them along, let's have a lively celebration together. Chen Pingan quickly stopped Zhang Xiaobo and said again. As soon as he said this, Zhang Xiaobo took a deep breath. This manager was too generous. Many of them had family members with them, so wouldn't they be eating up the manager's salary for a year tonight? What he didn't know was that even if they ate at the Kaiwe Hotel for a year, it still wouldn't bankrupt Chen Pingan. Long live the manager. Manager, I love you. Manager, we all love you. When they heard that tonight's feast would be held at the Kaiwe Hotel and that they could bring their family members, all the security guards cheered. They didn't care how much money this meal would cost, they only knew that tonight they could bring their families to the second largest high-end hotel in Longcheng, enjoy the services of a high-end hotel, and satisfy that bit of vanity in their hearts. Some immediately called their families to let them know they didn't need to cook tonight. Others called their colleagues on the afternoon and night shifts. Can I go with you guys? Just as everyone was busy making phone calls to their families or colleagues, a somewhat cold voice came from behind them and entered their ears. When they turned around and saw who was speaking, everyone showed an incredulous expression. Because they found out that the one asking them was none other than Gao Weiwei, the unattainable and aloof CEO of their Four Cs group. The CEO who usually kept her distance actually wanted to have a meal with them? Was the sun rising from the west? Everyone stared at Gao Weiwei, thinking they must have misheard. What? Don't you welcome me to go with you? Gao Weiwei smiled and walked up to Chin Pingan, playfully asking. Her smile was like melting ice and snow, a gentle breeze, and blooming flowers, leaving everyone stunned once again. Truly worthy of being one of the four beauties of Longcheng, along with Mu Wancheng, Qin Shiyu, and Li Qiushui. That smile was so charming, so healing. You're the CEO, if you want to go, then go. I'm not stopping you, Chin Pingan's cold tone made everyone sweat for him. This was the infamous dictatorial CEO of their Four Cs group. Manager Chen actually dared to speak to her in such a manner? The rumors were true after all, Manager Chen and CEO Gao really had a relationship. Everyone looked at Chen Pingan with admiration, as even the cold and aloof CEO's heart could be captured by him, something even Li Xiao couldn't achieve. Truly impressive. Then it settled, I'll go with you this afternoon, but for now, wait for me here. Gao Weiwei said and then turned and left. As soon as Gao Weiwei left, the scene immediately exploded. When Gao Weiwei was here just now, although she wasn't as cold as usual, her naturally intimidating aura still made everyone afraid to speak loudly. Now that she had left, everyone immediately crowded around Chen Pingan. Boss, you're amazing. Even CEO Gao is so obedient to you. My admiration for you is like the endless flow of the Yangtze River. Zhang Xiaobo walked up to Chen Pingan with a flattering face, full of admiration, and patted his backside. Enough, we don't have any relationship. Don't talk about this kind of thing in the future, understand? Chen Pingan frowned and looked at Zhang Xiaobo with a faint gaze. Yes, yes, we won't talk about it in the future. Although Zhang Xiaobo said so with his mouth, his eyes were full of disbelief. He thought, if you don't have a relationship, would you dare to call her by her name so boldly? And if you don't have a relationship, 
Why would CEO Ga not only not be angry when you speak to her like that, but also smile at you like melting ice and snow? With all these signs, it's impossible to believe that you don't have a relationship. Seeing Zhang Xiaobo and the expressions of the others, Jin Pingan knew that no matter what he said, they wouldn't believe him. He felt a bit helpless, but he couldn't be bothered to explain anymore. Not long after, a pink Mercedes stopped in front of Jin Pingan. The car window slowly rolled down, revealing Gao Weiwei's beautiful face. Get in the car. Gao Weiwei called out gently to Jin Pingan. Why should I get in the car? Jin Pingan remained as cold as before. Gao Weiwei knew that Jin Pingan resented her, but she didn't care about his attitude towards her and still greeted him with a smile. Your clothes are a bit old. I'll take you to buy some new ones. Otherwise, when we go to the Kaiwa Hotel this afternoon, people might think you're a beggar and won't let you in. Gao Weiwei pointed at Chen Pingan's clothes. Seeing Chen Pingan in these clothes, she thought he didn't have much money after just being released from prison, so he was still wearing his old clothes from before. She felt a bit sorry for him. No need, I think my clothes are fine. You don't have to worry, CEO Gao. Chen Pingan rejected Gao Weiwei's idea of taking him to buy clothes without even thinking about it. You are now the manager of our company's security department. It damages our company's image if you dress so shabbily. I am considering the company's interests. Whether you want to go or not, you have to go. Otherwise, you can quit this job. I will support you in the future. Gao Weiwei's words were cut off by Chen Pingan covering her mouth. However, he was a step too late. Everything that should and shouldn't have been said was heard by everyone around. The security department staff all looked at Chen Pingan with strange eyes. General Gao voluntarily said he would support you, and you say you have no relationship with him? Are you kidding? Looking at the strange eyes of everyone, Chen Pingan felt that even if he jumped into the Yellow River, he couldn't wash away the misunderstanding. On the other hand, Gao Weiwei had a completely different reaction. She not only didn't feel any resentment towards the misunderstanding between her and Chen Pingan, but when she saw his pitiful expression, she couldn't help but smile because her mouth was covered. Mischievously, she raised her carefully groomed eyebrows. I'm afraid of you now. Don't talk nonsense anymore. Chen Pingan saw Gao Weiwei's gesture and warned her helplessly. Gao Weiwei couldn't speak, so she could only nod and use her eyes to indicate that she heard him. Only then did Chen Pingan release her mesmerizing mouth. However, he didn't compromise with Gao Weiwei and go shopping with her. Instead, he turned to Zhang Xiaobo. Zhang Xiaobo, go get me a few sets of security uniforms. As the manager of the security department, I should set an example by wearing work clothes. General Gao, this won't damage the company, right? Chen Pingan asked Zhang Xiaobo, then turned to Gao Weiwei in the car with a cold tone. Gao Weiwei wanted to say something else, but her phone rang at that moment. After checking the caller ID, her face instantly regained its usual cold and arrogant expression. Without hesitation, she answered the call. Wu Xingjie is dead. A mechanical voice came from the phone. Although the voice was not loud, Chen Pingan, who was standing next to Gao Weiwei, heard it clearly. His eyebrows furrowed involuntarily. He had just seen Wu Xingjie a few days ago, who was known as one of the three demons of the Southwest. At that time, his mental state was still good. How could he suddenly die in a few days? Gao Weiwei, holding the phone, had an even more drastic change in her expression, then quickly hung up. Since you don't like to dress formally, then it's up to you. If you have any issues, find my secretary to help you solve them. I have some things to deal with, so I'll leave first. Seeing that Chen Pingan didn't want to go shopping with her, Gao Weiwei felt a bit disappointed. Coupled with the sudden phone call, she stepped on the accelerator and left. Chen Pingan saw Gao Weiwei leave and didn't think much about it. People die every moment in this world, suddenly and without any connection to him. After adjusting his mood, Chen Pingan turned around and saw the security department staff still looking at him with strange eyes. His eyebrows furrowed again. Zhang Xiaobo, what are you standing there for? Hurry up and get me the clothes. Bring them directly to my office. Chen Pingan said impatiently. Yes, manager. I'll go get the clothes for you. Zhang Xiaobo quickly turned around to find the clothes for Chen Pingan. Chen Pingan watched Zhang Xiaobo leave and then walked back to his office. In less than 10 minutes, Zhang Xiaobo knocked on Chen Pingan's office door, holding two sets of security uniforms. Chen Pingan noticed that it wasn't just Zhang Xiaobo who came, but also the three people he promoted as team leaders yesterday. Each of them had a set of clothes in their hands. Manager, we brought the clothes you wanted. There are four sets in total. Zhang Xiaobo happily said to Chen Pingan, pointing at the clothes in their hands. Do we need all of you to bring just a few sets of clothes? For people together? Chen Pingan asked with a wry smile, not knowing whether to laugh or cry. In addition to Zhang Xiaobo, I specifically remembered the names of the other three people yesterday. The tall one with the crew cut is called Lu Hang. 
The thin and tall one with a bit of artistic flair is called Zhang Shixian. The one with a silly face is called Wu Yong, but Chen Pingan doesn't think he's brave at all. After hearing Chen Pingan's words, all three team leaders looked at Zhang Xiaobo, and none of them answered Chen Pingan's question. Zhang Xiaobo once again put on a smile and walked up to Chen Pingan, and with a slightly embarrassed expression, he said, Manager, besides bringing you clothes, the few of us also want you to teach us some martial arts. Otherwise, we won't be able to handle the work at hand. As soon as Zhang Xiaobo said this, Wu Yong and the others nodded vigorously. The three of them had a very good relationship with Zhang Xiaobo before, so when they saw Zhang Xiaobo bravely stepping forward to answer questions and becoming the deputy manager yesterday, they also bravely stood up to answer Qin Pingan's question, and in the end, they were all promoted to team leaders. Everyone was happy. When Zhang Xiaobo went to find clothes for Qin Pingan just now, the three of them immediately caught up and asked Zhang Xiaobo when he became so powerful, why they hadn't noticed before, and so on. Zhang Xiaobo shook his head and denied suddenly becoming powerful. Then he briefly told the three of them about the situation at that time and his suspicion that Chen Pingan was a talented person. The three of them knew Zhang Xiaobo very well, knowing that he used to be just an ordinary person like them, but now he had inexplicably become so brave, directly defeating the experts brought by Li Xiao and Li Xiao. Combined with Chen Pingan's words before Zhang Xiaobo took the stage, they all felt that Zhang Xiaobo's analysis was very reasonable, so they discussed and decided to ask Chen Pingan to teach them martial arts. If you want to learn martial arts, my requirements are very strict. If you can meet them, then I will agree to teach you martial arts. Chen Pingan wasn't surprised by Zhang Xiaobo's words. Manager, rest assured, we will definitely follow the rules you set. After Zhang Xiaobo finished speaking, the other three also nodded in agreement. Then let's go. Chen Pingan didn't say anything else and left the office. Manager, where are we going? Zhang Xiaobo and the others followed behind, asking in confusion. Since you said you want to learn martial arts, we will definitely go to the training ground of our security department. Zhang Xiaobo and the others were delighted to see that Chen Pingan was going to teach them martial arts at the training ground, so they quickly followed. Soon, they arrived at the training ground. At this moment, several security guards from the afternoon and night shifts were doing physical training on the training ground. Zhang Xiaobo, as the deputy manager, directly drove them away. In the end, only the five of them were left on the training ground. Listen carefully. Today I will teach you a set of ancient Zhuangquan. This set of ancient Zhuangquan is extremely powerful, not inferior to ancient Thai boxing, and even better. It is said that ancient Thai boxing evolved from ancient Zhuangquan. After learning it, you must not use this martial art to bully the weak or do evil. Otherwise, I will personally take action and disable you. Chen Pingan warned Zhang Xiaobo and the other four with a serious expression. Please rest assured, manager. After learning martial arts, we will definitely not bully the weak or use martial arts to do evil. If such a thing happens, you don't need to take action, I will disable myself. Zhang Xiaobo loudly assured Chen Pingan. The other three also repeated Zhang Xiaobo's words. Chen Pingan nodded in satisfaction. He still believed in the words of Wu Yong and the other three team leaders, but he had a question mark in his mind about Zhang Xiaobo. Based on his understanding of Zhang Xiaobo, he was good at shouting slogans and was very proactive, but whether he could actually follow through was uncertain. However, this kind of person had strong abilities in handling tasks, as long as they didn't cross the line, they could still be useful. Next, Chen Pingan taught Zhang Xiaobo and the others a set of ancient Zhuangquan that was more powerful than ancient Thai boxing. This set of Guzhuang fist was not passed down to him by his master. Instead, when he was in prison, he treated an internal injury of a Guzhuang fist master, and as a reward, the master gave him the Guzhuang fist technique. As the saying goes, the Tao cannot be easily passed on. The things his master taught him, he dare not easily pass on to others. This is the rule of their lineage. Moreover, the techniques of their lineage all require inner strength as a foundation, which ordinary people cannot learn. When Qin Pingan demonstrated the Guzhuang fist techniques in front of Zhang Xiaobo and others, they were all shocked, and even showed a somewhat fearful expression on their faces. Because the Guzhuang fist was developed by the ancestors of the Zhuang ethnic group through thousands of years of fighting against large wild beasts in the continuous mountains where the Zhuang people gather, it is extremely powerful and every move can be deadly. Although the Guzhuang fist is called a fist technique, the fists are rarely used. It mainly utilizes the elbows, knees, and other parts of the body that are the hardest to deliver fatal blows to the enemy. The Muay Thai scene on TV is already extreme and terrifying, but compared to the Guzhuang fist, it is child's play. Zhang Xiaobo and the others were drenched in cold sweat just from watching Chen Pingan perform at once. If any of Li Xiao's subordinates knew the Guzhuang fist before, it is estimated that they would either be dead or disabled by now. Alright, I'll perform it again. 
Record it with your phones and follow the video to learn, step by step. Familiarize yourselves with the moves today. After Chin Pingan finished speaking, he performed it again, letting them record it and learn the moves step by step according to the recorded video. It wasn't until the end of the workday in the afternoon that all four of them were exhausted, almost on the verge of collapse, before Chin Pingan let them rest. Alright, now that you've memorized the moves, you can come here to train on your own in the future. Let's clean up and go have a big meal now. After Chin Pingan finished speaking, he was the first to leave the training ground. When he reached the entrance, all the security personnel of the security department, including Gao Weiwei, were gathered there. Even Gao Weiwei specially changed into a dress and dressed up at the entrance of the company, waiting for him. The company's employees rarely saw Gao Weiwei's gentle side like this, and many of them couldn't help but turn their heads to look at Gao Weiwei standing at the entrance, waiting for Chin Pingan. When Chin Pingan came out, Gao Weiwei's face lit up with joy and she took the initiative to greet him, just like welcoming a boyfriend. This scene once again stunned the employees of the Four Seas Group. Manager Chen, we're all ready. I also called the manager of the Hyatt Hotel and asked them to reserve a spot for us. My car is over there, let's get in quickly. Gao Weiwei walked up to Chen Pingan and said playfully, completely different from her usual cold demeanor. I'll just take a taxi with the others. Chen Pingan calmly refused to get in Gao Weiwei's car. I have something to discuss with you later, about taking over the Four Seas Demon Order. Since you're taking a taxi, I'll take one with you. Gao Weiwei was determined to ride in the same car as Chen Pingan and said seriously. Hearing Gao Weiwei say this, Chen Pingan had nothing else to say and had to get in Gao Weiwei's car. Gao Weiwei also arranged vehicles for the security guards who didn't have cars. The huge convoy of more than 20 vehicles headed towards the Hyatt Hotel. What's the matter? Just say it. On the way, Chen Pingan saw that Gao Weiwei had been silent and thought she was trying to deceive him, so he couldn't help but ask. When Gao Weiwei heard Chen Pingan ask, she stopped the car on the side of the road and then turned around to take out a long and exquisite gift box from the back seat. Take this, and tomorrow, come with me to celebrate my stepmother's birthday. My stepmother has a high reputation within the Four Seas organization. If you want to smoothly take over the Four Seas Demon Order, you need her approval. My stepmother has a hobby, she likes to collect antiques and cultural relics just like men do. She has been longing for the Orchid Pavilion preface for a long time. The one inside this box is the authentic Orchid Pavilion preface. When the time comes, you should give it to her as a birthday gift. It should leave a good impression on her. Although it may not necessarily win her support, she might not oppose you holding the Four Seas Demon King Order because of this Orchid Pavilion preface. Gao Weiwei said seriously to Chen Pingan. Chen Pingan didn't say anything, he directly opened the exquisite gift box and took out the Orchid Pavilion preface inside. The Orchid Pavilion preface is the pinnacle work of the calligraphy master Wang Shiji, and it has been hailed as the number one calligraphy in the world since ancient times. It is said to have disappeared for thousands of years. All the Orchid Pavilion preface on the market now are replicas, there are no authentic ones. Once the authentic Orchid Pavilion preface appears, it will definitely be treated as a national treasure level cultural relic and be praised by the top collectors in the field. How much did you spend on this Orchid Pavilion preface? Chen Pingan asked calmly while looking at the Orchid Pavilion preface in his hand. 180 million yuan. Gao Weiwei answered without hesitation, as if a billion yuan was just a string of numbers. You really spent a lot of money, but this Orchid Pavilion preface is a fake. You've been ripped off. Chen Pingan blurted out after hearing the price Gao Weiwei mentioned. He was so sure that this Orchid Pavilion preface was fake because the authentic one was hidden in the antique area of his safe deposit box at Rueshire Bank. The manager Shin at the Swiss bank had given him the list of antiques in his safe deposit box, and the list happened to include the Orchid Pavilion preface. I know. Unexpectedly, Gao Weiwei, after hearing his words, just looked at him with a slight surprise and admitted the fact that the Orchid Pavilion preface was a fake. Now it was Chin Pingan's turn to be surprised, and he asked in confusion, you knew it was a fake, why did you spend so much money to buy it? Are you crazy? Chen Pingan couldn't help but curse. If I didn't spend so much money, how could my stepmother believe it's authentic? Alright, tomorrow you just need to bring this with me to celebrate my stepmother's birthday. You don't need to worry about anything else, I have my own arrangements. Gao Weiwei said, then started the car and headed towards the Grand Hyatt Hotel. Soon, their convoy arrived at the Grand Hyatt Hotel, which was ranked second in the city's hotel industry. Many security guards' family members were already waiting at the entrance. The manager of the Grand Hyatt Hotel, accompanied by the hotel's welcoming staff, was eagerly waiting for their arrival at the entrance. Welcome, Mr. Gao, to our Grand Hyatt Hotel. Your reserved seats are all ready, in the Hero Hall. Once you're seated, the dishes will be served immediately. 
The manager of the Grand Hyatt Hotel was a woman in her thirties. As soon as Gao Weiwei got out of the car, she came forward immediately. Mr. Lu, you're too polite. Today, our company security department manager, Mr. Chen, is the one treating. Please take care of Mr. Chen. Yao Weiwei introduced Chen Pingin to the manager of the Grand Hyatt Hotel, who then shifted her gaze to Chen Pingin, who was wearing a security uniform. Manager Chen is truly young and promising, generous in his actions. It's an honor for our Grand Hyatt Hotel to host Mr. Gao and Manager Chen, such generous friends. Please come in. Although Chen Pingin was just wearing a security uniform, he exuded a special charm that attracted her. Taking a breath of it made her feel refreshed, and even though she was already a married woman, her face still blushed slightly, and her heartbeat accelerated. She warmly reached out her hand and shook hands with Chen Pingin. If it weren't for Yao Weiwei still being there, she might have made some inappropriate moves. After retracting his hand, Chen Pingin immediately asked Zhang Xiaobo to welcome the security department's colleagues and their families inside. The salary at the Four Seas Group is higher than that of the average company, but this Kaiwei Grand Hotel is a super luxurious hotel second only to the Emperor Hotel. Many people have never had the opportunity to come here, especially their family members. When they first entered, they were shocked by the luxurious appearance of the hotel. Although Chin Pingin is a new manager, he immediately promoted newcomers and invited them to have a meal at this luxurious hotel. What's more, they can bring their family members. The security department no longer harbors any ill will towards Chin Pingin. Even under the guidance of Zhang Xiaobo and others, everyone frequently toasts and flatters Chen Pingin. Zhang Xiaobo, Liu Hang, and Zhang Shixian and others even offered to help Chen Pingin with the drinks, but they were all rejected by Chen Pingin. Glass after glass of liquor, regardless of who it was, was poured into their stomachs. Even Gao Weiwei, who was sitting next to him, began to worry about him. Just as Chen Pingin and the security department were enjoying themselves, in a tea room on the top floor of the Kaiwei Grand Hotel, a woman in her thirties, holding a cigarette in her hand, sat in front of a coffee table with a coquettish manner, smoking and making tea. Standing beside her was an old man. Miss, there are three major events in Longcheng today. The old war god Zhao Wujin in the Emperor Hotel is hosting a birthday banquet. Apart from the people in the martial arts world, all the major families are present. The second event is that Wu Xingjie, who is on par with you, suddenly died. The hospital's report says it was a cerebral infarction. The third event is that the young master caused trouble at the Four Seas group again. He brought a lot of people with him, but in the end, he was beaten and fled. The old man respectfully reported the top news in Longcheng today. This woman, Li Chaoshui, is one of the three demon kings in the southwest, along with Wu Xingjie and Chen Changsheng. She is also known as one of the four beauties of Longcheng, along with Mu Wancheng, Qin Shiyu, and Gao Weiwei. She is one of the influential figures in Longcheng. Have you found out why the old war god chose to host the birthday banquet in Longcheng? After listening to the old man's words, Li Chaoshui gently opened her red lips, her voice as melodious as a nightingale. Miss, we haven't found out yet. But after the birthday banquet, the old war god left his grandson and granddaughter behind and has already left Longcheng for the northern border. The old man respectfully replied. What do you think of Wu Xingjie's death? Li Chaoshui didn't dwell on the first question and blew a smoke ring lightly, directly asking the next question. Miss, I saw Wu Xingjie yesterday. His mental state was still very good. Coupled with Chen Changsheng's inexplicable death some time ago, I think Wu Xingjie's death is quite suspicious. The old man replied calmly. Are you suggesting that his death was deliberate? Li Chaoshui furrowed her brows slightly. There is a possibility. Now that Chen Changsheng and Wu Xingjie, who are on par with you, have both died, you might be their next target. The old man nodded and analyzed. Is that so? Quite interesting. Have you noticed any suspicious individuals appearing in Longcheng recently? After listening to the old man's analysis, Li Chaoshui not only wasn't afraid, but instead showed a curious expression. There is indeed a suspicious person in Longcheng recently, the new manager of the security department at the Four Seas Group. Take a look at this. The old man finished speaking and handed a USB drive to Li Chiaoshui. Li Chiaoshui took the USB drive and inserted it into the computer, slowly watching it while smoking a cigarette. If Chen Pingin were here, he would definitely notice that the content inside the USB drive is the scene of Li Jingkong causing trouble at the Four Seas Group and being beaten away by Zhang Xiaobo. At first, Li Chiaoshui didn't think much of it, but when she saw Zhang Xiaobo suddenly show his power and knock down her brother Li Jingkong and others, she finally became interested. This security guard shouldn't be a martial artist. How did he suddenly become so powerful? Li Chiaoshui asked the old man curiously. Miss, take a look. This guy only became powerful after their manager arrived. If I'm not mistaken, 
their manager must have used the legendary puppetry technique. And I found out that Wu Xingjie met this person before he died. Wu Xingjie's grandson had a conflict with this person a few days ago, and Wu Xingjie's grandson had his arm disabled. It seemed like Wu Xingjie would seek revenge, but in the end, he went to apologize to this person instead. Now he has appeared in Chen Changxing's Four Seas group. I feel that Chen Changxing's and Wu Shengjie's deaths may be related to him. Then let's go meet him tonight. Li Qiushui said eagerly to the old man. I'll check his whereabouts tonight. After the old man finished speaking and saw Li Qiushui nod, he left the tea room. The tea room became quiet, with only the sound of smoking and drinking tea. The sun set, and neon lights lit up on the street. It was already 10 o'clock at night. Chen Pingan and the security department staff had been drinking since they finished work until 10 o'clock. Many people were so drunk that they couldn't leave. The only man who was still awake was Chen Pingan. I've already arranged for the hotel staff to drive those who came without family to the company dormitory. Where do you live? Let me take you home. Chen Pingan and Gao Weiwei stood at the entrance of the Hyatt Hotel. Gao Weiwei, who didn't drink, said to the slightly intoxicated Chen Pingan, No need, I'll go back by myself. Chen Pingan said and ignored Gao Weiwei. He left with the Orchid Pavilion preface that Gao Weiwei had given him earlier. He had just made an appointment with manager Shen from Rue Shur Bank to pick up the authentic Orchid Pavilion preface. If he wanted to give a gift, he would give the genuine one and not deceive others with a fake. Gao Weiwei knew Chen Pingan's temper. She hesitated for a moment but ultimately didn't follow him. She dialed the same number again. Protect Chen Pingan. As usual, after the call connected, she only said one sentence before hanging up, then she got in the car and left the Hyatt Hotel. Two hours later, Chen Pingan came out of Rue Shur Bank with the authentic Orchid Pavilion preface in hand, accompanied by manager Shen. Mr. Chen, where do you live now? Let me take you home. Manager Shen, just like Gao Weiwei before, offered to drive Chen Pingan home. Just as Chen Pingan was about to nod, his ears twitched twice, and he frowned and looked back. No need, you can go back. I have some personal matters to attend to later. In the end, Chen Pingan refused manager Shen's offer to drive him home. All right then. Be careful at this late hour. If you need anything, call me. Shen Pingan said he had something to take care of, and manager Shen didn't want to say anything more. He left in his car. After manager Shen left, Shen Pingan walked in the direction of Li Runin's rented apartment along the road. When he reached a dimly lit section of the road, a slender figure in combat gear with a fox mask appeared in front of him, blocking his way. The person also held a long sword in their hand. Even in the dimly lit area, the sword emitted a cold and shining light, indicating its sharpness. Who are you, and what do you want? Chen Pingan stopped and asked in a deep voice. I'm here to take your life. A seductive voice entered Chen Pingan's ears. As soon as the voice fell, the slender figure on the opposite side immediately moved. Her move was simple, as she quickly thrust the sword towards Chen Pingan's throat. However, Chen Pingan seemed to be stunned by the sudden turn of events and stood still in place. Didn't Uncle Zhang say that this guy is very powerful, and he killed Wu Xingji and Chen Changsheng, who were on par with him? Why does he seem to have no martial arts skills at all, not even knowing how to dodge? The woman, seeing Chen Pingan's lack of reaction, felt puzzled and wondered to herself. Soon, her long sword came to Chen Pingan's throat. Just as it was about to pierce through, a faint sound of breaking through the air came from the side. Two shining flying knives shot towards them, one accurately deflecting the sword that was about to pierce Chen Pingan's throat, and the other aiming straight for the woman's throat. The woman was startled and immediately gave up her target, then retreated explosively. At this moment, a black shadow suddenly appeared as if from thin air, standing in front of Chen Pingan, protecting him. Shadow, it's you. Seeing the sudden appearance of the black shadow, the woman blurted out in surprise. Because this shadow was none other than the personal bodyguard of Chen Changsheng, one of the three great demons of the Southwest, known as the Four Seas Demon King, Chen Changsheng's great achievements in his lifetime were inseparable from this shadow. But didn't Uncle Zhong say that Chen Changsheng and Wu Xingjie were killed by the person in front of them? Why is the shadow still protecting him? He is the one I protect. Leave quickly, or don't blame me for being ruthless. A voice like an electronic sound came from the shadow's mouth, giving the impression of a robot. Oomph, just you? The woman on the other side coldly snorted, her face full of disdain. As soon as she finished speaking, her long sword swung out again, but this time her target was no longer Chen Pingan, but the shadow standing in front of him. Only by killing the shadow in front of her could she kill Chen Pingan. The shadow didn't waste any words either, wielding his flying knives to meet her, and the two engaged in a fierce battle. What surprised Chen Pingan was that the two of them fought fiercely, neither giving in. The shadow had been following him all along, and he had sensed it when he was in the Four Seas group. 
He could guess that the shadow was arranged by Cao Weiwei to protect him in secret, after all, she had asked him to take over the Four Seas Demon King's token. So when the woman's sword was about to strike, he didn't move, waiting to see if the expert Gao Weiwei had arranged to follow him would come to his rescue. Of course, he wasn't using his life as an experiment, but because he had enough confidence that if the shadow didn't come out, he could dodge that fatal strike in the shortest amount of time and then capture the opponent. Chen Pingan stood there watching the two fight, without any intention of intervening. After 10 minutes of fighting, they each left a palm print on the other's shoulder, and both spat out blood and retreated. Their strengths were evenly matched. Shadow, you ruined my good fortune. I won't let you off. Just you wait. After the woman was injured and saw that she couldn't take advantage of the shadow, and there was also Chen Ping and watching closely nearby, she left behind a harsh remark and turned to run away. After the shadow saw that the other party had really fled, he once again disappeared into the darkness. He never said a word to Chen Ping and from beginning to end. Although Chen Ping and couldn't see the shadow, he could sense it gradually moving away. It seemed that he thought the woman had run away and he was no longer in danger, so he left to find a place to heal his injuries. Without any hesitation, Chen Ping and directly chased after the direction the woman had fled. It seemed that he didn't have any major grudges in Longchun, but he wanted to figure out why this woman wanted to kill him for no reason. Chen Ping and chased for two blocks and caught up with the heavily injured woman in an alley. However, just as he caught up with her, he discovered that she actually had an accomplice, an old man who looked at least 60 years old. Seeing the woman and her accomplice meet up, Chen Ping and concealed his presence, wanting to listen to what they were saying. Miss, are you injured? The old man saw the woman clutching her shoulder in discomfort and asked in surprise. Yes, that kid actually had a shadow protecting him in secret. I fought with the shadow and we both ended up injured. By the way, Uncle Joan, didn't you say that the kid killed Chen Changqing and Wu Xingjie? That shadow is Chen Changqing's personal bodyguard. How could the shadow secretly protect him? The woman took off the mask on her face, revealing her enchanting and beautiful face, full of confusion she asked the old man, Sir, let me support you back first. The old man did not answer the woman's question, but instead went up to support her and handed her a cigarette. The woman had no guard against the old man, she took the cigarette and immediately lit it, taking a deep drag. Before long, the woman felt her body gradually weaken, becoming completely powerless. Uncle Zhong, why do I suddenly feel so weak? The woman raised her head and looked at the old man with a kind face, struggling to ask. Hee hee, that's because the young master put a special silver sedative in your cigarette. After inhaling it, you will first become completely weak, then gradually become completely submissive. Even a strong-willed woman will become a prostitute. There is no antidote except for surrendering to men. The young master will help you detoxify later, the process will be very pleasant, and afterwards you will definitely thank me, Uncle Zhong. After a sinister smile, the old man said to the woman. Seeing Uncle Zhong suddenly change his face, the woman realized something and immediately threw away the cigarette, swiftly grabbing Uncle Zhong's neck. Why did you betray me? Who is this young master you mentioned? The woman tried to remain calm, pretending nothing was wrong, and asked with a sinister tone. Uncle Zhong never expected that the woman, who had been drugged with the silver sedative, would still have such strength. He instantly felt a suffocating sensation and struggled involuntarily. In order to save his own life, the old man took out a knife from his pocket and ruthlessly stabbed the woman in the stomach. Blood instantly stained her clothes, and the woman let go of the old man and fell to the ground. Even Chen Pingan, who was hiding in the dark, was shocked by this scene. After the woman fell to the ground, the old man coughed continuously until he caught his breath, then he looked at the woman lying in a pool of blood, with a regretful expression. You asked a good question. To let you die with understanding, I will tell you. The Dragon King's palace has returned from overseas. They want to unify the underground forces of the Heavenly Dynasty. The southwestern region is known for its fierce people and unquestionable combat power making it the most powerful force in the country. Once they control the underground forces of the southwest, it is equivalent to controlling one-third of the underground forces of the heavenly dynasty. The southwestern underground forces are controlled by three demon kings. The dragon king's palace has studied Chen Changcheng and Wu Xingjie, and they know that they will not surrender, so they can only be killed. Then they will support those who are willing to obey. As for you, the young master wants you to be his woman because of your beautiful face. Unfortunately, you are foolish. Even after being drugged, you still want to kill me. In that case, I can only apologize. Let me tell you the truth, that Chen Pingan is not a warrior at all. He is just a pretty boy raised by Gao Weiwei. The puppetry in the video was done by Shadow. The reason I told you that Chen Pingan killed Chen Shangsheng and Wu Xingjie was just to make you and Shadow both suffer. Someone has already gone to kill Shadow. 
As long as Shadow dies, no one in the Southwest can stop the young master of the Dragon King's palace from becoming the king of the Southwest and unifying the underground forces of the Heavenly Dynasty. At that time, I will be one of the greatest contributors to the return of the Dragon King's palace. I will enjoy endless glory and wealth. Alright, I have said everything I needed to say. Now, can you close your eyes? The old man's words filled the woman with despair. It's impossible. The Uncle John I know is not like this. Are you lying to me? You. The woman wanted to say something else, but the old man didn't give her a chance. He stabbed her once again, and the woman's eyes widened, her legs kicked, but she died without closing her eyes. Spit. I have been in yearly family for so many years, and I have gained nothing. I have spent my whole life being ordered around like a servant. I've had enough. I want to live for myself this time. If you want to blame someone, blame your own bad luck. The old man finished speaking and wiped the blood off the knife onto the woman's body. Then he got up and left the alley. After the old man had gone far away, Chen Pingin came to the woman's side. Through their conversation just now, Chen Pingin knew that the woman in front of him was Li Qiushui, one of the three female demon kings in the southwest. She had tried to kill him but was manipulated by someone else. Chen Pingin squatted in front of the woman and checked her breath and pulse. Although she was not breathing, her pulse was still weak. You're lucky to meet me, your life is not meant to end. Chen Pingin muttered to himself, and then he pressed his index and middle fingers on the woman's body a few times, using the acupuncture technique from the Nine Dragon Medical Classic to seal her meridians and stop the bleeding. Then he took out a golden needle from the Zhanglong ring and inserted it into her Shinting acupoint, first locking the loss of her vitality, and then carried her out of the alley and hailed a taxi. Sir, which hotel? The driver saw Chen Pingin holding a motionless woman. It was dark because it was night, and the streetlights were dim. The driver didn't notice the blood on the woman's body and thought that Chen Pingin had picked up a drunk woman on the roadside and was taking her to a hotel for fun. To Longquan Villa within 20 minutes, Chen Pingin said in a deep voice. He currently lived with Li Runin and Qin Shiyu, so it was not appropriate to bring an injured woman back. He remembered the Longquan Villa that Zhao Shikai had given him. It was quiet and no one lived there, suitable for recuperation. The driver was puzzled when he heard Longquan Villa. It was the most expensive and luxurious villa in Longchang. The driver looked Chen Pingin up and down, noticing the security uniform he was wearing, and thought that Chen Pingin was a security guard at Longquan Villa. What are you looking at? Drive. At a critical moment, the driver was only busy looking at himself and didn't immediately start the car. Chen Pingin said with some anger. Just a security guard, why are you being so fierce? I won't do business with you. Please get out of the car. The driver felt that being scolded by a security guard was embarrassing and also became angry. He directly kicked Chen Pingin out of the car and refused to take him. Chen Pingin was stunned by the driver's actions, but quickly understood why the driver refused to take him. He must have thought that a security guard like him was not qualified to shout at him. If it were a normal situation, Chen Pingin wouldn't mind, but now it was a matter of life and death. The woman in his arms was seriously injured, and he could only delay for another 20 or 30 minutes at most. If he delayed too long, he couldn't guarantee that he could save her. Chen Pingin was too lazy to waste time with the driver and directly slapped the front seat from the back seat. Even with only using less than a third of his strength, the chair on the front seat couldn't withstand Chen Pingin's power and was instantly flattened. This was still Chen Pingin restraining his strength. If he had used full force, the chassis of the car would have been smashed through with a single slap. The driver was startled by Chen Pingin's actions and couldn't help but swallow his saliva. The look in his eyes towards Chen Pingin was full of fear. Was this still human strength? Drive, within 15 minutes, arrive at Longquan Villa, otherwise your fate will be the same as this flattened seat. Chen Pingin said calmly again. Why yes, I, I promise to arrive at Longquan Villa within 15 minutes. The driver, who had been scared out of his wits, dared not mention letting Chen Pingin get off the car again and stammered in response. After wiping the cold sweat off his forehead with a tissue, the driver quickly started the car. He thought, no wonder this person was a security guard at Longquan Villa, his strength was simply abnormal. In order to save his life, the taxi driver directly increased the speed to 150 km per hour, running through more than 20 red lights, and finally arrived at the gate of Longquan Villa within 15 minutes. Fortunately, he is an experienced driver and familiar with the terrain of Longchang. In addition, it was early in the morning, and there were hardly any vehicles or pedestrians on the road. Otherwise, it would not have been possible to arrive within 15 minutes. When getting off the car, Chen Pingin transferred 100,000 yuan in fare to the other party. 10,000 yuan received on Alipay. This 100,000 yuan is for repairing your car, as well as fines for speeding and running red lights, the cost of reapplying for a driver's license, 
and the loss of income during the period of taking the driving test. Just as the driver was shocked by the large fare given by Chin Pingan, Chin Pingan said calmly, the driver had just run more than 20 red lights in a row, with a fine of 200 yuan for each red light, totaling 4 to 5,000 yuan. He had run so many red lights that his driver's license would definitely be suspended, and he would have to retake the test. Chin Pingan never mistreated those who helped him, even if they were forced to do so. The driver, upon hearing Chin Pingan's words, was shaken to the core. He had been scared by Chin Pingan just now and hadn't even considered the possibility of being fined. Now, with Chin Pingan's reminder, he was filled with cold sweat. Fortunately, this passenger was generous and gave him so much fare. Not only did he not suffer any losses, but he also earned tens of thousands of yuan. Otherwise, he would have been in big trouble today and wouldn't know how to explain it to his wife when he got home. Thank you, boss. The driver quickly thanked Chen Pingan. He thought to himself, no wonder he is the security guard of Longquan Villa, his salary must be high. Meanwhile, Chen Pingan had already walked towards the entrance of Longquan Villa with the woman in his arms. It was his first time entering this villa, and he didn't have time to explore it. He randomly found a bedroom and carried the woman inside. He took off her clothes and used two gold needles to perform acupuncture on her. Then he performed auxiliary treatments such as cardiac resuscitation and artificial respiration. The woman, who had already stopped breathing, slowly regained her heartbeat under Chin Pingan's full efforts. He then stood up and carefully examined the woman in front of him. With just one glance, he was amazed by her beauty. Especially her seductive eyes, which were now flushed due to the aphrodisiac, resembling the enticing color of red wine, making it almost impossible to resist. Truly, a single angry look can create a hundred charming looks, rendering all the beautiful women on the street colorless. I feel so hot. Although the woman tried her best to restrain herself, she couldn't help but let out a murmuring sound that evoked countless thoughts, causing Chin Pingan's whole body to tingle. Chin Pingan knew that the aphrodisiac in the woman's body had taken effect. This kind of aphrodisiac had no antidote. If she didn't have sex with a man in time, her body would continue to burn with a high fever until her brain was damaged and she died. The woman gradually lost consciousness and leaned against Chin Pingan, unconsciously tearing at his clothes. Forget it. Saving a life is more important than preserving one's reputation. Today, I'll sacrifice my integrity. Not long after, the most primal sounds echoed in the villa, and it wasn't until over an hour later that the sounds gradually ceased. To Chin Pingan's surprise, the woman still had some energy left. Was she a promiscuous woman? Chen Pingan's expression became complicated. At this moment, the woman also regained consciousness and saw Chen Pingan looking at her with a complex expression, while she herself was completely naked. What? What did you do to me? The woman instinctively slapped Chen Pingan in the face. You were under the influence of a strong aphrodisiac. I sacrificed my integrity to save your life. Not only are you ungrateful, but you also hit me. Have you ever seen anyone treat their savior like this? Chen Pingan explained angrily, but after explaining, he reached out and covered the woman's body with his clothes, hiding that breathtaking scenery. The woman's memories of what had happened earlier came rushing back, and scenes that made her angry and ashamed flashed through her mind. She immediately realized that she had misunderstood Chen Pingan. Suddenly, sadness overwhelmed her heart. She never expected that the old servant who had watched her grow up would betray her and try to kill her. If it weren't for Chen Pingan's rescue, she would probably be dead by now. However, for the first time in her life, she lost her head, and it was given to a kept man by someone else, which made her feel extremely frustrated. But no matter what, she managed to save her life. Since she narrowly escaped death, they can now wait for her revenge. The Dragon King's Palace wants to control the underground forces in the southwest, but they won't even have a chance. Thinking of this, the woman suppressed her sadness and looked at Chen Pingan, asking, Do you have a cigarette? Chen Pingan was taken aback by the woman's words. He never expected such a beautiful woman to smoke. Smoking is not good for your recovery, Chen Pingan said. It's fine, as long as I don't die. The woman seemed indifferent to Chen Pingan's persuasion. Hearing her response, Chen Pingan didn't say anything more. He took out a pack of cigarettes from his pocket, took one out, put it in her mouth, and lit it for her. He had bought this pack of cigarettes before when he was looking for a job, but since he didn't need them, he had kept them with him. Since the woman couldn't move, Chen Pingan had to hold the cigarette for her, taking a puff and then taking it out of her mouth. Just a few puffs to satisfy the craving. After the woman took two puffs, Chen Pingan extinguished the cigarette. You. The woman was a little angry when she saw Chen Pingan put out the cigarette, but when she saw his determined gaze, she had no choice but to give up. Why did you save me when I wanted to kill you before? After a moment of silence, the woman asked Chen Pingan curiously. Because I am a doctor, saving lives is my duty. 
Xin Pingan's answer was simple and clear, leaving no room for argument. Why don't you ask about my identity and why someone wanted to kill you? The woman asked curiously again. You don't need me to ask, you will tell me what you want to say. Chen Pingan's indifferent attitude annoyed the woman. In the end, she had no strength to argue with Chen Pingan, so she gave up. My name is Li Qiushui, also known as the Demon Queen. You should have heard of my name as a person close to Gao Weiwei. The reason I wanted to kill you before was because I was deceived by someone else. The woman explained why she wanted to kill him before. I know. If there's nothing else, rest well. I'll go get some medicine for you. After telling the woman to rest, Chen Pingan left the room and called Hu Shini, giving him a prescription and asking him to prepare the medicine and deliver it to Longquan Villa. As a doctor, encountering emergencies in the middle of the night was normal, and Hu Shini didn't ask too many questions. He immediately prepared the medicine and had his assistant deliver it. After Chen Pingan brewed the medicine for the woman to drink, she fell into a deep sleep. Chen Pingan checked her pulse and confirmed that her injuries had stabilized before removing the golden needle from her acupoint. Then he found a random room in Longquan Villa and slept for the night. The next morning at 9 o'clock, Chen Pingan carried the Lanting Preface gift box and met Gao Weiwei at the company. They got into Gao Weiwei's car and headed to her adoptive father's house to celebrate her adoptive mother's birthday. When Chen Pingan and Gao Weiwei arrived at Chen's house, the entrance was already filled with luxury cars. This was because Gao Weiwei's adoptive father had recently passed away, so it wasn't appropriate to have a grand banquet, otherwise there would have been even more cars. Once we go in, Try to speak as little as possible and follow my lead. Gao Weiwei instructed Chen Pingan after getting out of the car. Chen Pingan nodded, and Gao Weiwei led him inside. The villa was bustling with activity, with executives from the Four Seas Organization and Four Seas Group, as well as some relatives of the Chen family, totaling at least a hundred people. An elegant and noble-looking old lady sat in the main seat. Because this birthday banquet is not very formal, after everyone arrived, they directly presented their gifts to the old lady and had the butler read them aloud in front of everyone. Since Gao Weiwei had the Four Seas Demon King's token and she was also the president of the Four Seas Group, many people warmly greeted her when she arrived. Chen Pingan, who was by Gao Weiwei's side, also saw a familiar face he had met before, Chen Xinian. At this moment, Chen Xinian was sitting in a wheelchair with a plaster cast on his leg. When he saw Gao Weiwei, his eyes were filled with resentment. Gao Weiwei couldn't be bothered with this spoiled brat, she just nodded in response to those who greeted her, and then brought Chen Pingan to the elegant old lady. Grandma, I brought my boyfriend Chen Pingan to wish you a happy birthday. I wish you blessings as vast as the East Sea and a long life as enduring as the Southern Mountains. This is a gift from my boyfriend Chen Pingan to Grandma. He knows you like the Orchid Pavilion preface, so he specially spent a lot of money to buy the authentic Orchid Pavilion preface for you. Please accept it, Grandma. Gao Weiwei brought Chen Pingan to the elegant old lady and said these words, which left Chen Pingan dumbfounded. She reached out and took the gift from Chen Pingan's hand and handed it to the old lady. Gao Weiwei, what are you talking about? When did I become your boyfriend? Chen Pingan snapped back to his senses, tugged at Gao Weiwei's clothes, and complained in a low voice. It's just pretend. I have my own plan. Just listen to my arrangements, only then can you successfully control the Four Seas Demon King's token. Gao Weiwei seemed to have anticipated Chun Pingan's reaction long ago and explained in a low voice. Seeing the two of them whispering, the onlookers thought they were publicly displaying affection. Weiwei has a boyfriend? And she gave me the authentic Orchid Pavilion preface as a birthday gift? Grandma really was as Gao Weiwei had said. As soon as she heard the three words Orchid Pavilion preface, she immediately showed a surprised expression, eagerly took the gift that Gao Weiwei handed over, and couldn't wait to open it and carefully examine it. She kept nodding appearing very satisfied. Put. At this moment, an untimely laughter came from beside them. Everyone turned their heads and found that the laughter came from Chen Xinian, who was sitting in a wheelchair. Chen Xinian, what are you laughing at? Gao Weiwei coldly questioned Chen Xinian. What am I laughing at? Don't you have any idea in your heart? Gao Weiwei, you have a lot of nerve. You know that grandma has always been longing for the authentic Orchid Pavilion preface, yet you actually brought her a fake one. What are your intentions? Chen Xinian sneered at Gao Weiwei. As soon as he said this, everyone present was in an uproar, pointing and gossiping about Gao Weiwei and Chen Pingan. Some expressed disbelief that Gao Weiwei would give a fake gift to grandma. Others expressed doubt. Chen Xinian, how dare you accuse me? Do you really think I, Gao Weiwei, won't do anything to you? Gao Weiwei's face darkened as she threatened Chen Xinian. Whether it's real or fake, call the renowned collector Wei Jiangwo to come and authenticate it. Are you willing to let Mr. Wei come and appraise it? Chen Xinian not only wasn't scared, but he also stood up for justice and fearlessly counterattacked. 
He had been keeping an eye on Gao Weiwei's every move recently and knew that she had spent over a hundred million to buy a high-quality imitation of the Orchid Pavilion preface as a birthday gift for Grandma. He had long prepared to expose everything about Gao Weiwei. When Gao Weiwei heard Qin Xinian say he would call the renowned collector Wei Jiangwo to appraise the treasure, her expression changed slightly. She stared at Qin Xinian as if she wanted to devour him. She had spent such a high price to prevent anyone from doubting that this Orchid Pavilion preface was a fake. She even deliberately spread the news everywhere to create momentum, letting people know that she had spent over a hundred million to acquire a national treasure like the Orchid Pavilion preface. She couldn't believe that someone would still suspect it was fake, considering she had spent over a hundred million on it. Who knows that Chen Xinian is so ignorant, he actually proposed to invite the respected Mr. Wei, a big shot in the collecting world, to come and appraise. Chen Xinian's actions caught Cao Weiwei off guard. Mr. Wei is not only highly respected in the antique world, but also known for his integrity. If he were to appraise it, this high-quality imitation of the Orchid Pavilion preface would definitely be exposed. Gao Weiwei became anxious in her heart. What's wrong? Are you afraid when you hear that we're inviting Mr. Wei? Mr. Wei is not only a leading figure in the antique world, but also known for his integrity. Letting him appraise it would be the fairest, and no one would object, right? Chen Xinian noticed the subtle change in Gao Weiwei's expression and asked again with a sneer. This proposal is good. If you have nothing to hide, then you shouldn't be afraid. I agree to let Mr. Wei appraise it. Yes, with Mr. Wei's reputation, if he appraises it, everyone will believe it. Call Mr. Wei. Chen Xinian had already arranged for people to create momentum for him. As soon as he finished speaking, several people immediately stood up to support his proposal. These people's status in the Four Seas organization was not low, and one of them was even second only to the Four Seas Demon General. Gao Weiwei could ignore Qin Shunian's proposal, but she had to consider the proposals of these people from the Four Seas organization, especially now that she needed support. However, once she really called Mr. Wei, her plan would be ruined. By then, not only would the old lady know that the Orchid Pavilion preface was fake, but she might even question Gao Weiwei's position. Gao Weiwei remains silent, her mind frantically thinking of a countermeasure. So, if Mr. Wei is invited to appraise it and he thinks that my Orchid Pavilion preface is genuine, what will you do? While Gao Weiwei was thinking of a countermeasure, Chen Pingan, who was standing beside her, asked Chen Xinian with confidence. No one expected him to ask Chen Xinian such a question, and everyone's gaze turned to Chen Pingan. Gao Weiwei's face changed drastically, and she secretly tugged at his sleeve. Didn't I tell you to speak as little as possible when we entered? And you could tell yesterday that the Orchid Pavilion preface was fake, so why are you still confronting him like this? Aren't you falling into his trap? Gao Weiwei complained to Chen Pingan in a low voice. She had just wanted to use other means to force Chen Xinian to give up on troubling her, but Chen Pingan's response had directly disrupted her plan, making her somewhat annoyed. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. He's just a clown, he can't do anything. Chen Pingan said confidently to Gao Weiwei. You don't know what kind of person Mr. Wei is. Forget it, since it's come to this, we'll just have to adapt on the spot later. Seeing Chen Pingan being so arrogant, Gao Weiwei sighed inwardly and felt somewhat disappointed in him. She didn't know if it was good or bad to let him take over the Four Seas Demon Order. If your Orchid Pavilion preface is genuine, I'm willing to give up my shares in the Four Seas group that my uncle left me for free. But, I'll make it clear beforehand, if your Orchid Pavilion preface is fake, Gao Weiwei will have to hand over the power of the Four Seas group and the Four Seas Demon Order. Do you dare? Chen Xinian responded to Chen Pingan with the same confident expression. In order to hook Chen Pingan, he had also gone all out and gave up his shares in the Four Seas group. He was already convinced that the Orchid Pavilion preface bought by Gao Weiwei was undoubtedly a high-quality imitation, and he would definitely not lose. There was nothing to fear. But after hearing the other party's words, Chen Pingan shook his head. What's wrong? Are you afraid? Seeing Chen Pingan shake his head, Chen Xinian thought that Chen Pingan was scared by his confident appearance, and regretted it a bit, but still asked coldly. Afraid? From childhood to now, I, Chen Pingan, don't even know how to write the word fear. Okay, let's make a bet. If my Orchid Pavilion preface is genuine, not only do you have to give up your shares in the Four Seas group to my family's Weiwei for free, but you also have to kowtow to her ten times in front of everyone and apologize to her. If it's fake, then let's do as you said. If you dare to agree, bring Mr. Wei here. Chen Pingan said confidently. Mr. Wei's character was upright, which suited his intentions. This Orchid Pavilion preface was not the one Wei Wei gave him yesterday, but the genuine one he took out from the Zhang Long Hall safe. Seeing Chen Pingan so confident, it actually intimidated Chen Xinian. He thought, 
Could it be that the Orchid Pavilion preface that Weiwei spent over a hundred million to buy is genuine? No, he had heard the experts in the collecting world say that the genuine Orchid Pavilion preface had been missing for thousands of years, and all the ones on the market were high-quality imitations. It was impossible to have a genuine one. The other party was just bluffing. They wanted to scare him away with this method, but he absolutely couldn't fall for it. Thinking of this, Chen Shinian regained his composure and sneered again. All right, let's make a deal. With the old lady and so many guests as witnesses, whoever reneges on the agreement will be forced to comply by the old lady and the guests. With renewed confidence, Chen Shinian no longer hesitated and agreed to Chen Pingyan's bet. Then he called Mr. Wei. When Gao Weiwei, who was standing next to Chen Pingyan, saw his confident appearance, she had the same thought as Chen Shinian, thinking that Chen Pingyan was trying to play mind games and intimidate Chen Shinian so that he wouldn't dare to have Mr. Wei authenticate it. At the moment, this was definitely the best approach. Unfortunately, it seemed that Chen Shinian didn't fall for Chen Pingyan's words and wasn't intimidated. This result made Gao Weiwei sigh with regret. It seemed that she could only try to secretly threaten Mr. Wei to cooperate with her. Thinking of this, Gao Weiwei used the excuse of going to the restroom and made arrangements in secret. Regardless, today Chen Pingyan must gain the approval of the old lady and successfully take control of the Four Seas Demon King Order. If he couldn't pass this hurdle, then the plan to support Chen Pingyan as the Southwest King would be impossible to implement. The old lady had been watching everything in front of her with a cold gaze, neither supporting nor opposing. When Gao Weiwei returned after arranging everything, Chen Shinian had already sent someone to bring Mr. Wei to the villa. Mr. Wei is here? The old lady saw Mr. Wei's arrival and happily got up to greet him. The old lady was a collector and antique enthusiast, and Mr. Wei was a leading figure in the antique world. She respected him a lot. Mr. Wei, may you be blessed like the East Sea and have a long life like the South Mountain. Mr. Wei bowed to the old lady and then handed an antique he casually took from his home to the butler as a birthday gift. Mr. Wei, I invited you here today mainly to have you examine this Orchid Pavilion preface and determine whether it is genuine or a high-quality imitation. I've been looking at it for a long time but can't tell. The old lady carefully handed the Orchid Pavilion preface to Mr. Wei. She had examined it two or three times, but her eyesight was limited and she couldn't tell if it was real or fake. Let me take a look. Chen Shinian had already told him over the phone that he came to authenticate the Orchid Pavilion preface. Mr. Wei didn't hold back and carefully spread the Orchid Pavilion preface on the table, using a magnifying glass to observe it closely. Wei Wei's face looked unpleasant, and she felt anxious. She had just called someone to go to Mr. Wei's house and wanted to capture his family members to threaten him, but there had been no news from her subordinates so far. She didn't know if they had succeeded or not. They had to succeed before Mr. Wei announced the result. Only then could they pass this hurdle. Mr. Wei, how is it? Can you tell if this Orchid Pavilion preface is real or fake? Just as Gao Weiwei was about to approach Wei Lao to threaten him, Chin Shinian suddenly had someone push in between Gao Weiwei and Wei Lao, eagerly asking Wei Lao for his opinion, effectively stopping Gao Weiwei's actions. This scene made Gao Weiwei anxious once again. However, Wei Lao ignored Chen Shinian's words and continued to quietly examine the scroll with a magnifying glass, which relieved Gao Weiwei slightly. Everyone at the scene held their breath, waiting for Wei Lao to put down the magnifying glass and announce the final result. After more than 20 minutes of careful observation, Wei Lao finally breathed a sigh of relief, put down the magnifying glass in his hand, and closed his eyes to savor something. Mr. Wei, have you figured out if it's real or fake? Seeing Wei Lao put down the magnifying glass, someone impatiently asked him again, is there even a need to ask? Just by looking at Wei Lao's expression, devoid of joy or sorrow, it's clear that this Orchid Pavilion preface is undoubtedly fake. Chen Shinian proudly said before Wei Lao could speak. Everyone knew that the Orchid Pavilion preface was a national treasure level antique. If it were genuine, Wei Lao would have been excited long ago. How could he remain so calm? At this moment, Gao Weiwei became anxious and immediately wanted to threaten Wei Lao. However, before she could act, Wei Lao spoke up. Who told you that this Orchid Pavilion preface is fake? After my careful observation, I can guarantee with my reputation that this Orchid Pavilion preface in front of us is an authentic piece that has been missing for thousands of years. Just as Chen Shinian was about to challenge Gao Weiwei, Wei Lao, who had been silent with closed eyes, opened his somewhat cloudy eyes and said something that shocked everyone present. The Orchid Pavilion preface in front of them was actually genuine, and Wei Lao vouched for it with his reputation. Chen Shinian lost. Everyone looked at Chen Shinian with strange expressions. By now, Chen Shinian was stunned. He only had one thought in his mind, how is this possible? 
This is absolutely impossible. According to rumors, the genuine Orchid Pavilion preface had been buried underground with an ancient emperor for thousands of years, and the exact location of that emperor's tomb had not been found by the world yet. How could the Orchid Pavilion preface brought by Gao Weiwei and Chen Pingin be genuine? Not only was Chen Xinian stunned, even Gao Weiwei, who inexplicably won, was also stunned. She clearly bought a high-quality imitation of the Orchid Pavilion preface, and even an amateur like Chen Pingin could tell it was fake at a glance. How could Wei Lao, a veteran in the antique world, not see through it? With Wei Lao's discerning eye, it was impossible for him to make a mistake. What on earth was going on? Was it a miracle? Chen Pingin had known this would be the result long ago, so he wasn't surprised at all and had a confident smile on his face. The happiest person was the old lady, Lu Chiohua. Mr. Wei, are you saying that this Orchid Pavilion preface is genuine? The old lady trembled as she stood up, excitedly asking Wei Lao. Of course it's genuine. I, Wei, have been immersed in the antique world for my whole life, over 30 years, and haven't made a mistake. From the material to the calligraphy, this Orchid Pavilion preface is undoubtedly genuine. The Orchid Pavilion preface is the pinnacle work of the calligraphy saint, written under specific circumstances. Even if he were to write it again, he wouldn't be able to capture the same aura. Look here, and here. Wei Lao pointed at the scroll on the table, explaining to everyone with professional terminology. Everyone nodded as they listened. This scene almost made Chen Xinian faint. If he weren't in a wheelchair, he would probably have fallen to the ground by now. Wei Lao, is it possible that your old age has affected your eyesight and you've made a mistake? Would you mind taking another look? Chen Shunyan's face turned pale and he unwillingly said to Wei Lao, What do you mean? Are you questioning my expertise? If you don't trust me, you can invite other experts to verify it. I'm not afraid to confront any of my peers. When Wei Lao heard Chen Shunyan's words, his face instantly darkened and he angrily confronted Chen Shunyan. It had been 20 or 30 years since anyone dared to question his appraisal results. Today, he was actually questioned by an ignorant junior. How could he not be angry? Wei Lao, calm down. I don't mean to question your expertise. I just think it might be a bit hasty to determine the authenticity of the Orchid Pavilion preface after just one look. I hope you can take another look and maybe find something else. Seeing Wei Lao getting angry, Chen Xinian quickly explained. Wei Lao was the most authoritative and straightforward expert in the southwestern antique world. Who else could he find to re-evaluate it? Even if he found someone else, they would definitely trust Wei Lao's appraisal results, because Wei Lao was the ultimate authority. Wei Lao's words made Chen Xinian feel like he had shot himself in the foot. He couldn't express his grievances. No need, I have carefully examined the Orchid Pavilion preface. Even if I look at it again, the result will be the same. I'll say it again, if you're not satisfied with the appraisal results, you can find other experts to evaluate it. Wei Lao was straightforward and couldn't tolerate others questioning him. Even if Chen Xinian explained his reasons, Wei Lao still looked displeased. After speaking, he turned to the old lady. Old lady, Wei has something to attend to at home, so I'll take my leave. After Wei Lao finished speaking, he left, leaving everyone in astonishment. Take care, Mr. Wei. After the old lady got the result she wanted, she excitedly picked up the Orchid Pavilion preface and admired it. However, everyone's gaze remained on Chen Xinian. The few people from the Four Seas organization who had supported him before quietly retreated and hid in the crowd. Chen Xinian's momentum was gone, and he couldn't make any more moves. Chen Xinian, you've lost. Hand over the shares of the Four Seas group, kneel down and apologize. After Wei Lao left, Gao Weiwei immediately challenged Chen Xinian. Although she didn't understand how the high imitation orchid pavilion preface she bought inexplicably turned into an authentic one, now was not the time to think about that. Dealing with Chen Xinian in front of her was the most important thing. Although she didn't care about Chen Xinian's shares, this guy almost ruined her plans. She couldn't easily let him off. You. Chen Xinian's face turned pale. The shares of the Four Seas Group were his only source of funds now. They were left to him by his uncle, Chen Shangsheng. If he gave the shares to Gao Weiwei for nothing, he wouldn't even be able to take back the power from Gao Weiwei, let alone have a comfortable life in the future. In the end, Chen Xinian had no choice but to go to the old lady. Aunt, the shares I have in the Four Seas Group are the only inheritance left to me by my uncle. Now Gao Weiwei wants to take them away. Aunt, you must help me. Chen Xinian went to the old lady, looking pitiful, and pleaded with her. In order to keep his shares, he played the emotional card. The old lady frowned and looked at Chen Xinian with some dissatisfaction. But in the end, she sighed and looked at Gao Weiwei, slowly speaking, indeed, the shares of the Four Seas group were left to him by his uncle. It's not appropriate to give them to you for nothing. 
Wei Wei, as his older sister, you should take care of your younger brother. Let's forget about this bet. The old lady's words made Gao Wei Wei frown. Although she was reluctant, Chen Pingan needed the support of the old lady to successfully take control of the Four Seas Demon King's order. In the end, she could only compromise. But just as Gao Weiwei was about to agree with the old lady, Chen Pingan stepped forward. Aunt, this is a bet between Chen Xinian and me. It has nothing to do with Weiwei. I'm not his brother, and I'm not obligated to indulge him. And this matter was initiated by him first. Since we are all adults, if we make a mistake, we must bear the consequences. So he should hand over his shares in the Four Seas Group. Not only that, he also has to count out a Weiwei ten times and apologize. Both conditions are non-negotiable. Chen Pingan stood up and firmly said to the old lady in Chen Xinian, You, kid, who gave you the courage to speak to me like this? The old lady did not expect Chen Pingan to oppose her. She angrily scolded him. Chen Pingan's words clearly did not give her face, making her embarrassed in front of everyone. Senior, what are you doing? Shut up! Gao Weiwei was frightened by the old lady's anger and quickly held on to Chen Pingan. They still needed the old lady's help, and now Chen Pingan was provoking her. This was digging their own grave. I, Chen Pingan, do not need to borrow courage from others in my actions. Perhaps because he had practiced the Phoenix Control technique, Chen Pingan's character had become a bit domineering. After Gao Weiwei held onto him, he not only did not compromise with the old lady, but coldly confronted her. If the other party did not agree to let him hold the Four Seas Demon King order, then he would do it his own way. There was no need to endure the anger of Chen Xinian. Chen Xinian used the dividends from these shares to win over others in the Four Seas group and cause trouble for Gao Weiwei. It would be better to take away his shares now and prevent him from having the funds to win people over in the future. In this day and age, who would follow him if he had no money? Gao Weiwei was completely panicked when she saw Chen Pingan acting so recklessly. She quickly stood in front of him. Old lady, Chen Pingan didn't mean to oppose you. It was Chen Xinian who slandered me first. Moreover, the bet between Chen Xinian and us was proposed in front of you and so many guests. Now that he lost, he wants to go back on his word. Chen Pingan saw that I was being bullied and couldn't accept it, so he opposed you. Can you forgive him this time, considering the genuine Orchid Pavilion preface he gave you? Gao Weiwei explained to the old lady on behalf of Chen Pingan. It was the first time that so many people present saw Gao Weiwei willingly bow down to someone for a man. Even the old lady was surprised. Humph. Considering this genuine Orchid Pavilion preface, I will forgive him this time. But if there is a next time, I will not spare him lightly. As for your matter with Xinian, I will no longer interfere. Do whatever you want. Seeing how much Gao Weiwei cared about Chen Pingan, the old lady found an excuse to give herself a way out. Chen Xinian, who was standing aside, panicked when he heard the old lady say she would no longer interfere in their matter. Aunt, you can't ignore your nephew. Chen Xinian anxiously hugged the old lady's leg and pleaded. You started this matter yourself, and it was you who proposed to give away your shares if you lost. You brought this upon yourself, so solve it yourself. The old lady pushed Chen Xinian away with a gloomy face. Just now, both Chen Pingan and Gao Weiwei reiterated in front of her and the many guests that it was Chen Xinian who started this matter. If she insisted on intervening, others would definitely gossip, and she would lose her reputation. After being pushed away, Chen Xinian looked desperate. His parents were in trouble, his aunt didn't care about him, and now he was left with nothing but despair. Can we fulfill the bet now? We made it clear just now. If anyone refuses to fulfill the bet, the old lady and the guests present will enforce it. You figure it out. Chen Pingan threatened Chen Xinian once again. After Chen Pingan said this, those who supported Gao Weiwei stood up and stared at Chen Xinian with unfriendly expressions. If Chen Xinian didn't honestly fulfill the bet, they would come forward and deal with him. Can I give it back? Chen Xinian finished speaking, closed his eyes, and waved his hand to the butler behind him, instructing him to bring the shares, and apologized by kowtowing, ten times, not one less. Chen Pingan reminded specifically. Chen Xinian stared at Chen Pingan with fiery eyes, as if he wanted to swallow him whole. But when he saw the unfriendly looks from the supporters of Gao Weiwei, he could only reluctantly roll off the wheelchair and kowtow to Gao Weiwei ten times. With each kowtow, his face burned with shame and anger. This was kowtowing in front of hundreds of people. After today's incident spreads, he will become the laughingstock of the entire Longcheng. At this moment, Chen Xinian felt like dying and deeply regretted causing trouble for Gao Weiwei. If he hadn't been so arrogant, hadn't brought Wei Lao, or found another appraiser who could be bribed, the situation might have been different. But now it was too late to say anything. Not bad, you dare to act boldly. Help him back onto the wheelchair. Seeing that Chen Xinian really cowed out to her, Gao Weiwei said with satisfaction. 
However, these words of praise were extremely grating to Chen Shunyan's ears. Chen Shunyan's butler brought his shares and, amidst Chen Shunyan's pained gaze, completed the handover. With that, this matter officially came to an end. Everyone, since we are all here, I will take this opportunity to announce something. Everyone knows that my adoptive father, Shen Shangsheng, passed the Four Seas Demon King order to me before he died. But as a mere woman, I, Gao Weiwei, am truly unable to bear this heavy responsibility. Therefore, I have decided to pass the Four Seas Demon King order to Chen Pingan, allowing him to hold the Four Seas Demon King order and become the new generation of the Four Seas Demon King. I hope that the old lady and everyone will support Chen Pingan in the future. Gao Weiwei scanned everyone present and made the announcement. What? Gao Weiwei actually wants to pass the Four Seas Demon King order to her boyfriend, Chen Pingan? Everyone was momentarily taken aback by Gao Weiwei's decision. Was Gao Weiwei in love and not thinking straight? She actually passed such an important thing to a man they had never even heard of before? No wonder people often say that a woman in love has zero IQ. Today, they finally witnessed it. Chen Shinian, who had always been obsessed with the Four Seas Demon King Order, would never agree. He quickly signaled to a young man standing behind him. I object. The first person to stand up an object was Song Pingyu, a senior member of the personnel department of the Four Seas Organization. His position in the personnel department was second only to Fan Mei Ting, who was in charge of personnel among the four great demon generals. His status was not low, as he had been supported by Qin Shunyan's parents before they had an accident. If it were Gao Weiwei who held the Four Seas Demon King Order, most people wouldn't have any objections, after all, Gao Weiwei's abilities were evident to all, and she had received the Four Seas Demon King Order directly from the old demon king Chen Changsheng. However, they knew nothing about Chen Pingyan, so when Gao Weiwei directly handed the Four Seas Demon King Order to Chen Pingyan, they suddenly felt as if they were entrusting the fate of the Four Seas Organization to a stranger. Seeing someone stand up to object, others began to stir as well. Seeing that the situation seemed to be getting out of control, Gao Weiwei gritted her teeth and her eyes turned fierce. If it weren't for the Southwest King's battle starting next week, she wouldn't be in such a hurry to pass the Four Seas Demon King order to Chen Pingyan. If she let Chen Pingyan perform a few sensational underground power moves first before passing it on, the resistance would be greatly reduced. In this situation, she had to take drastic measures. Thinking of this, she didn't hesitate anymore and looked at Song Pingyu, saying, I remember you're from the personnel department, right? Starting today, you are no longer a member of the Four Seas organization. Hand over your work this afternoon and you can leave. Gao Weiwei took out the Four Seas Demon King order and immediately expelled Song Pingyu from the Four Seas organization. His actions instantly stunned everyone present. Even the four great demons standing beside the old lady were stunned. They never expected Gao Weiwei to be so ruthless. Song Pingyu was expelled just for speaking out against her. Many people were disappointed in Gao Weiwei. I wasn't asking for your opinion just now, I was informing you. If anyone wants to oppose, they can speak up now. I don't mind expelling a few more. Gao Weiwei's words made the others who were still restless shrink back, closing their mouths and not daring to say anything. Without anyone taking the lead, they could only look at Gao Weiwei with complicated expressions, waiting for someone more influential to step forward. Gao Weiwei, you've gone too far. I'll kill you. Seeing that no one dared to follow him, Song Pingyu became furious. He took out a gun from his pocket and aimed it at Gao Weiwei. This scene frightened everyone present, especially the servants in the villa. They had never seen such a situation before and were scared pale, instinctively fleeing and finding a place to hide. However, Gao Weiwei remained calm, as if she had anticipated this dangerous move. In the instant that Song Pingyu pulled out his gun, she threw a shining flying knife from her hand, directly piercing Song Pingyu's heart. You. Before Song Pingyu could pull the trigger, his body fell straight down. His eyes were wide open, not closing in death. This scene scared everyone present once again. However, most of the people present were used to such scenes, having seen many even worse. After a brief disturbance, everyone quieted down. Gao Weiwei, how dare you kill someone at the old lady's birthday banquet? Do you still have any respect for the old lady? Chen Shinian regained his senses and pointed at Gao Weiwei, angrily rebuking her. Song Pingyu was his most loyal supporter, and it was because of Song Pingyu's support that he dared to challenge Gao Weiwei. Now that Gao Weiwei had killed Song Pingyu, how could he not be angry? As soon as he spoke, everyone turned to look at the old lady in the main seat. At this moment, the old lady's face turned pale as she looked at Gao Weiwei and Chen Pingyan. Gao Weiwei, have you caused enough trouble? What have you turned my birthday banquet into? The Four Seas organization was built with your adoptive father's lifelong efforts. How can you act so recklessly? I also disagree with passing the Four Seas Demon King order to this Chen Pingyan. The old lady angrily scolded Gao Weiwei and Chen Pingyan. 
Gao Weiwei's face also turned pale when she saw the old lady's opposition. However, now that things had come to this, she knew that being angry was useless. She immediately turned and looked at the four great demons standing beside the old lady. Now the four seas demon king order is in my hands. Will you four obey or not? Gao Weiwei coldly asked the four great demons while holding the four seas demon king order. Miss Gao, as long as the old lady agrees, we have no objections. The leader of the four great demons replied with a calm expression, and the others nodded in agreement. Their response left Gao Weiwei speechless. Although she guessed that the old lady had a lot of influence in the four seas organization, she didn't expect it to be to this extent, to the point where she could suppress the four seas demon king order in her hands. They had failed the first test. Let's go. In the end, Gao Weiwei could only helplessly pull Chen Ping in and turn to leave, planning to think of another solution. Wait. Chen Ping stopped Gao Weiwei from leaving and looked at the old lady sitting in the main seat. Everyone looked at him with puzzled eyes. Gao Weiwei had nothing to say about leaving, so they didn't know what Chen Ping wanted to do. Kid, you don't need to convince me. Even though you gave me an authentic copy of my favorite Orchid Pavilion preface, this matter is non-negotiable. I won't hand over Weiwei's adoptive father's lifelong work to a stranger like you. In consideration of the Orchid Pavilion preface you gave me, I won't hold today's incident against you. You can leave now. The old lady thought Chen Ping and wanted to personally persuade her, and she coldly said to him, Old lady, I don't want to persuade you, but I want to remind you that there's something wrong with your health. Go to the hospital and get your heart checked, or you won't last another two days. If the hospital can't help you, you can come find me. Chen Ping and looked at the old lady with a somewhat compassionate gaze. Having mastered the nine dragon medical scriptures, Chen Ping and could tell at a glance that the old lady had been poisoned by a strange toxin, and it would soon take effect. He didn't originally plan to remind her, but because of what just happened, if the old lady's condition worsened, these people might blame him and Gao Weiwei. He had already witnessed the great influence of this old lady in the Four Seas organization, and he kindly reminded her to avoid trouble. However, his words had a different effect on the old lady and the others. The old lady's face instantly darkened. It was her birthday today, and she was in good health. How could this kid say there was something wrong with her in such a situation? Wasn't he cursing her? She looked at Chen Pingan with a murderous look in her eyes. How dare you curse the old lady? What are your intentions? For great demon generals, take this kid down. Chen Xinian couldn't miss the opportunity to strike at Chen Pingan and Gao Weiwei. As soon as Chen Pingan finished speaking, Chen Xinian immediately angrily rebuked him. The four great demon generals looked at the old lady. If she nodded, they would not hesitate to take down Chen Pingan. Who dares to touch him? Seeing the four great demon generals itching to take action, Gao Weiwei was shocked and once again brandished the four seas demon king token, reprimanding everyone present. Let them go. The old lady saw Gao Weiwei holding the four seas demon king token and knew that the four great demon generals couldn't defy the order. She could only let Gao Weiwei and Chen Pingan leave with a gloomy face. Gao Weiwei successfully escorted Chen Pingan out of the villa. Senior, I'm sorry, I was too naive. I thought the old lady would agree to you taking control of the Four Seas Demon King token if we gave her the Orchid Pavilion preface as a gift. But even though she was happy with the gift, she still opposed you taking control of the Four Seas Demon King token. It infuriates me. After getting back in the car, Gao Weiwei apologized to Chen Ping with a guilty face. Isn't that normal? If it were me, I would also oppose it. Chen Ping said indifferently. Well, let me think of another solution when we go back. Don't worry, I will make sure you take control of the Four Seas Demon King token before the Southwest King competition. Gao Weiwei said firmly to Chen Pingan. Don't worry, she will beg us at most tomorrow. By then, you can make her do whatever you want. Chen Pingan calmly responded. Were your words earlier a curse on the old lady, or were they true? Gao Weiwei looked surprised. Before leaving the villa, she, like everyone else, thought Chen Pingan was cursing the old lady because she opposed him taking control of the Four Seas Demon King token. At that time, in her anger, she even thought Chen Pingan's curse was good, and it made her feel relieved. Am I that malicious? Have you forgotten what my profession was before you framed me and I went to jail? Let's go, let's go back and wait for news. Chen Pingan said calmly. Gao Weiwei, upon hearing Chen Pingan's words, felt ashamed and turned her head, unable to look at Chen Pingan. In the past, Chen Pingan was the chief physician at the Jiangzhou City People's Hospital. Due to his superb medical skills, he had gained some fame in Jiangzhou despite being young. Patients lined up every day to see him, and his monthly salary was very high. However, he donated two-thirds of his income to support seven poor girls. If it weren't for being forced and if it weren't for the immense power of that person, they wouldn't have had no choice but to frame him. Even now, she still trembles at the thought of that person's strength and influence. 
Before Qin Pingan became the king of the southwest and controlled the underground forces there, he had no way out when facing that person. Even if Qin Pingan became the king of the southwest, he might not necessarily be a match for that person. The reason she let Qin Pingan become the king of the southwest before telling him about the person behind the scenes was just to give him an extra layer of protection. She could only help him so much. She hoped that after experiencing the dangers of the world, Qin Pingan would give up some meaningless things, such as hatred. It was also fortunate that the person from back then didn't kill Qin Pingan, otherwise he might not be alive in this world right now. However, sometimes she is quite grateful to that person. If it weren't for that person, she, who was always inferior and introverted, wouldn't have had the courage to offer herself to the drunk Qin Pingan. That night, one of the seven sisters even gave birth to a daughter for their senior. In order to not burden those lovely children, she would only consider telling him about this matter after Qin Pingan truly let go of his hatred or defeated that person. It was precisely because they were forced and framed by the person they respected the most, Qin Pingan, that the seven of them vowed to succeed and develop in their respective fields. Now, she has finally achieved a small accomplishment. Let's go back and wait for news. Yao Weiwei regained her thoughts and returned to her cold demeanor, stepping on the accelerator and heading back to the company. After Gao Weiwei and Chen Pingan left, someone immediately took away the body of Song Pingyu and cleaned up the scene. Because of what just happened, the atmosphere at the banquet became very dull, devoid of any festive mood. Just at this moment, the butler standing behind Chen Shinian received a call and immediately whispered a few words in Chen Shinian's ear, then showed him a video. After watching the video, Chen Shinian suddenly showed a happy expression and immediately had the butler push him in front of the old lady. Old lady, we have been deceived by Gao Weiwei and Chen Pingan. Just now, my people called and said they saw Gao Weiwei's people go to Wei Lao's house, and they threatened Wei Lao's family to deceive us into believing that the Orchid Pavilion preface is genuine. Chen Shinian gritted his teeth and said to the old lady, What? Is this true? Don't speak without evidence. When the old lady heard Chen Shinian's words, she looked at him sharply and scolded him sternly. Old lady, if I didn't have solid evidence, how could I dare to speak casually? My people also sent me a video as proof. If you don't believe it, you can see for yourself. Chen Shinian handed his phone to the old lady. The old lady took Chen Shinian's phone and watched the video. In the video, it showed Cao Weiwei's confidant leading a group of people breaking into Wei Lao's house and capturing Wei Lao's family. The date displayed happened to be today. This is outrageous. After watching the video, the old lady slammed the table, angrily tore apart the genuine orchid pavilion preface that she had cherished, and threw it into the trash can. Apart from being angry at Cao Weiwei's deception, she also felt that the orchid pavilion preface in her hands was fake, which was very disappointing. It was like finding out that the beloved wife had given birth to a son who wasn't his. The more she thought about it, the angrier she became, and her heart started to ache. She covered her heart, her face filled with pain. Someone, call an ambulance immediately. The appearance of the old lady frightened everyone present, and many people quickly called 120 for an ambulance. By the time the ambulance arrived, the old lady's heart was already in excruciating pain. After arriving at the hospital, the best experts in Longcheng all came for consultation, but they couldn't find the cause of the illness. Without finding the cause, there was no way to treat it. They could only give the old lady some painkillers to alleviate her pain. Doctor, what exactly is wrong with my heart? Why is it suddenly so painful? There were no signs before, and I have a comprehensive physical examination every year, and my heart has always been fine. In the ward, Chen Shinian, the four great demons, and others were all present. After receiving a painkiller injection, the old lady, whose pain had eased a lot, looked at the hospital director and asked, Director, we have conducted a comprehensive examination on you and found no abnormalities in your heart. The hospital director smiled and replied, Nonsense. If there were no abnormalities in my heart, why would it be so painful? You quack doctors, find a competent doctor for me. If you don't figure out what the problem is, I will have this hospital demolished. The old lady, upon hearing the director's words, was so angry that smoke almost came out of her seven orifices as she pointed at the director and cursed. She was almost in unbearable pain, and these doctors actually said there was nothing wrong with her body. Wasn't this deceiving her? She could tolerate being deceived by Gao Weiwei and Chen Pingan at home, but being deceived by doctors at the hospital made her furious. Chen Shinian and the four great demons of the Four Seas organization also looked at the hospital director with unfriendly expressions, as if they would tear him apart if he didn't give them a satisfactory explanation. Madam, we have invited all the experts in Longcheng for consultation, and they all agree that there is nothing wrong with your body. The hospital director's smiling face had disappeared, leaving only cold sweat and unease. It was said that this old lady had a high reputation within the Four Seas organization, 
and if she angered them, they might actually have the hospital demolished. The old lady, who had already relieved a lot of pain, was angered by the director's words and her heart started to ache again. Get out! All you quack doctors, get out! The old lady endured the pain and shouted at the director. The frightened director quickly left the ward. At this moment, the director even suspected that the old lady was deliberately causing trouble. Otherwise, how could they not find any problems with her, whether it was through machines or human examination? After the director left the ward, the old lady's chest continued to rise and fall with anger. And as the painkiller slowly wore off, her heart started to ache more and more, causing her to break out in a cold sweat. Madam, Chen Pingan, who was brought by Gao Weiwei today, said that there is something wrong with your body. He also said that if the hospital can't treat you, you can go find him. Should we go find him and see? Someone remembered what Chin Pingan said before leaving and hesitantly suggested to the old lady. When everyone heard this person's words, their eyes lit up. However, just as everyone was about to speak, Chin Shinian was the first to speak up and stop them. Madam, maybe your body is being manipulated by Chin Pingan. Otherwise, how could he know in advance that you would feel uncomfortable? If you go to him now, wouldn't it be playing into his hands? Chen Shinian had already investigated Chen Pingan's identity. He had been the chief physician at Jiangzhou People's Hospital five years ago, and it was said that he had a good reputation and medical skills. However, he was later sentenced and had his medical license revoked for violating the will of a female college student. Maybe this guy really could help the old lady cure her heartache. If that happened, he would have no room for redemption if he used it to blackmail the old lady into giving him control of the Four Seas Demon King Order. Yes, it must be Gao Weiwei and that guy who poisoned you with the fake orchid pavilion preface. Let's go, let's go find that guy and settle the score. I want to tear him to pieces. When Chen Xinian spoke, the old lady also felt that Chen Pingan and Gao Weiwei had poisoned the orchid pavilion preface. After speaking, she immediately had the four great demon generals use a wheelchair to bring her to the four seas group to settle accounts with Chen Pingan and Gao Weiwei. After Chen Pingan and Gao Weiwei returned to the company together, they each went back to their own offices. But as soon as Chen Pingan sat down in his office, he was called by Secretary Fang Xiaoran to Gao Weiwei's CEO office. When he followed Fang Xiaoran into Gao Weiwei's CEO office, he saw that besides Gao Weiwei, the old lady was also there with the four great demon generals and Chen Xinian and others. Moreover, the old lady was sitting in a wheelchair with a painful expression on her face. Just by looking at Chen Pingan, he knew that the old lady must have been poisoned, and she had just taken painkillers, otherwise she would have fainted from the pain. And Chen Pingan also knew that this kind of poison, the first time you take painkillers, it has a bit of pain relief effect, but once the painkillers wear off, the pain becomes even worse, and taking painkillers again has no effect anymore. The culprit who poisoned the old lady is here, why haven't the four great demon generals taken him down? Seeing Chen Pingan appear, Chen Shinian couldn't wait to shout at the four great demon generals. When the four great demon generals heard Chen Shinian's words, their brows furrowed. They were the most powerful figures in the Four Seas organization besides the Demon King. When did they ever take orders from someone like Chen Shinian? What are you four still standing there for? Take action. The old lady didn't think so much. When she saw Chen Shinian finish speaking and the four great demon generals still hadn't moved, she ordered them with a displeased expression. Seeing that the old lady had spoken, although the four of them were somewhat dissatisfied with Chen Shinian, they still glanced at each other and nodded before immediately surrounding Chen Pingan. Let's see who dares to touch him. Gao Weiwei coldly warned from the side. The four great demon generals were startled by Gao Weiwei's words and paused for a moment, but at this moment, the old lady also spoke up. Take down this ungrateful scoundrel together with the others, I'll take responsibility for whatever happens. After receiving the old lady's order, the four great demon generals no longer had any concerns and once again moved towards Chen Pingan, wanting to capture him. Seeing that her warning was ineffective, Gao Weiwei became anxious. Shadow, whoever dares to touch him, kill without mercy. As Gao Weiwei's words fell, a strange ripple swept through the air, and a shadow appeared in front of Chen Pingan, protecting him. At the moment the shadow appeared, the four great demon generals were shocked and instinctively retreated. Because they recognized the shadow in front of them as the former bodyguard of the late demon King Chen Changsheng, the shadow that came and went without a trace. Shadow, how dare you interfere in my affairs? Seeing the shadow appear and hearing Gao Weiwei's command to protect Chen Pingan, the old lady asked with a gloomy expression. Before the late demon king passed away, he entrusted me with the task of protecting Miss Gao and obeying Miss Gao's orders. Miss Gao's command, whoever dares to touch him, kill without mercy. A cold, emotionless voice came from the shadow's mouth like an electronic sound. Hearing the emotionless words from the shadow, whether it was Chin Shinian, the old lady, or the four great demon generals, their faces turned ugly, and none of them dared to make a move. 
The Shadow was the former bodyguard of the late Demon King, with formidable strength and always mysterious and unpredictable. Although the four great demon generals were powerful, they were not confident that they could capture the Shadow. Gao Weiwei, my uncle treated you well before he passed away, and yet you conspired with outsiders to poison the old lady in order to seize control of the Four Seas Organization and the Four Seas Group. Have you lost your conscience? Shen Xinian reprimanded Gao Weiwei. Today, he wanted to pin the hat of poisoning the old lady on the heads of these two people and make them unable to defend themselves. Chen Xinian, stop spouting bloodthirsty words. If I, Gao Weiwei, wanted to seize power, I could have just let my shadow kill all of you. Why poison the Empress Dowager and then seek her opinion? Gao Weiwei retorted coldly. You, are you afraid of gossip? That's why you didn't dare to kill us directly, but resorted to such despicable means of poisoning the Empress Dowager to force her support for your absurd behavior. Do you think I can't see through it? Chen Xinian argued forcefully. Ridiculous. If I, Gao Weiwei, am afraid of gossip, do you believe that I can kill you right now? Let's see who dares to gossip about me, Gao Weiwei. Gao Weiwei said, taking out a flying knife and fixing her nails. You. This scene reminded Chen Xinian of the previous scene where Gao Weiwei shot Song Pengyu, causing him to be terrified and quickly hiding behind the Empress Dowager. Although the Empress Dowager found Gao Weiwei's words offensive, she also knew that Gao Weiwei was speaking the truth. With Gao Weiwei's style of doing things, she could even give the Four Seas Demon King's token to her boyfriend, so would she care about others' opinions? Then what's wrong with my body? The Empress Dowager asked in a deep voice. Gao Weiwei didn't know how to answer for a moment, so she looked at Chen Pingan, who was protected by shadows behind her. Based on the symptoms you have shown, it is 100% certain that you have been poisoned by the deadly soul-chasing powder from the western regions. Moreover, you were poisoned half a month ago, but it only started to take effect now. Chen Pingan calmly replied. What? I was poisoned half a month ago? And it's some soul-chasing powder from the western regions? Who poisoned me? Chen Pingan's words shocked the Empress Dowager, and she asked in disbelief. If I'm not mistaken, the person who poisoned you should be the same group of people who killed the demon king Chen Shangsheng. Chen Pingan said, looking meaningfully at Chen Xinian. Everyone followed Chen Pingan's gaze and looked at Chen Xinian. Bastard, what are you looking at me like that for? Do you think I killed my uncle and poisoned the Empress Dowager? If I hit Chen Xinian, had such ability, would I still need to consider Gao Weiwei's opinion? Noticing Chen Pingan's meaningful gaze, Chen Xinian became furious and shouted at Chen Pingan. Maybe you don't have that kind of power, but the Dragon King's Hall does. Chen Pingan remembered the conversation he overheard last night between Li Qiushui and the old servant who betrayed her, and coldly said to Chen Xinian. As soon as he said this, Chen Xinian's face changed drastically. You, what nonsense are you talking about? I have no connection with the Dragon King's Hall. Don't spout bloodthirsty words. I haven't even heard of the Dragon King's Hall. Chen Pingan's words completely panicked Chen Xinian, who hurriedly defended himself. Did I say that you have a connection with the Dragon King's Hall? Seeing Chen Xinian's panicked expression, Chen Pingan's mouth slightly curved up, asking with interest. Last night, he heard the old man say that the deaths of Chen Shangsheng and Wu Xingjie, the two southwest demon kings, were done by the Dragon King's Hall, secretly supporting those who listened to them. Chen Shangsheng had no children, only Gao Weiwei as his adopted daughter, but Gao Weiwei wanted to pass the Four Seas Demon King's token to himself, which obviously wasn't the person the Dragon King's Hall wanted to support. And Chen Xinian, who had always wanted to snatch the Four Seas Demon King's token from Gao Weiwei, was the only one qualified to become the new Four Seas Demon King. So he impulsively wanted to deceive Chen Xinian, but unexpectedly gained unexpected results. Chen Pingan's words left Chen Xinian dumbfounded. I, I, Chen Xinian didn't know how to respond for a moment. The Empress Dowager, Gao Weiwei, and the four great demon generals all looked at Chen Xinian with anger. Even a fool could tell that Chen Xinian was implicated in the death of the demon king and the poisoning of the Empress Dowager. Madam, I swear that I have nothing to do with uncle's death. Chen Xinian noticed the unfriendly gaze of Madam and the four great demon generals, and he was so scared that he fell off his wheelchair. But the more he defended himself, the more convinced everyone was that he was guilty. The looks towards Chen Xinian became colder and colder. For great demon generals, capture this thief for me. Madam gave the order, and the four great demon generals immediately moved, taking control of Chen Xinian and his followers. Tell me, did you poison your uncle to death? Madam questioned Chen Xinian with fiery eyes. Chen Changsheng had suddenly suffered a cardiac arrest and passed away a month ago, which they all found suspicious. Because Chen Changsheng was a martial artist, and he regularly received checkups from a private doctor. Just like Madam, no abnormalities were found during the checkups. How could his heart suddenly stop and fail to be revived? 
When Chen Changsheng passed away, only his shadow was by his side. Chen Changsheng instructed his shadow to give the Four Seas Demon King's order to Gao Weiwei and then died. The forensic doctor couldn't find any abnormalities. But now, looking at Chen Shunyan's actions, it seemed that things were not so simple. I didn't, madam, I really didn't poison uncle. Please believe me. Chen Shunyan pleaded bitterly. Then what about the Dragon King's Hall? How could madam believe his words so easily? She questioned again in a stern voice. I don't know, I really have nothing to do with the Dragon King's Hall. Chen Shinian shook his head like a rattle drum. Humph, if you won't talk, the four of you take him to the East Sea Dragon Palace to enjoy yourselves. Madam didn't continue questioning Chen Shinian but instead gave a sinister order to the four great demon generals. When Chen Shinian heard the words East Sea Dragon Palace, he almost fainted from fear. The so-called East Sea Dragon Palace was a nest of vipers, with hundreds of poisonous snakes inside. No one who was thrown in had ever come out alive. It was used by the Four Seas organization to punish members who committed serious mistakes. Yes, madam. The four great demon generals received the order and were about to take Chen Shinian away. No, I'll talk, I'll talk, all right? I'll tell you everything you want to know. Please don't throw me into the East Sea Dragon Palace. Chen Shinian was so scared this time that he wet himself, emitting a foul smell. Speak, the old lady sternly said, and everyone held their noses and looked at Chen Shinian. I said, I'll say it right away. My uncle Chen Changsheng was indeed poisoned to death by the people of the Dragon King's Palace. The Dragon King's Palace is the largest underground force of overseas Chinese. Over a hundred years ago, they were driven overseas. Now they want to make a comeback and dominate the underground forces in the country. They have chosen to start with the fierce people of the Southwest. Their plan is to kill the three great demons of the Southwest, Chen Changsheng, Wu Xingjie, and Li Chaoshui, and then support someone who listens to them to control the entire underground forces of the Southwest. After they killed my uncle and found me, they said that as long as I can get hold of the Four Seas Demon King's order and control the Four Seas organization and the Four Seas group, they will support me to become the king of the Southwest. In the future, the Southwest will become a branch of the Dragon King's palace in the country, and I will be in charge of the branch. As for the poison in the old lady, it was also done by them. They planned to let the poison in the old lady's body take effect after I obtained the Demon King's order, so that no one would oppose me leading the Four Seas organization to join the Dragon King's palace. However, I don't know why the poison in the old lady's body took effect early. I swear, my uncle's death has nothing to do with me. Chen Shinian revealed the truth of the matter in detail. After listening to Chen Shinian's words, not only did the old lady's face turn pale, but Gao Weiwei also looked at Chen Shinian with a murderous look. Take him away and lock him up. Don't let him escape. I will make a decision after I investigate thoroughly. The old lady said in a deep voice to the four great demon generals. Yes, old lady. Two of the four great demon generals immediately took Chen Shinian, who was begging for mercy, away. Only Chen Pingan, Gao Weiwei, the old lady, and the two demon generals remained at the scene. The old lady's gaze once again fell on Chen Pingan, but her eyes no longer held the anger from before. Mr. Chen, you can see at a glance that I have long been poisoned. I believe you must have a way to detoxify me. I beg you to save my life. The old lady pleaded with Chen Pingan, and even changed her address from kid to Mr. Chen. Before her poison took effect, Chen Pingan could see at a glance that she was severely poisoned, and he even said that if the hospital couldn't help, she should come to him. From these signs, Chen Pingan could definitely detoxify her. Let Chen Pingan detoxify the old lady, but you have to show some sincerity. Gao Weiwei interrupted and said to the old lady before Chen Pingan could speak. Because she knew that Chen Pingan was a righteous and kind person, she was afraid that he would see the old lady's old age and couldn't bear to use this as a threat to make her agree to his control of the Demon King's order. So she took the initiative to step forward and do this wicked thing. Um, what do you want me to do? The old lady hesitated for a moment and pretended not to understand what Gao Weiwei meant. The Four Seas organization was founded by her late husband, Chen Changsheng. Now Gao Weiwei wanted to give her husband's lifelong efforts to an outsider, and she was really unwilling. Chen Pingan stood behind the shadow and watched all of this coldly. Support Chen Pingan to control the Demon King's order, and everything else is off the table. Gao Weiwei said firmly. The old lady was her stepmother, and her words sounded a bit indifferent. But she still did it without hesitation. At this time, the two demon generals who had taken Chen Shinian away came back. The old lady looked at the four demon generals and asked, What do you think? The old lady asked the four of them. These four were the pillars of the Four Seas organization, and their opinions had to be consulted. It's up to the old lady to decide. After the four of them looked at each other, they said in unison, 
Now the Demon King's order was in Gao Weiwei's hands, and it was even personally passed down by the old Demon King. What opinions could they have? And no matter who controlled the Demon King's order, the positions of the four demon generals would not change. It was the same for them. Just as the old lady hesitated, the effect of the painkiller slowly wore off, and her heart began to ache violently again, becoming stronger and stronger. That kind of pain made her feel like she could die from the pain at any moment. The pain had left her no time to consider anything else. Alright, I promise to let Mr. Chen hold the Demon King's order. I beg Mr. Chen to help me detoxify. The old lady said to Chen Pingan and Gao Weiwei with a painful expression. Upon hearing the old lady's words, Gao Weiwei secretly breathed a sigh of relief. Finally, the first step was completed. Gao Weiwei paused the recording pen in her hand. She was afraid that after Chen Pingan helped the old lady detoxify, the old lady would go back on her word. She secretly recorded their conversation just now. This way, the other party would have no way to deny it. Gao Weiwei nodded at Chen Pingan. The old lady can stay, everyone else can leave. No one is allowed to disturb us. Chen Pingan said, ignoring everyone and taking out a lighter to disinfect the golden needle, preparing to detoxify the old lady. Gao Weiwei and the others quickly left the CEO's office, leaving the office empty for Chen Pingan to help the old lady detoxify. The group anxiously waited outside the door for about 10 minutes before Chen Pingan opened the door from the inside. All right, you can come in now. Chen Pingan said to Gao Weiwei and the four great demons outside the door. Is that it? The four great demons looked at Chen Pingan with some disbelief. Previously, in the hospital, so many experts spent several hours but couldn't find the cause of the old lady's illness. And now, it only took Chen Pingan 10 minutes? This was too incredible. You can go in and see for yourselves. Chen Pingan couldn't be bothered to explain and let them go into the office themselves. When Gao Weiwei and the four great demons returned to the office and saw the old lady with a radiant face, no longer showing any signs of pain, they were all stunned. Because they found that not only did the old lady no longer have any signs of pain, but she also seemed to have become several years younger. Just 10 minutes had such an effect. Chen Pingan's medical skills were truly extraordinary. Even Gao Weiwei, who already knew about Chen Pingan's superb medical skills, was shocked. Stop standing there, the old lady's poison has been cured. Give me the four C's demon order, I'm about to get off work. Chen Pingan said, feeling speechless as he saw everyone looking at him with astonishment. Gao Weiwei finally snapped out of it and walked behind the desk again. In front of everyone, she took out the box from the secret compartment and handed it to Chen Pingan. The four C's demon order is now in your hands. From now on, you are the third generation demon king of the four C's organization. Gao Weiwei handed the four C's demon order to Chen Pingan and raised his hand, shouting loudly to the four great demons and the old lady. Hail the new demon king. The four great demons, seeing this, respectfully bowed to Chen Pingan. Only the old lady's expression was a bit complicated. However, she had already agreed in front of the four great demons and Gao Weiwei to let Chen Pingan take over the four C's demon order. Moreover, Chen Pingan had also helped her detoxify. What's more, Chen Pingan had just used a few golden needles to prick her major acupoints, causing her to spit out a mouthful of black blood, which was accompanied by a small worm. This guy's medical skills were simply incredible. Such a person was easy to make connections with various influential figures. Perhaps he really had the ability to develop the 4Cs organization. In the end, the old lady didn't say anything else and even felt a bit hopeful in her heart. You don't need to be so formal, I know nothing about management. In the future, the management of the 4Cs organization will rely on all of you. Chen Pingan said sincerely. He had no interest in the 4Cs organization or the Southwest King. He just wanted to know who was behind the scenes that framed him. He didn't want to get involved in the management of the 4Cs organization and decided to let the four great demons handle it. Report to the Demon King, four days from now, the major underground forces in the Southwest will hold a martial arts tournament in the provincial capital, Zhangzhou City. At that time, the Southwest King will be selected to lead the entire underground forces in the Southwest. This was the consensus reached by the old Demon King and the other two Demon Kings a year ago. The four great demon generals will participate, with the shadow as the finale. We will definitely be able to claim the throne of the Southwest King. Gao Weiwei said to Chen Pingan, I don't understand much about this, you guys can discuss it among yourselves. If there's nothing else, I'll leave work now. Just let me know when it's time to go back to Zhengzhou. Chen Pingan said and left with the Demon King's token. He still had to go back and check on the woman in the villa. With such serious injuries, if no one took care of her, she might starve to death even if she didn't die from her injuries. As for the four great demon generals participating and the shadow claiming the throne of the southwest king, he had no hope at all. When the shadow appeared just now, 
he could clearly feel that the shadow was already seriously injured. Others couldn't see his appearance, they just didn't notice it, but he could sense it from the opponent's breath. This reminded him of the conversation between the woman and the old man last night. The old man said that the people from the Dragon King's palace had already gone to kill the shadow. The fact that the shadow could still appear here today meant that the people from the Dragon King's palace had failed, but the shadow was also seriously injured. Since the shadow didn't say anything, there must be a reason for it, and he didn't need to say much either. At worst, he would personally claim the throne of the Southwest King when the time came. In order to find out who the mastermind was, this throne could only be his. Gao Weiwei knew that Qin Ping and wasn't interested in becoming the Southwest King, she just wanted to know who was behind the plot to frame him, so she wasn't surprised by Qin Pingan's attitude. Only the four great demon generals were a little stunned when they saw Qin Pingan's attitude, but then they smiled. They thought that Qin Pingan was showing this attitude because he wanted to assure them that he wouldn't interfere with their management in the future. They were very satisfied with Qin Pingan's performance. As long as this new generation demon king, Qin Pingan, didn't interfere with the management of the Four Seas organization, then the Four Seas organization would be under their control, and their power would be much greater than before. Ahem, since the Demon King has entrusted the matter to us, let's discuss the details of the martial arts tournament. Gao Weiwei saw that Chen Pingan had left like this, so she coughed a few times to get the attention of the four great demon generals back, and discussed the details of the tournament. When Chen Pingan returned to the Chen Longquan villa, he found that there was no one there. There was only a note in the woman's room, thanking him and proving that the woman had already left. Chen Pingan didn't say anything either. After all, the other party was a person from the martial arts world, not an ordinary weak woman. Besides, he had treated her last night, so she should be able to hold on. Last night, because it was too rushed, he didn't have a chance to take a good look at this Dragon City's most luxurious villa. However, just as Chin Pingan was about to take a look at the villa, Li Runin called him. Pingan, my father's condition worsened and he was transferred to Jianzhou for emergency treatment. You used to work at Jianzhou People's Hospital, can you accompany me to Jianzhou to see my father? As soon as the call connected, Chin Pingan could hear the anxious tone in Li Runin's voice. Don't worry, I'll go back now and go to Jiangzhou with you. Just wait for me at home. Chin Pingan comforted Li Runin while hurriedly leaving the Longquan villa and rushing back to the apartment he shared with Li Runin and Qin Shiyu. The Southwest King's competition in a few days would also be held in Jiangzhou, and he was going there anyway. Now he would go back a few days early to treat Li Runin's father first. After hanging up the phone with Li Runin, Chen Pingan called Gao Weiwei and told her that he was going to Jiangzhou first, and asked them to contact him after they arrived in Jiangzhou. This Longquan villa is built on the top of Longquan Mountain, with no cars passing by at all. He himself hasn't bought a car yet, but when he saw a shared electric bike on the side of the road, it should have been someone from the intermediary company. He directly rode the shared bike back. Chen Pingan, stop right there. When Chen Pingan returned to the downtown area, he was suddenly stopped by Lin Duor and her mother. What's the matter with you? Chen Pingan looked at Lin Duor and her mother blocking his way, and asked coldly. I've been waiting for you at home for several days. Why didn't you come to find me? Lin Duor, seeing that she had stopped Chen Pingan, angrily questioned him. After analyzing with her mother that day, they felt that Chen Pingan wanted to get back together with her. She had already decided, under her mother's persuasion, that as long as Chen Pingan gave her enough money, she would become his mistress. So these days, she had been waiting at home for Chen Pingan to come to her. As a result, several days had passed and she hadn't seen Chen Pingan. She had just come out shopping with her mother and happened to see Chen Pingan riding a shared bike towards her. Lin Duor immediately got angry and directly approached Chen Pingan to question him. Her words completely confused Chen Pingan. Why did you wait for me at home? Why should I go to your house to find you? And I don't even know where your house is. Chen Pingan asked in a bewildered manner. Are you still pretending here? Do you dare to say that the reason you came to Longcheng was not because you heard that I was in Longcheng and wanted to find me to reconcile? I think you already found out where I live, so now you're telling me that you don't know where I live. Do you think I'll believe you? Lin Duor coldly exposed Chin Pingan's lie and sarcastically said to him. Her inexplicable words made Chin Pingan even more confused, completely unable to understand what this crazy woman wanted to do. Did he come to Longcheng specifically to find her? That's too narcissistic, right? Chen Pingan couldn't understand why he had agreed to be with this inexplicable woman in the first place. All right, I completely don't understand what you're saying. What do you want? Just say it directly, don't beat around the bush and make people guess. My time is precious, I don't have time to waste with you here. Chen Pingan interrupted Lin Duor's words and impatiently said. He still had to hurry back to Jianzhou with Li Runin to get treatment for her father. He didn't have time to be entangled with these crazy mother and daughter. You. 
Lin Duor thought that Chen Pingan was still pretending and wanted to scold him a few more hypocritical words, but she was stopped by her mother. Duor, stop causing trouble. Lin's mother whispered to Lin Duor. It was on the main road, and speaking too loudly might attract onlookers. After scolding her daughter, Lin's mother immediately put on a smiling face and walked up to Chen Pingan. Pingan, auntie knows that you still have feelings for our doer in your heart, otherwise you wouldn't have come all the way to Longqing to find our doer. It's just that you still have some resentment towards our doer for leaving you when you were in trouble, so you're just sulking with her. Now that you've vented your anger, why don't you two make up? Lin's mother said, reaching out and pulling Lin Duor's hand over to put it in Chen Pingan's hand, wanting Chen Pingan to hold her daughter's hand. Auntie, what are you doing? I've already told you before that I'm married, please respect that. Seeing Lin's mother's actions, Chen Pingan was startled and quickly pulled his hand back, saying cautiously. He couldn't understand what these mother and daughter wanted to do at all. Chen Pingan's actions made Lin's mother frown slightly, but she quickly relaxed and continued, Pingan, auntie knows that you married into the Mu family but auntie also knows that the miss of the Mu family doesn't like you. Our doer doesn't need any status, as long as she has a monthly allowance of two to three hundred thousand, that's enough. Lin's mother looked at Chen Pingan's appearance and thought that Chen Pingan wanted her and her daughter to take the initiative to become his mistress. She quickly put on a smiling face and expressed her stance to Chen Pingan again. Now that the manager of the Emperor Hotel, Ren Tianqing, has dumped her daughter, they have lost their source of income and can only swallow their pride. Ren Tianqing is already old while Chen Pingan is young and has attached himself to the Mu family, a prestigious family. He has also gained the appreciation of the old war god. As long as Chen Pingan is willing to give more money, her daughter would be better off being his mistress than staying with Rin Tianqing. No status? So you want me to be your mistress? After hearing Lin's mother's words, Chen Pingan looked at the mother and daughter with a surprised expression and asked incredulously, What mistress? You can package it with words, but she is still a mistress, and her appetite is too big. She asks for two to three hundred thousand every month. Is she worth that price? If I have that money, wouldn't it be better for me to keep a young and beautiful female college student? I'm in a hurry. I don't have time to chat with you here. Move aside. After finishing his words, Chen Pingan wanted to bypass Lin Duor and her mother and leave. Stop, Chen Pingan. Don't you cherish our past relationship? When Lin Duor saw Chen Pingan about to leave, she immediately opened her arms and blocked Chen Pingan's path, not allowing him to leave. It was you who wanted to leave me in the first place. Our fate ended from the moment you mentioned breaking up with me. There is no such thing as a past relationship. Move aside, or I will call the police and say that you forced me to cheat. Although Chen Pingan's tone was not loud, his face turned dark. You. Even if you don't cherish our past relationship, I spent three years with you, wasting my youth. You have to compensate me for the loss of my youth. I don't want much, just 10 million a year, a total of 30 million for three years. As long as you compensate me for this loss, I won't bother you anymore. Otherwise, I will go to the Mu family and make them pay this money. You figure it out. Lin Duor could tell that Chen Pingan was not willing to pay a high price to keep her, so she came up with the idea of making him compensate her for the loss of her youth during the three years they were together. She even threatened Chen Pingan that if he didn't give her the money, she would cause trouble at the Mu family and make the Mu family pay. It would be embarrassing for Chen Pingan, and she believed that he understood the pros and cons. When Lin Duor said this, Lin's mother almost gave her daughter a thumbs up on the spot. Her daughter's move was simply brilliant. Originally, when she heard Chin Pingan's words, she also thought that her previous analysis was seriously wrong and that there was no hope. Who knew that her daughter was so smart and adaptable, and could come up with such a brilliant idea in such a short time? In Lin's mother's opinion, Chin Pingan was the son-in-law of the Mu family, so he must be afraid that they would cause trouble at the Mu family. He willingly paid to avoid trouble. Put. Chen Pingan couldn't help but laugh at Lin Duor's words. It was clearly her who pursued him in the first place, and she was the one who proposed the breakup. They had only held hands and gone shopping together. They hadn't even slept together. He had even wanted to save their first time for their wedding night and hadn't touched her. He was so busy every day, just holding hands a few times, and now she wanted him to compensate her with 30 million for the loss of her youth? Was this woman crazy? What are you laughing at? Is it funny? Lin Duor was extremely annoyed by Chin Pingan's laughter and stared at him, questioning with her eyes wide open. I'm laughing at you and your mother for being crazy. Should I call an ambulance from Qingshan Mental Hospital for you? Chin Pingan couldn't be bothered to argue with such a crazy woman and immediately continued riding his bike to leave. Do you dare to leave? Do you believe that I will go to the Mu family estate and make it impossible for you to stay at the Mu family? Lin Duor saw Chin Pingan really leaving like this, stomping her feet behind him and threatening loudly attracting the attention of passers-by. 
If you want to cause trouble, go ahead, so that you won't have a chance later. Chen Pingan shrugged his shoulders, responding indifferently, then walked away without looking back, gradually disappearing from the sight of Lin Duor and her mother. Although he was wealthy now, even if the other party admitted their mistake and said a few kind words to him, he would definitely not give her any money. After all, they were no longer together. Mom, let's go. We'll go to the Mu family estate now and make that Chen regret. Seeing Chen Pingan's indifferent expression, Lin Duor was almost exploding with anger. She immediately pulled her mother and went to the Mu family. In their opinion, the Mu family definitely didn't know about Chen Pingan's previous imprisonment for forcing a female college student. When the time came, they would reveal Chen Pingan's past to the Mu family, and the Mu family would definitely no longer favor Chen Pingan. Moreover, they could also use this incident to blackmail the Mu family. If the Mu family didn't give them money, they would publicize what the Mu family's son-in-law had done in the past on the internet, letting others know that the Mu family had such a son-in-law who had forced a female college student and been imprisoned, making fun of the Mu family. Before long, Lin Duor and her mother arrived at the entrance of the Mu family estate and unhesitatingly rang the doorbell. Our master doesn't receive guests recently. Don't come knocking on the door again. The Mu family servant opened the door and waved impatiently, driving the two away. Now, everyone in Longcheng knew that old master Mu was an old classmate of the legendary warrior Zhao Wujin. Zhao Wujin even held a birthday banquet in Longcheng before returning to the northern frontier. Because of the relationship with old master Mu, the Mu family successfully won the project competing against the old prestigious family, the Lu family. They were on the rise and had the potential to leap from the bottom of the Longcheng prestigious families to the top three. Therefore, in the past few days, people from all walks of life who came to visit the Mu family were endless. However, the old master pretended to be aloof and didn't see anyone. Today, three groups of people had already come to visit, and the old master even arranged two gatekeepers to guard the door and send off the guests. The Mu family servant thought that Lin Duor and her mother were also here to visit the old master, so he directly told them to leave. We're not here to see the old master. My daughter is the ex-girlfriend of your young master Chen Pingan. We have important matters to discuss with your Miss Mu Wancheng. Let her come out and see us. If she doesn't come out, she will regret it. Yes, let her come out quickly, otherwise she will regret it. Lin Duor and her mother, relying on the fact that they had some dirt on Chen Pingan, were not afraid of the Mu family. They directly shouted at the Mu family gatekeepers. The two young gatekeepers were confused by the actions of Lin Duor and her mother. The Mu family had risen, and even the ex-girlfriend of the young master had come? Weren't these two people shameless? However, the old master had only instructed them not to receive guests. The young miss hadn't given any instructions. Since they were here to see the young miss, they still had to go in and inform her to see how she would respond. We've seen shameless people before, but we've never seen anyone as shameless as you. Wait here, we'll go in and inform our young miss if she wants to see you. The two Mu family gatekeepers glanced at each other, muttered a few words in a low voice, and left one person to guard the gate while the other ran inside to inform Mu Wancheng. Mu Wancheng was currently in her room discussing with her best friend Qin Shiyu how to convince the old master to agree to her divorcing Qin Pingan early, preferably right now. These past few days, her mind was filled with the image of the man who had saved them that night, and she was almost going crazy. She had never thought that love could come so suddenly and intensely, without any warning. She is most afraid that the hero will find out that she is already married. What should she do? As for whether the hero has her in his heart, she completely ignored the fact that the hero is already married. What's even more outrageous is that after the old man attended the birthday banquet of the old war god and returned, he became even more satisfied with Chen Pingan. When he found out that they had driven Chen Pingan away, the old man flew into a rage and demanded that she bring Chen Pingan back within a week, no matter what method she used. Miss, there is a mother and daughter outside who claim to be the ex-girlfriend of the young master, and they specifically asked to see you. The gatekeeper came to Mu Wancheng's room and shouted at Mu Wancheng, who was still worrying in the room. What does Chin Pingan's devil ex-girlfriend want with me? Mu Wancheng opened the door and curiously asked the gatekeeper. Miss, I don't know. The mother and daughter said that if you don't come out, you will regret it. The gatekeeper briefly repeated Lin Duor's words to Mu Wancheng. Such audacity, sure you, let's go out and see. Mu Wancheng, upon hearing the gatekeeper's words, was instantly filled with curiosity and pulled her best friend towards the gate. Is it you? When Mu Wancheng and Qin Shi Yu arrived at the gate and saw Lin Duor and her mother, Mu Wancheng frowned and asked. She had seen them at the entrance of the boxing club before. That's right, we are the mother and daughter. We came to see Miss Mu today to discuss a deal with her. Seeing Mu Wancheng come out, Lin Duor walked gracefully to Mu Wancheng with a smile. Didn't you say you were Qin Pingan's ex-girlfriend? What kind of deal do you want to make with me? 
Do you want me to give Qin Pingin back to you? Mu Wancheng curiously looked at Lin Duor and asked with a cold expression. I know some dark secrets about Qin Pingin that your Mu family doesn't know, such as him being in prison, and the reason he was sentenced to prison was for forcing several female college students. Once I expose this, your Mu family will become the laughingstock of the entire Longcheng. Lin Duor thought she had a hold on Mu Wancheng and whispered in her ear. As soon as Mu Wancheng heard Lin Duor's words, her face instantly darkened, and she looked at Lin Duor with icy eyes, as if fire was about to burst out of them. She wasn't angry because Qin Pingin had been sentenced to prison for forcing female college students, but because Lin Duor wanted to expose this. Qin Pingin was now the son-in-law of their Mu family, and if this matter were to be exposed, the entire Longcheng would know that their Mu family had married their granddaughter to a man who had been in prison, and even more shamefully, a man who had been sentenced to prison for forcing female college students. Their Mu family was now a prominent family in Longcheng, and if this matter were to be exposed, it would definitely cause a sensation. Their Mu family would become the subject of gossip for others. What do you want? Mu Wancheng stared at Lin Duor and asked coldly. 30 million, as long as you give me 30 million, I will keep this matter to myself, I won't mention it again, and I won't expose it. As soon as Lin Duor finished speaking, Mu Wancheng's eyes immediately showed a fierce look. Of course, you might think that 30 million is expensive and don't want to give it, but you have to understand that your Mu family is now thriving and is about to enter the top three families in Longcheng. If you let your Mu family's reputation be damaged because of this 30 million, it would be a pity. Which is more important to you, 30 million or your family's reputation? You know better than me, right? Seeing Mu Wancheng getting angry, Lin Duor quickly continued. Lin Duor's words made the harsh words that were about to come out of Mu Wancheng's mouth swallow back, and she fell silent. 30 million is not a small amount, I have to discuss it with my best friend. Mayan Chang dropped a sentence and pulled her best friend Qin Shiyu aside, asking her for some ideas. Orange, this is a good thing for you. Little did Mayan Chang know that after hearing her words, Qin Shiyu said something that left Mayan Chang dumbfounded. Mayan Chang looked at her best friend with a puzzled expression. Are you stupid? Aren't you currently worried about not being able to get your grandfather's approval for your divorce? As long as this person exposes Qin Pingin's past and lets everyone in Longcheng know, your grandfather will definitely agree to your divorce for the sake of the Mayan family's overall situation. Qin Shiyu looked at Mayan Chang with a look of disbelief, making her point clear. But in that case, the reputation of the Mayan family will definitely be damaged. Although Mayan Chang admitted that Qin Shiyu's method was good, she still had some concerns. TSK, your grandfather, and the old war god are old classmates. Will this slight loss of reputation affect the Mayan family's position in Longcheng? Qin Shiyu retorted. That's true. Those people are only trying to flatter my family because of the relationship between my grandfather and the old war god. They won't stop flattering us just because we have a demon son-in-law. This plan is good, let's go with it. After Qin Shiyu's analysis, Mayan Chang suddenly became enlightened and happily accepted her best friend's suggestion. Lin Duor and her daughter saw the two of them discussing for so long, and Mayan Chang occasionally furrowing her brows. They felt that there was a chance and were confident that Mayan Chang would agree to their request for the sake of the Mayan family's reputation. Just when they thought they had Mayan Chang under control, Mayan Chang returned with a gloomy face. Miss Mu, have you made up your mind? Lin Duor asked with a smile on her face, despite Mayan Chang's gloomy expression. Smack! Mayan Chang responded with a loud slap to Lin Duor's face. How dare you hit someone? Lin Duor was stunned by Mayan Chang's slap, covering her burning face and looking at Mayan Chang in confusion. It was her mother who reacted faster and quickly pushed Mayan Chang away, angrily questioning her. Just now, Mayan Chang was clearly under their control, so why did she suddenly turn hostile? You two have the audacity to blackmail my Mu family? Guards, arrest these criminals who dare to blackmail my Mu family and take them to the police station. I want them to rot in jail. After being pushed away by Lin's mother, Mayan Chang shouted at the two guards. The two guards immediately ran over when they heard Mayan Chang's words, which frightened Lin Duor and her mother. Although they didn't understand why Mayan Chang suddenly became so aggressive and wasn't afraid of them exposing Qin Pingin's dark secrets, now was not the time to think about that. Their only goal now was to escape. They suddenly realized that they were indeed blackmailing the Mu family, and with the Mu family's influence in Longcheng, if they were caught, they would definitely go to jail. Lin's mother immediately grabbed her daughter Lin Duor and ran. Mu, you will regret this, just you wait. Before leaving, Lin Duor turned back and threatened Mayan Chang. Then they gradually disappeared. TSK, with your cowardly appearance, you dare to come and blackmail my Mu family? You really don't know the immensity of heaven and earth. Watching Lin's mother and daughter panic and run away after being slapped, Mayan Chang muttered disdainfully. Orange, by scaring them like this, 
What if they are too scared to expose Qin Pingan's dark secrets and we can't achieve our goal? Xin Shiyu asked with a worried expression. Well, Xin Shiyu's words momentarily stumped Mian Chang. Looking at their frustrated and angry appearance, they shouldn't be so timid. If it were me, since things have already come to this point, I would at least expose their dark secrets to vent my anger. After that, I would just leave Longqing immediately. Finally, Mu Wancheng pouted and said, Yeah, forget it, let it be. By the way, my internship period is over, and my parents want me to go back to Jiangzhou to develop. Your family has also secured the project in the west of the city. Do you want to come with me to the provincial capital Jiangzhou for a few days? It is said that the underground forces in the southwest will hold a martial arts recruitment conference in the provincial capital Jiangzhou in a few days. The champion of the southwest underground forces will be selected. Your hero looks like someone who has trained before. He hasn't appeared recently, probably because he's preparing to participate in the martial arts conference in the provincial capital. Xin Shiyu didn't want to dwell on this topic and quickly changed the subject. Xin Shiyu was just joking, but it caught Mu Wanqing's attention. Recently, she had been trying to find the hero who saved them that night, but there were no clues. The only clue was that the hero was very powerful, and it was possible that he had indeed gone to the provincial capital to participate in the martial arts conference, as her best friend had said. Okay, let's go to the provincial capital tomorrow. You go back and handle the procedures quickly. Mu Wancheng was filled with interest at the thought that the hero who saved them that night might have gone to the provincial capital. She urged her best friend to go back to the company and handle the procedures so they could go to the provincial capital together tomorrow. After being slapped by Mu Wancheng, Lin Duer's mother immediately grabbed her. Mom, this Mu Wancheng is so hateful. Not only did she not give us the money, she even hit me. I want to expose Chen Pingan's dark secrets and ruin the reputation of the Mu family. Lin Duer touched her hot face and said angrily. Duer, calm down. The Mu family is currently thriving. If we expose Chen Pingan's dark secrets now, we will definitely offend the Mu family. By then, we will have no place to stay in Longchen. Lin's mother, upon hearing her daughter's words, was shocked and tried to persuade her. Mom, what's there to be afraid of? The Mu family is just a small family in Longcheng. We can just run back to the provincial capital. The provincial capital is not a place where a small Mu family can act recklessly. Lin Duer's words made her mother's eyes light up. At this time, Chen Pingin and Li Runin were already driving on the highway back to the provincial capital Jiangzhou. Li Runin was driving the luxury Mercedes-Benz provided by the company, feeling a sense of returning home in glory. However, this feeling was overshadowed by the shadow of her father's serious illness. Both Li Runin and Chen Pingin were in a particularly heavy mood. How is uncle now? Chen Pingin, sitting in the passenger seat, saw that Li Runin had been in a tense state, her body tense. Even with the air conditioning on, Li Runin's hands holding the steering wheel were sweating. Chen Pingin spoke to divert her attention. I don't know. My mom just told me that my dad's condition worsened and he was transferred to the intensive care unit of the People's Hospital in the provincial capital Jiangzhou. She asked me to hurry back and see him for the last time. Li Runin answered heavily while driving. Suddenly, they noticed a major traffic accident ahead. Several cars had collided on the highway, and car parts were scattered over hundreds of meters. Some injured people had already crawled out of the cars with the help of kind-hearted people and were waiting for ambulances. Some were rescuing people, some were calling the police and ambulances, and some were crying loudly. The cries of women and children echoed on the highway, and the scene was extremely tragic. Drive the car to the front and park it. After setting up the warning signs, wait for me outside the highway guardrail. As a doctor, Chin Pingin saw the scene and immediately asked Li Runin to park the car properly without hesitation. But, Li Runin instinctively wanted to say that her father's serious illness wouldn't delay them, but she swallowed the words back, and then, following Chin Pingin's instructions, parked the car properly. At this moment, Chin Pingin also realized that Li Runin's father was still critically ill in the hospital. All right, you drive back to Jianzhou first. I'll handle things here and rush to the people's hospital to meet you. We'll stay in touch by phone. Chin Pingin quickly stopped Li Runin from getting out of the car and said, then turned and ran towards the scene of the traffic accident. At a time like this, time is life. As long as he is faster, he might be able to save more lives, a family. He doesn't have much time to wait for Li Runin's response. Be careful. Li Runin knew that Chen Pingin was a doctor and couldn't bear to ignore such a situation. She couldn't help much by staying behind, so she had to shout loudly behind Chen Pingin, start the car, and continue on to Jiangzhou to see her father for the last time. Chen Pingin waved his hand and then arrived at the scene of the traffic accident. At this time, there were two gathering places for the injured at the accident scene. One of them was where the injured person in the Audi car was rescued. Judging from the license plate, 
it should be the car of a high-ranking figure. There were many people around, and a woman claiming to be a doctor was urgently treating a middle-aged man who was seriously injured and covered in blood. The other gathering place for the injured had fewer people around, and there were no doctors passing by to check. Without hesitation, Xin Ping and ran towards the gathering place where there were no doctors. Help, someone save my daughter. The most seriously injured was a four or five year old girl. The girl's mother was holding the bloodied girl and crying desperately on the ground. Chin Ping and walked up to the young woman holding the girl and, after seeing her appearance clearly, he was stunned for a moment. Jiang Chuin? Chen Ping and asked tentatively. Unexpectedly, this young and beautiful woman holding the girl was Jiang Chuin, one of the women who had conspired with Gao Weiwei to frame him. He didn't expect that after five years, the two of them would meet again, and the child had grown so much. Moreover, they met in such a situation. Looking at the girl covered in blood in front of him and the desperate look on Jiang Chuyin's face, Chen Pingan unexpectedly felt a pang of sympathy and couldn't bring himself to hate her. These thoughts only flashed through Chen Pingan's mind for a moment, and he immediately squatted down to save the girl. Regardless of what the other party had done, he would save the child first and discuss other matters later. Chen, Senior, you're a doctor. Please save Tong Tong. I beg you to save our child. Jiang Chuyin, who was originally crying in despair, panicked instinctively when she saw Chen Pingan, but then remembered that Chen Pingan was a doctor. A glimmer of hope appeared on her face, and she immediately knelt in front of Chen Pingan, pleading with him, and said something that made Chen Pingan tremble. This bloodied little girl was her daughter? What did you just say? She's my daughter? So, that night five years ago, all seven of you conspired to frame me, but it didn't work out? Chen Pingan looked at Jiang Chuyin in shock, unable to believe it. That's right. After that night, you were sentenced to prison. Not long after, I found out that I was pregnant. I gave birth to Tong Tong before graduating from university. She really is your daughter. It was our fault back then, but the child is innocent. I beg you to save her. Zhang Chuin couldn't care about anything else anymore and hurriedly told Chen Pingan about the girl's background. Who exactly ordered you to do this back then, to sacrifice your own bodies to frame me? Chen Pingan squatted down, took the girl into his hands, and examined her body while questioning Zhang Chuin. Although he was full of resentment towards the ungrateful seven women, the child was innocent. Whether this little girl was his daughter or not, he would do his best to save her. Moreover, Chen Pingan couldn't see any trace of lying in the other party's eyes. In other words, the dying girl in front of him should undoubtedly be his own flesh and blood. He couldn't just watch her die in front of him. At first, he thought they had used some special means to frame him back then, but he never expected that all seven of them had actually been involved with him that night. He couldn't imagine who had such great ability to make all seven of them willingly sacrifice so much to frame him. I can't say. Zhang Chuin saw Chen Pingan checking his daughter's injuries and felt a slight relief in her heart. But when faced with Chen Pingan's questioning about the person behind the scenes, she, like Gao Weiwei, refused to tell him. The seven of them had agreed beforehand that the person behind the scenes had too much power, and they couldn't tell him about what happened back then, otherwise it would harm him. At this moment, Chen Pingan suddenly became angry. However, he wasn't angry because Zhang Chuin refused to answer his question, but because of his daughter Zhang Tongtong's condition. When he opened his daughter's eyes to check her pupils, he discovered that she had no corneas. Neither side had them. With his experience, he could tell at a glance that this was not congenital, but something that had been taken away later. In other words, Tongtong was blind now. Xin Pingin knew that Zhang Chuyin's family wasn't doing well, so could it be that she sold their daughter's corneas for money? Chen Pingan looked at Zhang Chuin, who was still tearful, with anger on his face and trembled as he asked, Where are Tong Tong's corneas? Chen Pingan's tone was full of murderous intent. If it was really as he thought, that Zhang Chuin sold her daughter's corneas for money, he would make this ungrateful and ruthless woman pay the price of a fate worse than death, even taking her daughter's corneas. Tong Tong's corneas were like this from birth. Finally, Zhang Chuin couldn't bear Chen Pingan's angry gaze anymore and answered in a low voice with her head down. You're talking nonsense. I am a doctor. I can tell whether her corneas are congenitally missing or were taken away later. Do you think I can't see that? Chen Pingan couldn't help but shout at Zhang Chuin in anger. If you don't explain clearly today, I won't let you off. The killing intent in Chen Pingan's eyes seemed to solidify, and his tone became extremely cold. The matter of Tong Tong's corneas is a bit complicated. Please, treat Tong Tong first. When she recovers, I will explain it to you in detail, okay? Zhang Chuin was frightened by Chen Pingan's murderous gaze and sat on the ground, then grabbed Chen Pingan's hand and pleaded with him. Hearing her words, Chen Pingan calmed down. There was a piece of iron stuck in Tong Tong's chest, causing a lot of bleeding. She had lost too much blood and was in a coma, with the possibility of dying at any moment. 
Fortunately, the iron piece didn't hit her heart, just next to it. Chen Pingin first used special golden needles and acupuncture techniques from the Nine Dragon Medical Classic to stop the bleeding for Zhang Tongtong, and then slowly transferred his true energy into her body through the golden needles, nourishing her body. It must be said that the combination of true energy, acupuncture techniques from the Nine Dragon Medical Classic, and the miraculous effects of the golden needles had a magical effect on treating injuries and illnesses. Under Qin Pingin's treatment, Zhang Tongtong's injuries gradually stabilized miraculously, and she passed the critical period and quickly recovered. In less than five minutes, the almost dying Zhang Tongtong slowly opened her eyes. However, she couldn't see anything and didn't know that her beloved father was right in front of her. Tongtong, you're awake? Does your body still hurt? Is there anywhere uncomfortable? Zhang Chuin saw her daughter wake up and immediately picked her up, holding her in her arms and excitedly asking, Mom, just now Tong Tong dreamt that Dad came to see her. Dad even bought her lots of ice cream and toys. Zhang Tong Tong, still weak, weakly grabbed her mother's hand and said, although her expression was painful, she was strong, with a smile on her face that made people feel sorry for her. Zhang Chuin heard her daughter's words and looked at Chen Pingan with a complex gaze. However, she did not tell her daughter that her father was right in front of her. Chen Pingin's gaze was always on his daughter Jiang Tongtong, especially looking at her cute face, which had sunken eyes due to the loss of her corneas. He felt an inexplicable pain in his heart. A four-year-old child had lost her sight, and her future life would be in darkness. If it were someone else's child, he might just feel sorry for them, but when something like this happened to his own child, the feeling was really unbearable and heartbreaking. At this moment, Chen Pingin silently decided that once his daughter's health fully recovered, he would find a way to restore her sight. If that wasn't possible, he would even be willing to give her his own corneas. Thinking of this, Chen Pingin looked up at Zhang Chuin, coincidentally needing her gaze. Tong Tong is out of danger now. Add me on WeChat, and I'll send you some prescriptions. Follow the instructions to help her recover. If you're still worried, after the ambulance arrives, take her to the hospital for a comprehensive examination. Okay. Can you now tell me what's wrong with Tong Tong's eyes? Chen Pingin first comforted Zhang Chuin in front of him, then changed the subject back to his daughter Zhang Tong Tong's eyes. When Chen Pingin spoke, Zhang Tong Tong's face turned pale again. Tong Tong's eyes. Zhang Chuin avoided Chen Pingin's questioning gaze, speaking hesitantly and refusing to reveal what was wrong with her daughter Zhang Tong Tong's eyes. Zhang Chuin's actions made Chen Pingin even more certain that she had sold her daughter's corneas for money. After all, she had done such a heartless thing as betraying her benefactor in the past, so selling her own daughter's cornea should be nothing to her. Just as Chen Pingin was about to use force to force Zhang Chuin to tell the truth, there was suddenly a commotion from another injured person. The provincial leader is in critical condition. Why hasn't the ambulance arrived yet? Hurry up and urge them. We called 120, but they said the ambulance is stuck in traffic and won't be able to arrive quickly. The noisy voices reached Chen Pingin's ears. You should take the child outside the railing and wait, don't run around. After hearing the commotion, Chen Pingin instructed Zhang Chuin, then immediately ran towards the commotion. Lives were at stake, and he planned to save the person first before discussing his daughter's situation. As soon as he squeezed into the crowd, Chen Pingin saw the middle-aged man lying next to the Audi car that had been wrecked beyond repair. His injuries were severe, and he was on the verge of death. The female doctor had no way to help him and was currently on the phone, cursing and urging the ambulance to arrive faster. Chen Pingin squatted down and grabbed the middle-aged man's wrist, checking his pulse. What are you doing? Who allowed you to touch the injured person? Are you willing to take responsibility if something goes wrong? The beautiful female doctor noticed Chen Pingin's actions from the corner of her eye and immediately walked briskly to his side, angrily reprimanding him. After speaking, she even reached out to push Chen Pingin away. However, with her limited strength, how could she possibly move Chen Pingin? Chen Pingin was like he had roots on his feet, unmoved no matter how hard the other person tried to push him. Quickly, you guys pull him away. The provincial lord's life is hanging by a thread. If he gets disturbed again, he might not make it until the ambulance arrives. The female doctor shouted to the people around her when she couldn't move Chen Pingin. Some of the people around were subordinates of the provincial lord, and when they heard the doctor's words, their faces turned pale, immediately trying to pull Chen Pingin away. Stop it. I am also a doctor. If we don't save this patient in time, it will be too late. Chen Pingin originally didn't want to pay attention to the woman, but seeing the people around him trying to take him away, he had to let go of the patient's hand and explain to everyone. When the crowd heard Chen Pingin say that he was also a doctor, they stopped and looked at the woman, unsure of what to do. Only the female doctor was somewhat surprised, then frowned. The injured person in front of her was the provincial lord of their province, 
and she was hoping to gain favor from the provincial lord after saving him. If this guy stole her thunder, wouldn't that be a loss for her? Even if he didn't steal her thunder, when the provincial lord woke up and knew that they had saved him together, she would have to share half of the credit with him. It wouldn't be profitable at all. Are you also a doctor? What field? Show me your medical license. The woman thought for a moment and directly asked Chun Pingin for his medical license. Even if the man in front of her was really a doctor, ordinary people wouldn't carry this thing with them, but she happened to have it. If this man couldn't produce a medical license, she could use this as a reason to kick him out of the crowd and take all the credit for saving the provincial lord. My medical license was revoked five years ago. Chen Pingin said something that shocked the female doctor. Chen Pingin could have lied to the woman and said he didn't bring it with him, but he didn't bother to deceive her. It wasn't necessary. He decided to tell her the truth. The woman was stunned for several seconds before she came back to her senses, suddenly feeling delighted. However, she didn't show it on her face. Instead, she put on an angry expression. Your medical license was revoked. Either your medical skills or your character must be problematic. This is a matter of life and death. Can you, a doctor whose medical license has been revoked, take responsibility if something goes wrong? Everyone, quickly kick this quack without a medical license out of here. Don't let him touch the patient, so as not to cause a second injury to the patient. The female doctor, who had caught Chen Pingin's handle, immediately called on everyone to kick him out of the crowd. The people had heard their conversation clearly just now, and for the sake of the provincial lord's safety, without saying a word, they kicked Chen Pingin out of the crowd. The situation of this patient is very critical. If we don't save him in time, it will be too late. I can stabilize the patient's condition with traditional Chinese acupuncture before the ambulance arrives. Don't hinder me from saving lives. Chen Pingin angrily reprimanded the crowd. But the crowd saw that his medical license had been revoked and considered him a quack. Moreover, the woman earlier was the chief surgeon at the People's Hospital in the provincial capital. With her presence, the provincial lord's subordinates didn't give him a chance. You will need my help later. Chen Pingin finally had no choice but to retreat to the outskirts of the crowd. He wanted to see how this woman would end up later. A medical expert who has studied abroad, would I ask for help from a quack whose medical license has been revoked? Impudent man. The female doctor in the crowd heard Chen Pingin's last words, and with a disdainful expression, she shouted at his back. Chen Pingin didn't want to waste his breath on such a person. After coming out of the crowd, he looked in the direction of Jiang Chuin. However, Jiang Chuin and her daughter were nowhere to be seen. After asking several people around, Chen Pingin learned that when he squeezed into the crowd, Jiang Chuin had already crossed the highway guardrail with her daughter and headed towards the nearby village. Chen Pingin guessed that the other party must have been afraid of him asking about her daughter's corneas, so she took the opportunity to escape while he wasn't paying attention. Without hesitation, Chen Pingin followed and quickly chased after them by crossing the highway guardrail. However, after searching around the village and not finding any trace of Jiang Chuin and her daughter, he didn't know where to look for them in the vast sea of people. At this moment, Chen Pingin felt for the first time that one person's power was limited and he was eager to establish his own influence. If he had a powerful force in his hands, he could immediately mobilize it to search for the mother and daughter. The Southwest King's battle a few days later would be a great opportunity. As long as he became the king of the underground forces in the three provinces of the Southwest, he could mobilize his power to find Jiang Chuin and her daughter, as well as his own mother and sister. Previously, Chen Pingin had promised Gao Weiwei to participate in the Southwest King's battle just to find out who was behind the scenes back then, but now he had another reason. This time, he must win the Southwest King's battle. Chen Pingin was thinking about this as he returned to the highway. Just as Chen Pingin returned to the highway, he noticed that the group of people from earlier had started to cause a commotion again. The female doctor who had been surrounded by the subordinates of the provincial lord was frantically explaining something. Chen Pingin listened to their conversation from a distance and it seemed that the provincial lord was about to die, and his subordinates were blaming the female doctor. Chen Pingin was interested and walked towards the crowd again. The sharp-eyed female doctor in the crowd quickly noticed Chen Pingin approaching, and a hint of joy flashed in her eyes. The provincial lord was about to die, and she had tried everything she could to stabilize his condition, but there was still no news of an ambulance. It was only a matter of time before he died. Wasn't this guy trying to take credit from her earlier? She immediately pointed at Chen Pingin and said a few words to the people surrounding her, and several people ran towards Chen Pingin. Sir, didn't you say you had a way to stabilize the provincial lord's condition? The provincial lord's condition is very unstable now, there is a risk of him dying at any moment. Please come and save him. A secretary-like man quickly approached Chen Pingin and anxiously said to him, I am just a quack doctor without a medical qualification. 
I am not qualified to save the provincial lord. You should ask that medical expert who studied abroad to do it. Chen Pingin pointed at the female doctor and said calmly to the middle-aged secretary, Sir, we were indeed wrong earlier. Now it's a matter of life and death. Please don't mind our previous words and come and save the provincial lord. The secretary apologized to Chen Pingin with an embarrassed expression and pleaded with him, I am a petty person. I can help if you let go of the past, but I have one condition. As long as she comes here and begs me personally, otherwise, even if the emperor himself comes today, I won't lift a finger. Chen Pingin raised his eyebrows and pointed at the female doctor in the crowd. When he said this, the secretary and the female doctor were stunned. The others were also stunned. 